Not a drug fighting hero. His daughter is a vigilant police officer. But you are the head of the largest drug trafficking group. The demon who killed his wife and daughter with his own hands. Everyone hates you to the extreme. And today your daughter, Chen Sisi, will take you away in person. Inside the courtroom, Chen Sisi asked through gritted teeth. Have you ever regretted? You showed a bitter smile. Maybe I will regret it. But let me choose again. I would still make the same choice. In the jury box, an old man with white hair cried out in pain. Give me back my daughter. Hearing this voice, you shivered all over. Eyes filled with exhaustion. Shout with a voice that only you can hear. She is your father-in-law. You were penniless at first. It was this old man who believed in you. Willing to bet and entrust his most precious daughter to you. But you made this old man lose completely. Judged by the court. You should have been executed today. But your daughter didn't want you to die so easily. So she requested to use the latest memory trial device to expose all your crimes globally. This memory extraction will make people suffer before death. But in the face of a demon like you, no one will sympathize. The memory extractor connects to your brain. You only feel like your head is being pricked by needles. Facial distortion. Seeing this, everyone looks delighted. They're happy to see the demon like you being judged with their own eyes. They also want to see how many heinous things you've done. Soon, your memories will be extracted. The you on the big screen just graduated from high school. Received invitations from two top universities in China with outstanding grades, but you refused them all. Resolutely chose a local police university. Chen Sisi in front of the screen felt a wave of nausea. Never thought I actually went to the same school as this scum of a father. This is simply a great disgrace. You entered this university under everyone's gaze. At the same time, they also found out that you chose to major in drug control. People outside the screen were discussing. This scum is an insult to the drug control profession. A top student in the drug control major becomes the head of the world's largest drug school. How ironic. In the blink of an eye, four years have passed. You, as this batch of drug control majors, are about to graduate. Classmates are all discussing what they will do after graduation. Everyone is talking about where they want to go. But you didn't say anything. Just looking up at the distant sunset. After everyone has left, you silently walked towards a certain room. Inside the office, the old man suddenly stood up. A face full of disbelief. What? You want to be an ashen? You want to be an ashen for me? Your eyes are so determined for the first time. After a long time, the old man suddenly sighed. Why did you choose to be an ashen? You didn't lie. Instead, he quietly took out a martyr's medal. The red flag on top is as bright as blood. My parents and their colleagues. Some of them are anti-drug police. Some became martyrs. When they were alive, they stood in the darkness and burned themselves. They lit up the light for China. Now they have sacrificed. And I have grown up too. Let me take over the torch from their hands. Walk into the darkness. To light up the light. Hearing your words, the old man trembled all over. Too similar. When your father entered the academy, the determination on his face, not afraid of sacrifice. It's like you were carved from the same mold. He is also one of my proudest students, but he has already walked this path. His sacrifice has been enough, whether it's out of selfishness or whatever it may be. I don't want you to walk this path again, but this is the only purpose of my existence. Only in this way. Can I feel that my body is burning? Can I feel that my blood is flowing? Do you know? The mortality rate of anti-drug police is 4.9 times that of regular police. The injury rate is 10 times that of regular police, and undercover agents are even more so than anti-drug police. Aren't you afraid? I am. Of course, I am afraid. I think my parents are also afraid for me, but they still chose this path. That proves that living, there are always things more precious than life. After becoming a gray person, no one will know what you've done. Your records, your information, everything about you will be sealed, as if you've disappeared from this world. You will face countless cruel enemies, you will even become the enemy of the world. You will also be criticized by thousands, from now on, far from the light. I wish you still answered firmly. At this moment, everyone in front of the screen was shocked. Was this demon originally so kind and brave? But why did he become like this now? Finally, he succumbed to the darkness. Chen Sisi's body couldn't stop trembling. He never expected. His so-called father. I actually chose to become an ash person. Thinking about what you just said. Living as a person. Some things are always more precious than life. Tears burst out like an unstoppable flood. But even if you become an ash person. Becoming an undercover agent. But why did you kill your own wife and child? And why did you kill your colleague? They were all brothers who shed blood with you. Several extraordinary people in the jury box. Seeing this, eyes couldn't help but fill with tears. They understand very well. After becoming an ash person, can only let the darkness engulf oneself, to make one's heart extremely cold. 
even having to watch your own comrade, the love of my life died in front of me, they don't know, you became the dark years of the ash people, what have you been through, made you become a demon walking in the world, the screen on the big screen continues, after you became an ash person, was taken to a new training base, every day must undergo the most severe, the most rigorous training, fortunately, there are a group of like-minded comrades here, soon, the two and a half years of training is over, Today is the day of your graduation, and from today on, I am no longer your instructor. You are no longer my students. Even from today on, your parents are no longer your parents. Your wives and children are no longer your wives and children. Starting from today, the previous you died. What you have left alive are just those two words. Kui Ron, do you have anything you want to say? After everyone has spoken, you slowly stood up, looked at everyone and said, Comrades, after today, no one in the whole of China will know our identities again. Even one day, we may have to stand on opposite sides, pointing a gun at each other. If there really is such a day, then please pull. Your trigger. Use the shooting skills taught by the instructor. Shoot the bullet into my chest, embedded in my throbbing heart because that's where we will go as ash people. That line was fought for by countless predecessors with their lives and blood. If it really comes to that point, it proves that your life is more valuable than mine. I will not hesitate to use my own flesh and blood as cement, bones as steel bars to pave the road further and stronger. And what you have to do is to step on me and go higher and further. Your words fell, and the hearts of countless people in the courtroom began to tremble. Chen Cici's tears couldn't stop flowing. Each of your words hammered on his heart like a sledgehammer causing him to gasp in pain. He's screaming madly in his heart. You used to be so noble, so respectable. But why did you ultimately choose to betray your own promise? Is this the reason you killed dozens of gray people? Do you think your life is worth more than theirs? Others don't know, but he knows. Among the gray people with you, the vast majority died at your hands, or died on the way to look for you to clean up. Dozens of lives turned into cold corpses. Some were even dismembered and thrown into the wilderness. Even today, some gray people are still gentlemen. Your memory live broadcast is still ongoing. To achieve the goal, you frequent all kinds of colorful places. At this moment, Moment, there's no sign of anything police-like on you, only the smell of a perennial rogue. Because of frequenting the casino for years, you're loaded with debts. You can only hide and seek, drifting on the streets. Finally, the creditors found you under the bridge. You have no money to repay. The creditors are furious. One cut, two cuts, continuously slashing you with three cuts. In the darkness not far away, a person in charge of assessment. Tears the size of beans keep falling. But he chose not to go out and save you. Because he knows, after becoming a gray person, apart from the gray person themselves, no one in this world will help you carry it, whether alive or dead. Whether alive or dead. Seeing this, Chen Cici seems to have forgotten. You're a cold-blooded demon. Stop cutting, stop cutting. Have you noticed? Being cut so many times, he didn't even groan. How strong is his endurance? It's hard to imagine what kind of firm belief he has in his heart. To be able to face death without changing his expression. Until you endured more than 30 cuts. At death's door, they only left then. Not far away, the examiners tearfully wrote the word excellent on the assessment booklet. This also proves that you have truly graduated and also indicates that you are about to embark on a road of no return. And just after you closed your eyes, a strange footstep slowly approaching. Follow me from now on. I'll make sure you live well. After hearing this, you know, the goal you've been waiting for years has appeared. Three months later, you became a member of the Black Triangle Casa Group. You do all sorts of evil things. You performed well. Soon promoted to a small leader. On that day, the boss of the Casa group called for Jian. What you didn't expect is to feel a hint of kindness from Casa. And at this time, a maid brought the coffee over. The coffee the boss wanted. Casa, with a gentle face, picked up the coffee and took a sip. The smile on his face remains. Did I tell you that I only drink coffee at 30 degrees? The maid's face was already full of fear. With a thud, she knelt in front of Casa. Boss, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The air conditioning temperature was turned up a bit today. Coming from the kitchen caused the coffee temperature to drop by 1 or 2 degrees. Come forward. Casa still had a big smile on his face. At the moment the maid crawled over, Casa's face suddenly turned fierce. The gentleman's cane and hand raised up, and then fiercely smashed down on the maid's head. Be more careful in the next life. After all this is done, Casa's face once again regained the previous smile. Wang Bin, 27 years old, graduated from Wuhu Police Academy. After graduating, became an undercover agent for the Wuhu Police. Through the two hidden lines within the Casa Group, successfully infiltrated the Casa Group. The wailing Wang Bin slowly stopped crying. A face turned pale. He looked at Casa unwillingly. 
How did you know all of this? Kasa shook his head. If you want to keep it a secret, don't do it to others. Then he looked at you. You're Chin Foam, under Lao Wu, right? You know that in our line of work, we've always been at odds with the police. You tell me, how should we handle this Wang Bing? Kill you. The calm tone suddenly filled with violence. Okay, in that case, then I'll leave this person to you to handle. The body is buried in the backyard. My flowers haven't been fertilized for a long time. You didn't hesitate at all. He stepped forward and grabbed Wang Bin's hair. Dragged the arrogant one outside. Wang Bin let out a painful scream, struggling in pain. Then directly kicked Wang Bin in the mouth. Instantly, his mouth was dripping with blood, painfully passed out. No sound, that's ruthless. I like it. Kasa couldn't help but lick her lips. A trace of a bloodthirsty smile appeared in her eyes. Then you dragged Wang Bin to the backyard. Your cold expression suddenly revealed a grimace. When the nauseating gray figure was ushered into darkness like a worm. But this is the consequence of our actions. Do you regret it? Wang Bin, barely conscious, trembled and opened his eyes facing death, but his face was full of indifference, regret, since choosing to become a great person until now, I have never regretted it, death is sometimes not scary, some things go beyond pain and darkness, my regret is not transmitting any useful information, my regret is only for the countless efforts over the years, the line sacrificed by countless bad people will be broken in my hands, my death has no value at all, it is my biggest regret, but you, this kind of pitiful demon, an irredeemable sinner, you cannot understand. In the end, Wang Bing has been intermittent, as if the next moment is about to swallow, but his head was raised high. I'll go to the demon. I'll kill you and make you valuable. I'll make you arrogant. But so what? You're still going to die by my hands. Do you know money? Only money is heaven. Do you understand? You're like a madman. Grabbed Wang Bin by the neck. Lifted him up. Seeing this, some audience members couldn't help but grit their teeth. Look, look, the hidden nature is exposed. How long have you been an undercover agent? He has completely fallen. He is addicted to money and can't extricate himself. Chen Cici clenched her fists even tighter, staring fixedly at the screen. The hatred in my heart for you has grown stronger. On the screen, you're pinching Wang Bin's neck to change direction. Turn yourself away from the villa. Just as Wang Bin was about to bite his tongue and end it all, he saw your lips trembling silently. Although there was no sound, but Wang Bin could clearly see through your trembling lips. Comrade, forgive me, it's your comrade who's sending you away. One day, there will be no drugs within the four seas. I'll come to take you home. Wang Bin's mind exploded with a bang. The dull eyes finally burst into dazzling light. It's as if seeing the sun in the darkness. His contorted hands broke through the limits of science and anatomy. Rigidly raised and grabbed your arms, his lips moved silently with difficulty. Comrade, I can only rely on you next. I am ashamed for the country. I have not completed the country's mission. At this moment, Wang Bin seems to be like a dying ember. There is hope in his face. With hope, at this moment, his mission and task will be continued by someone else. You closed your eyes in pain. Comrade Wang Bin, have a safe journey. You slightly squeezed your hand. The clear sound of bones breaking is heard. The hearts of everyone in front of the screen seem to be torn apart. They clearly read the word comrade. Wang Bin, you have not let the country down. You are the pride of the motherland. We take pride in you. At this moment in the judgment device, you also shed a clear tear. No one understands this pain more than you do. But this pain has repeated once again. The screen on the big screen continues to play. You follow the place Kaza mentioned. One shovel goes down. With a bang, there's hardly any sound of touching something foreign. As you shovel open, a skull rolled out. Your heart fiercely shovels down again. Under the soil, there are dense white bones. The tattered clothes are prominently marked with the symbol of Dasha police. From behind, you continue to dig one shovel at a time. As if the bones and corpses in this pit have no effect on you. But the audience can clearly see your face in extreme pain from the front. Surrounded by darkness. Even wanting to cry out loud is a luxury. More and more people can't help but shed tears. This pit is filled with the bodies of our great Xia police. They dedicated their whole lives to great Xia. But even in death, they didn't return to the land they were willing to sacrifice their lives for. Chen Feng, oh Chen Feng, now, the Kassa group is forced, and these unjust souls have returned to the land of Great Xia. But what about you? Why did you become the person you are now? The camera turns, you walked back to the hall with a determined face. You were greeted by a thin old man with a skeptical look on his face. Ha, Chen Feng, you are indeed tough and courageous, facing so many dead people and yet not changing your expression. Boss Wu and the boss didn't misjudge you, but it's a pity. That deceased soldier was actually killed by you directly. But it still allowed me to finish playing. I have learned many techniques through the generations. 
For example, Ling Chi lighting, the lamp passing through the sparkling heart extraction, finally arriving at the transcendent place. What a pity, what a pity, you quietly watch him, there was not the slightest change in expression, just swearing in my heart, I must personally kill this person. All right, you can go back now, the boss said, you have passed the test. Just wait for your meteoric rise. You have left the villa surveillance area. At this moment, you seem to have been drained of all your strength. Kneel down directly, looking up in pain. My comrades, my dear comrade, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. You can rest assured. This darkness will surely be torn apart. For a long time, you slowly stand up. The figure looks desolate, like a lone wolf. Slowly introduced into the darkness. The white bones in that pit. The soldiers buried by I by personally. The blow to you was too great. This scene made everyone suddenly realize, so you had already discovered the presence of surveillance. If we don't kill Wu Hong, next, Wu Hong might even long for death. To personally kill a comrade in arms with the cruelest method. It's hard to imagine how much pain your heart must have been in at that time. Chen Sisi looked at the lonely figure on the screen. Eyes filled with tears were full of disbelief. It's hard to imagine that this demon still has such a vulnerable and pathetic side, but later, it still turned into an emotionless butcher. If only you could hold on to a bit of your original intention, perhaps the outcome would have been different. In the end, you, this angel who entered the darkness, still couldn't purify the darkness shrouding the world. Instead, fell into corruption and despair from then on, became a pitiful devil. The scene continues to play. Escaped the police chase several times. Saved the Casa Group from losing tens of millions. Gradually became the second in command at the Casa Group in the building. But just at this moment, a beautiful figure appeared. Disrupted all your plans. Just one glance. And you felt your heart start to race. You've clearly undergone the most rigorous training. And know how to control your emotions. But when he barged into your world like that, you were as clueless as a child. In the end, you could only disguise yourself with coldness and distance. At this moment, Loyao is troubled by a group of rich kids. But when he saw you beside him, his eyes lit up and he reached for your hand, hand close to your ear. This gentleman is paying his respects. Please help I by get rid of them. He stayed on your arm. Sorry, I already have a boyfriend. Looking at someone motionless, the green-haired man was skeptical. And at this moment, I saw Loyao gritting her teeth. Like a dragonfly touching the water, it kissed your face. Seeing the departure of the pursuer, Loyao quickly opened her lips from your face. Shy like a quail. This concert both felt very long. You returned to the nest, rinsed with a large basin of ice water, effortlessly calmed down the rapidly beating heart. You understand. From the moment I became an ashy figure, I don't deserve to talk about feelings anymore because emotions can't survive in the darkness. But fate has brought you together again on the path in the park's shade. Liao quickly runs towards you. Save me. Someone is chasing me. She grabs your arm, clings to you like a little bird. You warn with a thug swinging fist. After they left Loyao's origin, the whole county town seems to have become very small. You and him always coincidentally meet. You don't know that each coincidence is the result of his meticulous planning. Time slowly passes. Your feelings grow day by day. Out of control. Finally, one day, encouraged by friends, he found him with a bouquet of roses, abandoning the reserved and dignified demeanor that a girl should have. With the most sincere, most passionate, the wildest emotions facing you, listen to me, I love you. Your icy heart quickly melts as if facing the scorching sun. The tenderness in your eyes is enough to melt everything. But then you remembered your own identity. I'm sorry, my life doesn't deserve to have emotions. Following me, you won't have happiness. Layo stood still. Tears uncontrollably swirled in her eyes. He shouted at your back. I know you also like me in your heart. Why can't your life have emotions? Follow you. Even if it means death, I'm willing. Your body suddenly stiffened. But I can't say a word. Silly girl. But I'm a gray person. I'm a gray person now. Leo shouts at your back again. You wait. One day you will be my son's father. I want to give you happiness personally. I don't trust anyone else. This time you disappeared for over a month. Until one day Leo, drunk, found where you live. I held you tightly. Tears fell uncontrollably. I don't know what you're carrying. It makes it hard for you to accept our relationship. I admit it. I admit it. I don't want anything. But can you give me a little thought? Just one thought? After this time, I will leave you completely. You hold back your emotions and want to push away Laya. I didn't drink too much. Don't push me away. If you push me away tonight, I guarantee you will never see me in this world. La Yao's eyes are filled with determination, staring at you fiercely. This night is the first time you truly fell asleep after becoming a member. 
The next day when you wake up, other than a pool of blood on the bed, La Yao's figure has already disappeared. You suddenly ran out like crazy. You've searched every familiar place, but none of them have made you realize that you have lost yourself completely. The only person you've ever let down in your life is this girl who looks at you with adoration. You've lost her twice. The first time is now, and the second time is when you handed the knife into his chest yourself. In the following year, you used the excuse of opening up a channel for CASA to bloodily wipe out countless vicious drug dens in the entire building. This year, the entire building's gray area was almost dyed red with blood. It was also this year that your notoriety began to spread in Dasha. The Dasha police dispatched countless manpower and resources to hunt you down. They listed you as the highest level of wanted criminal. The media's frenzied reports portrayed you as a cold-blooded demon who kills without blinking an eye especially in one surveillance footage when you left after killing 13 people. The accidental smile captured by the camera sent shivers down everyone's spine. Now, those off-screen finally understand the truth of the past. All these killed people were members of a drug trafficking group, and they have all hunted and killed people from Dasha or Dasha police officers. That year, you turned into a demon. Numbing yourself with slaughter and alcohol, Laya never appeared again that year, as if she had completely disappeared from this world. But on that day, when you came home, you saw Lo Yao at the door, and the child in Lo Yao's arms. The two of them just looked at each other without saying a word. In the end, Lo Yao was the first to break the silence. Come and see, this is your child. Even when your hand is held at gunpoint, you never flinch. But at this moment, your hand can't stop shaking. You're afraid that you might accidentally hurt the little life in your arms. Your face is filled with panic and caution, just holding onto the little life in your arms, not daring to make the slightest movement. For the first time, your dark eyes slowly lit up. After that night, Lyal left the scene. Originally, according to his promise, he wouldn't disturb you again after that night. She would obediently leave your side. But a month later, she found out she was pregnant. To avoid being discovered by her father and family, she left for a distant place alone. Ten months of pregnancy. Then the first child was born. And this child is Chen Sisi. Look up. Looking at Laya with tears on your face, a hoarse voice sounded. I regret it. I want to be with you. No matter what the outcome is in the future. Die without regrets. The days to come seem to be the days you should live. Every time the outside matters are settled, you are like a cocoon leaving the string, and the heart is the warm home. Leia looked at the man in front of her, full of herself and her daughter. The happiness in his eyes overflowed like water. If time could stop, how wonderful it would be to let time stay forever in this moment. How lucky you and Laya are now. How tragic the ending turned out to be. When Shen Sisi was just over a year old, your superior from the intelligence bureau wants to meet you. You know this means there's a new mission. But you hesitated. On one side is the national interest. On the other side is your lifelong love. It's really hard to choose. But by the evening, you still came to the agreed location. Your performance over the past year has been excellent. Although the drug trafficking channels in the city are almost monopolized by the CASA group now. A large amount of drugs is flowing into Dasha, but based on your intelligence, we have also taken down many drug dens, making our work much easier. In addition, we have lost contact with the informant we placed in the Chakai group. We suspect they have already been sacrificed. But according to the previous information sent back, the Chakai group has also begun to enter the market in Dasha. By then, they will definitely cooperate with the Kasa group. What has been sacrificed? You raised your head to brush off. Eyes turned bright red. You vaguely remember all the brilliant people who entered the Chakai line. They are the same batch of gray people as you. Named Sun Jun. Just before your final assessment. The night before officially becoming a brilliant person. You gathered together. The most memorable thing Sun Jun said to you was. How many of us go? That's how many should come back. If there's one person who can't come back, then it must be me. And now, Sun Jun became the first brilliant person in your group to sacrifice. We want to leverage your position in the CASA group. To make contact with the T-Wealth group. To obtain more information. By the way, check the news of the person on that line. Okay, you nod with red eyes. Sun Jun's death. I will definitely get to the bottom of this. My comrades won't have sacrificed in vain. Just as the middle-aged man was about to leave, you suddenly called out to stop him. The middle-aged man stopped in his tracks, looked at you in confusion. What's wrong? Nothing. It's nothing. I will definitely work hard to complete the mission. After the middle-aged man leaves, you slapped yourself hard in the face. Chun Fong, do you know how much blood of your comrades was shed for this line? You actually have thoughts of retreat? Have you forgotten your initial oath? You are just a coward. You are a waste. After going back, you started using the identity of the 6th master of the Kasa group to contact the T-group. 
Ha ha, here comes the sixth master. Let's raise a glass to the first step of our successful plan. Let's raise a glass to you, the biggest contributor. A middle-aged man with a Thai accent holding a glass of red wine looks at you. You, however, gave him a cold glance. No movement. Still drinking on your own. Because Sun Jun's death is related to the person in front of you. After your investigation during this period, it is true that the person on that line of the T-group has encountered trouble. Including Sun Jun, all three gray men have been exposed. And then die miserably. What's your attitude? Are you looking down on Lord Ho? Among the people attending the banquet together, several of Black Monkey's men saw Black Monkey Haggard immediately jumped out. If you don't want your hand, then you can continue to point at Lord Six. The voice fell. Four pairs of cold eyes simultaneously looked at Black Monkey and others. Those eyes are full of contempt for life. These four are the most poisonous and vicious under your command, but they are absolutely loyal to you. Ha ha ha. We are all family. No need to be so stiff. Lao Six, Lord Ho is our partner. How can you treat Lord Ho like this? Lord Ho, Lao Six's temper has always been like this. Don't even mention you, even I, and a few older brothers above us. They also have a sour face. Don't bother with him. It's okay. To put it in their jokes, Lao Six is just being himself. Ha ha ha, let's have a drink in two hours. Hey Ho left with his men. Only Lord Wu and you are left in the banquet. And a few relatives. Lao Six, what's wrong with you today? Even though Hei Ho is only the second in command within Disya, but the famous saying goes flaws will be exposed. Although we're not afraid of him but it's unnecessary to provoke such trouble for no reason. You didn't look up. Only a cold voice came out. Woo, we've worked hard to eliminate the majority of the drug trafficking groups. Why do they get away with doing nothing while we're under scrutiny? They want a share of our efforts. And you really haven't noticed the tricks Black Monkey and his crew are up to? Wu's face turned serious. His brows furrowed tightly. After a long time, he raised his head. We don't need to worry about this matter for now. Big Brother naturally has his plans. Tell the brothers to be a bit more careful so they won't be deceived by the dark side. After the overall situation is settled, we will settle the accounts later. Not much longer. You also bid farewell and leave. Outside the villa, you stop in your tracks. Turn slightly and look at the four great demons behind you. You can go back. It's been tense recently. It's the boss. By the way, regarding the surveillance of Haihu and Wu Ye, don't let them have any unusual movements. Contact me immediately. One day, your subordinate sent you an important message. The boss just received important news. The Kasa group and the Chakai group have decided to jointly transport 10 tons of drugs into Dasha tonight. If these 10 tons of drugs flow into Dasha, the harm it brings will be extremely terrifying. You pondered for another 3 seconds. You chose to submit the report. After receiving the report, the top bureau of DCA Drug Enforcement was shocked. Is this news confirmed to be true? Absolutely true. This is the report provided by our best undercover agent within the CASA group at the risk of their life. Absolutely no problem. Okay. The head of the top bureau of DCA Drug Enforcement nodded heavily quickly assembled nearly 200 excellent anti-drug police, started to make elaborate arrangements and deployments, just waiting for this batch of astonishing drugs to enter Dixia, to capture them all at once. This time, led by the best police officer of Dixia, Ding Hui, personally, and Ding Hui is the instructor who trained you all. At night, countless mosquitoes attacking, but Ding Hui and the others remain still. Time passes second by second. After a long time, dim lights start to shine. Ding Hui's eyes light up, signaling everyone to stay alert. As time passes, they finally see the faint lights in the distance. They are dim yellow flashlights, and the figures carrying these flashlights on their backs. Every other person, they are pulling a small wooden cart behind them. It seems to be carrying a lot of things in their hands. Besides the flashlights, there are also Bing 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 AK. Don't act hastily. Wait until they get closer. Try not to let anyone escape. When all the drug traffickers stepped within 50 meters, Ding Huey's eyes lit up. He suddenly took action. We are from the Dasha police force. You have been surrounded by us. Surrender. Bang bang bang. The drug traffickers responded with bullets. Return fire. Any dangerous individual with a weapon can be shot on sight. The next moment. Under intense firepower suppression. The drug traffickers fell to the ground one by one. Dead. Ten minutes later. Except for a few who surrendered on their knees. All the other drug traffickers are dead. Ding Huey's face lit up with joy. He led the team to surround the scene. Comprehensive inspection and weighing. Determine the amount of drugs seized this time. One by one. The police officers stepped forward. 
forward. Pull open the cloth on the small cart. Pull the cloth open. Their faces suddenly changed. The captain is not right. The things on these carts are not drugs. Ding Hui hears shouting. He quickly walks over. After checking, his face also became extremely ugly. Where exactly is the problem? And at this moment, three glaring headlights suddenly light up, enveloping Ding Hui and the others. Everyone instinctively closes their eyes. Not good. There's an ambush, but it's already too late. The next moment, the anti-drug police and the armed police in the field fell like moanweed, one after another. There were even grenades. Heavy weapons like rocket launchers kept flying out. Those bullet chains, like fire snakes. They were actually fired from heavy machine guns. The deep, booming sound rang out. The people who were shot were instantly blown to pieces. Command center. Command center. We've been ambushed. The intelligence is flawed. Ding Hui is hit. He fell to the ground. At this moment, Lin Chang and others from the Dasha Central Bureau stood up abruptly. He called Ding Hui's name three times in a row. But apart from the sound of gunfire and explosions inside, nothing major had gone wrong. Quickly mobilize all nearby police forces to the border and request support from the nearby military district. And just at this moment, suddenly, a burst of noise came from the earpiece. Lin Cheng quickly picked up the earpiece. Ding Hui. But the voice coming from the other end wasn't Ding Hui's. Stop shouting. Ding Hui didn't die. I won't let him die so easily. You are a high-ranking official of Dasha, right? This is the surprise we have for you this time. Hope you like it. By the way, send someone to collect their bodies soon. Otherwise, it won't be good if they are taken away by some wild animal at night. Who are you? Coldly spoke in the early morning. I am whoever you think I am in your heart. Looking forward to seeing you next time. Take away the ones who are still alive. I'm going to have a good time. So far, there's no more sound in the earpiece. Until over an hour later, the police and the army called in nearby finally arrived at the scene. When the big screen broadcasted the photos of the scene, everyone also widened their eyes. Pale faces, full of sorrow in their hearts. On the big screen, the anti-drug police lay quietly on the cold ground one by one. Underneath them, the ground had been dyed red with blood. Everyone on the jury looked ten times uglier when they saw the scene. Their tears couldn't help but flow. So many people died like this. Many of them are just young men in their 20s. They set off with smiles on their faces. Now they have turned into cold bodies. Chen Feng has indeed betrayed at this time. He has completely sunk into the dark screen. The scene continues. Lin Chen turns his head. His eyes, bloodshot. Look at the head of the Hui people, Ouyang Chen. You have to explain all this to me. You have to account for the deaths of over a hundred young people. The head of the Hui people, with a pale face. His eyes are full of dullness and disbelief. Impossible. Our intelligence cannot be wrong. The intelligence cannot be wrong. So you mean your Hui people have a problem? At the scene, a senior police inspector with three flowers on his shoulder couldn't help but roar. Because one of the people just sent on the mission is his child. Among the over 100 dead officers, there is a cold, lifeless body. It's his child. What do you mean? Our Hui people undergo the most rigorous training. Even in death, they will not betray the motherland. The leader of the gray man has red eyes. How do you explain this operation? This operation is clearly a trap. It's a trap set for me and the drug enforcement officers. Anyone with discerning eyes can see there is a big problem here. Yet here you are, cunningly defending that likely traitor who may have betrayed the motherland. The others didn't speak. But looking at the leader, the leader's gaze turned extremely cold. The tragic deaths of numerous officers this time. The gray men must take the greatest responsibility. Watching the situation becoming increasingly out of control. Lin Chen finally stepped forward, his eyes, red with anger, stared at the gray men leader, Lao Chen. In fact, I also choose to believe in you. I also believe that your gray men soldiers are just in that kind of environment. If Jin Gu is not really the most determined, then there is a possibility of being corrupted by evil. There is already a big problem now. The tragic deaths of more than 100 anti-drug police and armed police must be accounted for. There have been precedents of gray men betrayal before. Go and investigate. Otherwise, these 100 or so innocent souls cannot rest in peace. Are you sure you want to do this? They have already given up all light, leading themselves into darkness alone. The whole world no longer believes in them. If even we don't believe them, how desperate they must be. What you're doing will break their hearts. In a courtyard in a suburban area, a family of three sitting in front of the TV turned on the TV with the remote control. As soon as the TV turned on, the content inside instantly blows your mind. According to reports, around 3.40 a.m. on July 21st, nearly 172 anti-drug police from my building were in a confrontation at the border between Wadian and Dasha, fighting with a gang of extremely vicious drug traffickers. Unfortunately, this is a trap set by the enemy. Unfortunately, 172 female anti-drug police from Dasha sacrificed their lives. Some
some of our comrades are missing, cried while reaching out to touch your tears without speaking, handing Chen Cici to Leia. Yeah, then turned around and left without looking back. Mom and Dad, do you not want me anymore? Liao comforting Chen Cici, while looking at your departing back, eyes full of worry. Suddenly, he retched violently. The feeling of nausea in his heart grew stronger and stronger. Half an hour later, he held a suspicion with two red lines gathered. He is pregnant again. He and you have a new life. He is ecstatic. Fan Gu. I raised his head. I can't wait to share this moment of joy with you. But his smile froze on his face. Only then did he remember that you had already left. What's going on? How did they fall into an ambush? How did they all die? Under a certain overpass. You looked at the contact person in a daze. The contact person looked at you with a complex expression. Then turned away. I don't know either. They said the intelligence was faulty. But this complex look made your nerves tense as if stimulated. You suspect me too. You also suspect that I betrayed the country. Even you suspect me. You roared in your breakdown. You're not afraid of the darkness's embrace. Because you always hold on to your own light in your heart. But you're afraid that one day no one will believe in you anymore. Afraid that one day no one in the world will know who you are. Afraid that the glimmer of light in your heart will eventually be unable to resist the invasion of darkness. I didn't doubt you. If I doubted you, would I still come to see you? You calm down. You couldn't help but sit down weakly against the wall. Your eyes tell me. You doubt me. How could you doubt me? Oh Yang Chen. Even if the whole world doubts me, you can't doubt me either. I, Oh Yang Chen, never doubted you. Over a hundred people have died. Many of them were your classmates at Jingda. They were your brothers. They were your comrades. But now they've all turned into cold, lifeless bodies. Even the instructor Ding Wei has become a victim, and several police officers who didn't die are also missing, neither dead nor alive. We need to give them an explanation. The contact person saw the pain in your eyes. He couldn't help but tear up. The people in the jury box saw you crying in pain and losing your memory. Could it be that Chun Fong really didn't betray the country? A dignified man, facing swords and spears, didn't even groan. But now countless people doubt and accuse. It really made such a tough guy cry so miserably. Even us, the later bystanders, felt that he betrayed the country. Just imagine, at that time, probably no one really believed them in the whole incident. For a long time, you barely managed to control your emotions. It's just that your calm face is terrifying. I will tell them what they need to know. I will investigate the matter thoroughly. I swear they won't have died in vain. Anyway, this mission failed. I should be the one to take responsibility after completing the country's mission. I'll go down to apologize to them. After speaking, you turn around and leave. Not a trace of nostalgia. Half an hour later, the Khazar groups nest in Dashia. Ha ha ha. This time, more than a hundred anti-drug police were killed. I'm afraid we'll have to break through the big summer network. But this is also a warning and a bloody lesson for Dashia. But this is the result of what we've done. You just walked outside the den and heard loud laughter coming from inside. Inside the hall, the fifth master of the Casa group and the black monkey of the Tigas group are toasting and exchanging cups, obviously in a very good mood. When he saw you, the fifth master was stunned for a moment, then burst into laughter. He poured a glass of wine and handed it to Old Six. The news that came is perfect. Great news. You took the wine and drank it all in one go. You still don't know what the good news is. Our second plan for cooperating with the Tigas group this time is to transport 200 tons of goods first. But we never expected to have a mole within us passing information to the Dasha police. But they don't know. Their plans are all within our control. This time, the Cha Kai group will play their cards right. They directly killed over a hundred of those despicable Dasha drug enforcement officers. Only that ringleader Ding Hui and a few enemies luckily survived. But they were also taken back by the Cha Kai group. I'm afraid it's living hell for them now. Speaking of which, Wu Yi directly raised his glass and finished it in one go. Hei Ho also had a big smile on his face. Lu Yi, what's wrong with you? You're not happy about this good news? Whether I'm happy or not is none of your business. You poured yourself a drink and finished it in one go again. Ha ha ha. Sixth master is still steady. Who is the mole you are talking about? You suddenly spoke up. I don't know either. It's all from what the general said. But these bastards are really persistent. We just killed a mole named Sun Ju not long ago. Now another one has popped up. Wait until we confirm who it is. I'll kill him myself. Sure enough. Sun Jun has already sacrificed. The killing intent in your heart is boiling. So who did your Shigai group make a move this time? You don't know that second brother, God, was trained by the general since he was a child. He started killing at the age of 8. At the age of 20, 
he took the position of the group's second brother. And second brother has a particularly cruel hobby. That is, studying the ancient brutal laws of your dasha. Any enemy who falls into his hands will not end well. By the way, your Khazar group's fourth brother Rat also consulted our second brother about this skill. Black Monkey's face is full of excitement. Khazar group's number four, the sneaky, short middle-aged man who initially watched you kill Wang Bin. You didn't continue listening, turned around and left. Black Monkey and fifth brother glanced at each other and didn't say anything. They are used to your strange behavior a long time ago. After all, talented people. Who doesn't have some quirks? God, you dare to touch Instructor Ding and the others. I will make sure you die with your eyes open. Half an hour later, you come back home, watching Chen Cici as if she wants to rush into her own embrace, and afraid of her angry look, your heart can't help but ache. This child is only over two years old, sensible enough to make people feel sorry for you, countless guilt and indebtedness in your heart. For more than these two years, you can count the times you've come home on one hand, the duty of being a father. You have no energy at all, but the daughter is still so obedient. After dinner, you you and Laya clean up the dishes and chopsticks. In the kitchen, you look at Laya. Laya also looks at you, and maybe we both speak at the same time. You go first. Laya couldn't help but smile. I might have to go away for a while. Laya's smile slowly fades. I don't know how long I'll be gone. The kitchen is filled with silence. Go ahead. Be careful. For a long time, Laya suddenly speaks. You nod. It's your turn. It's nothing. You were about to say something. Just wanted you to go home and spend more time with the kids. She really misses you. Loya lowers her head. You were going to tell yourself about the pregnancy. She wants to share this joy with you. But now he can't disrupt your heart. You must have very important things to do. And just after you left not long ago, a piece of news is spreading like wildfire in Dasha. The whole of Dasha is once again engulfed in a sorrowful atmosphere. According to a Dasha news report, Ding Hui and seven other outstanding anti-drug officers from Dasha are currently captured by drug traffickers. They bravely sacrificed themselves after being cruelly tortured by the drug traffickers. All Daxians should never forget. On this day, eight more outstanding anti-drug officers have left us forever. After this news spread, the whole of Dasha is filled with sorrow. The sky over Dasha is shrouded in sorrowful dark clouds. On this day, in a deserted suburb, you kneel on the ground in grief, holding your phone, and cry out to the sky. At this moment, the pain in your heart is beyond words. You crazily banged your head against the ground. At this moment, only the physical pain can alleviate the sorrow in your heart. Blood feud. God. Everyone from the Cha Kai group must die. Everyone involved in this matter must die. Instructor. You watch. I will personally carry their heads and offer them at your grave. You murmuring, slowly disappearing into the darkness. Your memories are still playing on the screen, still under the overpass. Don't be impulsive. Now the Cha Kai group's power is very strong. That god is even more cruel. You are alone and weak. It's simply impossible to be an opponent. The Great Summer Police are now also targeting the leaders of the Tigas and Casa groups for arrest. And you are one of the key targets. What you are facing now is not just the Tigas group. You are also facing the Great Summer Police hunting you down. Too many sacrifices have been made. You must not have any accidents. The contact person is watching you. The face is full of solemnity. But the instructor's remains must always be brought back. At least they should rest in the land of my great summer. You can rest assured. I know what I'm doing. I ask you not to stop me. Otherwise, my conscience will be troubled. You lower your head. The tone is very calm, but it's unusually firm. Their remains must be brought back. You left alone. Do you still remember the promises we made when we parted ways? Take him home. If the mission is completed successfully, then wait for him to come home. If there's a problem with the mission, then go home in his place. If he sacrifices himself, then please take him home. Everyone on the jury is looking incredulously in the direction you disappeared. He actually dared to break into the tea company alone. That's like entering a tiger's den. Mom, is he really? a devil? But why does he still want to save dad's remains? The woman holds her daughter and stares at the screen. Chen Fong actually broke into the tea company alone for Ding Hui's remains. He thought it was the Dasha police. But in the end, the rich man still shook his head firmly. Daughter, the crime he committed is a heinous crime. Actually, he is still okay now. But it also cannot conceal the crimes he later committed to become a demon. Departing from the border. You chose not to go, specially drilling through various hidden forests. When hungry, eat wild fruits. When thirsty, drink spring water. Half a month later, you finally found the god's lair in the golden triangle. The background in the video of god torturing Ding Hui and others is also this villa. Instructor, brothers, wait for me to take you home. After two days of observation, the third, you acted tonight, evading the patrol time after time. Finally arrived at the backyard of God's villa, but as soon as I looked up, your tears poured.
out, biting down hard on my arm. In front, eight long bamboo poles hung with eight objects, bloody and round like balls. At this moment, in front of the screen, Ding Hui's wife trembled like a sieve, clinging tightly to her daughter's eyes. Mom, please, I just want to see him one more time. I knew he was gone a long time ago, but I can still feel he's just found another place to keep loving me. That's right, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid anymore. The one who usually worried and dared not walk at night. Watching this bloody scene right now, in my heart, there is only grief and longing. The scene on the screen continues. You hid the bodies of the instructor and others in the cave. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was my mistake this time that caused you to die tragically. You can rest assured. I will definitely bring the head of God to mourn you as you slowly depart. Chen Feng, what are you going back to do? Where are you going? You have already found their bones. Take them back. Don't go looking for God. You are going to your death. You are going to your death alone. You can't hear their cries. It's just a memory of what has already happened. You are clearly still lying in the judgment machine, undergoing judgment. But they couldn't help but shout. Because the you on the screen is worth blinking for. Half a month has passed. The terrifying silence in the God's villa at this time. Bodies falling to the ground one by one. The others in the villa all lowered their heads. Have they not found out yet? What are you guys doing? doing. Several dead people can't even watch over the waist. Another shot at the waist. Another body falls into the pool of blood. Drag these waists out. All of you, get out of here. This useless bunch actually lost all of their beloved toys. Those eight bodies are even more precious than antiques. But just at this moment, God only felt a pain in the back of his head. Everything went black. And then I lost consciousness. When I opened my eyes again, I found that my hands and legs were bound. There was a man standing in front of me with his back turned. He was repeatedly heating a knife over the fire. Who are you? What do you want? How much money do you want? I'll give you everything. Who am I? You murmured. For a moment, a hint of confusion flashed in your eyes. I am the demon lurking in the darkness. I am the lamb that cannot be redeemed. You turned to look behind the cave. Instructor, you all look at me closely. I've avenged you. And at that moment, God also discovered the bodies of Ding Hui and the others. In an instant, he suddenly realized. So you're from Dasha. Please don't kill me. I'll give you anything you want. I have 5 billion US dollars in a Swiss bank. I'll give you everything. As long as you spare me, I'll tell you everything. There's a smile in God's eyes. So much money is within your reach now. As long as you have this much money, the world is so big. Where can't you go? You need to think about it. What's good about being a narcotics officer? Perhaps even giving your life. No one sees everything you do. Perhaps your deaths will only bring a moment of sadness to the entire building. In this entertainment to death era, as long as a scandal involving an actor emerges, it won't take long. You will soon disappear from the internet. No one remembers that someone once sacrificed in the darkness. You stay in this world. The only mark is the nameless tombstone. I have also been paying attention to you, heroes. Didn't some fans of the Dasha stars say some time ago, if their Appa brothers don't do drugs, then where do the drug dealers come from? Where do the people who give you drug enforcement salaries come from? Do you think these Dasha people are worth your efforts? And now, just nod your head, and you will receive $5 billion. Become the top people in the world in a month. With money, you have everything, and you can give the people you love and who love you a better life. How is it? You look into the eyes of God, full of mockery. What are you laughing at? God asked me in confusion. What are you laughing at? I'm laughing at your foolishness. I'm laughing at your futile struggle before death. You, a person from Wadian, dare to speak arrogantly. Do you really think you can understand Dasha? No, you don't understand my grand Dasha. For 5,000 years, you can't understand even a fraction of it in your entire life. Indeed, you're right. Indeed, there are some people in Dasha with distorted values. There are also some people whose words are chilling, but you didn't see. Beneath their statements, there are countless Dasha people's rebuttals. There are countless intense debates among the people of Dasha. You didn't see that it's just a small group of people with twisted values, even though he has the support of millions of fans. But I, along with billions of people in Dasha, the remaining billions are desperately defending us, speaking for us. You didn't see the day when countless people spontaneously flooded the streets with white chrysanthemums and white wax to express remembrance and mourning for the sacrificed souls. They know that in this world, there is no such thing as time. Peaceful. It's just that someone is carrying the burden for them to move forward. You didn't see any of this. But I saw it. My comrade saw it too. And it's because of this that we are willing to stand in the darkness to protect the light for them, even at the cost of our lives. Your words fall. 
God is directly dumbfounded. He doesn't understand why you're under such great temptation. In this kind of heartbreaking and even chilling situation, still chose Dasha firmly. He won't understand. The civilization of Dasha has been left in the smoke and waves for 5,000 years. As vast as the universe, they don't have such cultural heritage and spiritual support. They will never understand you continuing to speak with a smile. Don't even mention a few billion. Even if you put all the money in the world in front of me, I would still not bother. The motherland I can sacrifice my life to protect cannot be measured by money. So take your money to hell and repent. You hold a blood red dagger, slowly approaching the god. I surrender. I surrender. Now I am your prisoner of Dicia. You must treat the prisoners well. You cannot kill me. You cannot kill me. You can only judge me by the laws of Dicia. It's illegal to misuse the death penalty. God shouts wildly, as long as he doesn't die now. Then the T-Wealth group, upon receiving the news, will definitely send someone to save him. This time you didn't pay attention to God's shouting. This time the torture lasted for a whole day. Brother instructor. Brothers. I've avenged you. Did you see it? Then you turned and walked towards the direction of God's lair again. What is Chen Feng doing? He didn't kill God. They avenged instructor Ding, didn't they? We have to go back. At this moment, countless people couldn't help but call out. Uncle. Come back. Ding Ling doesn't hate you anymore. It was Ding Ling who was wrong before. I beg you. I just want you to live well now. At this moment, Ding Hui's wife is in tears. Chun Fong, I've hated you for over 10 years, but now I know I was wrong. Ding Hui's death is not your fault. Not blaming you. Bring them back. Later, you've arrived at the drug planting base run by God, and a fire burned it all down. You stand in the darkness, lit up by the soaring flames. The soaring fire instantly caught the attention of the patrol. Just as you were about to leave, suddenly a child with a weapon spotted you. Here's another one. The culprit is here. As children, they should be innocent. But at this moment, their eyes are full of ferocity and malice. You hesitated for a moment, then shot them one by one. Then you ran into the forest. Was Chen Feng a bit excessive? After all, they were just children. The moment they charged at Chen Fan with weapons. What's wrong with Dust Feng killing an enemy? The people living here, none of them are innocent. You might think they are pitiful, but have you ever thought? The drugs they produce flow into the big shrimp, causing the deaths of countless people. What do you think again? The position Dust Feng is in is already full of threats. If he dares to be a little soft-hearted, maybe he would be the one who dies. Killing all the enemies is the best way to survive. How could he be excessive? On the screen, you constantly encounter enemies holding cold weapons along the way. The armed forces behind are even in hot pursuit. The moment when they see you successfully escape into the darkness, everyone breathed a sigh of relief. The flames rise behind. That is the light you seek in your heart. But at this moment, you can only escape by plunging into darkness. The scene continues. This is a graveyard. Gravestones stand one after another. But what's strange is, there are no names of the deceased on the tombstones, nor any brief biography. The only embellishment is the bright red flag pattern dyed with vivid blood. Instructor. Brothers, you can close your eyes now. Do you still remember Ding Hui's heroic face? Do you still remember the iron-blooded and resolute young men with red eyes when they parted ways? He once said, when everyone's missions are completed, everyone will gather again. As many who go out, as many should come back. Some people in this world are glamorous and dazzling. Some people are buried in the yellow soil. There is a profession that contains all the elements of a hidden thriller. They run through the mountains and seas of fire every day. After a long time, wipe away your tears. Stand up. Stand like a most standard soldier in front of the Baglin tomb. A few days later, a piece of news shocked the entire Dasha. The nest of the second in command of the Chakai group was destroyed. Hundreds of acres of private fields were burned down by a big fire. Even the bodies of Ding Hui and the other seven were found buried in their graves. In front of the graves of the eight, the body of God's atonement was even more mysteriously found. The entire building boiled in an instant. Everyone cheered. They are all speculating. It must be the Dasha police who took action. Only one person knows who did this. Sealed in dust. You kid. You are indeed the most elite member under Ding Wei. You did not disappoint us. You, who disappeared for months, finally returned to the lair of the Caesar group. Everyone around Master Lu immediately showed respect, eyes full of enthusiasm. You've done well these days. Has anything big happened during this time? No boss. It's just that Master Wu has looked for you several times, said if you come back, go see him right away. Okay, you guys go down and rest first. In the parking lot, where do you think Master Lu has been these past few months? This is not something we should be concerned about, although Lao Lu is usually cold and unfeeling.
feeling, but deep down he is a man of loyalty and righteousness. As long as we do our job well, Lao Lu won't treat us unfairly. I can feel it too. Lao Lu is very ambitious. He won't be satisfied with just being Lao Lu. Making us monitor Wu Yi is the best example. Although we are now known as the four great evils under Lao Lu, we have a fearsome reputation, but we still won't be. But if Lao Lu can become a pillar of the Caesar group, and we, as the four major brothers under Lao Lu, might also make it big. As soon as you arrived at the villa, you saw the Caesar group. Lao Wu slammed the table hard. His face turned ashen. And at this moment, he also saw Lao Lu. You finally came. Caesar Lao Wu had blood on his face. Hastily greeted him. Brother Wu. You, pretending to look puzzled at Caesar Lao 5. Lao Lu. What you said was indeed correct. The T-Wealth group really started to make trouble. The first batch of goods we transported together had problems. The recent high-profile case involving the T-Wealth group, I believe you also saw it. That boss is just a fool. For no reason, they had to go and massacre those anti-drug police. Originally, this has nothing to do with us. But the disgusting part is here. T wealth. The group actually used this as a reason. Said that batch of goods are all stored in God's lair. I wish I had listened to you from the beginning. Got rid of the black monkey. Then we can take over their market share in the building. How could there be so many troubles now? You still woke up with a calm face. Brother 5. Since everything has already happened, it's no use being angry now. What did big brother say? The boss is also very angry. But now the building's attitude is so tough. We still can't figure out the suspicious group temporarily. We must make them fall in front. By the way, Caesar, Brother 5 looks at you. A few days later is Big Brother's 60th birthday. Don't go back today. Rest well here with me. Let's set off together tomorrow to stop Big Brother. You hesitated for a moment. The figures of Layo and Chensisai kept appearing in my mind. That intense longing almost devours you. But you know you can't miss Caesar's birthday. I'm sorry, Laya. Sorry, daughter. On the other side, Chen Sisi is sitting in the yard, shaking a little. Close your eyes immediately, continuously staring at the direction of the street corner outside the gate. Since you left, this is what he does most every day. When will mom and dad come back? I miss dad. Liao hesitated for a moment, then forced a smile. It's almost ready. It's almost ready. Dad will be back soon. Cece, come and eat. Cece comes to the table. She eats with big bites. Never mind. How many times has Cece told you? Eat slowly, slowly. Don't choke. Chen Cece lifts her head. Her eyes are full of anticipation. I don't. Dad used to praise me for eating very, so I always eat deliciously. When will dad be back? Seeing Cece is still so great. He will come to see Cece often, then he won't dislike Cece. Loya was slightly stunned. Xuanji's eyes immediately turned red. He originally thought his daughter was eating so fast because she was very hungry or out of habit. He didn't expect that his daughter just wanted her dad not to dislike them, to come and see them more often. Dad doesn't dislike Cece. You know, you've always been the best in dad's heart. But why hasn't dad come to see Cece for so long? Cece really misses dad. I dreamed of dad again last night. Shaunan next door laughed at Cece again yesterday. Said Cece is a powerful child without a dad. Almost there, almost there. Dad will be back soon. Liao tenderly stroked Chen Cece's head, the other hand caressing her five-month belly. Her eyes are also full of longing. At this moment, Chen Cece stared at the screen full of malicious intent, eyes filled with tears. When her own mother was about to give birth after ten months of pregnancy, how he wished this demon was by his mother's side. To be able to say a few words of encouragement to him in his most painful moments, because he knew that every word of his could be his mother's greatest source of strength. But until the moment his mother had a difficult delivery, he never Never showed up. She never showed up. The screen image continues. You and Caesar Old Five enter the villa hall. A sinister voice then sounded from the side. Old Five. Old Six. You guys are really busy. It's the last day of Big Brother's birthday celebration. You two just came back. There was a sinister and mocking look in Sire C's eyes. This thing that could have been easily crushed a few years ago. Today I can actually sit on an equal footing with myself. Fourth Brother. Don't be angry. Actually, we wanted to come earlier. But you also know the current situation in Dasha. The day before we came back, both Sixth Brother and I are still fighting to occupy the Dasha market. We are really thinking for the sake of the group. Otherwise, we would have arrived earlier too. Oof, you mean Second Brother third brother, and I could have come back a few days earlier. 
it's because we are all useless. We didn't open up the market for the group. We're just making a living. It's not fourth brother. What else do you, Caesar, want to say? And just at this moment, you raised your hand to stop Caesar fifth. If you have a problem with me, just say it. I used such a roundabout way to come up with an idea. I got it. Fourth brother was stunned for a moment. The dust wind's face became even more gloomy. You're too arrogant. Do you really think I dare not touch you? Your face is full of violent thoughts. The terrifying aura instantly filled the air. Chun Fong, you really are lawless. You're not putting the big brother in your eyes. You're not putting us, the elders, in your eyes. Big brother, you, your attitude is really too arrogant. You're really laughing so smugly. I said, it's you who made trouble for Lao Si, right? It's you who framed Lao Wu and Lao Lu, right? Now you're even trying to turn things around. Saying that Lao Wu and Lao Lu don't take us seriously. So you think only you can control others? You can talk about others, but others can't talk about you, right? Lao Wu and Lao Lu's rebuttal of your views is seen as disrespect and lack of fear towards you. You're still shameless at your, your age. See as expression is getting worse. Sangu, this matter has nothing to do with you anymore. Why do you have to stir up trouble again? Furthermore, how many years have I been in the group? How much have I contributed to the group? How long has Chen Feng been in the group? If you don't speak up for me, it's fine. You're even speaking up for this kid against me. You're going too far. Too much. How many years have you been in the group? You've only just taken the position of the fourth master of the group. And how long has Chen Feng been in the group? Let me tell you. You took this position by relying on your seniority. You've relied on your seniority. But Chen Feng fought his way up with his own hands. And now you're just using your seniority to manipulate in front of Lao Lu. Don't you feel any shame? The fourth master's background has been exposed. His face turned red with embarrassment like a monkey's backside, glaring at you angrily. The whole villa instantly became tense. And this is exactly what Caesar wants to see the most. What he dislikes the most is harmony among his subordinates, because this way he can better balance in the middle, to firmly control the huge group in his own hands. All right, they are all brothers. They start arguing as soon as they meet. Constant arguing affects the unity. Fourth brother. You too. The contributions of the fifth and sixth brothers during this time are obvious to all. They are both opening up markets and channels for the group. During these past two years, Caesar Group's turnover in the building has doubled directly. This is all thanks to the fifth and sixth brothers. How can you blame them for a small matter? Big brother, I was wrong. Fourth brother immediately bowed respectfully. His face was full of awkwardness. But third brother is still our own brother. Can you stop being so harsh with your words? Big brother, you're also so wrong. Third master understands. Although they are all prominent figures outside, but in front of Caesar, they are always younger brothers. Please all take your seats. Sixth brother. So I specially brought in some of the world's top Chinese chefs. These dishes are all his craftsmanship. Go ahead and taste how it is. Not bad. This nine curvature intestine is still considered authentic. It's just that the other dishes don't use to xia chili. So the taste is a bit different. Caesar laughs heartily. All right, all right, all right. As long as you like it. Since you like to eat, then I'll give you the chef who specializes in making nine coiled large intestines. Caesar turns his head and waves his hand. Two henchmen press down on a man and walk up. Lao Lu. This is the world famous chef Kai from Dasha. He will be your exclusive chef from now on. You nod and thank him. Thank you, big brother, for dragging the remaining few out to be killed. Can't even make a few authentic Dasha dishes. Damn it. Your face suddenly changes slightly. Just as he was about to speak a word, several gunshots are heard outside. After the screams, it became quiet again. You never expected. Just a few words of their own resulted in the deaths of several compatriots. Off screen, Caesar is really extremely cruel. Just a dish resulted in the deaths of three people. They are treating the lives of our Dasha people as if they are worthless. As if the second day of the Chen Xiuthing evening banquet. Many high-level members of the drug trafficking groups came early to assist Caesar. Everyone is a core figure of the group. To be able to take time out of their busy schedule to attend the banquet. I am extremely grateful. Today, this is the scene. They are all friends of Caesar. Enjoy the food, drinks, and fun. You are receiving the second person of the Luo Xinghan group, Long Ichun. He chuckled. He spoke first. I didn't expect the famous Caesar Six Master. 
The famous Shura in the gray area. Actually, we are both the big bosses. Six Master is really promising. You shook your head with a smile. Long is also polite. In the eyes of the seniors, it's just a minor matter. Okay, okay. Not arrogant or impetuous. He's a person who can achieve great things. You are Chen Feng, Six Master of the Caesar Group, known as the existence of Shura. An arrogant voice interrupted you. You looked expressionless at the Mexican group's fourth person, Madeline, and then looked at the fourth master in the distance. Here comes this troublemaker her again. Didn't you hear General Madeline speaking? Are you deaf? Hear that roar. The whole room was slightly surprised. Everyone cast mocking glances. A smug look flashed in Cersei's eyes. This is the consequence of offending me. It's hard to back down now. Let's see what you do. You numb. What are you barking at? The four big devils beside you stared fiercely at Madeline. But you're still smiling. Your smile is all radiant. What's your name? Madeline's attendant paused for a moment. Then raised their head. The corners of the mouth slightly curved. Rikawa steel plate. Your smile becomes more brilliant. Rikawa steel plate is very good. I remember. This day next year. I will have someone burn paper for you. You move to grab Rikawa steel plate by the neck. Sound of snapping. Under the disbelieving gaze of everyone. You twisted his neck the previous moment as a follower of medlin unruly the next moment he turned into a cold corpse he died with his eyes open dare to kill my people medlin roared like a lion mr medlin your dog at home doesn't listen it snarled at me clearly lacks discipline i just like to help others now this dog doesn't snarl or bark anymore you don't need to thank me okay very good madeline angrily turns to look at caesar mr caesar i came all the way from the silver triangle in mexico to offer you my hand this is your way of hospitality instantly everyone's gaze turns to look at caesar caesar who has been watching the show grins i wonder what mr madeline wants to do a hint of killing intent appears in madeline's eyes he casually killed my follower offending my silver triangle group i want him dead pony a gunshot the ferocity on madeline's face hasn't disappeared yet indeed he has become a corpse dust seal is one of my caesar group's six eyes representing my caesar group you saying you want to kill my caesar group's six eyes is like slapping my face sorry everyone sorry for the scare everyone continue eating and drinking continue the music continue the dance caesar's words fall the atmosphere slowly returns to normal at the scene they start pushing each other again looking at fourth uncle without leaving a trace you know this guy has to die otherwise he will be the biggest obstacle to your mission execution watching you decisively on the screen lost in thought tears flowing uncontrollably were you so decisive when you killed mom back then you are everyone's hero except for me and mom chen cici looked at the decisive and ruthless chen Feng on the screen Although she harbored intense hatred towards Chen Feng, she secretly agreed with his seemingly brutal act of killing a henchman of a drug lord. As a member of the Grey, she was always in danger, facing a life-threatening situation at any moment. Everyone around him, from the leader of the group to its members, was a fierce and unruly thug. Therefore, Chen Feng had to be ruthless, even more so than these dangerous individuals, in order to survive in such an environment. Moreover, although ordinary people might not see it, she could tell that the recent provocation by Madeline was actually another test for Chen Feng by the Kunsa group. If Chen Feng did not respond well, or even caused Kunsa to lose face, his fate might not be good, and it could even be described as tragic. As a dominant figure in the region, Kunsa would never tolerate those around him becoming useless, especially someone like Chen Feng, a well-known leader within the group. Don't look at Chen Feng as the sixth lord of the Kunsar group, the famous Azura, but if Kunsar feels embarrassed, he will definitely not mind adding another skeleton to the backyard's bone pit, Chen Feng. It's so difficult. The banquet quickly reached its climax, and then the guests began to disperse, leaving only the heads of several major groups and several leaders, including Chen Feng, from the Kunsaran group, entering Kunsar's villa. At first, it was just casual conversation, but later, all the servants were dismissed, and women dressed in revealing clothing walked in one by one, like lambs being selected. Then, one by one, the drug dealers took out various tools, and the villa was instantly filled with smoke. The drug dealers all had satisfied expressions on their faces, and in front of Chen Feng, a tool was also placed. One of them took out several bags of something from his bag and threw them to the others. Chen Feng found out it was flour. So everyone in the room started to smoke crazily. Only Chen Feng sat alone in the corner watching, and his behavior also made others suspicious. When the fourth lord of Kunsar saw this scene, a fierce look appeared in his eyes, and he immediately came over to question him. Are you a mole, police? As soon as these words were spoken, the atmosphere instantly became tense. Everyone's eyes were fixed on Chen Feng and Kunsar, like a smiling Buddha, 
also turned his gaze to Chen Feng, old six, as the sixth lord of the Kunsar group, don't tell me you haven't touched. Chen Feng knew in his heart that once his undercover identity was discovered, he would not escape death. He had to take the flower and pretend to use it. Fortunately, he had done his homework before and pondered the details of drug dealers using drugs. Chen Feng's skillful pretense successfully dispelled the other's suspicions. Although he had studied drugs, Chen Feng, who had never smelled this strange smell before, almost couldn't help but vomit. Seeing Chen Feng's actions, Kunsar and the others finally showed satisfied smiles, and by this time, the disgusting smell had disappeared for Chen Feng, and he felt a refreshing sensation, as if he were floating. Seeing this, countless people outside the screen frowned, Chen Feng. He actually started to touch this thing at this time. From this moment on, he is no longer himself. I was wondering how he could change from a hero who was not afraid of sacrifice to a demon. Once he touches this thing, even if he is made of iron, he will be ruined. This thing not only destroys the lives of countless people but also ruins the homes of heroes. It is like a flower of evil that blooms in the world, seducing people with its beautiful appearance. Once someone picks it, it will unleash a destructive disaster. I hope one day there will be no more heroin, methamphetamine, ecstasy. And no more drug dealers, addicts, or drug enforcement officers in this world. From now on, a dose of poison will cut his life in half. The first half is heaven, and the second half is hell. Everyone watching Chin Feng's actions couldn't help but sigh, and at the same time, they vaguely understood why Chin Feng had turned from a hero into a demon. After being eroded, where was there still a hero? Chen Cici stared at Chen Feng, also frowning. As a grey, she should have been a natural enemy of drugs, but at this moment, Chen Feng actually started to touch drugs. Even if it was beyond his control, she was also extremely puzzled. Since Chen Feng had already touched drugs, why were there no records of his experience with these things in his file? After more than half an hour, everyone dispersed, and Chen Feng also endured the pain in his body, got up and left. When he returned to his room, the feeling of exhilaration slowly disappeared, and he began to experience headaches, dizziness, slow breathing, sweating, weakness, and powerlessness, one after another. The side effects began to erode his brain. In a daze, Chen Feng picked up the small knife in his pocket and drew a bloody cross on his leg. He lay on the ground, letting the blood flow, desperately trying to stay awake. After more than an hour, the uncomfortable feeling finally slowly disappeared. Chen Feng was drenched in sweat, slowly sat up, leaning against the wall, his eyes blankly staring through the window at the darkness outside. Woo! Chen Feng couldn't help but cover his face and sob quietly. As a member of the Grey, as an anti-drug police officer, he should have been opposed to drugs, but today, he actually took drugs. His father, those parents, all died for drugs, and countless comrades sacrificed for drugs, still lying in that cold pit, unavenged. But he, Chen Feng, actually took drugs? Mom, Dad. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I took drugs. My comrades. Chen Feng couldn't help but cry, suppressing his voice in the darkroom, weeping bitterly. He knelt on the ground, frantically pounding his head with both hands. When he became a grey, he knew that this day would come sooner or later, but when this moment came, a strong sense of shame filled his heart. This spiritual pain was far more unbearable than physical pain. Watching Chen Feng kneeling and weeping, everyone couldn't help but sigh, from this moment, drugs began to invade his body and take over his life. Like a drop of ink falling on white cloth, if not cleaned in time, it will stain the entire white cloth. Actually, we really shouldn't be too harsh on him. Taking drugs was not his intention, he is also a pitiful person. His self-hatred is no less than ours. Anyone involved in anti-drug work knows the harm of drugs and the terrible consequences, which ordinary people cannot imagine. In this situation, if a police officer actively gets involved in drugs due to work, it's like walking into a powder keg with a torch, clearly intending to perish together. In this environment, he often has to deal with drug trafficking groups. If he doesn't take drugs, Kunsa will surely suspect his identity. He is also helpless. To stay sober, he forcibly used a knife to cut his own body. What determination! A grey, who is diametrically opposed to drugs, perseveres with courage, dedication, and love and belief in anti-drug work, which is unimaginable for ordinary people. But he has to pretend to be more ruthless than drug dealers and addicts, otherwise who would believe him? At this moment, in the memory judgment device, Chen Feng's face showed the fear of the past, the physical and mental pain, and he still has lingering fears. Listening to the blame from some people in the courtroom, his heart was filled with mixed feelings, a sense of bitterness pervaded his heart. If he could live in peace, who would want to live in constant fear and danger? If he could be with his loved ones, who wouldn't want to be with their loved ones? If he could be with his family, who wouldn't want to be a good husband and father? But for the sake of providing a peaceful and healthy environment for more people, they chose another thorny path. They are all flesh and blood, because of love, because of faith, they have been tempered into steel. 
His eyes were filled with a fiery red, like an eternal flame in the abyss, in the bustling crowd, he looked back, and there were always millions of people throwing themselves into the fiery darkness, standing behind him were the mountains, the sea, the homeland, and the unnamed ones lying in the grave. Time passed quickly, and outside the Kunsa group's hideout, the sky was about to dawn, everything was silent, and the air was filled with bone-chilling cold. Xiao Yang tightened his clothes, but a gust of cold wind still managed to slip through the cracks and into his neck. A team of police officers, dressed in bulletproof vests and armed with guns, cautiously advanced into the darkness. Seeing this scene, a middle-aged man in the courtroom couldn't help but get excited, because the person at the front of the team was none other than the commander of this beheading operation, Su Weigua. At the same time, he also had another identity, that of one of Chen Feng's comrades from university. On the screen, Su Jia seemed like a leopard in the dark, leading a team of over a hundred people carefully bypassing the hidden stakes and guards of the Kunsar group, heading straight for the Kunsar group's stronghold. According to the informant's report, this day was the 60th birthday of Kunsar, the drug lord of a generation. All the leaders of the Kunsar group would gather on this day, as well as representatives from the Chachai group and the Golden Triangle, the Luoxinghan group, and even the world-class drug trafficking groups like the Silver Triangle and the Golden Crescent. Upon learning this news, the top officials of Dasha decided to send a beheading team to take down the leaders of the Kunsar group and the representatives sent by the major drug trafficking groups. If the operation was successful, it would not only cause significant losses to the major drug trafficking groups, but also greatly enhance the authority of the Dasha police. Even though Ouyang Chen strongly advised against it, it was to no avail. Ouyang Chen's reason was that he had not received the informant's report from Chen Feng, and he believed that if there was a real opportunity to take down so many drug lords, Chen Feng would not miss it. However, not many people believed Ouyang Chen, because the last time Ouyang Chen's informant, which was provided by Chen Feng, led to the deaths of nearly 200 people. Even though they had no evidence to prove that Chen Feng had become a traitor, they were no longer willing to trust him. In fact, they believed that Chen Feng had completely betrayed them, otherwise he would not have failed to report this information back. The team quickly approached the Kunsar group's stronghold. When they saw the luxurious villa surrounded by several single-story houses, Su Weigua and everyone else couldn't help but smile. This was indeed the old stronghold of the Kunsar group as reported by the informant. Everyone, get ready. Launch the operation in three minutes. The fourth team would feign an attack from the front to distract the enemy while the third team would launch a surprise attack from the side to cover the fourth team. The second team would rush into the building next to the villa and occupy it as our firepower point. I would lead the first team to directly storm the villa and kill the Kunsar group. The fifth team will snipe the enemy forces coming to support from outside. Yes. The leaders of the four teams nodded quietly and then disappeared into the darkness. In the sky, at the end, just before dawn, three minutes later, Suwag was suddenly waved his hand, and the four teams rushed out like leopards. Several team members swiftly dealt with the guards at the entrance like dark phantoms. They were getting closer and closer to the villa, and everyone's faces were tense and solemn. Closer. Even closer. Everyone tightened their grip on their guns, and Su Weigua and the others felt their hearts almost jumping out of their chests. This mission was originally a matter of life and death. They had to quickly take down Kunsar and the other leaders of the Kunsar group, either by killing them all or by capturing them, and then quickly withdraw in the brief time before Kunsar's men could react. They had the support of the combined forces of Dasha and Wadian in the stronghold of the Kunsar group. I hope this mission can be completed perfectly. I hope everyone who comes will be able to return safely. Su Weigua, running, suddenly made a move, bang, bang, bang. At the moment when Su Weigua and others were about to enter the villa, a fierce gunfire erupted in the darkness. Inside the villa, which should have been quiet, gun barrels spewed out fierce flames, and without any preparation, several team members fell to the ground. Su Weigua's eyes widened in shock, and his head felt like it was about to explode. It's an ambush. Everyone retreat. Su Weigua shouted, his eyes almost bursting with blood. He knew they had fallen into an ambush. The intelligence this time was flawed. The Kunsa group had obviously known about their actions and had already set up a trap waiting for them to enter. However, the intelligence was provided by the most loyal and patriotic gray individuals trained by the motherland. Even in death, they would not betray their country. But why did the enemy have accurate information about their actions? Ah! Screams rang out as the anti-drug police were shot into a hornet's nest, falling to the ground lifeless. Retreat, retreat, retreat! Su Weigua roared, and all the anti-drug police retreated with all their might, firing at the villa as they retreated. But at that moment, the roar of cars filled the air, and blinding headlights illuminated the darkness. The anti-drug police were exposed in the bright light, and machine guns on the cars began to fire wildly causing the anti-drug police to fall instantly, without even a chance to scream. 
everyone, retreat to the mountain behind. Su Weigua saw the anti-drug police falling one by one, and his heart felt like it was being cut with a knife. Using the car headlights, he surveyed the surrounding terrain and quickly led the anti-drug police into the dense forest on the mountain. The Kunsa group was well prepared and had a large number of people and vehicles, so they couldn't outrun them. Their only chance of survival was to enter the dense forest. The anti-drug police pushed themselves to the limit as they retreated towards the mountain, finally entering the forest after leaving behind dozens of cold bodies. As the gunfire erupted, Chen Feng woke up. When he walked out of the room and saw the situation illuminated by the convoy, his heart sank. Hearing Su Weig was shouting to retreat in the purest Dasha language, he knew that the people in front of him were definitely a team sent by Dasha, and they must have been able to find Kunsa's lair, so they were definitely not an ordinary team. But now, it was clear that there had been a major mistake in this mission. Something had definitely gone wrong, otherwise, why would the Kunsa group have been prepared for an ambush in advance? Ambush. Chen Feng's eyes narrowed suddenly, and a monstrous aura burst forth. Just a few months ago, Ding Hui and nearly 200 anti-drug police and armed police had fallen into an ambush. Now, the anti-drug police in front of him had clearly encountered an ambush. Subconsciously, Shen Feng knew that there was something fishy going on. Intense gunfire rang out, and the anti-drug police fell weakly to the ground. At this point, whether it was inside the villa or the various leaders who were already living in the three-story building like Chen Feng, they all woke up. Lao Lu, what are you waiting for? Take your gun and come with me to leave these dead bastards here. Black Emperor's voice echoed from the second floor. Chen Feng struggled internally, but outwardly, he nodded coldly and then rushed down with the four major demons, carrying their guns. The heads of the various groups, who had already been disarmed, could only hide in the building and look outside. Wait a moment, point your guns towards the sky and shoot. Do you understand? Chen Feng whispered something in the ears of the four great evil spirits. The evil spirits were stunned for a moment, then nodded heavily. With the leaders like Black Emperor joining in, more and more drug enforcement officers fell into a pool of blood. Chen Feng and the four great evil spirits kept shooting at the drug enforcement officers, but in the chaos, not many people noticed that their gun muzzles were slightly aimed at the sky. Finally, after leaving behind nearly half of the bodies, Su Weigua and others finally retreated into the forest. They turned to look at the bodies in the pool of blood. Su Weigua's eyes were almost overflowing with blood. When they first arrived, each of the brave and righteous men of the Great Xia Dynasty, regardless of danger, entered this dangerous situation to arrest the ringleaders of the Kunsar group. However, what greeted them was the direct and cold muzzles of guns. Each of the brave men fell into a pool of blood. Su Weigua's heart was as painful as being stabbed by a knife. Traitors. There must be traitors among the Grey People, and even the Grey People who provided clues are traitors. Su Weigua felt a wave of sadness. Ding Hui and the more than 100 drug enforcement officers did not die at the hands of the enemy, but at the hands of traitors. Su Weigua led the remaining dozens of people into the forest and quickly left. Now, they had to leave the Kunsar group's stronghold quickly in order to have a chance of survival. Humph. Useless, useless. So many people actually let them escape into the forest. Go and chase them, make sure to kill them all, leave no one alive. Kunsar saw that nearly half of the drug enforcement officers had escaped into the forest, and he immediately flew into a rage. Lao San, Lao Si, Lao Wu, Lao Lu, you four personally lead the men to chase after them for me. Kunsar turned to Chen Feng and the others. Yes. Black Emperor and the others grinned, then took their guns and led their men into the forest. Chen Feng also led the four great evil spirits and rushed in with flashlights. Seeing this, Su Weigua outside the screen couldn't help but clench his fists, his eyes turning red. He groaned in pain, this time, our intelligence has failed again. A whole five teams of nearly a hundred people, only a dozen or so survived. My dozens of brothers, because of the betrayal of traitors, can only lie in this unfamiliar and cold land, unable to rest in peace. When instructor Ding Hui and the others had an accident, it was because the gray people had a problem, and this time it's also because of the gray people. Many gray people hide in the darkness, they should illuminate the darkness, but often some people cannot resist the erosion of darkness and completely fall into it. Hearing Su Weig was low growl, the people beside him couldn't help but redden their eyes. They were all drug enforcement officers who had luckily survived this operation. That time, nearly a hundred brothers were left forever in the unfamiliar land, until they broke through the Kunsar group not long ago and brought back the bodies of these heroes. It can be imagined how much pain they felt. Because the memory extractor could only extract important and profound parts of Chen Feng's memory, some of the memories were ignored. Therefore, they subconsciously believed that Chen Feng had betrayed them. Otherwise, he would surely have known about the ambush of the Kunsar group this time. If he hadn't betrayed them, why didn't he report this information? 
If this information had been reported, these nearly 100 brothers wouldn't have died. Watching the screen, Chen Feng and the four great evil spirits were relentlessly chasing, constantly shooting ahead. Su Weigua and the others were furious. Remember my words, now we split up to chase. If you encounter others, just say that I got separated while chasing the cops. Chen Feng's cold voice rang out, yes, boss. The four great demons respectfully responded, then disappeared into the darkness. Chen Feng stared at their backs, squinted slightly, and then turned and disappeared into the darkness. When he reappeared, he stopped in front of a drug enforcement officer lying in a pool of blood. Looking at the lifeless officer, a hint of sorrow flashed in his eyes. But the next moment, he gritted his teeth, picked up the officer's gun and triangular dagger, and rushed back into the darkness. He ran wildly, quickly distancing himself from the Kunsa members chasing Su Weigua and others. Su Weigua clenched his fists again, looking at Chen Feng in the memory judgment device, Did you, really betray us? But how could you? Look, look at Chen Feng, why did he stop and change direction? A sudden exclamation rang out. Everyone immediately turned their gaze back to the screen. In the darkness, Chen Feng, who had been speeding, had stopped. Following his gaze, he even saw a trailing drug enforcement officer running frantically. When Chen Feng's flashlight shone on him, he was terrified, with a bitter smile on his face. But the next moment, determination appeared on his face. Since he couldn't survive, he would let his brothers live. He suddenly turned around, with a resolute look on his face. Bang! Suddenly, a gunshot rang out, and the flashlight in Chen Feng's hand was instantly blinded. The lagging drug enforcement officer was stunned, then quickly turned and continued to flee. Outside the screen, everyone was slightly stunned because they had witnessed Chen Feng blinding his own flashlight. Just as everyone was in a daze, Chen Feng had already started running in the opposite direction. Soon, in front of him, several flashlights were moving rapidly, and the fierce members of the Kunsa group, led by Hei Huang and others, were quickly taking action. Bang! Ah! Occasional gunshots and screams were heard, as the lagging drug enforcement officers were constantly being ambushed and killed. At this moment, Chen Feng raised his hand and aimed at the figure next to the flashlight. Bang! A gunshot rang out, and a figure instantly fell. At the moment of the gunshot, Chen Feng's figure fell to the ground and disappeared. Bang! Bang! Countless bullets shot at the spot where he had just stood. Chen Feng hid behind a large tree, dodging. Bang! Bang! Two more shots. Two figures fell again. Chen Feng was like a ghost in the dark, constantly changing positions. Every time he fired, there was always a figure falling. Damn it! The enemy has a skilled rearguard. It's old six. Hei Huang looked at his members falling one after another, gritting his teeth. At this moment, Su Weigua and the others who were fleeing heard the gunshots behind them, tears in their eyes. They thought that their comrades who stayed behind to cover their retreat had already prepared to sacrifice themselves. The audience was almost in a daze, but at this moment, Su Weigua's face turned red, his fists clenched tightly. He stared at the screen, could it be? Could it be that he didn't really betray us? Could it be that the comrade we thought was staying behind to snipe the enemy was actually Chen Feng? Could it be? Could it be that I really misunderstood him? Su Weig was heart ached at the thought of possibly misunderstanding Chen Feng. The intense self-blame made it difficult for him to breathe. Lao Su, let's keep watching. We'll know if we misunderstood him or not. His comrades beside him also had red eyes. Yes, let's keep watching. Su Weigui nodded, feeling extremely conflicted at this moment. He hoped that they had really misunderstood Chen Feng, and he hoped that Chen Feng had not betrayed the country or betrayed them. He hoped that Chen Feng would still hold on to the light in his heart. However, decades of hatred suddenly lost their target, and suddenly they were told that they had misunderstood Chen Feng. The guilt in their hearts towards Chen Feng made their hearts ache. On the screen, members of the Kunsar group kept falling, with each shot fired by Chen Feng taking down a member of the Kunsar group. Click. Click. At this moment, two crisp sounds of empty bullets rang out. Chen Feng's expression changed, but soon he focused on the triangular dagger at his waist. He took the dagger out and slowly disappeared into the darkness. At this moment, countless viewers couldn't help but exclaim, what is Chen Feng doing? Does he want to use a cold weapon to deal with hundreds of armed members of the Kunsar group? Su Weigua and others couldn't help but stand up, clenching their fists tightly. Chen Feng. As time passed, in the faraway sky, a bit of dawn broke, and an orange line tore through the darkness. In the forest below, it was still endless darkness. Hurry! Run faster, don't let those cops escape. The members of the Kunsar group had ferocious expressions as they chased after the fleeing drug enforcement officers. As soon as they saw their backs, numerous gun barrels instantly aimed at them, turning the officers into hornet nests. Three members of the Kunsar group held AKs and flashlights, their eyes filled with excitement and ferocity, 
quickly moving forward. After they passed, a figure slowly emerged from the bushes, swiftly approaching and covering the mouth of one member, then swiftly slashing with the triangular dagger. After a few convulsions, the body fell silent. The figure then swiftly caught up, and the remaining two people seemed to sense something. They suddenly turned around, swish. The triangular dagger flew out and plunged straight into one person's throat. The figure then pounced like a giant eagle, grabbing the gun barrel with one hand and the other person's neck with the other, exerting force, click. The body was dropped, and then the triangular dagger was pulled out from the other person's throat, hissing. The crimson hot blood sprayed all over him. Under the faint light reflected by two flashlights on the ground, everyone outside the screen could clearly see the face of this figure, Chen Feng. Hiss, hiss, hiss. In the following time, one after another, members of the Kunsar group fell, without a sound, not even a movement. One person, one triangular dagger. Chen Feng seemed like an incarnation of a demon, constantly reaping lives in the forest. However, Chen Feng alone couldn't stop hundreds of people. Countless people passed by Chen Feng and rushed forward. Bang! A gunshot represented the sacrifice of a drug enforcement officer. Chen Feng's eyes turned red. Bang, bang, bang. In front of Chen Feng, five members of the Kunsar group fired wildly, and a drug enforcement officer fell to the ground. They immediately rushed over. Ha ha ha, he's not dead. Great, tie him up and take him back to the fourth master. The fourth master loves live drug enforcement officers the most. If the fourth master is happy, maybe we'll all get rich. The members of the Kunsar group looked at the struggling officer on the ground, their faces filled with excitement. What they didn't notice was that Chen Feng's figure appeared behind them like a ghost. Chen Feng crouched and quickly approached the five people, suddenly covering the mouth of the last person and sliding the sharp triangular dagger across his neck. Then, he swiftly disappeared into the bushes with the body in his arms. The remaining four people had no idea, only the drug enforcement officer lying on the ground couldn't help but widen his eyes, huh? A member of the Kunsar group seemed to sense something, he suddenly turned around, but there was nothing behind him but darkness. He couldn't help but frown, what's wrong? Nothing. He shook his head, then turned back. But the next moment, his eyes widened, a hand covered his mouth, and he felt a sharp pain in his neck. He immediately felt all his strength being drained, he struggled to pull the trigger, but had no strength, and the gun slipped from his hand and fell to the ground with a thud. Ha! Huh? Hearing this sound, the other three turned abruptly, and when they saw what was happening, they couldn't help but feel furious. Not good. In the instant the three turned around, Chen Feng's heart sank, he lifted the body in his hand and quickly moved towards the nearby big tree. Bang! The next moment, three gun barrels were frantically aimed at him. The Kunsar members kept shouting, trying to call their teammates over. A fierce look flashed in Chen Feng's eyes, he took off his clothes, wrapped a stone from the ground, and threw it to the side. The three immediately turned their guns towards the location of the clothes and fired wildly. Seizing the opportunity, Chen Feng pounced out, the triangular dagger in his hand flew out and pierced one person's chest, then he clenched his fist and fiercely struck another person's head, causing them to stagger back and fall to the ground. The remaining person quickly turned the gun towards Chen Feng, but he did not dodge, he grabbed the gun barrel with one hand, and with a bang, his left palm instantly had a large hole, but his other hand directly grabbed the opponent's neck, then twisted it fiercely, crack. The sound of a bone breaking rang out, and the last person became a corpse. After dealing with the last enemy, Chen Feng felt as if all his strength had been drained. He sat up against the body, and nearby, a drug enforcement officer who had not yet breathed his last, looked at Chen Feng's face with disbelief and confusion. In his mind, some information about Chen Feng appeared, the sixth lord of the Kunsar group, a notorious figure in the gray area, with countless blood on his hands, ruthless and cruel, a fierce general under Kunsar. But why? Why would the current Chen Feng? Why would he attack the Kunsar group members on his side? Chen Feng looked up at him, and a smile suddenly appeared on his face like a demon, he grinned slightly and said, Comrade. As Chen Feng's words fell, the drug enforcement officer's pupils shrank fiercely, his head seemed to explode, the word comrade hit him hard, making it difficult for him to breathe. You, you are one of our grey operatives? The drug enforcement officer exclaimed in disbelief. Chen Feng nodded slowly, but, how is this possible? When we were sent on the mission, they didn't tell anyone outside that there are grey operatives in the Kunsar group. Every time we go on a mission, to avoid friendly fire, they must have informed the grey operatives in advance, but, did they not inform? As he said this, the drug enforcement officer seemed to realize something and suddenly stopped, frozen in place. Chen Feng's face was full of bitter smiles, tears streaming down as he said, no one informed me, no one informed me. Damn it, everyone thought I had betrayed them. I never expected that the whole world would suspect me, no one would believe me, and in the end, even you, Ouyang Chen, wouldn't believe me. 
Others don't know who I am? Oh Yang Chen, don't you know? Ah, my father, mother, brothers, and instructors all died at the hands of these drug traffickers. Why do you think I would have anything to do with them? We agreed from the beginning, we agreed, the whole world may not believe me, but you must believe me. Why are you not keeping your word? Even you don't believe me, even you don't believe me. Ah, Chen Feng finally let out a painful low roar, a proud man of seven feet, crying heartbreakingly, tears falling heavily, disappearing into the darkness. I'm not afraid. Even if I'm tightly wrapped in darkness, unable to breathe, I won't back down. We are the most shameless group of people in the police force, can't stand the light, even if we have to bow our heads to our pants every day, I'm not afraid of all this, I'm only afraid that in this world, no one can prove that I stand in the darkness with a heart towards the light. I'm afraid that no one stands on the side of the light and pulls me out when I'm drowning in the darkness. I'm not afraid of death, but, I'm afraid. Outside the screen, there was silence, everyone watching Chin Feng crying, watching Chin Feng's unwilling low roar, they all fell silent, Su Weigua fell silent, Chin Cici fell silent, have we? Misunderstood Chun Feng? He is clearly our gray man, clearly sacrificing himself, but why has he become one of the targets of his comrade's guns? How much must his heart ache? Why, without any evidence, why suspect that he is betrayed? The whole world no longer believes in him, even the leaders no longer believe in him, and even this operation was not notified to him. They clearly intend to treat Chen Feng as a ruthless drug dealer and kill him together. How can they do this? His parents, his comrades, all died at the hands of these ruthless drug dealers. How could he betray his country? We are the most shameless group of people in the police force, can't stand the light. The only person who can prove that he has a heart for the light, no longer chooses to believe in him. How desperate must he be? Each audience felt a pain in their hearts, unable to breathe, when they heard Chen Feng's cries, they could feel the despair in them. Su Weigua suddenly stood up, his face turning red, panting heavily through his nostrils, what's going on? What's going on? Why didn't anyone notify Chen Feng of this operation? Su Weigua couldn't help but roar, he is our gray man, why assume he has betrayed the country without any evidence? He has sacrificed so much for the country, and now you just want to discard him? For so many years, I have always thought that it was Chen Feng who betrayed us, that he knew there was an ambush in this operation and still let us charge to our deaths. It turns out, it turns out, that no one actually notified him, turns out you wanted us to pick up our guns and shoot him too, you are too heartless. Su Weigua's eyes were shining as he spoke, Chen Feng clearly did not betray them now. Otherwise he would not have risked his life to stop the members of the Kunsar group and protect them as they retreated. But in this operation, no one above had notified Chen Feng, so they had actually targeted Chen Feng from the beginning, and even though he had been abandoned, when they were in danger, when his comrades were in danger, Chen Feng still stood up without hesitation and helped to stop the members of the Kunsar group with his life. Watching Chen Feng couldn't help but cry loudly. It can be imagined how desperate Chen Feng was at that time. He clearly gave up the opportunity to stand in the sun and chose to step into the darkness, building an invisible barrier for the motherland and the people, blocking the darkness where people couldn't see. However, he did not betray the motherland, but the motherland abandoned him. Su Weigua's eyes turned red. He rubbed his eyes and dialed a number on his phone. Hello? A majestic voice sounded on the other end of the phone, you're watching Chen Feng's trial, aren't you? Su Weigua's voice was terrifyingly cold. There was silence on the other end of the phone for a second, then someone spoke, yes. Don't you have anything to say? Why didn't you inform Chen Feng of your actions? Why do you treat him as a traitor? Why do you want to abandon him? Su Weigui roared, Weigua, you need to calm down. The voice on the other end of the phone sounded, and Su Weigua's heart was instantly filled with anger. Calm down my ass. I don't care about what happened later. I only know that Chen Feng has not betrayed us now, nor has he betrayed the motherland. Instead, it is the motherland that has abandoned him. What you are doing is heartless. Well, I will try my best to investigate, sighed the voice on the other end of the phone, then hung up. Su Weigua clenched his fists, sat back in his seat, feeling all his strength drained from his body. On the screen, the anti-drug police officer lying on the ground, unable to move, heard Chen Feng's words and looked at Chen Feng's face full of pain and reluctance. After a long time, Chen Feng staggered to his feet, picked up an AK from the ground, and fired two shots. He reached into the ground and pulled out the bullets that had been shot into the ground. Then, to the disbelief of everyone, he reached for the bullet hole in his abdomen. Ugh! When his fingers reached into the bullet hole, Chen Feng couldn't help but groan, sweat dripped from his pale face, the veins on his neck bulged, and his teeth creaked. After his palm came out, a bullet stained with crimson blood appeared in his hand. With a snap, the bullet stained with blood fell to the ground. He reached for his thigh, pulled out another bullet, who? Chen Feng took a deep breath then stuffed the two bullets into the soil under his buttocks. Then, 
He picked up the bullets from the AK that had just been dug out of the ground and stuffed them into the wound that had just been emptied. As he stuffed them in, his body suddenly straightened, his eyes filled with pain. Sha! Chen Feng took a deep breath, stood up slowly against the corpse. The anti-drug police officer beside him was dumbfounded and couldn't help but ask, Aren't you in pain? Not in pain? You really think highly of me. It's a piercing pain, just like being stabbed and twisted with a knife. But, if I don't change the bullets inside, hee hee, my identity will be in danger of exposure. This path was paved by countless brothers with their lives. I can't just cut off this path like this. Even if I die, I can't do it. Chen Feng gritted his teeth in pain, but his tone was unwavering. The anti-drug police officer heard Chen Feng's words, opened his mouth a few times, wanting to say something, but ultimately remained silent, we are sorry for you. You have been wronged. For a long time, the anti-drug police officer spoke with a guilty look in his eyes. Once, Chen Feng was also someone he hated. He used to think that the deaths of people like Ding Hui were all Chen Feng's fault. He was one of the many police officers in Dashia who despised Chen Feng. But now, he realized how wrong he was. Chen Feng was still Chen Feng. He did not abandon his country, it was his country that abandoned him. Yet, he continued to face his mission and his country with dedication. He could die, but this path could not be abandoned. I have no apologies, no grievances. On the day I became a gray man, I had already thought about this ending. As long as I can fulfill the country's mission, as long as I can keep the darkness hidden from people's sight, that's enough. Chen Feng shook his head slowly. Quick, search over there, there was just gunfire. In the distance, flashlights lit up, and members of the Kunsa group quickly advanced towards Chen Feng's location. Meanwhile, a figure was also rushing towards Chen Feng from behind. Chen Feng looked at the anti-drug police officer lying on the ground, blood flowing from his legs and right chest. He quickly crouched down, wanting to help the officer up, but the officer stopped him. Comrade, don't waste your energy. Both of us are already injured, and I won't survive today. Chen Feng was stunned for a moment and couldn't help but growl. What nonsense are you talking? Your injuries are not fatal. You still have hope. As he spoke, Chen Feng tried to drag the officer away, but the officer suddenly pulled out a triangular blade from the nearby Kunsa group member's body and aimed it at his own neck. His voice was cold and calm. Let go of me, or I'll die in front of you right now. Chen Feng was stunned, blood almost dripping from his eyes. What are you doing? I'm not doing anything, comrade. Give up on me. They are already chasing us, and I really can't escape. If you take me with you, you might also be implicated. I'm not afraid of being implicated, and I can hide you. As long as we evade this search, I can find a way to get you out. Chen Feng growled softly, I know you're a good person. You're not afraid of death, but you also said that this path was paved by countless lives. If you're exposed, I wouldn't hesitate to die ten times over. You're a gray man, and I'm an anti-drug police officer. I'm not afraid of sacrifice. I'm just afraid that my sacrifice would be in vain. Tighten your grip on your gun, aim it at me, and when they come, shoot at me. This way, they will trust you even more. Tighten your grip on your gun, aim it at me. As he spoke, the anti-drug police officer suddenly growled, No, no, I can't do it. I really can't do it. Chen Feng took two steps back, wailing in agony, tears streaming down his face. When he first entered the Kunsa group, he had killed Wu Yen with his own hands to pass a test. Now, to make those people trust him even more, he had to kill the anti-drug police officer in front of him. He really couldn't do it. When facing the enemy, he was a ruthless demon, his hands stained with the blood of countless people. But when facing his own brother, his own comrade, he really couldn't do it. No, comrade, you must do this. I beg you, please, don't let my death be in vain. The anti-drug police officer pleaded, Ah, Chen Feng let out a painful growl trembling as he raised his gun and aimed it at the anti-drug police officer. Comrade, my name is Wu Bing, the Wu from Dong Wu, the soldier from the army. I have a sister named Wu Yan, also an anti-drug police officer. If you ever see her, please tell her that I did not disgrace her or our parents. We have caused you grievances, but you must believe in the country. The country will never let down any good sons who sacrifice for it. One day, your grievances will be known to everyone. One day, your injustice will be cleared by someone. Remember, don't forget your original intention. Wu Yen. Chen Feng's body trembled violently. He thought of the female police officer he had killed when he first entered the Kunsar group. He looked at Wu Bing in disbelief. The sadness surged through his heart like a crazy tide. Two siblings, two drug enforcement officers. Promise me. Wu Bing roared with red eyes. Yes. Tears rolled uncontrollably from Chen Feng's eyes, dropping to the ground. He nodded heavily, unable to speak. He wanted to tell Wu Bing the truth but he couldn't bring himself to speak. 
Third master, there's someone ahead. The voice from afar grew closer. Several flashlights were aimed at Chen Feng. It looks like sixth master. Someone with sharp eyes saw Chen Feng's figure and his attire, then shouted, Old Six? The leader raised an eyebrow, robust like a bear, the Kunsar third master, Black Emperor. Chen Feng had his back to Black Emperor and the others. He quietly wiped away the tears on his face, his finger on the trigger, but he hesitated to pull it. Shoot. Shoot. Aim the gun at my chest. Shoot. Wu Bing anxiously urged. Chen Feng closed his eyes in agony, then slowly exerted force with his finger. Just then, a figure emerged in the distance. When he saw Wu Bing in the line of fire, his eyes widened in fury. Wu Bing! He roared, and when he looked at the figure in front of Wu Bing, his mind exploded in panic, disbelief, and confusion. It was the familiar face. Wasn't it their former classmate Chen Feng? The most outstanding in their profession, with shining eyes, and parents who were martyrs. But how could he be here? How could he aim the gun at his own people? Su Weigua didn't have time to think. Bang! Chen Feng pulled the trigger, and the bullet pierced through Wu Bing's chest, blood gushing out instantly. Thank! Thank! Wu Bing struggled to say two words, his eyes gradually turning gray, tightly gripping the triage dagger that Chen Feng had used to kill numerous Kunsar members. Wu Bing! Su Weigua was stunned. After coming to his senses, he roared in agony. Hearing this roar, Chen Feng looked up, and their eyes met in an instant. Weigua? Chen Feng was stunned for a moment. Bang! The next moment, the gunshot rang out. Chen Feng felt a sharp pain in his stomach, staggered a few steps, and then fell to the ground. But it was as if the wound on his stomach didn't belong to him. He stared in the direction of Su Weigua, feeling the pain in his heart making it hard to breathe. Weigua! I'm not! A! Traitor! He murmured each word, while Su Weigua, with eyes full of hatred, saw only Chen Feng's shadow. Chen Feng! We were wrong about you from the beginning. I, Su Weigua, swear that I won't kill you, I swear. Su Weigua glanced at Chen Feng one last time, then turned and disappeared into the forest. Chen Feng staggered a few steps, his vision darkened, and he collapsed. Watching this scene, Su Weigua's face turned red, his fists clenched tightly. Chen Feng. Chen Feng, my brother, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I misunderstood you. I'm sorry, Chen Feng. Wu. I deserve to die, I deserve to die. Su Weigua covered his head in pain and squatted down. For decades, Su Weigua has always considered it his duty to kill the traitor Chen Feng. His hatred for Chen Feng is stronger than anyone else's, because he saw Wu Bing die at the hands of Chen Feng. He resents this former classmate for betraying their oath, pointing a gun at his own brother and comrade. He resents that Chen Feng has fallen into darkness and become a tool of the dark. For decades, his nightmares have been filled with the moment when Wu Bing died at the hands of Chen Feng. But now, he finally realizes that he has misunderstood Chen Feng all along. Chen Feng did not betray the country or their oath. Chen Feng is still Chen Feng, a hero. Yet he has been treated as a traitor. When he himself pulled the trigger and killed his brothers in arms, his heart was already in pain. But then he shot Chen Feng. How much pain must Chen Feng have felt? To have killed his comrades with his own hands and then be treated as a traitor by his former classmates. How desperate must Chen Feng be? Lao Lu. Lao Lu. Black Emperor and others rushed over and saw Chen Feng shoot a drug enforcement officer on the ground. But in the next moment, a gunshot rang out and Chen Feng fell. Black Emperor couldn't help but roar in anger and quickly went to help Chen Feng. San Yi, Lu Yi has been shot several times, many times. Shut up, I'm not blind. You, go after that dog cop and bring me his head. The rest of you, take Lao Lu back with me. Black Emperor roared, then put Chen Feng on his back and quickly headed towards Kunsa's villa. More and more people saw Black Emperor carrying the unconscious Chen Feng and running towards the back. The next day, in Kunsa's villa, Chen Feng lay on the sickbed, eyes closed, face pale, lips dry. Several doctors in white coats were working hard to save him. Snap! The chief doctor finally removed the last bullet and placed it on a clean tray. Kunsa glanced at the bullets in the tray, then looked back at Chen Feng. Half an hour later, the chief doctor finished stitching up Chen Feng's wounds and bandaged them. Phew! The chief doctor finally breathed a sigh of relief. How is he, doctor? Kunsa asked. Luckily San Yu brought him back early, Luya's life is saved. The chief doctor said, and Black Emperor and others finally breathed a sigh of relief and left. Back in the hall, Kunbu walked in. Big brother, we found out that more than 30 brothers died last night. The person killed by Lao Lu should be a skilled drug enforcement officer. He killed more than half of those 30 brothers with a triangular dagger. Fortunately, Lao Lu arrived in time and killed him. Kunbu's words made Kunsa's eyes flash with killing intent. This dead cop actually killed so many of my brothers. If Lao Lu hadn't killed him, I would have made him wish for death. 
Big brother, it's all thanks to Lao Lu this time. If Lao Lu hadn't stepped forward, I'm afraid more of our brothers would have died. Black Emperor said. Yes, Lao Lu has indeed made great contributions this time. I have taken note of it. Kunsa nodded. Now it seems that Lao Lu is really okay. Don't be suspicious in the future, Lao Si. Kunsa turned to look at the mouse. Originally, the Kunsa group had already received advance notice of the actions of the Dasha police, and they had made arrangements in advance. Because Kunsa's fourth elder had caused trouble, the entire senior management of the Kunsa group did not inform Chen Feng for the sake of caution. The mouse nodded quickly, Big brother, it's just that we didn't inform the sixth elder this time. Will he have any thoughts? Black Emperor suddenly spoke up, and Kunsa was taken aback. This time, we did indeed act in an underhanded manner. However, it is also to kill these damned police dogs. When the sixth elder is better, I will personally apologize to him. In addition, we can give him more power and resources as compensation. Yes. Black Emperor and the others nodded, while the mouse's face was full of jealousy. On the other side, a figure rushed out from the edge of the forest, his clothes tattered, looking like a savage. He stood at the edge of the forest, looked back, and couldn't help but shed tears. When they came, they were all full of spirit, vowing to wipe out the evil Kunsa group. But who knew it was another trap? Nearly a hundred people, and now only a few could escape. Each and every Dasha hero lay on the cold ground. Brothers, wait for me. Wait for me. One day, I will definitely avenge you. Su Weigua gritted his teeth through tears. And Chen Feng. You traitor, you scum. I will personally kill you to atone for the dead brothers. Su Weigua took a deep look at the countless places where the Dasha heroes had sacrificed, then turned and left without looking back. When news of the ambush during this operation reached Dasha, the entire Dasha police force was once again shaken. They had not expected that an operation that should have been foolproof would be ambushed, and after Su Weigua brought back news of the gray men under Ouyang Chen shooting the anti-drug police, the emotions of countless people erupted. I told you that Ouyang Chen's gray men had already betrayed us. You didn't believe it. Last time, his intelligence led to the deaths of over a hundred of our men. Do you still say there's no evidence that he betrayed us? Now what? Now people outside have seen him shooting our comrades. Are you still going to defend him? Yes, maybe this ambush was because of leaked information from him. His heart has turned black, he has changed. We must cleanse him. Such scum cannot be allowed to roam free. Oh Yang Chen, do you have anything to say now? In the headquarters of the police force, the high-ranking police officers looked at Ouyang Chen's furious roar. Ouyang Chen's face was full of disbelief, his eyes vacant. It's impossible, it's impossible, it can't be him. The person who delivered the intelligence this time wasn't him at all. He didn't even know about this operation. He wouldn't betray the country, he wouldn't. Ouyang Chen kept shaking his head and murmuring. How could he not? Perhaps it's not just him who has betrayed. Your gray men team has already gone bad, completely rotten. You. Shut up. How can you say that about them? A high-ranking police officer was furious, but Oh Yang Chen interrupted directly, furious like a lion. They are not afraid of death. How could they possibly betray? For the country, they have suffered more than you can imagine. They are walking on the edge of a knife, bleeding with every step, suffering and sacrificing every day. Faced with those heinous criminals, they never retreat, even though they walk on the edge of a knife every day, dance on the barrel of a gun every second. It's far more thrilling than you and I can imagine. However, they still betrayed and took that path. I admire them, but in the darkness, there is not only darkness, but also various temptations. People have seven emotions and six desires, and they are born with desires. It is normal for them to resist temptation and betray principles, isn't it? Besides, Su Weigua saw one of your men shoot the outside drug enforcement officer with his own eyes. Isn't that a fact? What you see may not necessarily be the truth. Oh Yang Chen roared. Only he knew what the gray man had to face and only he knew the words spoken by Chen Feng and his gray men on the last day. If one day we stand on opposite sides, then please aim your gun at me. Please do not hesitate to pull the trigger and shoot me in the chest. Use my blood and my bones to pave the way for your advance, because I know that when you aim your gun at me, you are more worthy of living than I am. Facing Ouyang Chen's roar, the senior police official sneered, Ouyang Chen. Facts speak louder than words. But before he could finish, Oh Yang Chen interrupted, You have always said that it was our intelligence that was faulty, always pushing the blame onto my gray men. But have you ever thought that ghosts might appear among you? I know my gray men very well. They are all outstanding individuals who would not even blink an eye for the sake of the motherland. And what about you? Occupying high positions? Holding real power? But are you willing to die for the motherland? Are you willing to spare no effort for the motherland? Oh Yang Chen retorted, It's impossible. 
Our team consists of tested and true comrades. It's impossible for such black sheep to appear. Oh Yang Chen, the evidence is clear now. Your gray men have betrayed the motherland, and you, being too emotional, I will report to the organization and conduct a public vote to consider replacing you with someone more just and selfless to manage the gray men. You can leave now. The senior police official waved his hand at Ouyang Chen, his face full of impatience. Humph. Ouyang Chen forced a miserable smile and left, disheartened. My gray men will definitely not have any problems. Ghosts can only appear among you. I will definitely find out and be replaced by a public vote. I only have three months. In these three months, I will definitely find you and clear their names. Kunsa's lair. I. I am not a traitor. Wei Guo. In a daze, Chen Feng seemed to be having a nightmare, his face full of pain. In the dream, Su Weigua raised his gun at him, and the scene repeated itself. He couldn't hear what Su Weigua was saying, but he could see the disappointment, hatred, and anger in Su Weigua's eyes. Weigua. I didn't. I didn't betray the motherland. Chen Feng suddenly woke up, covered in cold sweat. Lao Yi. In front of Chen Feng's bed, a woman in a white nurse's uniform saw Chen Feng wake up and exclaimed in delight. She was the caregiver arranged by Kunsa for Chen Feng. Seeing the caregiver in front of him and then looking around, Chen Feng said, It was just a dream. I was talking in my sleep just now. Talking in your sleep? A flash of hostility appeared in Chen Feng's eyes, and then he asked in Dasha language, What is your name? The caregiver was stunned, her big eyes filled with confusion. Then she said in Wabang language, Lao Yi, I don't understand Dasha language. Can you speak in Wadian language? I said, What is your name? Chen Feng spoke again, his body tense, like a leopard, ready to strike the caregiver at any moment. I'm sorry, Lao Yi, I really don't understand Dasha language. Forget it, you're awake. I'll go and inform the boss immediately. Chen Feng stared into the eyes of the caregiver, seeing the purity in the caregiver's eyes that did not seem to lie. Chen Feng's body slowly relaxed, then nodded and said in Wa language, Go. The caregiver quickly got up and walked outside. Soon, the sound of footsteps rang out, and Kunsar, Kunbu, Hwang, Lashu, and Saisu rushed in. Seeing Chen Feng with his eyes open, everyone couldn't help but smile. Lao Lu, you finally woke up. Lao Lu, you've been in a coma for two days. We were all very worried about you. Lao Lu, thanks to you this time. If you hadn't dealt with that expert from the Dasha anti-drug police, our brothers would probably have died even more. Lao Lu, you are the hero of this time. Hei Wang, Saisu, and others saw Chen Feng and spoke one after another, with smiles on their faces. Only Kunsar, Lao Si, and Lao Shu hid behind the crowd, looking at Chen Feng's face with a gloomy expression. Finally, Kunsar also spoke slowly, with a look of admiration on his face. Lao Lu, you have indeed achieved great success this time. What reward do you want? As long as I can satisfy you, I promise you. Chen Feng looked at Kunsar and the others in front of him, and his hands in the quilt couldn't help but tighten. These people in front of him were drug traffickers who had tormented Dasha, executioners with the blood of countless comrades on their hands, his mortal enemies. He should have killed all these people to avenge his brothers in arms, but now he could only smile and collaborate with the enemy. He wished to eat their flesh and drink their blood, but he still had to pretend as if nothing had happened. Thank you for your concern, big brother. This is just what I should do. I dare not ask for more. Last time, those damn cops have been our enemies. They even came to cause trouble during your birthday. You are my big brother. Causing trouble for you is just to make us unhappy, right? If we're unhappy, then we'll kill his whole family. Chen Feng grinned, his eyes full of cruelty and bloodthirstiness. Seeing Chen Feng's appearance, Kunsar nodded in satisfaction. Well said, these are dead cops, they deserve to die. However, I, Kunsar, always reward merit. You have indeed achieved great success this time. So, from now on, you and Lao Wu will split the market with Indasha, and in addition, all the 100,000 mu of chestnut plantations in Chiang Mai Prefecture in Taigua will be handed over to you to manage. All the harvests, except for 70% to be handed over to the group, will be yours. From today, you are the fifth general of my Kunsar group, in charge of a thousand-man army. As Kunsar's words fell, the eyes of Hei Huang and others beside him couldn't help but widen. When they heard Kunsar finally letting Chen Feng control an army, Kunsar Laosi almost popped his eyes out, full of jealousy, envy, and hatred. You should know that the entire Kunsar group has nearly 20,000 troops, all of them are fully armed regular troops. With this force, Kunsar can even compete with the governments of Taigua, Hua, and Laos, and this is the most powerful force in Kunsar's hands, the real guarantee of Kunsar group's absolute dominance in the Golden Triangle region. The entire Kunsar group, only Hei Huang controls 3,000 troops, guarding the old nest for Kunsar group, Kunbu controls 2,000, guarding Wa, and 1,000 are under Tsaisu, 
often active on the border of Dasha, ready to obey Tsaisu's command at any time. The remaining 14,000 troops are all under Kunsar's control. The entire Kunsar group, only Kunsar Lausi does not control any troops, only a hundred-man miscellaneous army in his hands. And now, Kunsar actually wants to allocate a thousand troops to Chen Feng? And hand over the management of 100,000 mu of chestnut plantations in Chiang Mai Prefecture to Chen Feng? Suddenly, from Kunsar's sixth uncle, he became a local overlord, which made Lao Xu almost go crazy with jealousy. Big brother. I'm sorry, I cannot fulfill that request. Xiao Xian, the school bus is here. Let's go, it's time for kindergarten. A clear voice rang out. Mom, I'm going to kindergarten. Chen Sisi, carrying a cartoon backpack, ran outside happily. Listen to the teacher at kindergarten. I know, Shin Sisi waved without looking back, then got on the school bus with a little friend. Watching the bus drive away, Bai Luo withdrew her gaze, moved a stool to the door, propped her chin with one hand, and looked towards the street corner in the distance. Where did you go? When will you come back? Shen Xian has already turned four years old and has started kindergarten. The first two words she learned to write were dad. She misses you, often dreams of you at night, and then sits at the bedside crying. Xian often asks me if you have abandoned her, if you don't want her anymore. The second baby is already seven months old, and there are three months left before it's due to be born. Xuan Xuan's first person she saw when she was born wasn't you. I hope the first person the second baby sees when it's born is you. I miss you too. I miss you so much. Bai Luo looked into the distance, lost in thought, and at some point, she leaned against the wall and fell asleep. Ding ling ling. The phone suddenly rang, and Bai Luo woke up suddenly. Hello? Hello? Is this Xuan Xuan's mom? Come to the school quickly, Xian Xian is in trouble. A hurried voice came from the phone. Ah, Bai Luo stood up suddenly, panic in her eyes. Because she got up suddenly, she felt dizzy and almost fell down. She forced herself to focus. Teacher, what happened to our Xian Xian? Hurry and come to the school first, I can't explain it over the phone. Okay, okay, I'm coming right away. Bai Luo got up, closed the door, and quickly hailed a taxi to the kindergarten. Half an hour later, Bai Luo got off the car at Sunshine Kindergarten. The kindergarten teacher was already waiting at the school gate. Teacher Li, what happened to our Xian Xian? Bai Luo hurriedly approached, and Teacher Li let her in, saying as they walked, your Xian Xian got into a fight with a classmate. And got, got hit on the head, and passed out. She's in the school hospital now. What? Passed out? Bai Luo's legs went weak, and she almost fell down. Teacher Li quickly supported her. Xuan Xuan's mom, don't worry too much. Xian Xian has already woken up. The doctor said there's no serious problem. Bai Luo couldn't speak, and with all her strength, she quickly followed Teacher Li to the school hospital. Entering the school hospital, she saw Chen Cici lying on the hospital bed, her head wrapped in bandages, her eyes full of weakness. Bai Luo saw clear bloodstains on Chen Cici's collar. Xian Xian. Bai Luo cried out in grief, then rushed over. Mom. Chen Cici saw Bai Luo, her eyes full of tears. Xian Xian, my precious daughter, what? What happened to you? Bai Luo's body was trembling, and she carefully held Chen Sisi's hand. Mom, it hurts. Looking at Chen Sisi, Bai Luo felt both heartache and anger. She wiped away tears and scolded, how does mom usually tell you? She tells you to be good, to listen to the teacher. When did you learn to fight? And to end up like this with someone else? Bai Luo cried, mom, mom, please don't be angry, it's Xuan Xuan's fault. It's Xuan Xuan's fault, but... But they said Xian Xian is a wild child, they said Xian Xian doesn't have a dad, they said Xuan Xuan's dad is dead, that's why Xian Xian fought with them. The three of them couldn't beat Xian Xian, so they called their mom to come to school and fight Xian Xian. Xiao Feng's mom kicked Xuan Xuan's stomach, Xuan Xuan's stomach hurt, she pushed Xian Xian, and Xian Xian hit the table, her head hurt. Boom! But in Bai Luo's mind, there was a loud noise, as if it had exploded. The words of Chen Sisai kept echoing in her mind. They said Xuan Xuan's dad is dead, Xian Xian only fought with them, the three of them couldn't beat Xian Xian, so they called their mom to come to school and fight Xian Xian. Xiao Feng's mom kicked Xuan Xuan's stomach, Xuan Xuan's stomach hurt, she pushed Xian Xian, and Xian Xian hit the table, her head hurt. In an instant, Bai Luo burst into tears. She thought it was Chen Sisai who didn't listen and fought with other children. She had worked so hard, carrying Chen Sisai for seven months, and had to raise Chen Sisai alone. Why couldn't Chen Sisai be more sensible? Why couldn't she listen? Why did she have to fight with other children? However, the fact is that Chen Sisai was mocked and insulted by three classmates, calling her a fatherless wild child and saying her father was dead. Chen Sisai couldn't bear it and fought with the three children. How much courage and anger does it take for such a weak four-year-old child to muster such strength to win against three other children alone? 
The fact is that after Chen Sasai won against the other three children, they called their parents, and then they laid hands on a four-year-old child. How helpless she must have felt when she was being attacked by three children, how weak and pitiful she must have felt when a parent kicked her down. She didn't have a father by her side, she was just a four-year-old child. And when her mother finally appeared, facing her child who had suffered so much, her first reaction was not to comfort her, not to support her, but to scold her for being disobedient. Her daughter had clearly suffered the most, her head was still bleeding, she clearly needed a warm embrace, she needed justice. But her mother, at that moment, instead of comforting her daughter who had suffered so much, scolded her. Wu, my daughter. Bai Luo held Chen Sasai in her arms, crying loudly. She hated herself for being useless, for letting her daughter suffer so much, for unfairly blaming her daughter for everything, she hated herself. Mom, don't cry, Xian Xian doesn't blame mom, it's Xuan Xuan's fault for not listening, for being disobedient. If they hadn't scolded Xian Xian, if Xian Xian had run away like before, we wouldn't have fought. If Xiao Feng's mom hadn't kicked Xian Xian, if Xian Xian hadn't cried, her mom wouldn't have pushed her. If Xian Xian hadn't hit the table and bled, the teacher wouldn't have called mom. Mom, it's all Xuan Xuan's fault. Chen Sasai looked at the crying Bai Luo and quickly comforted her, taking all the blame on herself and wiping away the tears in front of Bai Luo's eyes with both hands. No, no, it's not Xuan Xuan's fault, Xian Xian is the best, the most sensible, it's all mom's fault. As soon as Chen Sasai spoke, Bai Luo's heart ached unbearably, and tears flowed like a flood, unable to stop. Her daughter was so sensible, it was all her fault for letting her suffer so much. Xian Xian, what are you talking about? Didn't you accidentally slip and fall while fighting with Xiao Feng? Where did someone kick you? How does the teacher usually teach you? Why are you not honest at all? Hearing Chen Cici's words, the nearby teacher Li's expression changed, and she forced a smile to interrupt Chen Cici. Upon hearing teacher Li's words, Bai Luo's expression changed, wiping away her tears. She turned to look at teacher Li, her eyes full of sharpness. Teacher Li, I hope you can give me an explanation. Also, who are the three children who attacked my daughter? Who is the parent who kicked my daughter? What do you mean by what you just said? Are you saying that my daughter slipped and fell on her own? Seeing by Luo's anger, Teacher Li smiled reluctantly, then said, Xuan Xuan's mom, don't be angry. This matter is not at all as Xian Xian described it. Xian Xian was mischievous and got into a fight with three boys, and accidentally fell down. Isn't that right, Xian Xian? Teacher Li turned to look at Chen Cici, a hint of threat flashing in her eyes. Chen Cici trembled, looking very afraid. Teacher Li? What are you doing? Are you threatening my daughter? You must give my daughter an explanation, or else. I won't let this go. Oh, what explanation do you want? Just then, a figure appeared at the door. In the next moment, several figures walked in from outside the school clinic. Leading them was a middle-aged man in a suit, with all the signs of a wealthy man. A noble-looking woman was holding his hand, her face extremely proud. Beside them was a woman with short hair, wearing a flattering smile on her face. Principal, Mr. Wang, Mrs. Wang. Seeing the figures walking in, Teacher Li immediately respectfully called out, yes. The woman with short hair looked at Teacher Li and gave a faint yes, her flattering expression disappearing, replaced by a coldness. She turned her gaze to Bai Luo, wearing a faint smile, you must be Xuan Xuan's mother, right? Let me introduce you. These two are the parents of the children who were beaten by your daughter, Mr. and Mrs. Wang. This time, coming over. Principal, what do you mean by beaten by my daughter? Principal Tian, how can you say such nonsense with your eyes wide open? My daughter was clearly surrounded and beaten by those three children, and then kicked by their mother, causing my daughter to hit her head. Bai Luo directly interrupted Principal Tian, furious. Principal Tian was stunned for a moment. Xuan Xuan's mom, you can't just say that. This matter was witnessed by Teacher Li, and many other children can testify. It was your daughter who provoked little Feng and accidentally fell down. As for Little Feng's mother kicking Xian Xian, this is simply a ridiculous matter. Are you adults also going to make a fuss over it? Enough, Principal Tian, let me handle this. The middle-aged man in a suit waved his hand to interrupt Principal Tian. Principal Tian quickly respectfully stepped aside. The middle-aged man looked at Bai Luo, looking down at her in Chen Cici. Don't you just want to extort some money? I understand. But why not just say it directly? Instead, you have to pretend to be victims. How about this, I see that you're a single mother, it's not easy. Your child is also injured. I'll give you 100,000. Take it and live a good life, and stop causing trouble. What did you say? You said we're trying to extort money? Bai Luo glared at the middle-aged man. Isn't that what you're doing? We've seen people like you a lot. You just want money, don't you? Here, I'll give it to you. 
100,000 should satisfy your appetite, right? What's your account number? Give it to me, and I'll transfer the money to you right away. The middle-aged man's face was full of mockery and disdain. Slap. A crisp slap echoed through the room. Everyone looked at Bai Luo in disbelief, and the middle-aged man also looked at Bai Luo, his face quickly turning cold. We don't want your dirty money. Since you're unwilling to give my child justice, I'll have to call the police. Bai Luo gritted his teeth and immediately took out his phone to call the police. Calling the police? Ah, sure, I'd like to see what good it does for you. The middle-aged man, upon seeing Bai Luo calling the police, showed no sign of panic. Instead, a smile appeared on his face. After speaking, he quietly glanced at Director Tian, who nodded slightly. Then, he walked to the side and sent a text message from his phone. After sending it, he immediately deleted the message. Half an hour later, two police officers arrived at the scene. Hello, we are from the Yangwang police station. Who reported the incident? The two police officers entered, and Bai Luo quickly stood up. Hello, officers, I reported the incident. My child was assaulted by three children at the kindergarten today, and later one of the children's parents kicked her in the stomach, causing her to fall and hit her head. I hope you can find out the truth and give us justice. Hello, ma'am. What is your name? A man took out a notebook. My name is Bai Luo. Hello, MS. Bai, when did this incident occur? I'm not sure of the exact time. I received a call from Comrade Lee at 10.30. Where did it happen? I'm not sure about that either. I went straight to the school hospital as soon as I arrived. The police began to take statements and questioned Bai Luo. Then they began to question Teacher Lee, but her testimony was completely opposite to Bai Luo's. Officers, I am Chan Cici's teacher. I witnessed the whole incident, and Bai was not present at the scene. Everything she said was just subjective speculation and not true. The fact is, Bai's child, Chen Sisi, was being too mischievous and got into a fight with three boys, and she was particularly aggressive, causing minor injuries to all three children. So I immediately informed the parents of the three children. When one of the children's mothers arrived and saw her son injured, she got a little emotional and scolded Chen Sisi. But this child, despite being small, has a big temper and ran away accidentally slipping and hitting a table. We immediately took her to the school hospital and informed Bai. But this child, fearing Bai's scolding, lied and said that three boys had attacked her alone. How could three boys not be able to overpower her? It's clearly a lie. Also, how could the mother of the child possibly harm a little girl? Even the most malicious person wouldn't do that, right? However, it's also our kindergarten's responsibility. We didn't discipline this child properly. At the end, Teacher Lee looked full of self-blame. Hearing this, Bai Luo's eyes turned red with anger. You're lying. It's not like that at all. M.S. Bai, please calm down. Whether I'm lying or not, the police will make the judgment. Teacher Lee smiled at Bai Luo. Oh, by the way, officers, the parents of the other party are also present. You can also ask them. Teacher Lee spoke again, and at this moment, the middle-aged man and woman sitting on the sofa stood up. Xiao Lu, it's your shift today. The middle-aged man stood up hands behind his back, looking like a seasoned cadre as he looked at the two police officers. Seeing the middle-aged man, the two police officers were momentarily stunned, then showed respect on their faces. Director Su, it's you. You. One of the police officers looked at the middle-aged man, then turned to look in the direction of Bai Luo and the others, with a questioning look in his eyes. The middle-aged man nodded, it was my son Xiaofeng who was beaten by that little girl. When they heard about this, they immediately came to the school with Xiaofeng's mother. This matter is also somewhat strange for us. After all, no matter what, the child was also injured, and we also have a responsibility. Originally, I thought it wasn't easy for the orphan and her mother, right? I even thought about giving them some medical expenses to settle it privately. Who knew they were not satisfied? Look at what this has turned into. By the way, handle this matter impartially, don't let my identity affect fairness. Rest assured, Director Su, we will definitely handle this matter impartially. One of the police officers had a flattering smile on his face, then made a simple record of the two people and turned to walk towards Bai Luo. M.S. Bai, we have also briefly understood this matter. Although both children were injured, fortunately, it's not too serious. Director Su is also kind-hearted and willing to offer 100,000 yuan to settle with you. If you have no objections, you can sign on this letter of understanding, and the matter will be resolved. How about it? Bai Luo looked at the police officers in front of her but felt a chill in her heart. 100,000 yuan? My daughter suffered injustice, she was kicked by this malicious woman, and was pushed down and hit her head, bleeding. You want to settle with just a private agreement? I don't want money, I want justice, Bai Luo said coldly. 
Hearing by Luo's words, one of the police officers frowned, about to speak, but the other police officer stopped him, shook his head, and then stepped forward to pull by Luo aside, whispering, Ms. Bai, actually, the evidence and testimonies we have collected are somewhat unfavorable to you. We understand that it's hard for you with your child being injured, but we still suggest you accept the 100,000 yuan to buy some supplements for your child and take good care of her injuries. Otherwise, if we really pursue this further, the current evidence will be even more unfavorable to you. Officer, I appreciate your kindness, and I know you genuinely want to help us, but my daughter is really being wronged. She has suffered so much, and as her parents, we must seek justice for her. We don't care about the money. Bai Luo gritted her teeth. Well, all right. The police officer sighed, then turned to the middle-aged man, shaking his head. Officer, I know you all don't believe me, but the kindergarten has surveillance cameras. I request to investigate the kindergarten's surveillance footage, and then everything will be revealed. Bai Luo looked at the two police officers. Before the two police officers could speak, the principal Tian, who was standing on the side, suddenly spoke up, Um, sorry, these days our Sunshine Kindergarten surveillance equipment is under maintenance. So, impossible, I don't believe it. How could it be so coincidental that your surveillance equipment is conveniently under maintenance? Bai Luo interrupted the principal, her face filled with grief and indignation. Oh, since MS, Bai doesn't believe it, then in front of the police comrades, we can take MS. Bye to the monitoring room to check. A hint of disdain appeared on Principal Tian's face. Seeing this, Bai Luo knew exactly what had happened. She also remembered what the principal had gone to do just now. She had gone to destroy the evidence. The people in front of her were clearly colluding to distort the truth and bully the two of them. Bai Luo knew that all the evidence must have been destroyed, and even if she went to check the surveillance now, it would be of no use. M.S. Bai, I'm sorry, but based on the evidence we currently have, it's really not enough to prove the fact that Mrs. Sue assaulted your child. Since both parties have suffered minor injuries and are very young, we will not impose any administrative or civil penalties on either side. If you are not satisfied with our mediation, you can also pursue the legal route to defend your rights. After speaking, two police officers walked towards the middle-aged man. Director Sue, we'll be leaving now. Okay. The middle-aged man nodded with a smile. After the two police officers left, the middle-aged man looked at Bai Luo. Humph, trying to steal a chicken only to end up losing the rice. Now, I've saved a hundred thousand yuan. With that, he turned and left with the woman by his side. No, no, my daughter is innocent. Bai Luo staggered, her eyes filled with tears. She just wanted to seek justice for her daughter. Why was it so difficult? Everyone was bullying the two of them. Mom, please don't cry. When you cry, Xian Xian feels bad. Shen Sisi saw Bai Luo in tears and couldn't help but cry as well. My daughter, I'm sorry. Mom is useless. Bai Luo hugged Shen Sisi, and Shen Sisi hugged Bai Luo. The two of them cried in each other's arms. Seeing this, teacher Li's eyes showed a hint of pity, while director Tian frowned. M.S. Bai, please settle your daughter's medical expenses and then leave. In the future, you are not welcome at our kindergarten. Our temple is small and cannot accommodate such a big Buddha like you. After speaking, director Tian turned to leave. Why? Bai Luo suddenly spoke up. What do you mean, why? Director Tian frowned and looked at Bai Luo. Director Tian, Teacher Li, you are both women. One of you is at the age of being a grandmother, and the other is at the age of being a mother. You also have children at home, right? If your children were also treated unfairly, would you still do this? Bai Luo shouted, her eyes seeming to drip blood. Hearing Bai Luo's words, Teacher Li staggered, while Director Tian sneered. I'm sorry, Ms. Bai, I don't know what you mean. After speaking, Director Tian turned and left. Why? Why? Just because you are a single mother, while the other is a bureau chief and also a director of Sunshine Kindergarten. M.S. Bai, please leave. You don't need to pay for the treatment, and in the future, don't come to Sunshine Kindergarten. Teacher Li glanced at Bai Luo and also turned to leave. After a long time, Bai Luo turned her dazed gaze to Chen Sisi, reached out and hugged her, murmuring repeatedly, Xian Xian. Let's go home. Home. Now, the whole world is full of malice towards them. Only home, the home with Chen Feng, can give them a sense of security. Only there will they not be wronged or bullied. Bai Luo walked out of the kindergarten with Chen Sisi, disappearing around the corner, with intermittent sobs heard, Dad. Dad, where are you? Everyone is bullying mom, bullying Xian Xian. Dad. Xian Xian is so wronged. So uncomfortable. Dad. Where are you? Chen Feng, Dad is at odds with the whole world. In front of the screen, all the viewers couldn't help but have red eyes, filled with anger. 
Extreme anger, especially when hearing Chen Cici's intermittent calls, their hearts were about to break, how could they treat by Luo and Chen Cici like this? Although I didn't see the surveillance, I believe Chen Cici wouldn't lie. This malicious woman actually laid such a heavy hand on a four-year-old child. As public servants of the people, when their own children commit crimes, not only do they not step forward to take responsibility, but they also aid and abet the evildoers. Her husband, her father, as grey individuals, have abandoned their families for the sake of the motherland and the people, willingly sacrificing everything to fight in the darkness, yet his wife and children have suffered so much injustice and bullying. If Chin Fong knew all this, how difficult it would be for him. Beasts, how can these people be called human beings? They are beasts, all of them ganging up to bully by Luo and little Xian Xian, have they lost their conscience? They just want justice, why is it so difficult? How helpless and pitiful by Luo and little Xian Xian must be now, everyone is bullying them, making them suffer so much injustice. Such scum, they are not worthy of being public servants of the people. And director Tian, that old witch, just to please someone surnamed Su, had the surveillance deleted, she deserves to die a thousand times over. Listening to little Xuan Xuan's calls, my heart is breaking, Chen Feng, come back quickly, come back and see your wife and daughter. They have suffered so much injustice. Two figures disappeared at the corner of the street in front of the Sunshine Kindergarten, the sky was covered by dark clouds, slowly darkening, rumble. Lightning tore through the pitch black night, the heavy thunder sounded like cannon fire, making people tremble with fear. The sky grew darker and darker, in the blink of an eye it had pulled the darkness tightly around. At first, it was just a tentative low growl, like a lost child crouching in the corner of the wall, sobbing softly, hoping for the rescue of a kind-hearted person. Once hope turns into despair, the sobbing turns into a desperate cry, which is heart-wrenching and desolate, thousands of miles away, lying in bed, Chen Feng covered his chest, a sudden palpitation arose, he raised his head and looked in the direction of Dasha, the feeling of palpitation became stronger and stronger, he got up, put on a coat and walked to the French window, outside the window, the summer sun was scorching, the air in front of him was slightly distorted, but he couldn't help but, tighten his clothes, a chill rose from the bottom of his heart. Two more months passed, Chen Feng's injuries had healed for the most part, the wounds on his stomach and legs had already healed, and new purple-red flesh had grown, soon, this new flesh would slowly darken and eventually become scars, rumble. The roar of the car sounded, the long convoy slowly departed, three days later, at the border of Dasha. Chen Feng turned to look at the Rakshasa and Yeksha, the leaders of the four great demons, Chiang Mai Prefecture is left to you to take care of for me, you don't need me to teach you how to do it, I hope you won't disappoint me. Big brother, you can rest assured. The Rakshasa and Yeksha nodded heavily, their unruly faces showing deep respect, Chen Feng nodded, rumble. The car roared, the convoy split in two, one heading towards Dasha, the other towards Chiang Mai Prefecture in Taigua, two days later, in County M, an ordinary Volkswagen stopped outside a building, a figure got out of the car, Lao Lu, you're finally back. Uncle Kai, who had been waiting, stepped forward and gave Chen Feng a hug, then they walked towards the building. In the hall, Uncle Kai looked furious, Lao Lu, you have no idea. During the time you were away, I was struggling alone. These days, the Dixia police have been like wild dogs smelling shit. They've gone crazy catching us. In just a few months, they've raided more than a dozen of our hideouts, damn it. Hearing Uncle Kai's words, Chen Feng frowned slightly. What about the Chai Kai group's leader? What's the situation? They have also suffered heavy losses, so we've decided to give the Dixia police a harsh lesson in the next two days, to let them know we're not to be messed with. What kind of lesson? A warning bell rang in Chen Feng's mind but he remained calm on the surface, a bomb. A fierce look appeared in Uncle Kai's eyes, the places with the most people in Dixia are the train station and the mall. If we casually place a bomb in these two places, it will cause huge casualties. Only this way can we give these crazy dogs a real lesson. Boom! A bomb? Train station or mall? Chen Fang's mind exploded. He hadn't expected these thugs to make such a cruel decision. If they really planted bombs in crowded places like the train station or mall, the casualties would be terrifying. His heart was almost in his throat, but he remained calm on the outside. When will this plan be carried out? Chen Feng tried to keep his tone calm, and Uncle Kai didn't suspect anything. At noon today, when the flow of people is the highest, Chenghua East Station. Let our people go there, and Chai Kai's group will arrange for the mall. At half past twelve, we'll detonate the bomb at the station first, then Chai Kai's group will detonate the bomb at the mall. He he he, this time, we will definitely give them the most painful lesson. After speaking, a relieved smile appeared on Uncle Kai's face. Then he raised the glass of red wine in his hand and drank it all. Yes, we must give them a painful lesson. I'm a bit tired from the journey. I'll rest first. Don't disturb me unless it's something important. Chen Feng cooperated and showed a sinister smile, 
then stood up and stretched lazily as he walked upstairs, you just rest well. I'll make sure they don't disturb you. I guarantee you'll see this feast on the news as soon as you wake up. Uncle Kai smiled, and Chen Feng nodded. Step by step, he walked calmly upstairs. The first floor was the hall, the second floor was Uncle Kai's exclusive area, and the third floor was Chen Feng's territory. When he reached the third floor, Chen Feng slowly closed the door. As soon as the door was closed, his eyes instantly became sharp. He looked at his watch, it was 11 minutes past 10. There was still 1 hour and 49 minutes left before the bombs at Chenghua East Station and the mall would be detonated. He took out his phone and composed a text message, Chenghua Station, the mall, there are bombs. Detonate at 12 o'clock. After sending the message, he immediately stood up, locked the door, gently opened the window, and looked outside. Behind the building was a quiet street. He slowly leaned out of the window, grabbed the edge of the bed that extended out, and slowly lowered himself down. Then he let go gently and landed lightly on the windowsill of the next floor. Tap, tap, tap. At that moment, there was a sound of footsteps in the room. Chen Feng's face changed, and he jumped down. Bang! He rolled to dissipate most of the force, but he felt a tearing pain in his abdomen. Tear! After taking a deep breath, Chen Feng got up and ran towards the distance, stopping a taxi. Driver, hurry to Changhua Station. Driver, please hurry. I'm in a hurry. Chen Feng kept urging, Sir, we have to wait for the traffic lights. The driver frowned and then spoke. Chen Feng reached into his pocket and handed a stack of money to the driver, If you can get to the station within half an hour, this money is yours. Sir, sit tight. I've been wanting to run this red light for a long time. V room. The car roared as the driver stepped on the gas, speeding off like an arrow. Meanwhile, at the Dixia police headquarters, Ouyang Chen looked at the text message on his phone and his expression turned grave. He hurried to the headquarters, and a series of messages were passed down. Ha, Ouyang Chen, is this information from your informant again? The informant who personally shot our comrades? Are you trying to make a fool of us? Yes, Director Ouyang, this is clearly their conspiracy, to make us suspicious of everything, to sow discord among us, and then take advantage of the chaos. Ouyang Chen, can't you see through such obvious tactics? After hearing Ouyang Chen's words, the high-ranking police officials mocked and ridiculed him, showing him no respect. The first time, Chen Feng's information led to the tragic deaths of over a hundred anti-drug police officers, including Ding Hui. The second time, Ouyang Chen's other informants' information led to the near annihilation of nearly a hundred members of Su Weigua's team. The two failed missions resulted in heavy casualties, tarnishing the reputation of the police force. Many top leaders were almost removed from their positions. This made everyone completely lose trust in Ouyang Chen. It's not that they lack professional ethics, but because they no longer want to, and do not intend to, trust the Grey Operations Department led by Ouyang Chen. They do not want to see more innocent officers sacrificed. In just three months, they will hold a public vote to replace Ouyang Chen as the head. Actually, I think we should believe in such information, rather than dismiss it. Otherwise, the consequences could be unimaginable. Suddenly, a high-ranking official spoke up. Ouyang Chen turned to look, and quickly expressed his gratitude. Yes, at places with high foot traffic like the station and the mall, where people are densely packed, the consequences of a bomb would be unthinkable. Another high-ranking official chimed in. One after another, high-ranking officials voiced their support for Ouyang Chen. Finally, all eyes turned to the top leader of the Dixia Anti-Drug Bureau, Lin Chang. Lin Chang furrowed his brow slightly, his face showing no emotion. After a while, he spoke in a deep, steady voice, Indeed, if there really is a bomb at the station or the mall, we cannot afford to ignore it. Immediately issue orders for the M County Police to control the Donghua Station and the Wanha Mall. Local fire and ambulance services should be dispatched immediately. The Su Tao team currently on a mission in M County should participate in the search and disposal of the bomb. To avoid unnecessary panic, immediately contact the Railway Bureau and suspend all train operations at Donghua Station, citing a railway fracture. Yes. Whether in agreement or not, the moment Lin Cheng's orders were issued, everyone immediately got up and went about their duties. Thank you, chief. After the meeting, Ouyang Chen found Lin Chang, his face full of gratitude, but Lin Chang shook his head, you don't need to thank me. As a public servant, these are all things I should do. After speaking, Lin Chang turned and left. Ouyang Chen reached out his hand, opened his mouth a few times, wanting to say something, but in the end, he bitterly put his hand down and said nothing. The failure of the mission twice due to faulty intelligence and the sacrifice of many anti-drug police officers made Lin Chang, the leader, not too fond of Ouyang Chen. Under the orders of the chief doctor of the anti-drug administration, police cars, military vehicles, fire trucks from County M, local anti-drug police, and ambulances all headed towards Donghua Station and Wanhao Square. 
Thirty minutes later, Chen Feng had already arrived at Donghua Station. The entire station was bustling with people coming and going, and the flow of people was particularly large. If there were a bomb, the casualties would be extremely severe. Chen Feng first circled the entire ticket hall, but found no suspicious individuals. He casually bought a ticket and then entered the waiting hall. The waiting hall was not as noisy as the ticket hall, but the flow of people was very high. In waiting halls 1 and 2, there were five rows of people crowded together in line, ready to board the train. Attention all staff, train 326 is about to arrive at the station. Please prepare to receive the train. The station broadcast announced. Chen Feng glanced at his watch. It was already 10.55, with an hour and five minutes to go. Chen Feng quickly walked around the waiting hall, searching every nook and cranny for suspicious individuals, but found none. His forehead was already covered in cold sweat. Attention all staff, due to external factors such as track breakage outside Donghua Station, all trains at Donghua Station are temporarily suspended. Ticket sales at the ticket hall are also suspended. This maintenance is expected to take two days. Please organize passengers to temporarily leave the station. Customers who have already purchased tickets can obtain refunds at the station or through Railway 123 three days later. We apologize for any inconvenience caused. Thank you. Just then, the broadcast sounded again, and the entire waiting hall erupted in wails. However, under the organization of the staff, everyone begrudgingly made their way outside. At that moment, among the crowd, one person's expression changed slightly. He decisively reached into his bag, pressed it twice, then quickly walked towards the exit with the bag. It was at this moment that Chin Feng finally noticed him. His expression turned serious, and he hurried over. He didn't shout stop and chase after him like on TV, because that was only on TV. Besides alerting the snake, it would be of no use. However, after the figure put down the bag and quickly disappeared into the crowd, it further confirmed Chen Feng's suspicions. His face turned pale, but he couldn't afford to expose himself. He immediately ran over, picked up the bag, and opened it. Inside was a timed bomb rapidly flashing, with the countdown showing 3.32, less than 4 minutes, and it was quickly ticking down. At the sight of the bomb, his pupils contracted sharply. Sweat broke out all over his body, and he felt cold all over. Even though he had received professional training, at this moment, he still felt a bit stiff. There were people all around him, and the bomb would explode in less than five minutes. Now, countless passengers who had already entered the station were retreating from the platform, and the passengers in the waiting hall were rushing outside. Calm down, Chen Feng, stay calm. Chen Feng quickly told himself in his mind. Woo 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 just then, urgent alarm bells rang outside, and a group of fully armed police officers quickly rushed into the station. First team, search the ticket hall, second team, control all exit points of the station. Third team, help evacuate passengers. Fourth team, control the station perimeter. Fifth team and Captain Su, join us in searching the waiting hall. Yes, all personnel are orderly divided into groups. Captain Wang Hongyang of the Special Police Brigade and Captain Su Tao of the Drug Enforcement Team led their respective teams quickly towards the waiting hall. They saw armed police and special police, and some passengers also realized that something was wrong. It was just a track fracture, why were there so many police officers in the station? Panic began to rise in the hearts of all passengers, and they quickly rushed outside. Wan Hongyang and Su Tao led their teams to rush into the waiting hall. Captain Su, I will lead the search on the first floor, you take care of the second floor. Yes. Su Tao quickly led his team towards the second floor waiting hall. Hearing the police siren, Chen Feng knew that the police had arrived. Soon, Su Tao had led his team to the second floor, and at this time, Chen Feng, carrying a handbag, turned and ran towards the back. The crowd was extremely chaotic, and it was impossible to evacuate in two minutes. Now there were only a few people on the train platform. Disarming the bomb barehanded was simply a dream. That was only a plot in the TV series and was only applicable to the kind of bomb during World War II. The amount of TNT could easily overturn the entire second floor if mishandled, and Chen Feng would be annihilated. Sir, the train has stopped running. Please leave the waiting hall. A railway staff member saw Chen Feng running quickly and immediately reminded him with a smile. Get out of the way. I have a bomb in my hand. Chen Feng shouted, and the staff member was stunned, then smiled, and said, Sir, please don't joke with me, I. Chen Feng directly took out the explosives from the handbag and said fiercely, Get out of the way. Ah. The staff member suddenly exclaimed and paled, then retreated to the side. Chen Feng rushed in, then headed towards the platform through the boarding passage. Just as Su Tao and his team had just arrived on the second floor, they saw the scene. He quickly led his team to catch up. Police comrade, help, help. A thug just broke in, and he has a bomb. 
Hearing the railway staff member's words, Su Tao was shocked. You leave here first, and everyone follow me. The staff member quickly staggered away, and Su Tao led his team into the waiting hall. At this time, Chen Feng had rushed to the platform. Several railway staff who were preparing to retreat were slightly stunned when they saw Chen Feng, but when they saw the bomb in Chen Feng's hand, they all exclaimed and quickly ran away. Hearing these screams, Su Tao and others immediately quickened their pace. Just as they walked out of the passage, they saw a person quickly running towards the distance. Several railway staff were scared and fell to the ground, screaming desperately. Faced with such a scene, ordinary people could do nothing but scream. Seeing this, Su Tao shouted as he chased after, Stop! If you don't stop, we will shoot. But Chen Feng acted as if he hadn't heard and continued to run, looking at the countdown on the bomb in his hand. There were only 1 minute and 21 seconds left. No, he had to go further, further. There were several railway staff lying on the ground. If the bomb exploded at such a close distance, these people would have no chance. The residential area outside the railway fence was too close and would also be affected by the blast. The scene of the police catching the criminal quickly attracted the attention of the people inside the residential area outside the station fence. They gathered at the window and pointed at Chen Feng and Su Tao and the other police officers. Damn, the police are catching the criminal alive? This is like a scene from a big movie. A couple exclaimed in surprise. Honey, come and see, the police are arresting someone. A woman saw the scene and was full of amazement, and quickly called her husband over. Her husband came over and quickly turned on his phone. Are they shooting a police and gangster movie? TSK TSK, police comrades, come on, catch the bad guy. An old man shouted loudly. Sorry, I can't help with that request. In front of the screen, everyone watched anxiously as they saw Chen Feng desperately running amidst the attacks, being hit by various objects, and hearing his heart-wrenching shouts. They couldn't help but shed tears. Stop it, he's trying to save you. A man clenched his fists and roared at the screen, his eyes turning red with anger. He pounded the table in front of him, causing it to shatter and cut his hand, but he seemed oblivious, tears streaming down his face. Please, don't hurt him, don't hurt him. I can't bear to see it. A woman cried out, stop it, you scoundrels, he's risking his life to protect you. In front of the TV, an elderly man struck it with his cane, tears streaming down his face. The cane slipped from his hand and an old woman tremblingly picked it up and handed it back to him. Old man, kill them, kill these heartless wolves. Please don't hurt him, uncle, he's not a bad person, he's a hero, Ultraman, save uncle, save uncle. In front of the computer, a young boy cried as he brought his Ultraman toy closer to the screen, trying to use it to shield Chen Feng from the harm. Everyone knew this was just Chen Feng's memory, an event that had already happened and couldn't be changed. But at this moment, almost everyone lost control and wept deeply affected by Chen Feng's heart-wrenching cries. They all unconsciously tried to help him in their own ways, imagining that they could alleviate the suffering of this man. But it was all in vain, the harm was still inflicted upon him, and the regret couldn't be erased. He's risking his life to save everyone, and everyone is desperately hurting him. He walks on the edge of a knife, dodges bullets with ease, but in the face of your harm, he cries his heart out. It's not that he's not strong enough, it's that he's too aggrieved. He protects us with his flesh and blood, without hesitation. But seeing this scene, I ask myself, do we really deserve his protection? Chen Feng, if, if you can hear me, drop the bomb, run for your life, they're not worth it. Each of you is attacking Chen Feng, calling him a devil, a butcher, a demon, scum, but have you ever thought that it might be you who slowly turned him into a devil? Chen Feng, even if you become a devil in the future, I, I won't hate you, because, I don't deserve to. Chen Feng, Chen Sisi, who was watching from the side, couldn't hold back her tears again. You devil, aren't you ruthless? Aren't you insane? Throw the bomb, blow them up. Stop pretending to be a good person. If you can't be a good person, then just be a peaceful devil. Chen Feng. Chen Cici screamed fiercely in her heart. As a police officer of Dasha, she and Chen Feng were at odds. Her duty was to protect the people, but at this moment, she had such evil thoughts. She actually wanted Chen Feng to throw the bomb in his hand and kill these people. There was a faint feeling in her heart. As a hero, she was covered in scars. Why not become a devil to at least protect herself? Snap! A crisp sound rang out, and Chen Cici fiercely slapped herself. Chen Cici, how can you be so soft-hearted? How can you feel sorry for him? In this world, the last person you should forgive is him. Have you forgotten that he personally handed the knife to his mother's chest? Have you forgotten that your younger brother's small body lay on the ground with his eyes closed forever? Have you forgotten their painful cries and screams over the past decade? Have you forgotten the countless innocent souls slaughtered by this butcher? Chen Cici fiercely told herself in her heart, 
but a feeling called compassion rose in her heart. No matter what kind of devil Chen Feng would become in the future, at least at this moment, Chen Feng, oh, how heart-wrenching. Pying. In the courtroom, a man suddenly knelt down, his eyes already red, his body trembling constantly. Chen Feng. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We misunderstood you. I'm not a monster, not a monster. Bang. As the man spoke, he repeatedly banged his head heavily on the ground. He came to the courtroom today, intending to join everyone in judging Chen Feng as a demon. Watching Chen Feng being executed, everyone was applauding. Watching Chen Feng enter the judgment device and suffer extreme pain, everyone's hearts were filled with relief. But now, his heart was filled with regret. He hated himself. He was among the residents who had been the most aggressive towards Chen Feng. He had thrown everything he could at Chen Feng, thinking he was acting justly, punishing evil and promoting good, and being a just judge. But now he knew that they had all misunderstood this man, this man who had risked his life to save them. At the same time, all over the country, countless people knelt down spontaneously. They were all residents of the community near the train station. Everyone was in tears, watching the figure on the screen. Some cowed out, some kept slapping themselves, all filled with regret. They all kept choking out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Chen Feng, we don't deserve your salvation. We're such bastards, why do you still want to save us? You let us die. At this moment, all the residents who had acted against Chen Feng shed tears and knelt down in repentance. They had never hated themselves more than at this moment. In the memory judgment device, Chen Feng's body trembled more and more violently as the memories were extracted. In his mind, there was a piercing pain, listening to the countless voices of repentance and apology in the courtroom, tears flowed down his cheeks. Don't. Don't apologize. When I chose to become a gray person, I never regretted it. Don't say I'm not worth it. I'm not afraid of sacrifice. I'm only afraid that even if I sacrifice, I can't save you from the abyss. Chen Feng struggled, his lips moving laboriously, his voice like a mosquito, but no one could hear it. In the hall, the emotions of the crowd slowly recovered. On the memory judgment device, Chen Feng's memories were still playing. Chen Feng lowered his head, and there were only 30 seconds left. Looking up, there were still over a hundred meters to the end of the community. Just need to run over this hundred meters to avoid causing any casualties. Run. Move forward, run for your life. Chen Feng kept telling himself that the residents on both sides of the building, behind which Chen Feng ran, were looking at his back with lingering eyes, while the people in front of the community were holding various items in their hands, eagerly waiting. When Chen Feng ran past them, they fiercely aimed their items at him and threw them, causing intense pain in his head and blurring his vision with blood. He roared in anger, forcing himself to continue running, telling himself not to stop. Suddenly, he shouted, startling the residents on both sides, and they became even more angry and threw their items with greater force. Meanwhile, Wang Hongyang, who had already gathered the special police on the first floor, had caught up. Upon hearing Chen Feng's shout, someone exclaimed, Oh no, he wants to throw the bomb at the residential building. Wang Hongyang's face changed, and after a struggle, he raised his rifle and aimed at Chen Feng. When Su Tao saw this, he shouted, Director Wang, stop. But before Su Tao could finish speaking, Wang Hongyang had already pulled the trigger. Chen Feng felt a piercing pain in his left arm, and the bomb almost slipped from his hand. He quickly grabbed it with his other hand and continued running. Stop. We are the Dasha People's Police. Put down the bomb and surrender. Su Tao glanced at Wang Hongyang and continued shouting as he ran forward. With just a few meters left, he used to be able to cover this distance in a few seconds during training, like a cheetah, but now, he was covered in wounds and felt intense pain with every step. Chen Feng gasped for breath like a broken bellows, his eyes fixed on the bomb. 10 seconds, 9 seconds, 8 seconds, 7 seconds. The countdown to death. He ran frantically, pushing himself forward, with just over 20 meters left. 6 seconds, 5 seconds, 4 seconds, drip, drip, drip. The bomb suddenly started beeping frantically. Too late. Chen Feng shouted in his heart, leaned back slightly, tensed his muscles, and then used all his strength to throw the bomb forward. As it slipped from his hand, he turned to look at Su Tao, who was close by, and the residents on both sides, and roared, Get down! Bang! A bullet hit Chen Feng's right chest, and he stumbled and fell in the middle of the tracks. At that moment, a deafening explosion rang out, and the earth seemed to shake. The explosion created a small mushroom cloud, accompanied by a crimson flame. It spread rapidly from the edge of the residential area, like a demon's mouth, with a scorching wave and a deafening roar. The billowing smoke rose into the sky, and the adjacent residential area was affected, with glass shattering instantly and walls emitting weak groans. The front row of houses collapsed one after another, and the shattered steel and concrete fell like meteors, mercilessly hitting the fleeing crowd below. 
The bright red blood splattered everywhere, on the shattered glass curtain wall and the cracked platform, like a blooming red rose, dazzling and captivating. The residential area was on the verge of collapse, the fire seemed to break through the sky. At the moment Su Tao heard Chen Feng's voice, his eyes whitened suddenly. Because at that moment, Chen Feng's voice was no longer concealed, and he felt an extremely familiar sensation. This feeling made him instinctively choose to trust. Everyone, get down! Su Tao shouted, and the others had absolute trust in him. At the moment Su Tao's voice rang out, almost everyone fell to the ground almost simultaneously. In the next moment, a wave of heat mixed with chunks of cement and broken iron rails whistled past their heads. However, Wang Hongyang and others who rushed over were not so lucky. Ah! Cries of agony rang out as several unlucky individuals were instantly hit by cement blocks or pierced by steel pieces. Others were knocked over by the wave of heat and slammed to the ground. After a few seconds, the explosion finally subsided. Chen Feng slowly stood up, holding the wound on his chest. Su Tao and the others also slowly got up. Everyone's gaze turned to the large crater in the distance, over 7 to 8 meters in diameter and filled with smoke. A sense of palpitation rose in their eyes. In the crater, smoke was still rising, and large chunks of cement were being torn apart, as if an earthquake had occurred. Nearby residential buildings had collapsed almost halfway, and broken iron rails snarled towards the sky. Ah! It hurts so much! Help me! Someone help me! Heavens! My leg! My leg is broken! Demon, this demon, this demon has caused us great suffering. Help, help. In the residential building, the sound of wailing figures lying in pools of blood could be heard. Some were impaled by shattered glass, others were hit by huge cement blocks, and still others were knocked over by the terrifying shockwave, lying on the ground, barely breathing. Some had already taken their last breath, and others had fallen from the building in the instant of the explosion, instantly swallowed up, leaving no trace. In Wang Hongyang's team behind Su Tao and the others, several police officers had already fallen into the pool of blood, some lying on the ground unable to speak, only making hoarse sounds in their throats as blood continued to flow from their mouths, until they soon ran out of breath. Chen Feng stared blankly at the scene, as if it were a hell on earth. His eyes widened, almost on the verge of tears. He clutched his chest, staggered, and his eyes were filled with blankness and self-blame. I didn't save them, I didn't save them. It's all my fault, it's all my fault. If only I had run faster, if only I had thrown the bomb farther, if only I had come back earlier, if only I had found the bomb earlier, so many people wouldn't have died, so many people wouldn't have died. It's all my fault, it's all my fault. Chen Feng's agonizing howl, pounding his head with both hands, extreme grief rising from his heart. Demon, demon, you're a demon. A man angrily shouted at Chen Feng, you demon, give me back my husband, give me back my son's life. A woman wailed heartbreakingly, tears flowing uncontrollably. Just moments ago, their family of three had been promoting good deeds, crazily attacking Chen Feng. But at this moment, her husband and child lay in a pool of blood, their eyes already turning gray, devoid of light. You devil! The net of heaven is wide and coarse, yet nothing slips through. You have committed numerous evil deeds and will surely not die a good death. Devil, you will not die a good death. Devil, you will face retribution. Good and evil will be repaid in the end. Devil, your arrogance won't last long. Devil, they are waiting for you down below. You demon, you belong in the 18th level of hell. Devil, I curse you to have no resting place in death. Many people were in tears, their faces filled with endless resentment. Every curse directed at Chen Feng made his figure tremble slightly. These words seemed to be sharp blades stabbing fiercely into his chest, filled with self-blame, guilt, and sorrow. Seeing this, countless spectators began to curse, you are the demons, you are the ones who should go to hell. Chen Feng was desperately trying to save you, but you are recklessly endangering yourselves. You deserve to die. Chen Feng has been shouting for you to go in, wanting to do everything to save you, but what did you do? You did everything to stop him. Who are you to blame Chen Feng? You cowards, shameful vermin. I don't know why, but when I saw them being blown up, I felt a kind of pleasure in my heart. It's you who hurt him with all your might. You are the ones who should go to hell. Chen Feng, don't cry, it's not your fault. Chen Feng, they deserve to die, you've done your best. Chen Feng, do you know? You are a hero, you don't need to blame yourself. Angry roars from the audience through the screen, they were indignant for Chen Feng. Beside the big pit, Chen Feng's gaze was vacant and sorrowful. Suddenly, he remembered that there was another bomb in another place, the Wanhao Airport. He looked at his watch, it was 11.15, 45 minutes left until 12 o'clock. However, once the Shigai group knew that the bomb at Donghua Station had been detonated prematurely, they would definitely know that something had happened. Chen Feng didn't know if they would detonate the bomb early, but he couldn't take the risk. He had to stop it. 
He had to put away his sorrowful feelings, covered his chest, and quickly ran towards the gaping hole created by the explosion. While Wang Hongyang and other police officers saw the scene of hell on earth, they couldn't help but be filled with rage and fear. Ah, devil, I will kill you. Wang Hongyang's expression was ferocious as he led the charge into the smoke and dust, but there was no one inside. At this moment, other squads on alert and firefighters, doctors, and nurses rushed in when they heard the explosion. When they saw the scene of hell on earth, everyone couldn't help but widen their eyes, cover their mouths, and be greatly shocked. Oh my god. Wang Hongyang saw them and immediately spoke, you came just in time. Squad 5, stay to maintain order. Squads 1 and 2, help treat the wounded. Doctors, nurses, hurry and save people. Other squads, follow me. He can't have gone far. Captain Su, you take your squad and follow me to chase this thug. Wang Hongyang issued orders methodically, and finally, with a face full of resentment, good. Su Tao nodded, and under Wang Hongyang's command, they quickly rescued the wounded. Chen Feng ran onto the street, his pitiful appearance attracting the attention of the crowd. He stopped a taxi at the station, and before the driver could speak, Chen Feng got into the back seat and a sharp blade was already at the driver's neck. If you don't want to die, go to Wanhao Square. Hurry. Okay, okay, brother, please don't kill me, I'll do as you say, I'll do as you say. The driver had never seen such a scene before, feeling the coldness on his neck, he was almost scared to death, and immediately drove the taxi towards Wanhao Square. Wang Hongyang and the others rushed out, but Chen Feng's taxi had already disappeared into the traffic. Finally, Wang Hongyang learned from the onlookers the direction in which Chen Feng's car had disappeared. Looking at the direction pointed out by the crowd, Wang Hongyang's pupils shrank sharply, Wan Hao Mall. Wan Hao Mall, this devil just bombed Donghua Station, and now he wants to bomb Wan Hao Mall. Everyone, get in the car, target Wan Hao Mall. After getting on the car, Wang Hongyang immediately notified the police at the Marriott Mall. Instantly, the entire mall was once again in a state of panic, with everyone on high alert. Meanwhile, the traffic department began to control the roads. Outside the screen, Wang Hongyang, who had already been promoted to the head of the police department, had gray hair at his temples. He stared blankly at the large screen in the hall, his eyes red, not saying a word. After a long time, he staggered into his office and closed the door. Faint sounds of suppressed sobbing could be heard from inside. At the same time in the courtroom, Su Tao suddenly realized, murmuring to himself, no wonder, no wonder. When I first heard his voice, I felt it was familiar, as if it were my brother's voice. I instinctively felt that he didn't actually want to harm anyone. No wonder when he ran to the platform, the train crew said that the person with the bomb was running towards the platform. If he really wanted to cause the most casualties, he should have run towards the waiting hall on the first floor. He desperately ran towards the empty area. When he reached the edge of the community, he forcefully threw the bomb towards a less crowded area. When he turned around, he was shouting at us to lie down, that the bomb was about to explode. But the bomb was closer to him. If he hadn't accidentally fallen into the blind spot of the track, avoiding the powerful blast, he would have had no chance of survival. He bore a heavy burden and couldn't reveal his identity. He could only fight alone. As his former instructor, his comrade, his brother, I should have been the one who understood him the most. I should have recognized him. I should have fought alongside him. But I. Sob, sob. When the whole world didn't believe in him, I actually stood on the opposite side of the whole world. At the end, Su Tao covered his face and sobbed in pain. His comrades beside him also bowed their heads and wiped their tears. If it weren't for Chen Feng's reminder, their squad would have almost been completely wiped out. On the large screen, Chen Feng continued to urge the driver to speed up. Faint sirens could be heard from behind. At the same time, the entire M County Traffic Department began to control traffic, setting up various roadblocks and personnel to pursue an intercept from various checkpoints. Time passed by every minute, and in the blink of an eye, it was already 11.23. Faster, faster, even faster. Chen Feng continued to urge, and the driver could only grimly step on the gas pedal, swiftly weaving through the traffic, narrowly crossing red lights. Closer, closer, even closer. In the distance, Chen Feng could already see the building where the Marriott Mall was located. In the Marriott Mall at this time, a large number of police officers were quickly evacuating the crowd. However, even so, there were still many people who had not left the mall. Firefighters and ambulances were already in place, and bomb disposal police were searching for suspicious individuals, checking various possible locations where bombs could be hidden, such as trash cans and restrooms. Inside the Marriott Mall, countless people looked panicked. The first and second floors were relatively calm, but more than half of the crowd on the third floor and above had not come down. At this time, in the baby products store on the fourth floor, 
a group of pregnant women anxiously looked at the crowded crowd. Their accompanying husbands desperately pushed through the crowd to escort their wives out. However, a small group of pregnant women who had come alone were anxiously clutching their stomachs, but dared not push through the crowd below, as it could endanger the lives of their unborn children. Mom, don't be afraid. I'll protect you. Shin Sisi, who was not even a meter tall, reached out with her two small hands, protecting Bai Luo behind her like a mother hen shielding her chicks. Her face was full of determination and seriousness, softening Bai Luo's heart. A certain tender spot within her was deeply touched. Looking at the sensible and heart-wrenching Chen Sisi in front of her, Bai Luo's nose couldn't help but feel sour. She touched her already very prominent belly, and at the same time, a figure appeared in her mind. If you were here, it would be so good. At this moment, outside the baby store, a pregnant woman with an equally large belly looked at the crowded crowd and the blaring alarm outside. A hint of cruelty flashed across her face as she gently caressed her belly. She slowly walked towards the crowded crowd. Meanwhile, Chen Feng was rushing towards the Marriott Square. Suddenly, a loud bang echoed, and everyone looked up in confusion. Then their eyes widened in horror. The tall Marriott Mall was already engulfed in thick smoke and flames, and the outer layer of glass had been completely shattered. Everyone, save people, put out the fire. The person in charge at the scene roared in anguish. All the firefighters and special police immediately rushed into the mall. Chen Feng followed suit and rushed in. In the thick smoke, he scanned the area and saw the flames on the third floor. In the glow of the fire, he could see the entrance to the elevator on the third floor in a mess, with large chunks of concrete and a floor covered in bodies. The crimson blood turned the scene into a hellish sight. The platform on the third floor had a large gap blown out, revealing the sinister and twisted steel bars. The elevator from the second floor to the third floor had been blasted apart, and behind it was a clothing store already engulfed in flames, with the flames licking the fourth floor. Help! Help! Some of the seriously injured victims lying on the ground were screaming and groaning, calling for help. The customers on the third and fourth floors, who were temporarily safe, were crying and shouting in panic. No! No no no! Chen Feng shouted in despair. He had failed to defuse the bomb at the train station, resulting in the tragic deaths of some residents and police officers. Now, the bomb at the Marriott Mall had exploded prematurely, causing even more casualties. It was like a hell on earth, and it was all his fault. Hurry, hurry, save people. Where are the firefighters? Put out the fire quickly. The commanding officer at the scene shouted at the top of his lungs. The special police, doctors, and nurses quickly came in and carried out the groaning victims. As for the bodies that had been confirmed to have no signs of life, they could only be tearfully ignored. Now, they could only give the gift of life to those who still had hope of survival. The firefighters aimed their hoses at the massive fire on the third floor, and the water gushed out with a deafening roar. However, at that moment, the natural gas in a self-service barbecue restaurant on the fourth floor, which had been continuously licked by the flames on the third floor, was instantly ignited. The next moment, the terrifying sound of the explosion was incessant, and the entire restaurant instantly turned into a raging sea of fire. The customers hiding in the restaurant were instantly engulfed. Some were directly taken by the explosion, while others rushed out in agony, their bodies burning with flames. They couldn't see the way ahead and fell from the fourth floor turning into a bloody mess. The fire instantly spread to more than half of the fourth floor. Ah, help me. Who will save me? I don't want to die. Wah, help. The masses who are still alive have been frightened to the core, panic and fear pervade their hearts, and death is looming close. The threat of death makes their hair stand on end, their brains go blank, and they can only instinctively cry for help, save people, save people, save people. Fire trucks, suppress the fire, air cushions, set up fire escape stairs, escort the people from the third and fourth floors downstairs. Special police and firefighters, rush in and rescue the wounded. As long as there is still breath, damn it, save them for me. The people of the whole country support us in peacetime. If that bastard dares to retreat, don't blame me for turning my back on him. Damn it, follow me. The on-site commander roared, then led the way and charged in. Chen Feng quickly followed and rushed in. Special police and firefighters risked their lives to rush into the raging fire, carrying out the injured who still had breath. The uninjured masses quickly descended the stairs or fire exits, some simply jumped towards the safety cushion below. One by one, police officers and firefighters rushed into the fire and came out carrying or holding a charred figure. At that moment, a figure suddenly rushed out from the most intense part of the fire, engulfed in flames, holding a charred figure in his arms. When the on-site commander Hu Jianfei saw this figure, he was slightly stunned, then a surge of excitement arose in his heart. Water, water, water. Spray him. 
Hu Jianfei shouted, and the nearby firefighter slightly adjusted the nozzle, then aimed it upwards and sprayed water onto Chen Feng's head, then directed it downwards, drenching Chen Feng like a drowned rat, extinguishing the flames on him. He quickly tore off his charred clothes, his face and exposed skin were burnt red, his hair completely charred, his face blackened. Chen Feng handed the charred figure in his arms to the special police who came to assist, then turned around, draped the wet clothes over his head, and rushed back in. Seeing this scene, Hu Jianfei was slightly stunned, which department is he from? Commander, he seems to be a civilian who just followed us in. A police officer who had just seen Chen Feng spoke up. Hearing this, the commander was momentarily taken aback, then his eyes reddened slightly. He fiercely punched the air, damn it, well done, did you see that? This is a fine son of our great Xia. Brothers, damn it, follow me and continue to charge, charge into the fire, damn it, charge with me. Behind us is the people, we cannot take a step back. Hu Jianfei roared, seeing Chen Feng's bravery, he felt his blood boil, a surge of blood and energy rushed through him. The men of Great Xia, with these three feet of body, will repay the country. Hu Jianfei led his men and charged into the most dangerous and intense part of the fire. Soon, they dragged out one injured person after another, their injuries were severe, some were even disfigured by burns, but they were still alive. Some were suffocated by the thick smoke, if it weren't for Chen Feng, Hu Jianfei, and others rushing in and desperately rescuing them, they would probably have been burned alive and turned into charcoal. Hu, Hu, Hu Jianfei and the others handed the injured over to the support personnel, then bent over, hands on their knees, breathing in large gulps of fresh air. Everyone's eyes were red from the smoke, they looked extremely disheveled, some felt dizzy and kept coughing, their noses and eyes constantly streaming with tears and mucus, unable to say a word. And at that moment, another figure rushed out again, splashing. The fire truck's water once again drenched it like a chicken in soup, extinguishing the flames on its body in an instant. A burst of steam rose, and a figure in his arms kept convulsing, but there was still hope. He handed the injured person in his arms to the medical staff, turned around, and at that moment, a hand grabbed him. Kid, it's over, there are no more survivors inside. Even if we rescue them, they won't survive. The one grabbing him was Hu Jianfei. Looking at Chen Feng's face, which was red and almost cooked, he couldn't help but feel a little heartache. This kid, he was not much younger than his eldest son. There may still be people inside. Chen Feng said with red eyes, choking, there's no hope left. Give the chance of survival to those who are still alive. Hu Jianfei also had red eyes, his voice trembling. As a police officer, they should have stood in front of the people in danger. Even if they died, they should have died in front of the people. But now, there were so many people who needed his protection dying in front of him, causing extreme heartache, self-blame, and discomfort. He should have rushed in to save people at all costs, but now all he could do was minimize the casualties and give the chance of survival to those who were still alive. Commander! Commander, there's a maternity ward here, with many pregnant women and children inside. Just then, a hurried voice came from the fourth floor. Hu Jianfei's heart skipped a beat. Pregnant women, children. They needed the most protection and were the future of the country. Save them. Hu Jianfei shouted, and at that moment, a figure rushed out like a cheetah. Hu Jianfei quickly followed, watching Chen Feng's back with a surge of relief and pride. This kid, he must be brought into the police force afterwards. Such a good kid, it would be a pity for him to do anything else. What Hu Jianfei didn't know was that Chen Feng was not only a police officer, but also one of the highest mortality rates among the anti-drug police. The maternity ward was just next to the explosion at the self-service barbecue restaurant. Although the fire was not very big, the explosion on the third floor affected the elevator from the third to the fourth floor. Normally, people could barely climb down, but for them, it was like climbing to the sky. At the entrance of the maternity ward, the floor was full of cracks, looking precarious. The sudden explosion and the raging flames made them instinctively retreat into the maternity ward. Except for the pregnant women who had escaped with their relatives at the beginning, most of the pregnant women could only hide in the maternity ward, crying and screaming. Some pregnant women on the verge of giving birth were already lying on the ground, convulsing and wailing weakly, their amniotic fluid breaking. Woo, my child, my child. Child, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Woo, husband, where are you? I'm so scared. I don't want to die, my child hasn't been born yet, I want to give birth to my child. Each pregnant woman covered her belly, tears streaming down her face. Their unborn children were already facing the threat of death. At this moment, the fire on the fourth floor, at the elevator and the exploded self-service barbecue restaurant, became more severe, quickly engulfing the maternity ward in the middle. The fire demon was about to devour them. Helpless, they cried, only able to pray devoutly for the salvation of Buddha and the gods. But at this moment, Buddha and the gods did not appear, 
only the fire demon continued to rampage, constantly harvesting innocent lives. Despair, powerlessness, the hope of life was being slowly devoured by the surging fire demon. Their lives seemed to be coming to an end here. Putting down their hands, they used all their strength to protect the small lives in their bellies, turning their backs to face the surging flames that were about to engulf them. Even in death, they wanted to die in front of their children. Women may be weak, but as mothers, they are strong. They are going to use their frail bodies to block the fire demon. If they are still alive for one more second, they will not allow their unborn children to be harmed. This is the last protection a mother can offer to her child. Mom, I'm scared. Even the most strong and sensible child is still a child. Shen Cici couldn't help but cry at the sight of this scene. Shen Shen, don't be afraid. Mom is here. Bai Luo's heart was also filled with fear, but at this moment, she still had to stand up to protect her child. Holding Chen Cici tightly in her arms, she, like the others, turned around and faced the oncoming flames with her fragile back. In her mind, a figure appeared, if only you were here. How good would that be? It seems that there is no hope left. The entire maternity ward is filled with despair and sobbing. The grim reaper stands by with his scythe, and the eyes of the people have begun to lose their vitality and color. Death is finally approaching. And just at that moment, figures rushed through the flames as if descending from the heavens, braving the flames and desperately rushing inside. There are still many pregnant women and children here. Fire truck, spray towards this area, suppress the fire. Everyone else, do your best to rescue the pregnant women and children. Hu Jianfei roared. When he saw a group of weak pregnant women turning around to face the flames with their fragile backs, and heard the desperate cries, tears finally fell from their eyes. Don't be afraid. We are the People's Police of China, and we are here. We are here. We are here. Each police officer, including Chin Fong, shouted loudly with tears in their eyes. The pregnant women who had already closed their eyes in despair trembled when they heard these voices. They couldn't believe it as they turned around and saw figures in police uniforms running towards them from the flames. Everyone couldn't help but burst into tears, crying uncontrollably, tears flowing without restraint. Ah, woo woo woo. It's the people's police, our people's police. They are here, they are here. Our saviors have come. We have not been abandoned. We have not been abandoned. The gods we prayed to did not appear, but where the gods do not exist, they have come. Seeing hope in the midst of despair, seeing light in the darkness, when they saw the figures in police uniforms appear, everyone was moved to tears and let out heart-wrenching cries, and at the same time, their hearts instantly calmed down. Because they knew that as long as the people's police appeared, there was hope, and as long as the people's police arrived, there was salvation. Chen Feng and the others rushed in, took a quick look around, and then quickly soaked pieces of clothing in water, wrapping up each pregnant woman and carefully escorting them out. Comrades, there are a few sisters here whose amniotic fluid has broken. Please save them first. A few pregnant women who were supposed to be next bit their lips and then spoke. Although they were also pregnant, their condition was much better than the pregnant women lying on the ground whose amniotic fluid had broken or was about to break. At this moment, they chose to give the hope of life to the more seriously ill pregnant women. Even though many people say that the people of Dashia have inferior qualities, it cannot be denied that they are still one of the finest nations in the world. At this critical moment, even the women who are usually considered weak are not gods, but they are equal to gods at this moment. It is precisely because of the dedication, sacrifice, fearless spirit, and tremendous cohesion possessed by the people of Dasha that even in the face of numerous hardships, this great nation can stand tall among the world's nations. This colossal figure in the east has once again grown to become a powerful and respected nation that the world looks up to. Chen Feng glanced at the pregnant women and nodded heavily without any hesitation. At that moment, time was life. They immediately organized into groups of four to carry out the pregnant women in critical condition. Upon hearing about the pregnant women, the firefighters downstairs had already taken relevant measures. A small ladder slowly ascended to the gap on the fourth floor, where the pregnant women were placed and then slowly lowered to safety. Just as they landed, a group of medical staff rushed forward, carrying the pregnant women on stretchers to the waiting ambulances to give birth. Chen Feng and the others then returned, and after two trips, all the pregnant women in critical condition had been safely evacuated. Following this, Chen Feng and the others escorted each pregnant woman out in sequence. The fire grew larger and the flames had already engulfed nearly half of the maternity ward. Despite efforts to suppress it with water hoses, the flames continued to rage. Crack! At that moment, a cracking sound came from the wooden ceiling of the maternity ward. Chen Feng looked up and was horrified to see that half of the wooden ceiling had been burned through, and the main beam was on the verge of collapse. Quick! Hurry! Speed up! Hu Jianfei also saw the scene and immediately shouted desperately. 
Upon hearing his words, all the special police and firefighters gritted their teeth and increased their speed. The pregnant women were also frightened and began to stir, causing a small wave of screams. Don't panic, don't panic. We're here, even if it falls, we'll support you. You'll be safe with us. Chen Feng reassured the crowd loudly while rescuing people. Upon hearing this voice, Bai Luo and Chen Sisi, who were inside, suddenly looked up in disbelief at the figure. What they saw was a dark figure with hair already singed and sticking to the scalp after being wet with sweat and water. Apart from the eyes and teeth, there was not a single intact part of the body. However, for some reason, Bai Luo and Chen Sisi instantly recognized Chen Feng at that moment. They stared in astonishment, moved, and disbelieving. Soon, their noses tingled, and it felt as if sand had entered their eyes. Bai Luo stared at Chen Feng, filled with both emotion and deep confusion. She had never known what Chen Feng did, and he had never asked. Over the years, they had developed a kind of tacit understanding. Bai Luo was a smart person, and she knew that Chen Feng must have had his reasons for not speaking. However, at that moment, when Chen Feng and a group of police officers appeared as if sent by the heavens to rescue them, she instinctively believed that Chen Feng was a police officer. But if Chen Feng was just a police officer, there was no need to hide it. But if he wasn't a police officer, Dad, Dad, Dad. Chen Sisi tearfully looked at Chen Feng, her mouth pouting, unable to hold back her tears as she called out. What started as a low sob grew louder and louder as she called out for her father, the man she could only dream of, the man her mother and she missed. The man who was gradually fading from her memory, the man who, even in his current disheveled state, she couldn't see clearly, but the blood connection between father and daughter allowed Chen Cici to recognize him at a glance as her father. The moment Chen Cici's voice fell into Chen Feng's ears, as he was supporting a pregnant woman and running outside, his body suddenly stiffened. His eyes were full of bewilderment and disbelief, as if his heart was being crushed by a heavy stone. His lips trembled uncontrollably, his mind went blank, and he turned mechanically to see Bai Luo, who was pregnant and calling out for help, and Chen Sisi, who was being led by Bai Luo, both of the women he should protect, looking at him helplessly with tears in their eyes. Boom! A loud noise reverberated in his mind, and his lips trembled as if he had used up all his strength. His voice was hoarse and trembling, Bai Luo, Xian Xian, what are you doing? Kid, what are you standing here for? Don't you know that time is of the essence? Hu Jianfei, who had just rescued a pregnant woman and returned, looked at Chen Feng standing still and shouted loudly. Hu Jianfei's reprimand was like a wake-up call, and his mind quickly became clear. Yes, time is of the essence. Hesitating for a second now could cost someone their life. Bai Luo, Xian Xian, I'm sorry, wait for me to come back. Chen Feng silently shouted, then quickly ran outside with the panicked pregnant woman. As he turned, Tears had already moistened his eyes. As a husband and father, he should have rushed in to rescue his wife and daughter immediately, but as a soldier of the nation, he could not allow himself to have any selfishness. The lives of all the people must be equal in his heart. This decision was difficult but resolute. Mom, it's dad. Dad, I just saw dad calling Xuan Xuan's name. Is dad coming to rescue us? Chen Cici was ecstatic, with tears on her face but smiling more brightly than ever. Bai Luo was even more overwhelmed, her tears blurred, and she could only nod heavily. Soon, Chen Feng's figure appeared again. Chen Cici looked at him expectantly and reached out her hand. Dad, Chen Xian is here, your precious Chen Xian is here, Dad. Chen Cici jumped for joy, like a little elf, even in the midst of the fire. At this moment, she only had Chen Feng in her eyes, as if as long as Chen Feng was there, she was not afraid of anything. But Chen Feng just glanced at them and ran outside again, supporting another pregnant woman. Chen Cici's outstretched hands froze in the air, Dad. Dad. Why doesn't dad save Xian Xian and mom? Perplexed, aggrieved, and uncomfortable. Bai Luo's heart was also trembling, but she still comforted Chen Cici, Xian Xian, dad will come to rescue us. When he rescues the auntie in front, he will come to save us. Wu. He is Xuan Xuan's dad, why doesn't he come to save us? He is Xuan Xuan's hero, why doesn't he come to save Xian Xian first? Chen Cici cried with tears, she was still young, she couldn't understand too much, she only knew that Chen Feng was her dad, her hero, her world. When Chen Feng went to save others first, she felt uncomfortable, as if her most beloved toy had been taken away by other children. Chen Feng's figure ran back again, Dad. Chen Cici had just shouted two words when Chen Feng's figure disappeared into the fire again, and this time, he didn't even look at them. Disappointed, sad, Dad, does he not want Xian Xian anymore? Click. Another terrifying sound of wood breaking came from above, bang. In front of the store, a half-broken wooden beam slammed to the ground, burning with raging flames. Several pregnant women nearby were frightened, screaming and crying loudly as they hurriedly crowded backwards. Chen Cici was almost trampled in the sudden retreat, 
but fortunately, Bai Luo pulled her into his arms. Despite this, Chen Cixi still took several kicks and even got hit on the head by the elbows of the people behind her. In an instant, the pain made her cry out, Don't push back. There are children behind, you're stepping on them. Beside Bai Luo, a pregnant woman saw Chen Cixi almost being trampled and couldn't help but shout. She was the only one who vaguely heard Chen Cixi calling out for her father, Chen Feng. However, amidst the chaos and noise, no one could hear her clearly. Faced with death, no one could remain calm. Those who had just been pushing forward to be rescued were now desperately retreating as danger loomed ahead. They even wondered why it wasn't Bai Luo and Chen Cixi facing death at the front. Mom, it hurts. Chen Cixi in Bai Luo's arms raised her head, tears streaming down her face, with bruises on her forehead. Seeing this, Bai Luo's heart ached as if a knife was cutting into him. Stop pushing. Bai Luo finally roared in anger. She could tolerate anything, but Chen Cixi was her sore spot, and someone had hurt her, finally making Bai Luo furious. In the face of Bai Luo's anger, the people in front of her were not only terrified but also gave her resentful looks. Why shouldn't we push? Are you blind? Didn't you see the wooden beam almost hit us just now? Yes, we just want to survive. Can't you at the back give us some space? Why are you yelling? We didn't do it on purpose. With us in front, if anyone dies, it will be us first. Of course, you don't care. How can you be so selfish? We just want to survive. Where there are good people, there are bad people. Where there is kindness, there is evil. In the face of death, the ugliness and selfishness of human nature are exposed nakedly. Even the radiance of motherhood cannot cover their ugliness and selfishness. In the midst of their conversation, they even deliberately pushed a few more times, pressing the pregnant women inside against the wall. One of them, with a slightly larger belly, was pushed so hard that she let out a painful scream. Chen Feng and the others had just returned and witnessed this infuriating scene. What are you doing? How can you still push inside? The pregnant women who were pushing in front looked slightly panicked, and their previous resentment and selfishness disappeared immediately, replaced by a pretense of innocence, weakness, and helplessness, with tears in their eyes. Officers, you're finally back. You don't know, we were almost crushed to death just now. Hurry and save us. We're so scared. Sob, it's finally our turn. We can survive. Officers, come inside quickly. A female comrade is bleeding from being pushed. At that moment, a panicked voice came from the inside. Chen Feng and the others immediately rushed inside. Seeing them leave, the pregnant women in front became anxious. What are you doing? Why are you going to the back? It's our turn, hurry and save us. It's clearly our turn, why aren't you saving us? Someone even directly grabbed Chen Feng and the others. Ladies, didn't you see that someone inside is already bleeding? Chen Feng growled, I don't care. You must save us first. Her bleeding is not our concern. You stinking cops, we, the common people, provide you with good food and drink all the time, and now you have the obligation to rescue us. Do you know who my husband is? Do you know who I am? If I lose a single hair, all of you here will pay the price. Several pregnant women grabbed Chen Feng tightly, shouting hysterically as if they wanted to devour him. Are you blind? She was squeezed like this by you. This is blatant murder. You are the culprits, and now you're saying such things, have you lost your conscience? I don't care who you are. I don't care who your husband is, let go of me. Chen Feng roared angrily, frightening the pregnant women into instinctively releasing his arm. Chen Feng immediately took a few people inside to carry the pregnant women out. As they passed by by Luo and Chen Cixi, his heart trembled, and he dared not turn to face them. Dad, Dad. As Chen Feng passed by, Chen Cixi reached out to grab him, but Chen Feng passed directly in front of her without stopping, only seeing the bruise on her forehead, his body trembled violently a few times. The flames had already ignited the entire wooden roof, making crackling sounds continuously. Boom! Just as Chen Feng and the others had just sent the injured pregnant woman out, a wooden beam in front of them came crashing down again, and the fire once again approached. Ah! The pregnant women in front were scared and screamed, forcibly pulling by Luo and the others behind them, then they hid at the back. What are you doing? Are you using us as human shields? One of the pregnant women angrily questioned, including by Luo and the others, who glared at them with resentment, almost spitting fire from their eyes. Initially, these people had pushed forward to escape, and then, in order to avoid danger, they had recklessly retreated, regardless of the lives of those behind them, pushing one of the pregnant women to the point of bleeding. Now they were using by Luo and the others as human shields, which was simply despicable. In an instant, they provoked the anger of the crowd. What are you doing? What are you doing? Why do we have to keep standing in front? We just risked our lives to protect you, and now you can't do the same for us? Yeah, you are too selfish. A bunch of selfish jerks. Besides, 
We were originally at the back, it's only natural for us to hide at the back. The pregnant women spoke arrogantly, like shrews. At this moment, Chen Feng and the others returned. When the pregnant women saw Chen Feng and the others returning, they immediately stopped their scolding and anxiously tried to move forward. Move aside, let us through, it's our turn. But the pregnant women blocking the way in front were very taciturn and firmly blocked the path, even secretly elbowing each other in the face. When Chen Feng came in, he saw Bai Luo and the others, who were clearly at the back, standing at the front, and the flames were almost reaching them. Everyone was choked with tears and coughing continuously, while the pregnant women in the front row were shielded from harm, unscathed. He paused for a moment, then looked at Bai Luo and Chen Cici. Dad, you finally came to save Xian Xian and Mom. Chen Cici cheered, her big eyes curved, as if they were smiling. She reached out her hands to Chen Feng, who looked at her outstretched hands and the jubilant Chen Cici, and then reached out to pick her up, wrapping her in a wet blanket. He held Bai Luo tightly with his other hand. A firefighter nearby saw the scene, gritted his teeth, and then covered Bai Luo with his own blanket. Thank you, brother. Chen Feng's face was filled with gratitude, and the firefighter responded with a grin, then took off his soaked clothes and covered his head with them. Xian Xian, don't be afraid. Chen Feng comforted Xian Xian in a low voice, while tightly holding onto Bai Luo with his other hand. Daddy, Xian Xian is not afraid. Chen Cici's obedient voice came out, and Chen Feng directly rushed towards the curtain of fire, even though they were wrapped in wet blankets. As they passed through, Bai Luo felt a strong burning sensation, lasting for nearly six seconds. Just when Bai Luo felt like she was being roasted, the pressure suddenly eased, and the blanket was pulled off, emitting white smoke. Looking back at the sea of fire behind them, they had finally escaped. Chen Feng handed Chen Cici to Bai Luo, and he looked deeply at Bai Luo, not saying a word, but Bai Luo understood. His eyes told her, take care of Xian Xian. Then, resolutely, his figure plunged back into the fire. Chen Cici went up the fire escape from the fourth floor to the first floor. Ma'am, the child, you are safe. The medical staff below quickly came to assist by Luo and Chen Cici. Looking at the two rescued individuals, tears filled everyone's eyes. Two more lives had been saved. By Luo and Chen Cici were guided out of the mall by the medical staff. Looking from the outside, thick black smoke billowed from the entire Marriott Mall, with flames continuously spewing from within. Fire trucks arrived one after another and water jets crazily sprayed into the fire, gradually suppressing the flames. After another 10 minutes, all the remaining people were finally rescued. The fire inside the mall became more fierce, and the rescue operation came to an end. Firefighters and police officers ran out of the fire, lifting the wet blankets off their bodies. Everyone's skin was burnt red, and there was even a feeling of being well done, with the smell of roasted meat lingering in the air. The medical staff, feeling sorry for them, approached with towels to wipe their faces, but hesitated to touch their red faces, fearing that they might accidentally wipe off their skin. Bai Luo held Chen Cici and kept looking inside, searching. However, after everyone had come out, that figure had not emerged. In a corner of the mall, a figure looked through the thick smoke and locked eyes with the woman who was constantly looking outside, holding Chen Cici and with a big belly. Tears uncontrollably flowed from his eyes. Bai Luo. Xian Xian, I'm sorry. Turning around, he disappeared into the thick smoke. He wanted to reunite with his wife and daughter, to tightly embrace the two girls who were all he could see in his eyes, and to loudly tell them, don't be afraid, I'm here. But he was a person who couldn't stand the light. Chen Feng knew that after turning around, any slight mistake could lead to his demise. But some things had to be done, even if the wound had not yet healed. As long as the country and the people needed it, he would go without hesitation. After completing everything, he left, without leaving a name, without leaving a face, unknown origin, regardless of where his tombstone would be placed, walking on the edge of a knife, from the heavens and the earth. When he reappeared, Chen Feng was already standing in the far distance. He looked in the direction of the Marriott Mall, then left. At the entrance of the Marriott Plaza, one by one, the police, firefighters, and medical staff all withdrew. Bai Luo's eyes kept shifting from one person to another, not him. Not him. Still not him. Bai Luo's heart began to panic, rumbling. And just then, another explosion sounded from inside the mall, as the gas on the third floor of the restaurant was engulfed and exploded again. A wave of heat mixed with billowing smoke rushed towards them, causing everyone to involuntarily step back. Bang! In the terrifying explosion, another piece of the third floor platform fell heavily to the ground. No! Seeing this, Bai Luo couldn't help but cry out in sorrow. She let go of Chen Cici and tried to run inside, but Hu Jianfei next to her grabbed her. Comrade, are you out of your mind? No, 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 he's still inside, he's still inside, he's still inside. Bai Luo cried out, reaching out towards the inside as if trying to grab something. Who's still inside? 
Hu Jianfei raised his eyebrows and quickly turned to the deputy next to him, saying solemnly, Su Jia, quickly check who hasn't been evacuated yet. Yes. Su Jia ran off, and after a while, he ran back. Report to the commander, all our brothers have been evacuated. But, Su Jia hesitated for a moment. What the hell are you dawdling for? Speak up. Hu Jianfei kicked the deputy directly. But, the brothers seemed to say that they didn't see the civilian who joined the rescue effort just now come out. He seems to still be, still inside. The deputy's whole body trembled as he spoke. Still inside, after the recent explosion, how could there be any chance of survival? Perhaps he had already perished without a trace? What? That kid didn't, didn't come out? Hu Jianfei jumped up, his eyes turning red, and he ran directly into the mall. The people around him quickly held him back. Commander, don't be foolish. Let go of me, let go of me. Hu Jianfei roared with red eyes. Commander, there. There couldn't possibly be anyone alive inside. Su Jia held onto Hu Jianfei tightly. Couldn't possibly be anyone alive? Couldn't possibly be anyone alive? Hu Jianfei stopped struggling, his gaze blankly fixed on the flames soaring in the Grand Hyatt Mall. Even as the fire dragons raged on, it still seemed to be engulfed. He, he's still a child. He still has his whole life ahead of him. He shouldn't die. It should be me who died. Hu Jianfei choked up, his eyes bloodshot, and Su Jia and the others beside him also had red eyes. They deeply admired the figure who had just shown more courage than anyone else, feeling that only such a person could be called a hero. After a long time, Hu Jianfei finally managed to control his emotions. He suddenly turned to Bai Luo and Chen Sisi. When he saw the two of them in such a desolate state, his heart trembled fiercely, his nose tingling. His gaze softened, and he forced a smile. Comrade, child, who is he to you? Chen Sisi and Bai Luo still stared blankly at the smoke-filled Grand Hyatt Mall, as if they hadn't heard Hu Jianfei's words. After a long time, Chen Sisi's blank eyes finally moved, and the next moment, a piercing and desperate voice rang out, Dad. When this piercing voice sounded, the whole world fell silent, as if only the two crying figures were left, even though there were people and voices all around them. But at this moment, their backs seemed so desolate and lonely, as if the whole world had only the two of them, leaving only the two of them, a wife who had lost her husband, a daughter who had lost her father. When Hu Jianfei heard this voice, his body trembled violently for a few moments. Is that his wife and daughter? Hu Jianfei's lips trembled uncontrollably, and in his mind, the figure repeatedly rushed into the fire, but each time it was to rescue others, not directly to save his wife and daughter. After a long time, Chen Sisi and Bai Luo stopped crying, their eyes filled with blankness and dimness. The sky had fallen. When the emotions of the two people gradually calmed down, Hu Jianfei walked over with red eyes and said, Child, don't cry. Your father is a good man, he is a hero. You are about the same age as my granddaughter. In the future, you will be my Hu Jianfei's granddaughter. You should study hard and grow up to be a useful person for the country like your father, or become a police officer who upholds justice for the people. On the other side, a figure appeared in the alley behind the Kunsa Group's villa. He climbed from the first floor to the third floor, closed the window, and went to the bathroom. He looked at his face in the mirror, which was red from being burned. He gently touched it and felt a burning pain. He took off his outer clothes and then his shirt. The tearing pain on his back made Chin Fong groan and almost cry out. The high temperature burning almost made his shirt and flesh merge into one. His teeth were almost crushed, and the extreme pain almost made him faint. After washing with cold water and disinfecting with iodine, he changed into clean clothes and sent a message to the third of the four big demons, cut off the power in the county after dark and come pick me up. After sending the message, Chin Fong deleted it, went to the bathroom, and applied some cream-like substance to cover his red skin. Time passed quickly, and at 7.30 in the evening, the entire villa suddenly went dark. Chen Feng's eyes opened instantly on the third floor, and he walked out of the room. There were only a few dim backup lights downstairs. Uncle Kai shouted from the second floor, Are you all pigs? Go turn on the backup power. Yes, fifth master. A henchman quickly ran to the basement, and Chen Feng walked past Uncle Kai and went downstairs. Sixth master. Sixth master. A little brother bowed respectfully, not daring to look at Chen Feng. Chen Feng nodded expressionlessly and said, Old Six, are you leaving? Yes, I have something to do. Okay, when you're done, we'll celebrate your promotion. Uncle Kai didn't suspect anything and agreed. Chen Feng waved his hand without looking back, walked out of the villa gate, and the green ghost was already waiting. When he saw Chen Feng coming out, the green ghost respectfully opened the car door and said, Sixth Master. Chen Feng didn't say anything, just got into the car. The car started and drove away. After the car left the villa, it quickly headed towards the bustling city. At an inconspicuous corner, another car approached. 
As the two cars crossed, their speed suddenly decreased. The green ghost continued driving the car that Chen Feng had initially ridden, while the driver for Chen Feng changed to the fourth of the four big demons, the ghoul. The ghoul drove the car around the county town for a few laps before heading towards Chen Feng's headquarters. Sixth Master When they arrived at Chen Feng's headquarters, the ghoul got out of the car, opened the door respectfully, and called out softly, but the car was silent. Sixth Master The ghoul called again, but there was no answer. He leaned in and was shocked to see that Chen Feng had fainted, his face extremely pale and covered in cold sweat. Sixth Master The ghost hurriedly carried Chen Feng carefully and quickly walked inside. Fourth Brother What's this? The ghost carried Chen Feng and hurried inside. Many people saw this scene along the way, and their faces were filled with confusion and shock. Fei Zhu, go and get Dr. Luo immediately. Hey Hu, close the door. From now on, no one is allowed to leave. If a fly flies out, I will hold you accountable. All other brothers, be on high alert. The ghost's face was filled with seriousness. Yes. Yes. As the ghost spoke, a fat man quickly took out his phone, and a man like a black tower immediately closed the door. The entire hall became tense. The ghost carefully carried Chen Feng upstairs and placed him on the bed. Soon, Fei Zhu brought in a bald man in his 40s or 50s. The bald man was carrying a medicine box on his back. The ghost led Dr. Luo upstairs, and Dr. Luo placed the medicine box on the table and looked at Chen Feng. At a glance, he noticed something was wrong. Get me a wet towel. The ghost turned and looked at Fei Zhu, who quickly nodded and ran out. Soon, he brought back a wet towel, and Dr. Luo gently wiped Chen Feng's face with it, revealing the skin that had been roasted red. Dr. Luo's expression became serious. Take off Sixth Master's clothes. The ghost quickly stepped forward and carefully removed the outer garment. Hiss. As soon as the outer garment was removed, the ghost and others couldn't help but gasp. They saw that the inner layer of clothing was already stained with blood. Take this off too. Dr. Luo spoke again. The ghost carefully helped Chen Feng up, and as he reached for Chen Feng's clothes, he felt a wet sensation. Slowly pulling the clothes up from the belly, a strong smell of blood instantly filled the air. At the left arm, a fierce bullet hole continuously oozed crimson blood, and on the back, it was even more terrifying. Under the light, it was bloody and the most intact, with some areas of charred skin torn and revealing the crimson flesh inside, making people shudder and their hair stand on end. Sixth Master how did he endure until now? How much pain must he have been in? The ghost couldn't help but cry out, his eyes red. As one of Chen Feng's four trusted subordinates, seeing Chen Feng suffer such a serious injury made him very distressed. The so-called the disgrace of the minister is the disgrace of the master, and the disgrace of the master is the death of the minister. Chen Feng suffered such a serious injury, and their responsibility was the greatest. Tread, tread, tread. A hurried footstep sounded, and the person who came was the third of the four evil ghosts, Ching Gui. As soon as he entered, he smelled the strong smell of blood and saw the bloody Chen Feng at a glance. Sixth Master. Ching Gui let out a low, angry growl and quickly ran up, his eyes full of anger and killing intent. A terrifying aura emanated from him, making Dr. Luo almost suffocate. This was the unique aura of someone who had killed before. What's going on? Ching Gui turned to Dr. Luo, his eyes full of desire to kill. Dr. Luo wiped the cold sweat from his forehead. Sixth Master was shot in the left arm and suffered severe burns, especially the back skin, which has already necrotized. He has lost too much blood. Enough, I didn't call you here to listen to this. Now, how can we save Sixth Master? Sheng Gui interrupted Dr. Luo directly. The most important thing now is to transfuse blood. Then do it. Sheng Gui growled. But I didn't bring the transfusion equipment, and I don't know Sixth Master's blood type. Most importantly, I don't have a blood bank. Dr. Luo said timidly, lowering his head, a little afraid to face Ching Gui. As Dr. Luo spoke, Ching Gui thought for a moment and then immediately spoke, transfusion equipment. Let the fat pig go back and get it for you. As for Lu Ye's blood type, I remember that last time in Wadian, they gave Lu Ye type B blood, and as for the blood bank, I have type O blood, so I can directly use my blood to transfuse to Lu Ye. That's great. Dr. Luo finally smiled and quickly handed the key to the fat pig on the side, and asked the fat pig to help bring some equipment and other medicines. Shortly after, the fat pig brought back all the necessary tools, dr. Luo helped clean Chen Feng's wound and applied medicine, then removed the bullet from his arm. Finally, he took out the blood transfusion equipment and began to draw blood from the body of the green ghost, and then transfused it to Chen Feng. After more than an hour, Chen Feng's complexion finally had a little color. The green ghost covered his hand and got up from the bed, Brother San. The Jiang ghost hurriedly went up to help the green ghost, get away, why are you helping me? 
The green ghost glared at the Jiang ghost, then walked out with the Jiang ghost. The two stood on the second floor, just now, how many people saw Lu Yi? Everyone did. No one was let go, right? No, after I brought Lu Yi in, I immediately had the black tower close the door, not even a fly flew out. That's good. The green ghost's expression eased slightly, and he suddenly spoke in a calm and unruffled voice, recently, during our absence, a small gang has been causing trouble. You go and wipe them out, but they encountered an ambush. Except for Lu Ye's loyal followers, everyone else died tragically. Remember, all of them died tragically. The green ghost repeated again, with a calm tone. The Jiang ghost was stunned for a moment, a hint of reluctance flashed in his eyes, Brother San, those were more than a dozen brothers. And they just. So, why are you the fourth brother and not the third brother? The green ghost interrupted the Jiang ghost, shaking his head slowly, remember, our lives and dignity are given by Lu Yi. Anyone who poses a threat to Lu Yi must be killed. Understand? The green ghost suddenly looked up, staring straight at the Jiang ghost, with two beams of light shooting out of his eyes like sharp swords, making the Jiang ghost subconsciously lower his head and dare not look directly, I understand. I understand. The Jiang ghost's voice trembled, and the green ghost patted the Jiang ghost's shoulder twice, then turned and left, leaving only one sentence, if one day. You also threaten Lu Yi, I will not hesitate to kill you. I will do the same. The next day, Chen Feng slowly opened his eyes, the light was dazzling. He closed his eyes, then opened them again, hmm? Suddenly, he instinctively sat up, his muscles tense, his eyes alert and sharp as he scanned the surroundings. After finding the familiar environment, he slowly relaxed, looked down at the gauze on his body, and then breathed a sigh of relief. Pying. Hearing the sound in the room, the green ghost quickly pushed the door open. When he saw that Chin Fong had already woken up, a hint of excitement flashed across the green ghost's face, and there were sparkling tears in his eyes, Lu Yi. You. You're awake. You've worked hard. Chen Feng slowly spoke, it's nothing. Open the window for ventilation, and go to the kitchen to make something light, yes. Brother Lu turned and walked out, Chen Feng lay on the bed, took out his phone, and casually flipped through it. He found that the entire network had been flooded with news about the explosion at the Donghua train station and the Marriott Mall two days ago. Almost all of the top 10 hot searches were related to these two explosions. Chen Feng randomly clicked on a video, in which a female journalist holding a microphone appeared. Hello, everyone, I am a reporter from Itai, Luciu. I am currently at the scene of the explosion at Donghua Station. It is reported that the death toll from the explosion is 13, with 4 seriously injured and 54 slightly injured. 8 of the casualties are police officers, and the rest are residents of the neighborhoods on both sides of the station. We cannot imagine how terrifying the mentality of the person who carried out such a heinous act is, actually throwing a bomb in the most densely populated area. This has resulted in such a horrific tragedy, even though our residents bravely fought back, they ultimately suffered from the poisoning. Seeing this, Chen Feng's heart suddenly clenched. Below the video were countless condemnations of Chen Feng. His hands began to tremble as he continued to scroll down. Suddenly, his attention was drawn to a hashtag, hashtag Marriott Mall Explosion, the cry of the brave widow of the unnamed hero who sacrificed herself hashtag. Chen Feng clicked on it, and as the video began to play, a desolate and desperate voice rang out, Dad. The figure was lonely, the voice mournful and heart-wrenching. Seeing this, Chen Feng finally couldn't help but cry, reaching out to touch Chen Cici's face, but all he felt was the cold screen of his phone. Hearing this cry, he opened his mouth, desperately moving his lips, and finally a hoarse voice came from his throat, Ah, he promised, but she couldn't hear. After a long time, Chen Feng put down his phone, struggling to stand in front of the window, looking through the layers of barriers at the small courtyard in the suburbs. I'm sorry, Bai Luo, I'm sorry, Xin Xin. I shouldn't have intruded into your world, but I mistakenly landed on your island. The harm I have brought to you is already enough. The former Chen Feng died yesterday. From now on, only Chen Bufan will live. Bai Luo, forgive me, Xin Xin, forgive daddy. In this life, daddy owes you, in the next life, Daddy will make amends, in the next life, Daddy will be a cow or a horse again. Suddenly, Chen Feng stopped, and he laughed at himself, forget it. In the next life, you should stay far away from Daddy. Maybe in the next life, Daddy will still be a gray person? Stay far away from Daddy, this life has caused you trouble. How can I let you suffer in the next life? Chen Feng laughed at himself, laughed, and laughed, tears streaming down his face. Three days later, in the evening, under a bridge in County M, Chen Feng lay on the railing, a cigarette in his right hand, his eyes fixed on the fish swimming happily under the bridge. I heard. Fish only have a seven-second memory. How about being a fish in the next life? Do you think? There are gray fish inside the fish? Ha ha, 
Not finished yet, Chen Feng laughed at himself. After Chen Feng finished speaking, the fish in the water raised its head and looked at Chen Feng. It curiously looked at the strange creature above, just about to say something, but seemed to forget everything. It swam away in the water. Chen Feng turned his head again and looked at the other end of the bridge tunnel. This was the first time he had actively contacted Ouyang Chen. He raised his hand and looked at his watch. Three minutes had passed since the agreed time. Chen Feng slowly extinguished the cigarette in his hand. After dusk, the sky quickly turned dark. Chen Feng frowned slowly, feeling that something was not right. He tightened his hat and was about to leave when his pupils suddenly contracted. He saw a figure staggering from a distance. Chen Feng hurried over and supported Ouyang Chen. Chief, what's going on? Let's go. We can't stay here for long. Ouyang Chen urgently spoke, his eyes avoiding Chen Feng's gaze. Chen Feng didn't doubt him and quickly dragged Ouyang Chen away from the bridge tunnel. A few minutes later, several figures stood under the bridge tunnel where Chen Feng had just been. Their faces were fierce and violent. Seeing no one under the bridge tunnel, they searched the surroundings for a few minutes before leaving. After about 10 minutes, another group of people appeared and searched the area. Head, there's no one here. Officer, there's no one here either. After half an hour, all the figures finally left. In a remote alley in the suburbs, Lone Wolf, put me down. Ouyang Chen lightly patted Chen Feng's shoulder. Chen Feng put Ouyang Chen down from his back, which was already wet. Chief, what's going on? How did you get such a serious injury? Chen Feng asked urgently. Ouyang Chen's eyes were red, and he said with sorrow and indignation, there's a traitor in our team. A traitor? Chen Feng clenched his fists. You know, in the last two operations, the enemy knew in advance, causing heavy casualties in our team. This has led to suspicion and even prevented you and several other gray personnel from being informed of the last beheading operation. Other department comrades have lost trust in our gray department. Everyone is saying that you have betrayed the country and become traitors, but others don't know, I, Ouyang Chen, no. My gray personnel are not afraid of death. How could you betray the country? I have argued for you, but few people believe me. Some have even proposed to replace the head of the gray personnel, and almost half of the senior officials have agreed. In just three months, they can replace me, but I have noticed that something is wrong. I know my gray personnel are not the problem. The problem lies in other departments. For the past few months, I have been devoted to investigating this hidden traitor. As the investigation progressed, I gradually grasped some clues. But it's because of this. I have started to suffer assassination attempts, each more terrifying and insane than the last. If I hadn't been vigilant, I probably wouldn't be able to talk to you now. However, this has made me more determined. The traitor is in the other departments. They are afraid of what I might find out. They are anxious and want to kill me to silence me. Coincidentally, the news you sent back yesterday reduced the casualties from the two explosions, which has changed the attitudes of many senior officials. But, after the meeting ended, I was chased and attacked shortly after leaving the department. At the same time, what was even more shocking was the news that came from the higher-ups. They had found the traitor hidden within the ranks and had absolute evidence in their hands. I've seen that evidence with my own eyes. It's all real, truly real. Do you know who the traitor is? Ouyang Chen suddenly looked at Chen Feng, who shook his head in confusion, I don't know. Ha ha, Ouyang Chen suddenly let out a chilling laugh, that traitor is, it's me. Boom. Before Ouyang Chen's words had even settled, Chen Feng's mind exploded. His eyes were filled with disbelief. In the blink of an eye, Ouyang Chen stood up straight, a gun already in his hand, the dark barrel aimed at Chen Feng. Ouyang Chen's face twisted into a grimace, Chen Feng. Thank you for saving me. You really are a good person. So, I'm going to send you on your way now. Do you have any last words? Do you have any last words? Ouyang Chen's cold words fell, and Chen Feng felt a chill creeping up from the soles of his feet, quickly spreading to the back of his head. His hair stood on end, and his expression froze. Outside the screen, all the viewers who witnessed this scene were dumbfounded. What? What's going on? How could Ouyang Chen be the traitor? Damn, this is unbelievable. Ouyang Chen, please don't scare me. At this moment, all the viewers were filled with the three words impossible. After all, Ouyang Chen was a key figure in the organization. If Ouyang Chen really was a traitor, how could Chen Feng and the others have reached such high positions? No one dared to believe it. And at that moment, all the viewers suddenly saw Chen Feng smile. His lips parted, revealing his white teeth. He took a few steps forward and pressed his chest against the gun barrel. Ouyang Chen's grimace faltered slightly, and he said in disbelief, What are you doing? Aren't you afraid of death? Director, I remember your temperament. You've always been decisive. When did you become so indecisive? Or perhaps, you never intended to kill me. 
Otherwise, you would have had enough time to kill me several times over while you were behind me just now. Chen Feng grinned, you, don't believe that I'm the traitor? No, I believe you're the traitor, and I believe they have enough evidence to prove that you're the traitor. But I don't believe you would betray our country. Even if the whole world doesn't believe you, I will believe you, because what the eyes see isn't always the truth. This is what you, taught me. Odiang Chen was stunned for a moment, staring directly at Chen Feng, who didn't flinch, their gazes intertwined in the air. Ha ha, ha ha ha, Odiang Chen suddenly burst into laughter, but as he laughed, bitter tears streamed from his eyes. I never expected that colleagues I've worked with for decades would believe me less than you, Odiang Chen said, leaning against the wall and slowly sitting down on the ground. It was then that Chen Feng noticed that the iron willed director he remembered had become grizzled, stooped, and frail, like a dying old man. In the wind, a few strands of white hair were disheveled, and Chen Feng felt a pang in his heart. He quickly went forward to support Ouyang Chen. Hey, you've aged, Ouyang Chen self-mockingly said. When I entered the grade department, I was young like you, full of ambition. I was the three-footed bodyguard of Sugwa, but in the blink of an eye, I'd become so old. I've dedicated decades to Daya, and in the end, in an instant, my decades of clean reputation were ruined, and I was labeled a traitor, countless vicious drug dealers wanted to kill me out of spite, and my dear comrades wanted to bring me back for a just trial. Hey, this world, fate really plays tricks on people. Ouyang Chen muttered to himself, his face full of self-mockery. But, Ouyang Chen suddenly turned to look at Chen Feng, his eyes bursting with determination. But, aren't we grey agents all like this? Look at you, how much you've sacrificed to infiltrate the Kunsar group, risking your life to gather intelligence, only to end up being labeled a traitor? The other day, the explosion at Donghua train station, and the explosion at the Grand Mall, that clumsy kid running with the bomb was you, right? You're really foolish. I sent you to be a grey agent, not to go and die. Just fulfill your responsibilities as a grey agent, they are all desperately hurting you, and you're still desperately trying to protect them. Why bother doing this thankless task? Ouyang Chen cursed, I believe if it were you, you would do the same. Chen Feng suddenly spoke, his eyes burning, Ouyang Chen was stunned for a moment, then cursed, you're talking nonsense. I'm definitely faster than you, and I would throw the bomb even farther. He he he. Hearing Ouyang Chen's curse, Chen Feng scratched the back of his head and laughed. Seeing Chen Feng laugh, Ouyang Chen glared fiercely at him, you still have the nerve to laugh? You were really foolish at the Grand Mall, not saving your own mother and daughter? What were you doing? Do you think you're a saint? Did you see the way those two women were crying? When I saw it, my heart was breaking. Do you know why protecting the country comes before protecting the family? If you can't even protect your own mother and daughter, what right do you have to talk about protecting the country? After doing everything, hey, you went and made a heroic sacrifice, leaving just like that. Did you hear the cry of that girl? It's like a knife stabbing into my heart. When I saw that news, I really wanted to slap you a few times. Director? You. You knew? Chen Feng raised his head in surprise, you can deceive others with your trivial matters, but can you deceive me? When you went to register for marriage, I already knew. Ouyang Chen grumbled, and Chen Feng lowered his head like a child who had done something wrong. Why didn't he hear the word dad from Chen Cici? It was like a knife stabbing into his heart, but at that time, he had no choice. Phew. After scolding Chen Feng, Ouyang Chen let out a heavy sigh, speaking with great emphasis. Remember, as a grey agent, in this lifetime, you don't owe this world, or even this country. What you owe the most are those two women. Originally, we grey agents should come and go naked, and we shouldn't be involved in emotions. You shouldn't have provoked them. But since you did, you must take responsibility. Sometimes, what you do is right, but you can't let others pay the price for what you have to do, especially the people who care about you, who love you. Otherwise, even if you're doing it for the country, for the people, I will still look down on you because all your honors and merits are stained with the blood and tears of your wife and children. Ouyang Chen was like an old father, talking incessantly. Chen Feng slowly lowered his head, and in his mind appeared the two faces of extreme despair. It seemed like he understood something. In front of the screen, all the audience fell into silence, only Chen Cici's tears couldn't stop flowing. Ouyang Chen's words were her words, in this lifetime, you don't owe anyone in this world, not even me, because no matter what, you gave me life. What you owe the most, what you lack the most, is your mother. The woman who spoke for you until her last breath. Chen Cici choked up, and in her mind, she remembered the time before Bai Luo took his last breath, when he was still holding her hand, struggling to defend him, Xian Xian. Don't hate your father. Your father has his reasons. No matter what, you can't hate him, because he, he is a hero. He is a hero, mom. Even if he is a hero, he is not our hero, only someone else's hero. Mom. 
Chen Cici's words made the audience nearby unable to help but sigh. On the screen, Chen Feng's memories were still playing, after you came back, did you go back to see them? No. Chen Feng's head lowered even more. When the dust settles, go back and see them. You are their sky, you can't collapse. A single mother and an orphan, it's not easy, and they will be bullied. Okay. Chen Feng nodded. Sai, in the past, with me around, I could still help you. Now I've become a traitor, and your traitorous label is confirmed. You are a traitor, and I am a traitor, the old one is a traitor, and the young one is also a traitor, a whole bunch of traitors. Ha ha. At the end, Ouyang Chen looked up and laughed. As he laughed, his voice trembled, carrying a cry, becoming more and more eerie, like a ghost in the dark night, who the hell is wailing and howling like a ghost? It's late at night, are you not going to sleep? Suddenly, a window above the alley opened, and a head popped out and shouted at Ouyang Chen, Hey, look at this wimp, not even letting me cry properly, damn it. Ouyang Chen turned to look at Chen Feng and cursed, but Chen Feng saw the loneliness and indignation deep in Ouyang Chen's eyes. Chen Feng opened his mouth, wanting to comfort Ouyang Chen, but his lips moved a few times and turned into, Director, don't use foul language. Ouyang Chen blared at Chen Feng, When did I use foul language? Is it unreasonable for me to curse that wimp's grandmother? It's perfectly reasonable. In an instant, Ouyang Chen seemed like a petulant child. After speaking, Ouyang Chen looked at Chen Feng, then suddenly felt embarrassed and scratched his head, I was just talking, who would really curse his grandmother? You damn it, not long after becoming a ghost, you've hidden a beautiful woman and a good daughter. I've given my whole life to this land, and now I can't even vent my frustrations? Director, if you're feeling sad, just cry it out. Chen Feng suddenly spoke, and Ouyang Chen was stunned, you damn it, who the hell would cry like a woman? The next moment, Chen Feng stepped forward, sat next to Ouyang Chen, and put Ouyang Chen's head on his shoulder. Wah! A mournful and old cry suppressed sounded, Director, cry out loud. Chen Feng spoke again, Wah! The suppressed voice suddenly broke free and spread far in the silent night sky. Ouyang Chen buried his head in Chen Feng's shoulder and cried loudly like a child. Chen Feng reached out and gently patted Ouyang Chen's back, just like comforting a child, creak. The window upstairs opened again, and an angry head popped out. Before he could speak, two curses rang out simultaneously, damn it, you little punk, get lost. As they spoke, two dark gun barrels aimed at the window above, the cold light shining on the gun barrels was extremely conspicuous under the dim streetlights. The man who was about to curse suddenly broke out in a cold sweat, Grandpa. Gentlemen, I was just about to sleep, sleep. The man's face carried a fawning smile as he quickly closed the window. As soon as the window was closed, he slumped down and sat on the ground. After a while, he got up and walked to the shrine in the living room, took out two sticks of incense, and bowed twice to the memorial tablet, Grandma, I'm sorry, I made you suffer again just now. Ha ha ha, this little punk is really cowardly. The crying disappeared, and two hearty laughs rang out. Half an hour later, Ouyang Chen and Chen Feng returned to the bridge underpass. The bridge underpass was the contact point for Chen Feng and Ouyang Chen, and now this contact point had been exposed. Today, two groups of people had come to search, but no one would have expected that the two of them would return to this place so openly. This was what they called darkness under the lamp. Chen Feng held some hemostatic supplies in his hand and carefully placed them on the stone platform under the bridge. Chief, let me help you take off your clothes. Chen Feng reached out to Ouyang Chen. Get lost. Ouyang Chen glared at Chen Feng and defiantly took off his own clothes. My clothes are not just mine, but also my woman's. No one can take them off. Ouyang Chen cursed like a ruffian, which surprised Chen Feng. But thinking about it, it was understandable. Ouyang Chen had fought on the front lines as a gray man when he was young, battling with ruthless drug dealers for decades, and had inevitably picked up some rough language habits. As soon as Ouyang Chen took off his clothes, the scars on his exposed shoulders were moving. They were covered with crisscrossing scars and dense bullet marks, with one scar extending from his arm to his chest like a centipede. Seeing these scars, Chen Feng's nose couldn't help but tingle, and his eyes reddened. Don't cry in front of me. I hate it when a grown man cries like a woman. Ouyang Chen glared at Chen Feng, as if he had forgotten that he had cried the most joyfully in the alley just now. Besides, these scars are my medals, much heavier than those hanging on the wall. He he. Ouyang Chen reached out and gently touched the scars on his body, a hint of pride appearing in his eyes. You may think these things are ugly, but in my eyes, scars are a man's scars. A real man should have some scars on his body. These things are much better looking than those sissy pansies on TV, right? And those so-called idols who use drugs and then beg for forgiveness, they are exceptions. Ouyang Chen added at the end. Outside the screen, all the viewers nodded when they heard Ouyang Chen's words. The former disregards moral constraints, breaks the law, and then seeks public attention and sympathy. 
In fact, even if they become ordinary people and live a good life, they still have plenty of time. The latter uphold social order and the dignity of the law with their own bodies. They cannot show their faces while alive, and even after death, their names cannot be left on tombstones, and their families cannot pay respects. They are fundamentally incomparable. Shi Fo Yang, the medals on your body are the most handsome and worthy of respect. Gray men and drug enforcement officers are a group of people with an average life expectancy of only 41 years, at least 30 years less than ordinary people. But do you know? Even with such a transparent ending to their lives. In Dashia, the number of drug police and gray people increases every year. One after another, people sacrifice themselves, and one after another, people step up to take their place. Each scar represents a fierce battle, and is a medal of honor for director Ouyang's contribution to the motherland. The audience looked at Ouyang Chen's scars, feeling a deep sense of respect. Chen Feng nodded and said, let's disinfect and stop the bleeding first, then figure out how to remove the bullets inside. Don't bother, where's the disinfectant? Ouyang Chen looked around, and Chen Feng quickly handed him the disinfectant. Ouyang Chen poured the disinfectant onto his hand, then handed it to Chen Feng, and reached into his abdomen. After taking out his hand, he opened his palm, revealing a bullet. Seeing this familiar scene, Chen Feng finally understood why he had been able to remove bullets on his own. This was a traditional skill of the Grey People. After removing the bullet, blood gushed out again, and Chen Feng quickly applied a hemostatic agent and secured it with a bandage. After taking oral hemostatic and pain relief medication, Ouyang Chen's wound was finally cleaned. Phew! Ouyang Chen let out a heavy sigh of relief, and his complexion improved significantly. He staggered to his feet and looked at Chen Feng. There's a traitor in our team, but you guessed it right, the traitor is not among our grey people. In order to prevent our team from being persecuted by traitors in the future, before I escaped, I desperately burned most of the files. But, I didn't have time to destroy some people's files. If nothing unexpected happens, they have probably already sacrificed themselves, right? Ouyang Chen's voice trembled as he spoke, shocking Chen Feng, whose eyes turned red. Ouyang Chen, who had always been resolute in Chen Feng's memory, had never shown any sign of vulnerability. But today, Ouyang Chen cried like a child. At first, Chen Feng thought Ouyang Chen was crying for himself, for being labeled a traitor and for the injustices he had suffered, for dedicating his life to this land, only to end up as a pariah. But now, Chen Feng realized that Ouyang Chen was not crying for himself, but for the persecuted Grey people. Ouyang Chen was the leader of the Grey people and a member of the first Grey team established since the founding of Dashia. From the moment of its establishment, Dashia was determined to carry out the anti-drug cause to the end. Why do we walk this path so resolutely? Does anyone remember the phrase, the crow smoke spreads poison, causing a calamity unseen in Dashia for 3,000 years? Does anyone remember the description of the desolate scene where officials and soldiers' guns turned into smoke guns, and women abandoned their chastity like worn-out shoes? History has already told us, drugs are destructive, whether to an individual or to an entire country. And so, we had the grand and influential Longman anti-drug campaign. It was the first large-scale anti-drug operation in human history and in the history of Dasha. A great man once said, barbarism in physique, civilization in spirit, and now, from spirit to physique, we have all stood up. We cannot and will not repeat the mistakes of the past, because one after another, Chinese drug police, and those great people standing in the darkness, are blocking this path with their flesh and blood, without hesitation. Now, 39 years have passed since the establishment of the first professional anti-drug team in Dasha. The legendary first-generation team is now at an average age of 60. Some people's tombstones are covered with green grass, some are retired with scars and bullet holes all over their bodies. Ouyang Chen luckily survived because of his outstanding performance, becoming the controller of the Grey People. His subordinates, the Grey People, are like his children. If these Grey People died in the line of duty to protect their country, or died fighting against drug traffickers, then even though he feels pain, he would be proud of them because their deaths were worth it. However, now these children have died at the hands of traitors within the organization, which fills Ouyang Chen's heart with extreme regret and pain. All the Grey People were trained to die more valuably. They never thought about coming back alive. The only hope was to return as a complete corpse to the land of Dasha. That would have been a great stroke of luck. But now, they have died, and their deaths are meaningless. They did not die at the hands of the enemy, but at the hands of their own people. Ouyang Chen's expression suddenly became fierce, but the next moment, he slowly slumped down. He is now just a traitor, a bereaved dog, unable to even avenge his children. Ouyang Chen turned and walked away. Director, where are you going? Chen Feng stopped Ouyang Chen. Ouyang Chen stopped, turned to look at Chen Feng, and said, in the future, you will really have to face the whole world. 
In the future, you will sink into the dark river, and no one will be able to pull you out when you are drowning. In the future, you may have to be an enemy of the whole world. Even if you complete the mission, no one can prove your identity. You can only linger in the darkness, or accept the so-called judgment of justice. Born in the sunlight, living in the darkness, and ultimately dying in the sunlight. Are you afraid? Are you afraid? There was a hint of confusion in Chen Feng's eyes, but it quickly turned firm. He slowly said, afraid. Of course I'm afraid, but, some things have to be done by someone. Will he be afraid? Yes. His answer is definitely yes, because being not cautious enough will let the criminals escape, being afraid of seeing families destroyed by drugs, mourning and paying tribute to fallen comrades. And those days hidden in the darkness, living in constant fear, risking one's life, 365 days a year, not even daring to sleep too soundly, for fear of revealing one's identity in a dream. This is not a way of life that ordinary people can endure, but someone has to bear the responsibility. Over a hundred years ago, because of drugs, we were trampled on and couldn't speak or raise our heads. It was this huge sense of shame that led the people of Dasha to have absolute zero tolerance for drugs. During the Opium War, many Chinese people smoked opium. They became emaciated, with extremely poor physical fitness, and became walking corpses, with the military's combat effectiveness almost reduced to zero. From then on, the people of Dasha bore the shameful title of Sick Man of East Asia. Mr. Lin vowed to burn all the opium and keep the people away from the poison. If opium is not eradicated for a day, I will not return for a day. I swear to see this through, and there is no reason to stop. Back then, our ancestors faced dangers more than ten times greater than now. At that time, it was not just the whole world standing against them, but the whole world was their enemy. Were they afraid? Of course, they were, but they never retreated. And now, Chen Feng will not retreat either. Ouyang Chen turned to look at Chen Feng. Chen Feng did not make grand promises, he did not speak eloquently, he did not point out the mountains and rivers, nor did he show any fear or retreat. All he had were words spoken with extreme calmness and an incredibly determined face. He was telling Ouyang Chen that he would not forget the oath he made when he became a gray person. There are no heroes who descend from the sky, only police officers who step forward. He remembered the words he had spoken in front of the unmarked grave where his father was buried. When you were alive, you chose to stand in the darkness and burn yourself to light up the light. I don't know what drives you to keep going, but I want to be like you. Growing up, I became the one who continued the relentless struggle from one generation to the next, the one who continued the dedication and sacrifice from one generation to the next. Odiang Chen looked at Chen Feng with satisfaction, the kind face resembling that of an old father looking at his son, your father was a good man, and so are you. You must remember what you said today, never, and cannot forget. Chen Feng nodded heavily, as long as I can breathe, as long as there is still hot blood flowing in my body, as long as my body still has warmth, I will not forget. Good, 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 ha ha ha. Odiang Chen turned around, leaving without looking back, his hearty laughter echoing through the vast night sky, Director, where are you going? When will you come back? Ouyang Chen did not look back, only a few intermittent words came from the wind, if I fall, then I won't come back, but you don't need to be too sad. When you miss me, just look up at the red flag of our motherland. In that bright red, there is a touch of my style. Ouyang Chen's figure, under the dim light, hunched over and staggered into the darkness, while Chen Feng stared blankly as Ouyang Chen's figure disappeared into the darkness, his eyes slightly vacant. He kept repeating the words Ouyang Chen had left behind, if I fall, then I won't come back, but you don't need to be too sad. When you miss me, just look up at the red flag of our motherland. In that bright red, there is a touch of my style. Chen Feng raised his head, feeling a bit choked up. Why is the wind so squinty today? Chen Feng turned around and walked in the opposite direction of Ouyang Chen, disappearing into the darkness under the light, leaving the darkness ahead to you and the darkness ahead to me. In front of the screen, all the audience watched as two figures stepped into the darkness from opposite ends, their emotions complex. Although I know what has happened here, I still want to believe that Director Ouyang is not a traitor. Yes, anyone with a brain can imagine that Director Ouyang is in charge of the Grey People, and if he were a traitor, the entire Grey People department would probably no longer exist. Director Ouyang has spent his whole life in the service, hiding in the darkness as a Grey person when he was young, and finally returning to the light to take over the Grey People organization, continuing to contribute to the motherland. Now, in the end, he is carrying the name of a traitor. How painful must his heart be? If I fall, then I won't come back, but you don't need to be too sad. Oh, Director Ouyang, we understand now, but we would rather not understand. We just want you to live well. When you miss me, just look up at the red flag of our motherland. In that bright red, there is a touch of my style. Why is our motherland's flag red? It's because there are countless heroes like Director Ouyang who have dyed it red with their blood. 
dedicating one's life to the motherland, only to end up with the name of a traitor. If it were an ordinary person, they would probably have turned dark long ago, but even now, his heart still belongs to the motherland. He still thinks, even with a three-foot body, I will still serve the country, and my fervent blood will dye the flag red. As the head of the grey people, he has always instilled a belief in all grey people that even if the whole world stands against you one day, you must not forget the oath of the grey people, and now he is practicing it with his own actions. All the audience were moved by this nearly 60-year-old man, who walked into the darkness with a stooped body. Even though he was treated as a traitor, and had gone from wielding great power to being a pariah, Ouyang Chin harbored no resentment towards his homeland. On the contrary, he faced his fate with determination, using his still warm blood to nourish the bright red flag of his motherland. In a secluded courtyard in the capital, armed guards stood outside, while inside, several old men sat in a hall watching the television. When they heard Ouyang Chen's words, their hearts, which had been silent for over a decade, trembled once again. The former head of the Great Xia Anti-Drug Bureau, Lin Chang, had become a frail old man with white hair. The other old men beside him were all former high-ranking officials of the Anti-Drug Bureau. Initially, they had voted to remove Ouyang Chen from his position as head of the Grey Men, and it was they who had found evidence of Ouyang Chen's betrayal. In their hearts, Ouyang Chen was the most successful pawn infiltrated by the enemy into the Great Xia, the mastermind behind the heavy losses suffered by the Anti-Drug Bureau. The fact that Ouyang Chen was a traitor had been ingrained in their minds for decades. However, when they heard the conversation between Ouyang Chen and Chen Feng from Chen Feng's memory, they wavered. They had known Ouyang Chen for over a decade, and were very familiar with him. Initially, they didn't believe Ouyang Chen was a traitor, but when the ironclad facts and evidence were presented to them, they had no choice but to believe that Ouyang Chen was a traitor. Especially when Ouyang Chen destroyed most of the Grey Men's data and then fled in fear before the capture team arrived their belief in Ouyang Chen's betrayal became even stronger. But now, what they saw from Chen Feng's memory was exactly the opposite of what they had believed to be the truth. Ouyang Chen was not a traitor, and from his words, they heard a lot of hardship, helplessness, and many hidden truths. Especially Ouyang Chen's words deeply touched them. Lin Chang let out a deep sigh and said heavily, investigate. Ouyang Chen and Chen Feng, back to back, disappeared into the darkness. At that moment, Chen Feng couldn't help but stop and cast his gaze into the disappearing figure in the darkness. His eyes lingered greedily on Ouyang Chen's figure. He knew that this parting was a farewell. The next time they met, all he would see of Ouyang Chen would be his lifeless body. As the former leader of the Grey, now branded a traitor, Ouyang Chen would not give up easily. Perhaps he would use his own life to fulfill his final value. He would crush his bones, smash his body, and squeeze out the last drop of boiling blood to dye the red flag. Only when his bones had weathered away could he leave in peace. Chen Feng watched Ouyang Chen's figure and slowly knelt down, suppressing intermittent sobs. As a member of the Grey, he had to control his emotions, even become an emotionless machine. But as a human, he was emotional. Seeing other officers die miserably because of him, killing his comrades in battle, tortured his heart. However, nothing had made him feel so distressed as watching Ouyang Chen leave. This feeling was like the one he had years ago when he knelt in front of his father's unmarked grave, weeping. Ouyang Chen was his chief, his mentor in one of the projects, and was like a father to him. The only difference was that his father had already passed away, while Ouyang Chen was still alive for now. But the same was that he was powerless against both of their deaths, especially against Ouyang Chen, this mentor and father-like figure. He knew clearly that Ouyang Chen was heading towards a dead end, but he could only watch, feeling powerless, helpless, and unable to do anything. Bang! Chen Feng slowly bent his legs, knelt on the ground, and knocked his head heavily twice, his forehead touching the cold floor, instantly clearing his mind. If you die, one day, I will avenge you, at any cost. After saying this, Chen Feng stood up. This time, he truly disappeared into the darkness. From now on, he would be fighting alone, with no one knowing him. From now on, the whole world had truly abandoned him. No superiors, no records, no trace of ever existing, as if he had never been in this world. But if his heart still held hot blood, he would not fear the abyss before him. Watching Chen Feng's lonely and desolate figure as he left, all the onlookers were stunned. They were not Chen Feng, but when he knelt and wept, they felt as if they were him, feeling his helplessness and powerlessness. Everyone was filled with mixed emotions. My father is a retired drug enforcement officer, and I am very proud of him. Drug enforcement officers are one of the most dangerous police forces in China, and the Grey even more so. In the small town where I live, several disability certificates are issued to the drug enforcement team every year. My father was fortunate to retire safely, but he had also hovered on the brink of death, leaving him with a lot of illness. I hope their silent dedication can earn people's respect.
Salute to all the police officers fighting on the front lines of drug enforcement around the world. I once read a report about an undercover drug enforcement officer who was unfortunately discovered by the drug dealers and as a result, they killed his wife and daughter in retaliation. In an instant, he had nothing left. In the news photo, he knelt on the ground, and across time and space, I also felt the overwhelming sadness and the fiercely suppressed despair. Sometimes, what is buried is more precious than one's own life. The faces of the departed remain on the tombstone, while the living stand alone in the wilderness. Chen Feng clearly knew that Chief Ouyang's fate was a dead end, but he was powerless. How much pain he must be in now. My boyfriend is a narcotics police officer. He is often very busy, so busy that he doesn't have time to accompany me when I'm sick, or comfort me when I'm upset. We are in a long-distance relationship, and sometimes I want to tell him that we should quit this job, but I hold back. I understand him. He always praises me for being obedient and understanding, but I know he's not that great. He does this because of his past, because his parents died due to drugs. And Chen Feng, whose parents also died due to drugs, the father and mother who raised him, also died due to drugs. Now, Director Ouyang, who has been both a teacher and a father to him, is also heading down that irreversible path. There are millions of people who throw themselves into the fiery darkness, standing tall behind them are their families and their country. Salute to all narcotics police officers, the unsung heroes and those in high-risk professions. You only silently lick your wounds in the deep of night, and silently guard your families and country when day breaks. Salute to the nameless, little do they know, the nameless are the most respectable. You don't know the name of the person who has always protected you, nor do you know that one day he may not wake up. I used to think that I was born in a prosperous era, but now I realize that it's all because of Director Ouyang, and people like Chin Feng, who use their blood and lives to uphold this prosperous era in the darkness. This makes me think of someone, who has a grave and a tombstone, parents, siblings, a wife, children, who existed in this world, but I don't know where he is buried, where his grave is, or where his tombstone stands. He is my father. Suddenly, an audience member questioned, if even Director Ouyang, a former high-ranking gray figure, can be wronged and framed, then why is it impossible for Chin Feng to be framed? His words shocked the entire audience, making everyone deeply pensive. Yes, in our impression, Chin Feng is a demon, a butcher, but how many people have actually seen it with their own eyes? Even if someone has seen it with their own eyes, can they guarantee that what they saw is true? Anyway, up to now, all the tragic incidents I have seen attributed to him, he has been wronged. Even Director Ouyang, a person with such power, can be framed, and Chen Feng is just a small gray figure. At this moment, some of the more rational audience members put forward their own views, but there are still some who remain firm in their previous beliefs. We acknowledge that up to now, Chen Feng can indeed be called a hero, and we greatly admire the present Chen Feng, but we cannot forgive him now. Yes, you can forgive him like this, but we cannot forget that so many tragic incidents later were caused by him. Our loved ones are dead, they can't come back. It's not that we are heartless, it's just that the dead are not your loved ones, and you haven't suffered the pain. If you haven't suffered, don't urge others to be kind, if you have suffered, it's not certain that you will be kind. Sigh, let's leave everything to time, let's watch and see. In the end, a sigh ended all the arguments, and everyone's gaze returned to the big screen. Only Chen Cici's gaze was fixed on the memory interrogator, where Chen Feng's body was convulsing. Every second, Chen Feng had to endure the torment of memory extraction. Seeing Chen Feng's painful appearance, Chen Cici's heart ached. She also wanted to forgive Chen Feng. At least, so far, everything Chen Feng had done was worthy of the heavens and the earth, worthy of the motherland. Even using the word hero to describe Chen Feng was not an exaggeration. However, do not urge others to do good without experiencing hardship themselves. She had seen Chen Feng personally hand the knife into his mother's chest. At least that scene was real. Regardless of the reasons or misunderstandings, in the end, Chen Feng killed his mother, killed the woman who was everything to him. That year, she was five years old. That year, she lost the three most precious people in her life. On the screen, everything continued. Chen Feng returned to his hideout, like a walking corpse. Sixth Master. Sixth Master. In the somewhat empty hall, Qin Gui, Zhang Gui, Fei Zhu, and Hei Xiong saw Chen Feng return and immediately saluted respectfully. Chen Feng said nothing, as if he hadn't seen Qin Gui and the others, and walked straight into the room. After a while, Chen Feng came out of the room. Has anything major happened in the group these days? Chen Feng looked at Qin Gui. Sixth Master, in recent days, many ghosts have been eliminated within the major groups. You wouldn't have expected that there were so many ghosts lurking around us, especially in the Chakai group. It is said that the right-hand man of General Chakai, a Biao, was actually a ghost planted by the Dasha police. It is said that the incident at Kansadashu last time was leaked by a Biao. And there are several of their subordinates as well. 
It is said that these ghosts met a very tragic end, especially Hey Ho. After the death of God, he started to dabble in those ghostly things of God. He found all the ghosts and killed them all. Fortunately, there are no such ghosts around us, otherwise we wouldn't know when we would die. Xingue said, showing a frightened expression at the end, lightly patting his chest a few times, as if he had been scared. Chen Feng fell silent. He suspected that Qingue was implying something. After a long time, he suddenly looked up. Gather, brothers. Annihilate the enemy. Chen Feng's voice was calm but filled with a bloody taste. Yes. Qingue and the others immediately responded in unison. Soon after, the entire hall, with a dozen people, stood in formation. Sixth Master, all the people at headquarters are here, a total of 17 people, seven of whom are injured, three need to be on duty, and there are seven. Seven people who can take action. Qing Gui was a little embarrassed. Only seven people? Chen Feng was taken aback. What about the others? Yesterday, we clashed with the wild dog group and were ambushed by them. They, they all died. Qing Gui lowered his head slightly. They all died? Chen Feng couldn't help but frown. He deeply looked at Qing Gui. He knew very well that those people probably saw what he looked like when he came back that day, so Qing Gui silenced them. This kid was ruthless enough but also loyal enough. The four major evil spirits were all recruited by him over the years, each with different abilities, and most importantly, they were all loyal to him. After glancing at Qing Gui, Chen Feng waved his hand. Let's go. Soon, including Qin Feng, a total of eight people set out into the night, a night of darkness and high winds, a night of killing. As soon as they left, they went straight in a certain direction. As time passed and they saw the increasingly familiar scenes, Chen Feng's companions, including Qin Gui, were slightly puzzled. When they finally arrived at their destination, an inconspicuous small tavern, Xin Gui couldn't help but widen his eyes, Boss Lu? Today's target is the Cha Kai group? Yes. Chen Feng nodded slowly, a hint of coldness flashing in his eyes, remember from now on, our brothers who died yesterday did not die in a fight with some stray dog group. How could a mere stray dog group cause us such heavy losses? Anyone with a brain would know that there's something fishy going on. So, our brothers were actually planned to be taken out by the Cha Kai group while they were fighting the stray dog group. And now, we are just avenging our brothers. Understand? Understood. Qin Gui and the others flashed a hint of excitement in their eyes and responded in a low voice. Chen Feng waved his hand, and Qin Gui and the others each took Fat Pig, Black Bear, and a few other henchmen and quietly made their way towards the tavern in the night. Inside the tavern, soothing and beautiful music was playing. Outside the tavern, two bright red lanterns were extremely dazzling. On the first floor of the tavern, Black Monkey's men were either drunk or dead, and some emaciated corpses were manipulating syringes to inject themselves with the last bit of strength. Upstairs, Black Monkey was sleeping soundly, with a petite and delicate beauty by his side. Ha! Huh? Suddenly, the beauty beside Black Monkey woke up abruptly, but her mouth was tightly covered by a large hand. Her eyes were filled with fear as she frantically tried to pry the large hand off her mouth, but it was as if it was clamped down like an iron vice and couldn't move at all. The woman's struggle made Black Monkey, who had been tired all night, groggily open his eyes, stop it, I can't take it anymore. But the next moment, he widened his eyes and looked at the many people in the room. Instinctively, he reached under the pillow, and at that moment, a cold gun barrel was pressed against his temple. Black Monkey instantly froze, sir, we have no grudges or grievances. Whatever you want, I'll give it to you. I only ask that you don't kill me. Black Monkey slowly turned his head, his face full of fear. In the darkness, he couldn't see the faces of these people, he didn't know who they were, but the thing on his temple was real. He could smell the strong scent of gunpowder and blood inside the barrel, this gun had killed people, and not just a few. He had to surrender now, as long as he could save his life, tomorrow he could make these people disappear with even more cruel methods. Xin Gui stepped forward, took out the gun under Black Monkey's pillow, and Xin Feng slowly waved his hand. Xin Gui and the others were stunned for a moment, bang. He fiercely knocked the gun against the woman's head and she instantly fainted. Xin Gui let go, and the woman fell to the ground. Everyone slowly turned around, stepped over the unconscious woman on the ground, and left the room. Black Bear even stepped on her without any regard for her delicate body. Xin Gui glared at Black Bear, waved his hand slightly, and everyone else moved away from the door. Xin Gui stood at the door like a door god. The dim hall downstairs was already a mess, Black Monkey's men were lying in a pool of blood. Inside the room, Chen Feng's gaze was dark as he stared at Black Monkey, Black Monkey, where are they? Chen Feng lowered his voice, his voice somewhat hoarse, like a devil in the dark, who? Who? Black Monkey looked confused, those. Ghosts? Ghosts? Black Monkey was taken aback, boss, I killed two of those ghosts and buried their heads in the backyard. 
There's one left, not dead, kept as a pet in the basement. Huff. As soon as Hei Ho's words fell, Chen Feng's body staggered slightly. Dead? All dead? The remaining one is being kept as a dog in the basement? An uncontrollable surge of killing intent erupted in Chen Feng's heart. He grabbed Hei Ho's collar and locked his neck with his right hand, fiercely and somewhat crazily asking, Dead? How dare you? How could you? Ha <laughs> ha, big brother, spare me. Hei Ho struggled desperately, his eyes almost bulging out from being strangled by Chen Feng, filled with bloodshot veins. The intense suffocation and pain made his tears and saliva uncontrollably flow down. The fear of death surrounded him like a tide from all directions. When he was torturing those ghosts, he felt a sick sense of pleasure and satisfaction, but he never knew that the feeling of death would be so terrifying. Just as Hei Ho was about to suffocate, he suddenly felt the arm around his neck loosen. He immediately breathed in fresh air, his tongue hanging out like a dead dog's. But before he could feel the joy of surviving a disaster, a sharp blade ruthlessly pierced his chest. His frantic breathing suddenly froze, and as he struggled to lower his head, the hand holding the dagger exerted force again. Oomph. He grunted. He could clearly feel the dagger piercing through his heart, and a large amount of blood sprayed out in the moment of penetration, giving him the sensation of being torn open. At that moment, Chen Feng exerted force again, slowly rotating the dagger in his hand. The extreme pain made Hei Ho whiten his eyes once more. He was not dead yet, but now he only had one thought, to die. This feeling of being better off dead was very painful. However, Hei Ho had never thought that the pain he inflicted on those ghosts was several times, or even tens of times, worse. The dagger was pulled out. Hiss. Crimson blood sprayed out from his chest, splattering on the bed and on the face of the woman lying unconscious on the ground. The woman suddenly woke up, about to scream, but a hand covered her mouth, and at the same time, another hand holding a dagger stabbed into her chest. After pulling it out again, the woman collapsed weakly, her beautiful face tilting towards the exit, only seeing a departing figure. Click. The door opened, and Chen Feng walked out of the room. The green ghost immediately approached him, quietly glanced inside, then withdrew his gaze. Chen Feng looked down and took a glance. The dim light, the mixture of blood and spilled alcohol on the ground, emitted a nauseating smell, but for some reason, Chen Feng took a long breath. Compared to the fragrance of grass, trees, and blue sky under the sunlight, this dirty smell mixed with blood clearly pleased him more. Let's go! Chen Feng waved his hand and disappeared into the night sky with everyone. An hour later, a figure reappeared, walking into the room without any obstruction. He passed by the corpses on the ground without expression, then opened the basement. A musty smell mixed with a foul odor filled the air. Chen Feng frowned slightly, then walked down. Step by step, the basement seemed somewhat terrifying under the dim light. At this moment, under a wooden stake in the basement, a dark red rope was tied to the stake, with a collar tied to the other end. It was a high-quality leather collar that was quite popular among the upper-middle-class dog owners. However, there was an extra row of shiny steel nails on the collar, all of them red. Under the collar, it was not a dog or a cat, but a man who was barely alive. The man's face was a bloody mess, and upon closer inspection, it was entirely covered in red flesh, with the outer layer of skin long gone. His limbs were twisted in a grotesque manner, hanging limply on the ground, clearly broken by inhuman means. Apart from the steel-studded collar, there was no other restraint, yet he was unable to move an inch. He could only desperately press his head against the ground to support his body, because if he couldn't hold himself up, the steel pins on the collar would pierce his neck. These steel pins were very small, similar in size to silver needles, and his neck was covered with countless pinholes, some already scabbing over, while others still oozed red blood. As his neck grew increasingly weary from the prolonged support, it began to tremble violently. As it reached its limit, his neck gradually weakened, and his body slowly pressed downward, allowing the steel pins to once again slowly pierce into his neck. The moment the basement door was opened, the figure lying on the ground began to tremble frantically, struggling to lift his neck as if the approaching person was a devil, the most terrifying thing in the world. As the footsteps drew closer, his body trembled even more violently, and he desperately tried to curl up, allowing the steel pins on his neck to fully pierce him. Who? Chen Feng looked at the scene before him, his eyes bloodshot, his nose panting with anger. A surge of anger rose in his heart, boiling and surging, rushing to the top of his head. The veins on his neck and temples throbbed continuously, his pupils frighteningly contracting. Hatred and anger devoured his heart like a monster, and his blood boiled like scalding water, carrying unbearable anger to his fingertips. He was supposed to be the best warrior, unafraid of death or sacrifice. Faced with guns and the threat of dismemberment, he could say he wasn't afraid of death. They fought against time, fought to the death against drug traffickers, and bravely faced knives and guns without flinching. Even if he died, as long as his death was meaningful, what did it matter? 
But now, he was being treated like a dog, tied to this pillar and subjected to torture. A dog. They treated him like a dog. In the world outside, some creatures less than dogs were dressed in suits, wearing human skins and smiling, while in this dark basement, a hero of the people was treated like a dog, subjected to sadistic torture. Damn it. What a damn world. He crouched down, trembling, and reached out with shaking hands to lift the figure curled up in front of him. The figure suddenly struggled frantically, its already broken limbs weakly flailing, and it whimpered silently. It was then that Chen Feng noticed that the figure's tongue had been cut off, and only one of its eyes remained, gray and lifeless. The other eye was just an empty, desolate eye socket, filled with nothing but putrid blood, dark and empty. The face was a bloody mess, with the entire piece of skin peeled off alive. Ah! Upon seeing this, Chen Feng couldn't help but let out a roar like a wild beast. He felt as if his heart had been torn apart, and the image of the woman he had just ended in the room flashed in his mind. He regretted killing her with a single blow. This vicious woman should have suffered the ten tortures of the Qing dynasty before dying a miserable death to ease his hatred. Chen Feng's roar made the struggling figure in his arms struggle even more violently. Fear and terror could no longer describe his feelings. Sensing the struggling figure in his arms, Chen Feng shed tears and softly spoke in a hoarse voice, Brother, it's me, it's me, I'm Chen Feng. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I'm here to save you. As Chen Feng spoke, the figure in his arms suddenly stiffened, then began to tremble violently. Incredulously, he raised his head and looked at Chen Feng with his dark, hollow eye sockets. His gray eyes finally moved, as if questioning, as if hoping. Brother, it's me, it's me, it's really me. I'm Chen Feng. Chen Feng sobbed, repeating the words over and over in his ear. As he spoke, he gently reached out towards the figure's neck, wanting to remove the collar. However, he found that the collar's joint had been forcibly welded. He wanted to get up to find a tool, but the figure in his arms suddenly clung tightly to him, and the hand that had already been severed miraculously grabbed his clothes. Woo woo! The mouth without a tongue made a soundless sob, tears of black and crimson blood flowing from the eye sockets. I won't leave, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, I won't leave. I won't leave. Chen Feng crouched down again, gently patting the figure's back with his hand, as tenderly as a mother comforting a child who had been wronged. When the figure's emotions gradually calmed down, Chen Feng looked back at the collar around his neck. I'm going to take off the collar around your neck. It might hurt a little, so bear with it. Woo woo. The figure in his arms made two sobbing sounds in response. Chen Feng gently lifted his head and slowly pulled out the steel needles from his neck, blood instantly flowing from the punctures like ferocious blood snakes. Chen Feng placed the figure's head on his shoulder, then grasped the collar with both hands. The densely packed steel needles instantly pierced through his palms, but Chen Feng seemed oblivious. He gripped both sides of the collar and forcefully tore it apart with a sharp sound. He threw the collar away and said, It's okay, we're safe now. Let's go, I'll take you. Home. Chen Feng's voice was extremely gentle, and when the figure heard the words home, he trembled slightly. He rested his head on Chen Feng's chest, listening to the rapid beating of his heart, and closed his remaining eye. He was too tired and wanted to rest for a while. Chen Feng carried him step by step up the stairs from the basement. The dim light made him open his eyes slightly again, and he looked at the bodies lying on the ground without any emotion in his eyes. Chen Feng carried him towards the door, and just as they were about to step out, the figure in his arms suddenly struggled. He looked in a certain direction and made whimpering sounds, woo woo woo. The person in his arms struggled, and Chen Feng stopped in his tracks. He turned around and followed the figure's gaze, which led to the backyard. Chen Feng walked with the person in his arms towards the back. Behind them was a small courtyard. As they entered the courtyard, a strong smell of blood immediately hit them, accompanied by a faint stench. Clusters of flowers were blooming in the courtyard, as it was the season for flowers to bloom in July and August. With the gentle breeze, the fragrance of the flowers masked the stench. Flowers symbolize beauty, and their scent should have been intoxicating, but to Chen Feng, the smell was nauseating. The person in his arms continued to sob under the flowers, and tears fell to the ground. Chen Feng's heart trembled as he recalled a scene that was like a nightmare. Under the garden of the Kunsa group's backyard, half was soil and half was bones. He couldn't help but shudder, knowing the outcome but still unable to control his fear. Eventually, he gently put down the person in his arms and tremblingly walked towards the garden. The flowers in the garden were vibrant, and the soil underneath was new. He reached out his hand, digging into the soil. His fingers were scratched by the stones in the soil, and thorns pierced into his fingers, causing excruciating pain. However, Chen Feng did not stop. His speed increased, and the putrid smell of blood became stronger. Suddenly, he felt his fingertips go soft. His body stiffened, then trembled. He lowered his head and slowly uncovered the soil, revealing a round object in his sight. 
The strong smell of blood filled the air. It was a head. Digging out a head from the garden at night was a terrifying thing for anyone, especially in a country with rich ghost legends like this. However, Chin Fong felt no fear, only the sorrow and pain of a drug enforcement officer. This head belonged to his dearest comrade, even if it had become a ghost, it was still his beloved comrade, the husband of a wife, the son of a mother, the father of a daughter. Ah! Chen Fong held the head and let out a suppressed cry, watching his most beloved person leave, feeling unbearable pain and heartbreak. The pain was so intense that he couldn't breathe. He felt helpless and uncontrollably cried. Why did it have to be like this? They had agreed to return together after completing their respective missions, but now they were leaving one by one, leaving him behind. Why? They were the most elite soldiers, the guardians of the night. They had vowed to shed their blood on this land under the blue sky, to shield all dangers and darkness from the sight of others. They were not afraid of death, not afraid of sacrifice, but the blade had stabbed them in the back. Perhaps even in death, they still blamed themselves, feeling that they were not good enough, not cautious enough, that they had let down the expectations of their country, that they had not fulfilled the tasks and missions given by their country. In their final moments, they desperately turned their heads towards the direction where the sun rose, and in their eyes, the lingering feeling was still self-blame. Chen Fong felt it was unacceptable. For the first time, he felt the rapid passing of life, the helplessness that could not be reversed. Chen Fong took off his coat and carefully placed the terrifying head on the ground. He continued to dig, and soon another head appeared. After half an hour of digging, he had only unearthed two heads. It was clear that the bodies had been buried elsewhere by the black monkeys. Chen Fong carefully wrapped the two heads in his clothes and then carried them in his hands. He walked over to the figure leaning against the wall, whose shoulders were trembling. He gently bent down, lifted him up, and the figure in his arms weakly reached out towards Chen Fong, making whimpering sounds. Chen Fong carefully placed the two heads in his embrace and gently embraced the broken hands, with the head resting beside him. Finally, the figure stopped making any sound, and only the blood and tears flowed down the terrifying face, dripping onto Chen Feng's hand. Chen Fong walked steadily, holding his dear three comrades in his arms. On the third day, in the outskirts of M County, two lonely small mounds stood on the desolate land. In front of the mounds, one person pushed a wheelchair, and the two people stared blankly at the mounds, motionless. In front of the mounds were two tombstones, without names, photos, or the carved red star. There was nothing, not even the luxury of the word martyr for the current small mounds. If these words were written, it was feared that the next day, ruthless drug dealers would desecrate the graves, or so-called justice would dig them up, confirm their identities through forensic examination, and then label them as traitors. How ironic it would be. The two upright tombstones were only there to tell the world that there were two graves here, and that two people lay here. Chen Feng stared at the two graves for a long time, then turned and pushed the wheelchair, walking towards the east. As the dusk approached, he felt a deep sense of desolation. My dear comrades, rest assured, I, Chen Feng, swear that I will find this traitor. Even if I die, I will clear your names. I will not let you lie in the darkness for too long. Chen Feng slowly walked away, the wheels of the wheelchair making a creaking sound as they rolled over the stones. Looking up, a yellowish haze loomed in the distance. The figure in the chair also looked up, not saying a word, but at that moment, both of their hearts were equally resolute. Even in death, they must clear the names of all their sacrificed comrades. They should not bear the label of traitor in death, nor should they endure disgrace before dying. The desolate land where they were buried, unknown to anyone, should not be covered only in wild grass and weeds. Chen Feng pushed the figure in the wheelchair away, leaving behind two lonely small mounds in the entire desolate land. Among the graves, one person was named Wu Hindi, and the other was named Zhang Runway. Wu Hindi's experience was even older than Chen Feng's and the others. He was part of the previous group of undercover agents who infiltrated the enemy's ranks. As for Zhang Runway, his father passed away early and when his grandmother rushed back from their hometown to pick him up, there was nothing left to sell in the house. At first, his grandmother wanted to keep it a secret, but eventually, others found out, and so his father became the talk of the neighborhood. What does a drug addict look like? He had seen it since he was young, that hallucinatory, sorrowful yet happy expression that often appeared on his father's face. His mother left him because of this. He had no intention of working and couldn't afford the expensive drugs, so he sold furniture. Sometimes, he couldn't help but kneel down and beg his own son to kill him. But this state didn't last long, because in a moment of clarity, he committed suicide. No one knew that even in a drug addict's family, there had once been a very happy time, but those times had also become blurry, as if seen through frosted glass. As he grew up, he gradually spent less time at home. When it was time to apply for the college entrance examination, he had a big argument with his grandmother. The neighbors all said that he was just like his father. 
his grandmother could only wipe away her tears at night and finally compromise with him. Later, no one knew where he went. Some said he didn't even go to college and went to work in another city, while others said he became a troublemaker. When asked about him, his grandmother would only say, I don't know. Then one day, a young man pushing a wheelchair suddenly arrived to inquire about his address. Some people still remembered his name, but they were afraid he had caused trouble. After hesitating, they said, his parents are not here, there's only an old lady. Please don't make things difficult. The person pushing the wheelchair, along with the person sitting in it, remained silent until they saw the grandmother. The grandmother was very old, with white hair, and her eyesight was not very good. She sat at the door holding a cane, looking in the direction of the village. Behind her was a large tiled house, and from the front door, it looked like a deserted place, with no signs of life. The young man pushing the wheelchair stopped in front of her and called out, Grandma. The grandmother was puzzled, Who are you? Grandma. I am Runway, your grandson, I have come back. She was surprised for a moment, then suddenly became very happy, holding his hand and saying, You finally came back this year. Before leaving, Chen Feng left a passbook with not much money inside, but enough for the old lady to live comfortably for the rest of her life. The grandmother was very old, her eyesight was particularly poor, and she hadn't seen her grandson for many years. She had almost forgotten what her grandson looked like, until now. She didn't know that her grandson had already sacrificed himself, with no martyr's tombstone, no name, already sleeping in an unknown land. Just like when he insisted on applying for the military academy years ago, he said, I am very afraid of death, but knowing that someone can live because of it, I suddenly am not afraid. Several hours later, Chen Feng slowly pushed the wheelchair away. The grandmother watched as Chen Feng and the wheelchair disappeared at the end of the village road. She turned around, trembling, and sat on a recliner under the melon shed. Her hands were covered in green spots, and her almost skeletal hands trembled. The cane in her hand slipped and fell to the ground. She looked in a certain direction, across mountains and rivers, where two unmarked graves stood in the cold wind. After a long time, a hoarse and mournful wail rang out, My grandson. The grandmother's eyesight was poor, and she hadn't seen her grandson for many years, but he was her beloved grandson. Even if she was blind or deaf, as long as she held her grandson's hand, she would know if it was him. In her mind, there were only images of her grandson. She still remembered the blue clothing with a red star pattern on her grandson's shoulder when they parted ways. Later, no one knew where he went. Some said he didn't even go to college and went to work in another city, while others said he became a troublemaker. When asked about him, his grandmother would only say, I don't know, but she knew in her heart. She knew better than anyone. Pushing the wheelchair, Chen Feng returned to M County. After nearly half a month of treatment, Liu Yuhang's injuries had improved a lot, but the pigskin patched on his face looked somewhat hideous, making him look like a monster. When Chen Feng pushed Liu Yuhang on the street, countless people avoided them, their eyes filled with fear. Some children even cried on the spot. Chen Feng, let's go back. On the wheelchair, Liu Yuhang hurriedly lowered his head in panic and said anxiously. Chen Feng felt a pang in his heart and could only nod, carrying Liu Yuhang into the car, folding the wheelchair and putting it in the trunk, then driving away. In the car, Liu Yuhang's mind was filled with fear and panic. He lowered his head in pain, and tears streamed down heavily. Chen Feng drove without saying a word, not moving at all. After more than half an hour, Chen Feng stopped at the entrance of a hospital with Liu Yuhang. The nurse skillfully took him back to the ward, and Chen Feng turned and left. At this time, in a small courtyard in the suburbs of M County, a chair was placed at the door. A little person sat on the chair, with both hands supporting the chin, staring blankly at the end of the street corner in the distance, as if waiting for something. Clang! Suddenly, a sound of something falling to the ground came from the room. She quickly got up and ran towards the kitchen. Bai Luo was bending over, struggling to pick up the things on the ground. Mom, I'll do it. Shen Cici obediently picked up the things and handed them to Bai Luo. Xianxian is so good, Bai Luo praised, forcing a smile on her pale face. Rip! Suddenly, she felt a slight pain in her abdomen, and couldn't help but take a deep breath. Cold sweat instantly broke out on her forehead. Mom, what's wrong with you? Shen Cici's face was full of worry. It's okay, mom is fine. Xianxian, help mom go, and rest for a while. Bai Luo forced a smile, and Shen Cici immediately helped Bai Luo to the living room. She carefully helped Bai Luo sit on the sofa, then ran into the room and came out with a towel, carefully wiping the sweat from Bai Luo's forehead. Bai Luo leaned on the sofa, and the pain in her stomach gradually subsided. She slowly closed her eyes on the sofa, and soon, a slight and steady snoring sound came from her nostrils. During this period of time, Bai Luo had hardly slept well. Every night, she would wake up from her dreams, and in her mind, the scene of the huge cement platform in the Wanhao Mall falling down, 
brutally smashing the figure below into a pulp, kept replaying. Like a nightmare, but even more terrifying than a nightmare. Clang! Bai Luo was awakened by a noisy sound. She opened her eyes and didn't see Chen Cici in the room. Xian Xian! Bai Luo called out in panic, but there was no answer. She quickly got up and went to the kitchen. As soon as she entered the kitchen, she saw a scene that made her extremely distressed. Steam kept rising from the electric rice cooker on the stove, and on the cutting board, there was a pile of irregularly shaped potato chunks, some of which were stained with bright red bloodstains. A kitchen knife lay on the ground, also covered in bloodstains. Under the stove, a small stool was tilted and lying on the ground. Chen Cici leaned against the cabinet door, tightly gripping her left hand with her right hand. Between her fingers, bright red blood kept oozing out. Her eyes were full of tears, but they never fell. She bit her lip tightly, stubbornly refusing to make a sound. Xian Xian. Seeing this, Bai Luo suddenly cried out in sorrow, and quickly ran over, struggling to lift Chen Cici up, tears streaming down her face. Mom. Mom, Xian Xian is fine, Xian Xian is not in pain. Mom, don't cry. Chen Cici wanted to reach out and wipe the tears from Bai Luo's face, but as soon as she let go, her left hand felt intense pain. Bai Luo felt as if a knife was cutting her heart, and she quickly carried Chen Cici outside. On the street corner, there stood a small clinic. Bai Luo quickly carried Chen Cici inside. Doctor. Doctor, please. Please take a look at my daughter. Please. Bai Luo cried and inside the clinic, a middle-aged doctor hurriedly came out to greet them, Xian Xian's mom, don't worry, what happened to Xian Xian? My daughter's hand was cut by a kitchen knife. Quick, bring her in. Bai Luo carried Chen Cici into a small room inside, little Xian Xian, let go of your fingers and let uncle take a look, okay? It hurts. Chen Cici's eyes finally couldn't hold back the tears, let uncle take a look, uncle is a doctor, blowing on it will make it stop hurting the doctor spoke gently, and Chen Cici carefully let go of her right hand. As soon as she released her grip, Bai Luo and the doctor immediately saw that Chen Cici's index finger was crooked and hanging on her hand, with a large gash oozing a lot of bright red blood. Oh my god. Seeing this scene, Bai Luo finally couldn't help but cry out in distress, feeling a tingling sensation on her scalp. Almost half of Chen Cici's finger was about to be cut off, crooked and covered by the remaining half of the skin. Seeing this, the doctor couldn't help but exclaim. He couldn't imagine how a child of four or five years old could endure such a severe injury without crying. Such a serious injury, even an adult would probably not be able to endure without wailing, right? He extended two fingers and gently felt it. It's okay, it's okay, the bone is not completely severed. The doctor's face was full of relief and gratitude. This is the suburbs, and it would take over an hour to get to the county hospital from here. Moreover, the county hospital was powerless in the face of such a severe injury, and their medical skills were not as proficient. As for going to the city hospital, it would take at least 4 to 5 hours, and by the time they arrived, it would be too late. Xian Xian's mom, the situation is still relatively good, but we must perform wound closure and finger reattachment surgery. I have various surgical tools here, and I used to be a surgeon at the provincial hospital. I am very confident about this surgery, but there are risks involved. If there are any risks in this surgery, Dr. Qin, I am willing to take on all the risks, please save Xian Xian as soon as possible. Bai Luo interrupted the doctor directly. In a short while, after the doctor had Bai Luo sign a liability waiver, he prepared the surgical instruments and then pushed Chen Cici into the newly set up operating room. Over half an hour later, the doctor pushed Chen Cici out of the operating room. Chen Cici, who had been given anesthesia, closed her eyes, and her finger was already wrapped in thick gauze. Xian Xian's mom, the surgery was very successful, but in the future, this finger may be somewhat affected, definitely not as flexible as before. You need to be prepared mentally. I understand, doctor, thank you. Bai Luo staggered a bit, but she still persevered. Okay, now give Xian Xian some anti-inflammatory injections. Some of the medicines are temporarily out of stock here. I will go to the health bureau to get some. You help me watch the clinic while I'm gone. Okay, thank you, doctor. Bai Luo nodded, and the doctor drove away from the clinic. Bai Luo returned to the bedside and sat down, motionless, watching the unconscious Chen Cici. Tears couldn't help but flow, a sense of powerlessness filled her heart, and in her mind, she couldn't help but recall the scene at Wanhao Square. The huge concrete platform came crashing down. Everyone who was alive had come out, as long as he didn't come out again. If you were still alive. If you were still here. How good would that be? Bai Luo couldn't help but murmur, tears once again filled her eyes. Mom, don't cry. A weak voice sounded, Bai Luo looked down and saw that Chen Cici had opened her eyes, struggling to reach out her right hand to wipe away the tears on her face. Bai Luo grabbed Chen Cici's hand, Mom won't cry, Mom won't cry. Mom, I'm sorry. Xian Xian made you worry. 
It's just that Xian Xian. Xian Xian wants to cook for mom, Xian Xian wants to take care of mom. Before, it was mom taking care of Xian Xian. Now mom has a little brother in her belly, mom is tired, Xian Xian has grown up, Xian Xian wants to protect mom. Now it's just Xian Xian and mom, if Xian Xian doesn't protect mom, no one can protect mom. Wah! Hearing Chen Cici's words, Bai Luo couldn't help but burst into tears, feeling a pain in her heart as if it were being twisted by a knife. Xian Xian, it's mom's fault, it's mom's fault. Mom is useless, mom is useless and that's why you got hurt. It's all mom's fault, it's all mom's fault. Two hours later, the doctor drove back and changed Chen Cici's medicine. Chen Feng, who was driving towards the suburbs, felt a sharp pain in his heart, but more than that, he was happy. In the back seat and trunk of the car were a pile of children's toys. His precious Xian Xian, who had grown so big, hadn't bought her any toys yet. He hadn't seen her in nearly a year, and the last time was in a hurry, just a brief meeting, not even daring to acknowledge each other. Originally, in order not to involve Bai Luo and Chen Cici, he had planned to sacrifice himself on that occasion, but under Ouyang Chen's guidance, he deeply regretted it. The person he should least have provoked was Bai Luo, but now he had, and he had to take responsibility for it. If he couldn't even protect his own mother and daughter, what talk was there of protecting the family and the country? In this lifetime, he owed nothing to this world, not even to this country, the most owed were his mother and daughter. Old Yang Chen was right, sometimes what he did was right, but he couldn't let others pay the price for what he had to do, especially the people who cared about him, loved him. Otherwise, even if it was for the country, for the people, there would be people who looked down on him, because all his honors and merits were stained with the blood and tears of his wife and daughter. Bai Luo, Xian Xian, dad was wrong. Dad was wrong. Chen Feng drove while recalling the heart-wrenching cries. At that time, when they thought he had sacrificed himself, how much pain his woman and daughter must have been in, he thought that by taking this opportunity to fake his sacrifice, he could clear his relationship with Bai Luo and Chen Cici and no longer let them be hurt. But now he realized that when they thought he had sacrificed himself, that was the biggest hurt to them. He just wanted to go back quickly and let them know that he wasn't dead, he was wrong. In the future, he would do everything to protect his mother and daughter. Boom! Chen Feng almost stepped on the gas pedal to the maximum, he couldn't wait to appear in front of Bai Luo and Chen Cici. As time passed, everything in front of him became familiar. Creak! Stepping on the gas, Chen Feng's car stopped at the gate of the small courtyard. Chen Feng got out of the car, looking at everything familiar, his body couldn't help but tremble. He carried the toys he had bought and a bunch of her favorite flowers in his right hand, slowly walking towards the door. The door wasn't closed, there was a small stool next to the door, and Chen Feng's face softened. Every time he came back, Chen Cici would sit on this small stool, swinging her two short legs, a cute little face always staring into the distance, waiting for him to come back. Every time he came back, she would be the first to see him, then run towards him. His precious daughter, she must be almost five years old now, right? She must have grown into a big girl, right? Carrying the things in his hand, he walked step by step towards the inside, his heart trembling. How would he face by Luo and Chen Cici in a moment? However, soon his face became serious, and there was no sound of Bai Luo or Chen Cici in the entire house as he had imagined. There was only endless silence. He felt something was wrong and quickened his pace inside. The hall was normal, but there was no one. He pushed open the door to the bedroom, but no one was there. The second bedroom, also empty. It wasn't until he reached the kitchen and saw a mess, with potatoes stained with blood, and a series of dried bloodstains on the floor, that Chen Feng's face changed drastically. He growled low, his mind buzzing. If something happened to Bai Luo and Chen Cici, he would never forgive himself. Meanwhile, outside, Bai Luo returned with Chen Cici in her arms. When she saw the car at the door, Bai Luo hesitated for a moment, then looked alert. Who's inside? She shouted, and the next moment, a figure appeared at the door. As their eyes met, both Bai Luo and Chen Feng froze. Bai Luo's eyes were full of disbelief, her mouth wide open, while Chen Feng's were filled with guilt and self-blame. Bai Luo staggered back two steps, her body trembling violently, almost dropping the sleeping Chen Cici from her arms. Chen Cici, half awake, opened her eyes groggily and saw Chen Feng at the door. Her eyes brightened for a moment, then dimmed. She turned her head to Bai Luo's arms and choked, Mom, I dreamt of dad again. I miss dad so much. Hearing Chen Cici's words, Chen Feng's body trembled violently again, his eyes instantly turning red. He opened his mouth, trembled a few times, and finally, in a hoarse voice, said, Bai Luo, Xian Xian, I, I'm back. Hearing this familiar voice, Chen Cici suddenly lifted her head, her drowsiness disappearing instantly. Her big eyes were filled with shock and disbelief. Dad, Dad, are you a ghost? Chen Cici murmured, tears filling her eyes. She struggled out of Bai Luo's arms, Dad, 
Why did you come to see Xian Xian and Mom just now? They said you would come back to see Xian Xian on the seventh day, but Xian Xian waited for a whole day and night and didn't see you. Dad, did the King of Hell hear Xuan Xuan's prayers and let you come back to see Xian Xian and Mom? Dad, don't leave, okay? Xian Xian is not afraid of you, Xian Xian is not afraid of ghosts. Dad, go inside quickly, go inside, it's sunny now, Dad will get hurt. At the end, Chen Sasai suddenly noticed Chen Feng standing in the sunlight and anxiously shouted. With each word from Chen Sasai, Chen Feng's heart clenched, tears streaming down his face. He walked slowly towards Bai Luo and Chen Sasai, Xian Xian, Dad is still alive, Dad is still alive, Dad is not a ghost, Dad is not a ghost. Finally, Chen Feng couldn't help but cry out. What sins had he committed to let his daughter suffer such hardships? A daughter longing for her father could only meet him in her dreams. Even if she believed he was dead, she still prayed for the king of hell to let him come back. Even if he was a ghost, her heart was filled only with endless longing, not a trace of fear. She was just a child, not even five years old. Chen Feng was filled with endless regret. As Chen Feng spoke, Chen Sasai stopped crying. She looked at Chen Feng, her eyes showing a hint of confusion, but when she saw the shadow beneath Chen Feng, she was sure that he was not a ghost, because she knew that ghosts didn't have shadows and couldn't see sunlight. Dad! Chen Sisi let out a sharp cry, staggering on her two short legs as she ran towards Chen Feng. From a distance, she reached out her two hands towards Chen Feng. Chen Feng quickly stepped forward and lifted Chen Sisi up, holding her tightly in his arms. Chen Sisi tightly wrapped one hand around Chen Feng's neck and used the other to stroke his face, looking incredulous. When she felt the warmth of his touch, she finally believed that this was her father, not a ghost. Daddy! Chen Sisi buried her head in Chen Feng's shoulder and burst into tears, releasing all the grievances in her heart. Daddy, Xian Xian misses you so much, Xian Xian misses you. Daddy, last time Xian Xian saw Daddy, Xian Xian reached out to Daddy, why didn't you save Xian Xian? Daddy, someone bullied Xian Xian, they all ganged up on Xian Xian, when they couldn't beat her, their mother kicked Xian Xian, and Xuan Xuan's head hit the table and bled, it hurts. They wrongly accused Xian Xian, they wrongly accused Mommy. It was clearly Xian Xian who was bullied. They won't let Xian Xian go to kindergarten. Xiao Feng and his mother are bad people. The principal is a bad person. The teacher is a bad person. They are all bullying Xian Xian, bullying mommy. Hearing Chen Sisi's complaints, a surge of anger and murderous intent rose in Chen Feng's mind. Someone bullied my wife and daughter? I want them dead. For the first time, besides the intense killing intent towards those ruthless drug dealers, Chen Feng felt an overwhelming urge to avenge his wife and daughter. Daddy, look at Xuan Xuan's hand, Xuan Xuan's fingers almost fell off, it hurts, it hurts. Today, Dr. Uncle used a needle to stitch it up for Xian Xian. But Xian Xian didn't cry, Xian Xian is strong. Xian Xian wants to take care of mommy, mommy has a little brother in her belly, mommy is tired, Xian Xian wants to cook for mommy. It's all because Xian Xian is weak, the knife is too heavy, Xian Xian can't hold it steady. Chen Sisi handed her left hand wrapped in gauze to Chen Feng. Looking at Chen Sisi's hand wrapped in gauze, Chen Feng felt his heart breaking. How could he be such a jerk? Letting his wife and daughter suffer so much. He carefully placed Chen Sisi's left hand in his palm and gently blew on it. Xian Xian, does it still hurt? Watching Chen Feng gently blowing on her hand, Chen Sisi immediately smiled through her tears, feeling so happy that she could almost blow a little snot bubble. It hurt a lot just now, but it doesn't hurt anymore after daddy blew on it. Hearing Chen Sisi's words, Chen Feng's eyes welled up again. What could he blow away through the thick gauze? This child is truly so considerate, it's heart-wrenching. After comforting Chen Sisi, Chen Feng finally turned to look at Bai Luo. At this moment, Bai Luo was already in tears, looking at the man holding Chen Sisi, she felt as if she were dreaming. When she saw Chen Feng, all the grievances and suffering she had endured seemed worth it. As long as this man she loved was still alive, everything was worth it. Even if she died now, she would do so willingly. Bai Luo, I'm back. Chen Feng looked at Bai Luo, his hoarse voice rang out. He walked towards Bai Luo while holding Chen Sisi. Bai Luo bit her lip tightly, her eyes blurred with tears, staring at Chen Feng intently. She didn't dare to blink, afraid that if she did, the man in front of her would disappear. She was afraid, afraid that this was just a dream. But when Chen Feng reached out and embraced her, she was certain that this was not a dream. The man standing in front of her was the man she had longed for day and night. Wu Bai Luo buried her head in Chen Feng's chest and began to cry loudly. On the other side, Chen Sisi, who had just stopped crying, heard Bai Luo's crying and couldn't help but burst into tears. The two girls who loved Chen Feng the most in the world could finally cry out loud without restraint at this moment. They no longer needed to be strong or force a smile because their man, their father, had come back, and their world had not collapsed. Chen Feng's nose felt sour, and tears flowed uncontrollably from his eyes. He didn't say a word, 
but used all his strength to hold the two figures in his arms tightly. He vowed in his heart that he would never let these two girls suffer again. After a while, Bai Luo and Chen Cici's emotions gradually calmed down. The three of them hugged each other and walked towards home. Back at home, Chen Feng sat on the sofa, Chen Cici sat on his lap, her head resting on his chest, and Bai Luo sat on the other side, holding onto Chen Feng's arms with both hands, her head resting on his left chest. Chen Feng gently stroked Chen Cici's head, and she seemed to enjoy it. She lifted her head and arched it in Chen Feng's hand. In Chen Feng's embrace, the two girls looked at each other with their big eyes, both with a sparkling smile. Mom, you cried like a little kitten, Chen Cici said, looking at Bai Luo's tear-stained face. You're the little kitten. Bai Luo gently poked Chen Cici's head with her hand, and the two of them closed their eyes at the same time, leaning happily on Chen Feng's chest, listening to the strong beating of his heart. Their own hearts beat strongly along with it. Soon, a stable breathing sound came from their embrace. Chen Feng looked down and saw that Chen Cici and Bai Luo were both asleep with their eyes closed. A pang of pain struck Chen Feng's heart. After a while, Bai Luo woke up with a whimper. When she opened her eyes, she saw Chen Feng looking at her with a smile on his face. Her face turned red in an instant, and she quickly lifted her head from Chen Feng's chest. But Chen Feng gently held Bai Luo's head with his hand, his eyes full of affection. He lowered his head and kissed Bai Luo's forehead gently. He 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 at that moment, a suppressed laughter came from their embrace. Chen Feng and Bai Luo looked down and saw Chen Cici using her right hand to cover her eyes, but her five fingers were quietly spread apart, and a pair of big eyes kept peeking at them. Oops. When Chen Feng and Bai Luo looked down, she exclaimed and quickly closed her eyes again, covering them with her hands, a mischievous smile on her face. Mom and Dad, you can continue. Xian Xian didn't see anything. Xian Xian didn't see Dad kiss Mom. You don't have to mind Xian Xian Chen Feng? Bai Luo. The family enjoyed the tender moment for a while. Are you all hungry? I'll go make some food for you. Chen Feng stood up, but Chen Cici held onto his clothes tightly. Daddy, don't go. Daddy, don't go. Chen Cici looked at Chen Feng, her big eyes instantly filled with tears. Good girl, daddy won't go. Daddy will go make food for you. Chen Feng squatted in front of Chen Cici and spoke in the gentlest voice. Daddy really won't go? Daddy really won't go. Chen Feng nodded heavily. Then let's pinky promise? Chen Cici extended her cute little finger, slightly curved. Okay, let's pinky promise. Chen Feng gently hooked his finger with Chen Cici's finger. We promise not to change for a hundred years. No, not for a thousand years. Okay, not for a thousand years. Chen Feng smiled, and Chen Cici finally agreed to let go of Chen Feng's hand, but her eyes were fixed on Chen Feng. She was so afraid that Chen Feng would fly away again. Chop chop chop. The sound of chopping vegetables came from the kitchen, and the boiling soup made a gurgling sound. The kitchen was like a music hall, hiding many wonderful sounds. When Chen Feng poured oil into the pot, it sizzled, and when he added the vegetables, there was a popping sound. When he turned on the faucet, the flowing water sounded like singing, the range hood made a whooshing sound, like an accompaniment, and when washing dishes, it was like children taking a bath, chattering nonstop. Chen Feng was cooking, and suddenly turned to see Chen Cici leaning at the kitchen door, sticking out her little head, her big eyes staring at Chen Feng. When Chen Cici saw Chen Feng turn around, she grinned and showed a bright smile. Daddy, it smells so good. What delicious food are you making? Daddy is stewing beef soup. Come here. Chen Feng waved to Chen Cici, and she ran over with her little legs. Chen Feng opened the lid, picked up a small piece of lean meat, blew on it a few times, then squatted down. A Chen Cici opened her small mouth and took a few bites, then swallowed half of it, keeping the other half next to her teeth, making her face round. Mmm, -hmm. it's so delicious. Chen Cici made a satisfied sound. Her big eyes slightly squinted, almost forming small moons. Okay, Xian Xian, go out and accompany mom, daddy will be done soon. Okay, daddy, don't tell mom that Xian Xian sneaked a bite, or mom will say Xian Xian is a little glutton. Okay, this is daddy and Xian Xian's little secret, won't tell mom. Chen Feng showed a fatherly smile, and Chen Cici bounced out. Watching the satisfied Chen Cici, Chen Feng's face was full of smiles. Children are like this, easily satisfied, and they like to run to the kitchen when adults are cooking and adults always spoil them by giving them something delicious, making them happy and flying high, because for them, it's not just about the delicious food, but also represents the parents' favoritism towards them. Chen Cici ran into the living room, and just before seeing Bai Luo, she swallowed the meat she had been chewing for a long time. Xian Xian, what are you eating? Bai Luo looked at her with a smile, the room was very quiet, she could hear every sound of the two father and son in the kitchen, but she pretended not to know, oh, nothing, I didn't eat anything, see? Chen Cici gulped down the meat with a soup taste, then opened her mouth. Bai Luo reached out and wiped the soup from the corner of her mouth. Okay, okay, 
Our Xian Xian didn't sneak a bite of the meat. He he, yeah, Xian Xian didn't sneak a bite. Daddy's meat is so delicious. Chen Cici proudly raised her head, feeling extremely clever. She actually fooled her own mother. Dinner's ready. Chen Feng walked in with a dish in one hand, wearing an apron and a smile. Two dishes were placed on the table, and the aroma immediately attracted Chen Cici and Bai Luo. Wow, it smells so good. Daddy is amazing. Chen Cici walked to the table, leaning on her elbows, her eyes shining as she looked at the dishes on the table. Chen Feng turned and walked into the kitchen to continue serving the dishes, and Bai Luo stood up and walked into the kitchen. What are you doing? Go sit down. I'll help you get the bowls. No, you're pregnant, you can't move around, go out and sit, I'll get them later. Chen Feng looked at Bai Luo, his eyes full of doting. He walked up and gently embraced Bai Luo, resting his chin on Bai Luo's forehead. A gentle yet domineering voice sounded, warming Bai Luo's heart. This feeling of being cared for, of someone looking after you, is truly wonderful. All right, I'll go out and wait for Xian Xian. Bai Luo no longer insisted, smiling as he turned and left. Chen Feng walked out with a large bowl of soup. The bone stew was fragrant and nourishing. He brought out all the dishes and then placed the rice from the rice cooker on the table. Turning around, he grabbed bowls and chopsticks. Dad, hurry up, Xian Xian is hungry. Chen Cici couldn't wait, her mouth watering. All right, all right, Chen Feng responded, spooning out the rice. Bai Luo stood up, scooped a bowl for himself, arranged the rice, and neatly placed three pairs of chopsticks next to the three bowls. Chen Feng scooped out the rice, and as he turned, he saw Bai Luo and Chen Cici sitting obediently at the table, both pairs of big eyes looking at him. His heart warmed at the sight of his wife and daughter. What more could he ask for? A wife, a daughter, a family, is enough. If he wasn't a great person, Chen Feng felt that this moment was the most fulfilling in his life. If only time could stop at this moment, how wonderful would that be? Away from the darkness, away from everything. But, phew, he let out a heavy breath in his heart, still smiling on his face. Let's eat here, try this soup, the meat is so tender. Chen Feng scooped a bowl and handed it to Bai Luo, then scooped another, carefully blowing on it with a spoon to feed Chen Cici, but she tightly closed her mouth, her nose twitching as she smelled the aroma of the soup, unable to help but swallow a mouthful of saliva. Shen Shen, open your mouth ah no, Shen Shen wants dad to drink first. Chen Cici shook her head stubbornly, like a little donkey. Shen Shen, be good, your hand is injured, let dad feed you, okay? Chen Feng coaxed. No, Shen Shen is not in pain and her right hand is not injured. Xian Xian can eat with her right hand. Dad, will you eat with us? When Xian Xian grows up, she can eat by herself. If you don't believe me, ask mom. Xian Xian is brave. Chen Cici turned to look at Bai Luo, her face full of pride. Yes, yes, our Xian Xian is the bravest and most sensible. Bai Luo smiled, praising his daughter, then turned to Chen Feng. You eat with us, listen to Xian Xian okay, then we'll listen to Xian Xian. Chen Feng nodded with a smile. He handed the spoon to Chen Cici, who obediently took it, then looked at Chen Feng with big eyes. Dad, drink Chen Feng's heart was melting. Okay, Dad will drink. Chen Feng took a big sip of the soup, then smiled at Chen Cici. She immediately took the spoon and drank the soup in big gulps. It's so delicious Dad, I want another bowl. Chen Cici drank half a bowl in a few big sips, then handed the bowl to Chen Feng. As he took the bowl to scoop the soup, she stuck out her tongue to lick the soup from the corner of her mouth her big eyes staring at the bowl he was scooping, like a little greedy cat. Chen Feng handed the soup to Chen Cici, then looked at Bai Luo, and both of them showed satisfied smiles. Slurp slurp the whole table was filled with the sound of Chen Cici drinking the soup. Shen Shen, girl should drink soup without making a sound girl should be more ladylike. Bai Luo looked at Chen Cici, then spoke gently. Okay, mom Chen Cici's movements immediately became smaller, trying to make herself look more ladylike. Chen Feng laughed on the side. Girls should indeed be ladylike but our Xian Xian is still young be as happy as you want, drink as happily as you want. To be a lady, it's not too late to become one when you grow up really? Chen Cici stared at Chen Feng and Bai Luo with big eyes, of course it can Chen Feng nodded, and Chen Cici turned to Bai Luo, you little monkey, drink up. Bai Luo reached out his finger and lightly tapped Chen Cici's forehead. Chen Cici immediately felt as if she had been freed from restraint, and she drank the soup in big gulps with a spoon. You little monkey. Bai Luo shook his head with a smile and exchanged a glance with Chen Feng. Both of them were full of laughter in their eyes. Dad, give Xian Xian some more rice. Xian Xian wants to eat it with the soup. After drinking half of the soup, Chen Cici handed the bowl to Chen Feng. He took it and scooped a spoonful of rice into Chen Cici's bowl, and then added a large spoonful of stewed meat from the pot on top. Thank you, Dad Chen Cici looked at the large bowl of meat in front of her, and her eyes were shining with delight. She mashed the rice and meat with a spoon, then stirred it and took a big bite, 
making her eyes curve into moons. After the meal, Chen Feng put away the leftover food in the refrigerator, washed the bowls and chopsticks, and then the whole family sat quietly on the sofa watching TV. Good times always pass quickly, and in the blink of an eye, it was already evening. After helping Chen Cici wash up, Chen Feng changed her bandages, and then the whole family lay down on the big bed. Chen Cici lay in the middle, with one small foot on Chen Feng and the other on Bai Luo. Dad, do you want to smell Xuan Xuan's little feet? Their fragrant Chen Cici suddenly struggled to sit up and looked at Chen Feng seriously. Chen Feng? Xian Xian, stop fooling around. Bai Luo glared at Chen Cici, and her face immediately fell. When she was young, her favorite thing was her own little feet, because in her memory, Chen Feng's favorite thing was her little feet. When she was young, Chen Feng always liked to play with his own feet, put them near his mouth, and the stubble would tickle them. Ha, our Xian Xian is right. Our Xuan Xuan's little feet are the most fragrant. When she was young, dad loved to kiss our precious Xuan Xuan's little feet come, let dad smell them Chen Feng smiled and then picked up Chen Cici, holding her two little feet in one hand and lightly kissing them. M M M. Fragrant so fragrant when Chen Feng smelled them, the child's feet didn't smell bad at all, and they even had a faint, pleasant fragrance. When Chen Feng smelled them, the stubble lightly brushed against Chen Cici's little feet, he 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 dad, dad, it tickles Xuan Xuan's little feet are so ticklish Chen Cici immediately burst into a cheerful laughter and her two little feet moved around in Chen Feng's hands like two agile little snakes. After more than an hour of playing, Chen Cici, tired out, finally fell into a deep sleep, and a thin layer of sweat appeared on Chen Feng's forehead. Bai Luo got up, took out a piece of paper, and gently wiped Chen Feng's forehead. Chen Feng remained still, allowing Bai Luo to wipe his forehead. Suddenly, Bai Luo stared at the man in front of her, feeling as if everything was so dreamlike. Looking at Chen Feng, her gaze gradually became infatuated. Ah! Suddenly, Bai Luo murmured, and Chen Feng suddenly leaned in, looking at Bai Luo with intense eyes, his heavy breath spraying onto Bai Luo's face. Bai Luo's face instantly turned red, as if it was about to drip water. Wife, you're really beautiful smooth talker. Silver-tongued. Bai Luo lowered her head, but a smile appeared on her face. Let's sleep. It's late, Chen Feng kissed her on the forehead and said gently, okay? Bai Luo nodded shyly. Even though she was already a mother of one child and about to give birth to her second, at this moment, her face was still full of shyness. Click, the lights went out, and the two lay down, slowly falling asleep. After a while, the room was filled with Bai Luo's steady breathing. Chen Feng took out his phone and sent a message, Sunshine Kindergarten, Director Tian, and the former teacher of class 3 in the small class, there is a child named Xiaofeng in the class, as well as his family background and the latest information from the past 6 months, check it. In the darkness, a hint of fierceness flashed in Chen Feng's eyes. No one could harm his wife and daughter and get away with it. After sending the message, Chen Feng leaned back against the bed, his eyes constantly flashing with a sharp light in the darkness. Outside the screen at this moment, someone saw the message Chen Feng sent and suddenly seemed to remember something, unable to help but exclaim, I remember now, Sunshine Kindergarten, Director Tian. And that Director Su, isn't this the tragic case of the eight? 26 incident in M County that shocked Disya more than 20 years ago? Hearing this person's exclamation, everyone couldn't help but fall into a reverie, recalling the 8. 26 incident, one of the most brutal cases to occur in Disya in recent decades. The entire family of Su Tao, the director of the M County JC Bureau, was wiped out, and Director Tian's family was also completely annihilated, with more than 10 people brutally killed. The death toll was even higher than the number of people killed in the bombing at Donghua train station and the youngest victim was only five years old. In particular, the mastermind even showed an extremely cruel and twisted smile in front of the surveillance camera, causing a huge uproar at the time. This devil, who was indifferent to life, instantly aroused the anger and hatred of countless people. That figure was called a demon for the first time by the people of Disya, becoming the butcher who could stop a child from crying. When the news of the tragedy came, nearly a million people in Disya spontaneously took to the streets, holding white candles and chrysanthemums to mourn the unfortunate victims. Now, recalling these events and linking them to Chen Feng's current actions, many people's faces turned pale. Could it be that Chen Feng really caused this tragedy? Although I think what Director Su and Director Tian did was excessive, even disgusting, when they bullied by Luo and Chen Cici, I was also very angry with them, but do they really deserve to die? Yes, even if they have made a huge mistake, it should be left to the country and the law to judge. Ah, just thinking about the brutal deaths of more than 10 people makes me shudder. In an instant, the entire courtroom was filled with whispers. Although up to this point, Chen Feng's ordeal was very sympathetic and heartbreaking, and they were very grateful for everything he had done, if Chen Feng really brutally slaughtered more than 10 people just because of this, it would be truly cruel. 
However, some people couldn't help but retort, Yu Seichen Feng is cruel, but what if it was your wife and daughter who were being bullied? Yes, that vicious woman, she could even lay a hand on little Xian Xian, how good can she be? A woman with such a venomous heart deserves to die. Yes, she's truly despicable, but their retorts immediately sparked strong reactions from more people. Since when did saving lives become despicable? Your values are truly frightening. Are you still underage? Haven't your values formed yet? First of all, no matter what, what Director Tian and Director Su did, although it may have violated some laws, it does not constitute death. Moreover, Director Tian was only morally reprehensible. You can condemn her, but if you really kill them all, how innocent are they? And Su Tao's son, how old is he? Even if he bullied Xiao Xian, it was just a child's mischief. How innocent is the child? To put it bluntly, except for the child's mother's wrong actions towards Xiao Xian, what the others did is not worth mentioning. This world is like this, not absolutely fair. The powerless are always at a disadvantage. Yes, you can condemn them for violating moral conscience, but why go as far as death? Yes, I can't understand some people's values. Although those people may have gone too far, they are not deserving of death, right? They haven't done anything outrageous like killing an arson. Su Tao's son, Su Xiaofeng, is still a child. Even if he is sensible, how much can he understand? And isn't it normal for children to be mischievous? Most people cannot accept a life passing away before their eyes. This is truly unrelated to guilt and fault. Seeing so many people not indifferent to life, I am still quite relieved. After all, I am happy to live in an era where human nature is not lacking. Wu Wu Wu, Tian Lin, the principal of Sunshine Kindergarten, is my mother. I was fortunate to survive because I was studying abroad. My mother has always been kind to everyone. As the director of the orphanage, many people affectionately call her mother Tian. All the orphans adore her. Although she did make some mistakes in the kindergarten, she really doesn't deserve to die. And my father, my aunts, and sisters, they are all kind people. Whenever there is a disaster, they will donate money. Why did fate make them suffer like this? It's been more than 20 years, woo woo woo, more than 20 years, I finally found the mastermind who murdered my whole family. Chen Feng, I used to admire you before this, and even shed tears for you several times, but now I know that the pitiful must have something despicable about them. You, this demon, you killed my whole family. How cruel you are. You, this butcher, everything you did before was hypocritical. Now you are finally revealing your true colors, right? What kind of hero are you? You must be in great pain now, being captured by your own daughter, and being sent to the memory trial device for judgment by your own hands, to suffer before you die. This is retribution, huh? The way of heaven is fair, this is your retribution. One by one, people expressed their views. Later, a person who had narrowly escaped the disaster without studying abroad, Tian Lin's son, also stepped forward, crazily accusing Chin Feng. Looking through the transparent memory trial device and seeing Chin Feng writhing in pain inside, his face was full of relief. Chen Cixi looked at this scene, feeling very complicated. When she became a police officer, the 8. 26 tragedy in M County became a case that they studied and analyzed many times. At that time, she had almost forgotten her experiences in the kindergarten when she was a child, so when she saw this tragic case, she already hated the cruel mastermind in her heart. She secretly vowed that she would one day capture and bring the mastermind to justice. But now, she actually found out that this tragic case was related to her. Chen Feng actually heartlessly killed so many people for himself. She was very young at the time, and she was indeed very angry and aggrieved at the mistreatment by Xiao Feng and his mother's family. But if all these people were to be wiped out just because of this, she also felt that Chen Feng. It may be a bit cruel, even if Chen Feng did it because of her, she cannot accept such a result. This is not what she wants at all. But ultimately, everything Chen Feng did was because of her. If it weren't for her, Chen Feng would not have done such outrageous things, and so many innocent people would not have died. She is the real culprit. Listening to the angry roar of the descendants of Tian Lin in the courtroom, she felt her face burning and was full of guilt and self-blame. She even turned away quietly, afraid to face that person, afraid of his questioning, questioning why her father had to kill his mother? To kill so many innocent and kind people. Perhaps. This is just your nature, and this incident is just the catalyst for you to become a butcher. She looked up at the memory tribunal, biting her lip lightly, feeling a hint of resentment rising in her heart. But when her gaze met Chen Feng, who was trembling with pain, her heart trembled fiercely. After all, Chen Feng was her father. She was the one who arrested Chen Feng and then judged him. Watching Chen Feng in such pain, she also felt inexplicably uncomfortable. At least, at this point in the big screen, Chen Feng is still very good to her and her mother. What he did can still be called heroic, but, you really shouldn't have killed so many people. 
No matter what, they didn't deserve to die. Do you think this is your way of loving me? Do you think this will make me feel better? No, by doing this, you will only make me hate you more. Shen Cici couldn't help but growl in her heart, and the entire network was instantly in turmoil. The network was divided into two factions. Some people felt that as a great person, Chen Feng was loyal to the country and the people on the front line, but behind his protection, there were people bullying his wife and daughter. Such a person deserves to die. Moreover, when Chen Feng was at the station, even if he died, he wanted to protect others. Such a person could not possibly indiscriminately kill innocent people, so there must be some hidden truth. Others felt that no matter what, these people did not deserve to die, and they felt that Chen Feng was too cruel. The two factions argued endlessly on the entire network, and in the end, everyone refocused their attention on the screen and decided to continue watching, using the facts that followed to judge who was right and who was wrong. On the big screen, buzz. The phone vibrated slightly, and Chen Feng quickly covered the phone, then nervously glanced at Bai Luo and Chen Cici. After seeing that the two of them were still sleeping soundly, he breathed a sigh of relief, unlocked the phone, and opened the text message. After scanning it, Chen Feng's eyes instantly turned red, and his breathing became heavy. The glimpse of Chen Feng also allowed the audience outside the screen to clearly see the contents of the text message. Su Tao, director of the JC Bureau in M County, has repeatedly accepted bribes, provided shelter for criminals, distorted facts, defended the innocent, and committed countless crimes. Tian Lin, the principal of Sunshine Kindergarten, secretly also serves as the director of the M County Orphanage. Many years ago, she controlled a group of child beggars, with the children coming from the M County Orphanage. Even in recent years, Tian has used her position as the orphanage director to sell several children from the orphanage to a black hospital in a certain place, where their organs were harvested and sold. There was even a final sentence, who? When he saw this, Chen Feng's breathing instantly became heavy, he clenched his fists fiercely, gritted his teeth, the veins on his neck bulged, and the veins on his temples kept pulsating. The killing intent in Chen Feng's heart became even stronger. These people, they would rather stand on the front line, using their lives to block the darkness from people's sight. Even if they die, they never take a step back. But now, someone is ruthlessly destroying the homeland they have protected with their lives. They are not ruthless drug dealers, but their hands are covered in blood, which is even more abhorrent and infuriating. Su Tao, as the director of the M County Bureau, should have been the last line of defense for the people and the darkness. He should fulfill his duty, protect the lives and property of the people, strive to uphold justice, administer justice, and support the people in their struggle against evil forces. However, he has become the greatest evil. He holds the power given by the people, but he uses this power to ruthlessly leave shocking scars on the people. And Tian Lin, as the director of the kindergarten, lacks goodwill in her heart, bows and scrapes to those in power, looks down on ordinary people, and even oppresses and humiliates them to please those in power. As the director of the orphanage, she cannot wholeheartedly spread the moral conscience of the world, cannot promote the greatest love and care, and instead uses her power and cruel methods to turn these orphans into various disabilities, and then profits from it, letting them die in agony. These countless heinous crimes are simply outrageous and inhumane. Chen Feng is almost losing control of himself. The person he hates the most in his heart is the ruthless drug dealer, followed by the human trafficker. Continue the investigation, I want detailed information. Chen Feng sent a message and then tossed and turned in bed all night. Every time he was about to fall asleep, he heard countless children's screams and cries in his mind. Chen Feng tossed and turned in bed, while outside the screen, the situation was boiling again, no. It's impossible, right? How is this possible? Is there some misunderstanding in this? Yeah, Su Tao is the director of the JC Bureau. If he did such a thing, wouldn't anyone have found out? Yes, I am from M County, and I never heard any news about these things. If Su Tao and Tian Lin really did such a thing, after their family was wiped out, wouldn't someone come to investigate? If this is true, this matter would have been reported in the news long ago. No, 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 it's impossible, this is all slander, my mother is the kindest person in the world, she would never do such a thing. I don't believe it, I don't believe it, this is Chen Feng smear, this is just an excuse for him to kill people. He is a hypocrite, a butcher, we can't believe his words, this is how you, Dasha, have always liked to slander and frame loyal people. Fortunately, when my mother sent me abroad to study, she helped me obtain the nationality of a beautiful country. I swear, after this time, I will never come back to this dirty place again. The people who had been criticizing Chen Feng were dumbfounded, their faces showing disbelief and disgust. They were unwilling to accept that the person they had just been defending was actually so despicable. Tian Lin's son was shouting angrily, his face turning red with rage. He could not believe that his mother could be so cruel. Chen Cici was also stunned, staring blankly at the big screen. 
She suddenly felt a surge of guilt and shame for harboring even a hint of resentment towards Chen Feng. As Chen Feng's daughter, she should have understood him the best, but she had become one of the many who criticized and blamed him. She even felt disgusted by him. She should have known that Chen Feng still held onto his integrity and kindness. As a great person, he had never forgotten his responsibilities and the people behind him. Anyone could blame and criticize Chen Feng, but she couldn't. She should have known that there must be a reason or a hardship behind Chen Feng's actions, but she didn't. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Chen Cici watched Chen Feng struggling in the memory judgment device, her eyes welling up with tears. At least in this moment, she couldn't blame him, she had no right to. Seeing Chen Cici cry, her colleagues tried to console her, saying she had done nothing wrong, even if she had misunderstood him. Yeah, Cici, you haven't done anything wrong. Besides, these are just the materials Chen Feng investigated himself. Who knows if there's something fishy in there. Maybe he just wanted a reason to take matters into his own hands. No, you don't understand. Chen Cici shook her head in pain. Although she hated Chen Feng, she knew his only virtue was that he never lied. If Chen Feng wanted to kill someone, he wouldn't need to frame them. In her battles of wits with Chen Feng after becoming a police officer, every time he killed someone, he did it straightforwardly, even calling the police himself afterwards. So, everything on Chen Feng's phone was likely true. Had she wronged Chen Feng again? Had everyone wronged Chen Feng again? He was already suffering in the memory judgment, and yet they were still accusing him. Even if he had become a demon, a butcher, he was still a good person now. Everything he did was not wrong. It was all because of her. In fact, the person least qualified to blame and criticize Chen Feng in the world right now was her, Chen Cici. Chen Cici's heart felt like it was being twisted by a knife, while those who had always supported Chen Feng were now boiling with anger. I knew it. I knew there must be something going on. Otherwise, Chen Feng wouldn't have killed innocent people. It's despicable. Su Tao, as a public servant, not only failed to serve the people well, but also used the power given by the people to harm them, and even acted as a protector for the Grey Forces. It's truly despicable. This Tian Lin, on the surface, as the director of a kindergarten and an orphanage, the people who hold these positions should be kind-hearted, providing warmth and love to the children, and have a broad mind. But Tian Lin cruelly turned some orphans into disabled individuals to profit from them, and even sold orphans to black hospitals for organ trafficking. Such a person should not be allowed to live, it's simply intolerable. Is your mother not like this? Is your mother kind-hearted? She is not a good person if she can harm the weak in order to flatter those in power. Bah! I, Disya, may not be good in many ways, but I don't welcome scum like you. It's a good thing you're not a Disya person anymore, otherwise I would really be ashamed of you. All those who support Chin Feng kept speaking out, and in the end, they couldn't help but direct their anger towards Tian Lin's son, because his words were simply infuriating. They couldn't tolerate someone tarnishing their country. As everyone argued, on the screen, in Chen Feng's line of sight, it was already dawn. Chen Feng had gotten up early, made breakfast for Bai Luo and Chen Cici, and then took Chen Cici to the clinic on the street to change her medicine. After changing the medicine, Chen Feng found a gap, took out his phone, opened the text message, and listed a series of crimes committed by Su Tao and Tian Lin, along with a photo of a complaint. The content on it was, on October 20, 13 years ago, Wu Bin and Kong Jun conspired to injure me at Changsheng Logistics, causing a pneumothorax and multiple rib fractures at the time, due to economic difficulties, I did not seek medical attention. The next day, I found my left ring finger numb and my limbs weak. Due to worsening conditions, I became paralyzed, losing my ability to take care of myself and work. I drove alone for more than 40 hours, covering a distance of over 1,700 kilometers, in extreme physical and mental fatigue, with a stiff neck, he forcibly twisted and compressed it, causing my neck to become deformed and resulting in paralysis. A healthy person became paralyzed after being injured. Why do law enforcement officers insist on calling it a medical case? What is the purpose of the forensic doctor, and what scientific basis is there to claim it is a medical case? Can a sick person drive a large truck for over 20 meters, work tirelessly during the day, and travel for 30 hours, covering a distance of over 1,700 kilometers? We shout for the rule of law every day, but where is the law? Who can come and regulate the corruption and dereliction of duty in law enforcement? For an appraisal, I have endured eight or nine months of running around and waiting, only to receive a judgment unrelated to the case. Why are these law enforcement officers so inhumane and devoid of professional ethics and conscience? Why do they blindly protect and tolerate suspects, distort the facts, and reverse right and wrong, to strike at the victims who are suffering and helpless? Why add insult to injury, and make the pain worse? Wu Bin masterminded and participated in the assault on me, and the inquiry record from the M County authorities is evidence of this. 
However, law enforcement officer Sue, for some purpose, did not investigate and collect evidence in a timely manner, and has been evasive from the beginning. Intimidation is intended to absolve Wu of criminal responsibility, turning a blind eye, dereliction of duty, colluding with Wu and witnesses to fabricate false evidence, distorting the facts, and complicating the case. For this, I have paid a huge price, running around and petitioning multiple departments. How much pain and bitterness has a disabled person like me suffered? In this new century, is there still any humanity and justice left? The lawsuit was abruptly stopped at the word public, and there was a sentence at the end of the text message, the plaintiff in the lawsuit, Luo Dashin, suddenly disappeared years ago. Seeing this, Chen Feng couldn't help but clench his fists. Suddenly disappeared? It's probably not just a sudden disappearance, but that Luo Dashin has been secretly killed. Chen Feng clenched his fists, and the people outside the screen were also stunned. Is this, is this really true? Could it be that there are such dark and dirty places around us? Hiss. Beaten and disabled, crying out to the heavens with no response, finding no justice, and finally being cruelly killed. How desperate must Luo Dashin have been in his heart at the beginning? I really didn't expect it. In the vast land of Dasha, I thought it was filled with fragrance and abundant sunshine. I never imagined that there would be so much darkness and unfairness hidden within this peaceful and prosperous era. Some people, upon seeing this, felt a chill down their spine, a tingling sensation on their scalp, and a sense of powerlessness rising in their hearts. They never thought that such darkness could exist within this peaceful and prosperous era. If this had happened to them, would they also cry out in despair like Luo Dashin, feeling helpless and abandoned? Would they silently endure, barely clinging to life, or would they refuse to accept their fate and fight with all their might, only to end up with no resting place in death? They dared not imagine, but there were still some who stubbornly insisted, these are just one-sided evidence presented by Chin Fong. We absolutely cannot jump to conclusions without seeing the whole picture. Yes, we must maintain the ability to question and approach things with a critical eye. I believe there must be something fishy going on here. This is a matter of life and death. I refuse to believe that Su Tao could be so heartless and insane. Indeed, even if Su Tao is unforgivable, even if he deserves to go to hell, there are still the country and the law. Does he really need to meddle in this? Isn't this just an excuse for a massacre? Who gives him the privilege to judge others? Why does he have the right to take away someone else's life? All of Chen Feng's so-called evidence is just his one-sided presentation, which doesn't rule out his own ulterior motives. A small group of extremists continued to attack Chen Feng at this point, especially Tian Lin's son, but as soon as they finished speaking, they immediately drew the majority of people's criticism. Initially, these people also detested Chen Feng, but now, their hearts were slowly no longer filled with hatred towards him. With the passage of time, they even began to admire him. What they didn't realize was that they had spontaneously started to defend Chen Feng, speaking up for him and making every effort to protect him from further suffering. The entire courtroom and the entire Dashia were embroiled in intense disputes, and some even resorted to physical violence. The whole incident began trending on the internet, with hashtags such as hashtag did Chen Feng kill Su Tuan Tianlin, hashtag is Chen Feng an innocent or a complete devil, and hashtag does Chen Feng have ulterior motives, is Luo Dashin's case real? After Chen Feng became a hot topic, many Dasha viewers who hadn't watched the trial live began to contemplate. Some of them, after watching the first segment, started shouting insults at Chen Feng, but he couldn't hear them. Right now, he only felt pain, both physically and mentally. As they continued watching, most viewers began to sink into contemplation, questioning whether their aversion towards Chen Feng was truly justified. All the disputes had no answers. In the end, everyone turned their attention back to the screen. On the screen, Chen Feng sadly put his phone in his pocket, trying to control his emotions and appear nonchalant. However, he couldn't hide anything from Bai Luo, the woman who understood him the most and yet understood him the least in this world. After coaxing Chen Cici to sleep, she walked up to Chen Feng with a calm smile on her face. If, if you have something to do, then go ahead and do it. What? Bai Luo, don't overthink things. What could I possibly have to do? Right now, the most important thing for me to do is to spend time with you and our daughter. Chen Feng forced a smile, feeling a bit of emotion in his heart. Women's thoughts are meticulous, but he didn't know that in front of his own woman, he had little defense. Bai Luo reached out and gently touched Chen Feng's face, feeling the real warmth. I don't know what you're doing, but, I know that everything you do must have your reasons. We, mother and daughter, can't help you, but we also can't hold you back. You don't need to feel guilty. You just need to do what you think is right. My daughter and I will support you unconditionally. Just don't disappear from our world like before. That's enough. Bai Luo's voice was calm, but Chen Feng's heart began to tremble. He reached out and hugged Bai Luo tightly, murmuring, silly woman. 
In the end, Chen Feng left. Bai Luo saw him off at the door. She didn't wake up Chen Cici because she didn't want to burden Chen Feng too much. When they reached the door, Chen Feng opened the car door, then suddenly stopped and turned around. Go back. I will definitely come back early, definitely before our second baby is born. Okay. Bai Luo smiled, and in that moment, her smile outshone the sun in the sky, pure and warm. She turned around, showing no hint of reluctance, but tears flowed down her face, dripping onto the ground. The sound of the car engine suddenly woke up Chen Cici, who was sleeping in the room. She opened her eyes to find the house empty. Dad, Mom. Chen Cici panicked, quickly got out of bed, and her injured left hand hit the bed edge, causing intense pain. But she didn't even groan. She ran out in a panic and saw the car disappearing at the street corner. Dad. Dad. Chen Cici let out a heart-wrenching cry, tears falling rapidly. She ran outside in a frenzy, tripped over the threshold, and instinctively put her hands on the ground, reopening the wound. Blood instantly stained the bandage red, but she seemed oblivious, staggering towards the direction where the car had disappeared, reaching out with trembling hands and crying out, Dad. Bai Luo hugged Chen Cici tightly, tears finally streaming down her face. Dad, don't abandon Xian Xian and Mom. Dad, where are you going? Don't you love Xian Xian anymore? Dad, is it because Xian Xian made you angry? Xian Xian will change. Dad, Xian Xian will eat less in the future, only half a bowl per meal. Xian Xian will wash the dishes, take a bath, and clean up by herself. Dad, stay. Xian Xian is willing to do anything. In Bai Luo's embrace, Chen Cici's hands reached out hopelessly towards the direction Chen Feng had left, weakly grasping at the air as if trying to hold onto him. Xian Xian, don't cry. Dad will come back, he will. Dad doesn't blame Xian Xian. Xian Xian is great. Dad just has something to do and must go. Bai Luo desperately held on to Chen Cici, listening to her cries, feeling her heartbreaking. But she knew that Chen Feng had something to do, and he had to do it. Last night, she woke up in the middle of the night and heard Chen Feng's sleep talk. Although she had said she understood Chen Feng before, when a man disappears for hundreds of days without a word, she also had her doubts and sorrow. But last night, she found out that her husband was actually a great person. She watched her husband weekly calling out in his dreams, and her heart was breaking. She actually loves the greatest people in the world, those who hold up the light in the darkness. No wonder, no wonder, at the beginning, she could clearly feel his love for her, but he chose to escape. He told himself that being with him would lead to no result, that a person like him didn't deserve to have feelings. She used the threat of her life to force Chen Feng to give her a child. In the end, he chose to accept her. It turns out that all of this is because he is a gray person. Being a gray person is full of countless dangers. From the moment he stepped onto this path, one foot had already entered hell. He had to be cruel enough to face the countless wicked temptations of the criminals, as well as various psychological confrontations. He had to guard against the cunning and brutal methods of the enemy. No wonder, on the day at the Marriott Square, he refused to acknowledge them. After saving the person, he chose to use sacrifice as a reason to truly leave them. This seemed cruel to them, but it was even more cruel to Chen Feng. In order to truly keep them safe, he had to endure the pain of abandoning his wife and child, and truly become a dead man, abandoning the honor that should have belonged to him, abandoning the person he cared about the most, and choosing to hide in the darkness, carrying a heavy burden and continuing forward. Bai Luo now understands, Chen Feng, it's too difficult. On one side is family, on the other is the motherland, on one side is faith, on the other is affection, with the left hand is duty, with the right hand is responsibility, facing away from the sun, facing towards the darkness. Chen Feng quickly disappeared around the street corner in his car. At the corner, the heart-wrenching cry of a father reached his ears, causing his strong heart to almost soften. His foot was already on the brake. Now the entire grey department is facing a serious problem. Ouyang Chen has been slandered as a traitor, and some people, including him, have had their files deleted. If he now steps on the brake and goes back, he can live happily with his family. From now on, there will be no ruthless Kunsa Group 6 master in this world, and there will be no great person Chen Feng, who sacrifices himself for the motherland in the darkness. He can now take his wife and daughter and live a happy life, as the wealth he possesses is enough for them to live happily for the rest of their lives. As long as he doesn't speak, no one will know about his past. All the talk about guarding the light, hiding in the darkness, the disabled children, the unjustly accused Luo Dashen, upholding justice, and maintaining fairness will have nothing to do with him. But, he can't do it. In his mind, he keeps recalling the past, the rows of small mounds where his father and his father's colleagues are buried. He knelt in front of his father and those who raised him and said, I don't know what supports you to keep going, but I want to become like you, to enter the darkness and guard the light. 
He remembers the day of his college graduation, when all his classmates climbed to the top of the tallest teaching building, looking into the distance with high spirits. Some were going to the border inspection station, some were going to become frontline drug enforcement officers. Wherever there was danger, they would go. With their youthful ambitions and the boiling blood in their bodies, they embarked on a path that never ends with the darkness. In the first year, Sun Lei, the boy who always had a brilliant smile on his face, died at the border inspection station. When a group of drug traffickers was discovered, they drove through the checkpoint. Everyone else managed to avoid it, but due to his lack of experience, he was hit by the car and then run over. At the moment he was run over, he knew he was going to die. He reached his hand into the wheel, hoping to block the drug traffickers for even a second. At this moment, he wanted to use his flesh and blood to stop the steel behemoth, a living person, his stomach and legs were crushed into a pulp, his arm was broken, after being crushed, he did not die immediately, he was tortured to death, he bled to death alive. His colleagues drove him to the clinic with tears in their eyes, his painful wails, his piercing screams, that kind of pain, no one could endure. Halfway there, he stopped crying, and left forever. All his colleagues cried, holding onto his body, unwilling to let go. He was only in his twenties. Nineteen years old, should have been the prime of his youth, should have enjoyed the most brilliant youth, should have met the sweetest girl, had the most beautiful encounter, should have walked on the street, bought the most fragrant snacks, should have had a cup of milk tea to cool off in the hot summer, should have strolled by the river, watching the maple leaves fall, should have walked on the road, kicked a stone in front, should have chatted with his parents, should have sweated on the basketball court. All of this was written in his dream notebook. But he's gone. These things that could easily be achieved by any ordinary person have become forever dreams. Thoughts have become regrets that can only be written in a notebook. Thinking of this, Chen Feng's eyes turned red again, he thought of when he attended Sun Lei's funeral, Sun Lei's parents crying on his coffin, their white hair full of desolation and sorrow. His thoughts echoed back to 19 asterisk asterisk, when Sun Fu police officer Jiang Hua was shot by a criminal while checking a suspect, and died after unsuccessful rescue. At that time, the young Jiang Chu did not understand what his father's departure meant. As he grew up, Jiang Chu gradually understood the feeling of his father's departure. It was for this reason that he vowed to become a police officer in his sophomore year, to fulfill his father's unfinished career. Although his mother initially opposed Jiang Chu becoming a police officer, he eventually dispelled his mother's concerns and was admitted to the highest police academy in Yanjing in the year of Chen Feng's college entrance examination. He became Chen Feng's roommate, and because he had lost his father's love since childhood, he was silent and introverted, not good with words, and even trembled nervously in front of strangers, his face turning redder than a monkey's but in front of girls. Occasionally, when they saw the so-called sisters outside, they would be mocked by them, calling him a coward, a poor loser, a toad. But what they didn't know was that the person they were mocking had made the bravest decision, he chose the most dangerous drug control profession, and after graduation, became a glorious drug control officer, choosing to go to the most dangerous front line to fight drug traffickers to the death. Finally, in the three years after graduation, he led his team to encounter the enemy at the border between Wadong and Dasha, in a situation where the numbers were vastly different, he stayed behind to cover his teammates' retreat, and was left alone to fight the enemy, eventually running out of ammunition and being brutally killed by the enemy. Before he died, he desperately turned his head to the east, leaving behind the last words, I have fulfilled my father's wish, Jiang Chu has done it. In 1993, Nanyun police officer Zhang Shan died heroically in the investigation of a transnational drug trafficking case, when a drug trafficker detonated a grenade. His father's death had a huge impact on Zhang Chang, Zhang Bing, and Zhang Quan, the three brothers. Many years later, the three Zhang brothers all embarked on the path of police work. Zhang Quan was admitted to Yinjing Police University in that year, majoring in drug control, and became a member of Chen Feng's classmate. After graduation, Zhang Quan became a drug control officer just like his father, and also went to the front line. He said, doing drug control work, you must do it without hesitation. This profession is very sacred and must be done well. However, life is unpredictable. Five years after graduation, Zhang Quan's identity was accidentally exposed, and he was subjected to frenzied assassination attempts by enemies. Finally, after a year, he was able to return home for the new year, only to be killed on New Year's Eve at the doorstep of his home. He had forever departed from his beloved anti-drug career. A family of four police officers, father and son both martyrs. Zhang Shan and his son Zhang Quan fulfilled their promise to serve the country and the people with their lives. Do you remember the massive flood in the 90s? At that time, seven-year-old girl Shan Zhang held onto a poplar tree for nine hours in the flood before being rescued by the arriving public security firefighters. From the moment she was saved, a seed took root in Zhang Shan's heart to become a police officer and repay society. 
23 years later, Shan Jiang finally realized her dream. Despite objections from her relatives, she applied for a drug control major and became the most beautiful figure in Chen Feng's class, radiating beauty and sunshine. She became the goddess of countless male students in the class and even attracted numerous suitors outside. However, she would only consider someone who pursued her if they were willing to wait for her for five years. When her classmates who were also police officers pursued her, she said, I will become a drug control police officer. If you truly like me, please wait for me for five years. If I am still alive after five years, then I will marry you. Upon hearing this condition, everyone stopped in their tracks. She did meet that person, the one who was completely devoted to her. He didn't wait for her, instead, he chose the drug control major just like her and became a drug control police officer alongside her. Once the ones being protected, they had now become the protectors. However, it was in the sixth year after graduation, during a drug trafficker pursuit, that a drug trafficker threw a grenade at their team. She was the closest one, and her beloved immediately jumped up and threw himself onto the grenade. Bang! A muffled sound rang out, and her beloved had stopped breathing. The grenade had blown a large hole in his chest, shattering almost all of his internal organs. She held his lifeless body, her eyes filled with blankness and tears. She still remembered how he had foolishly looked at her and said, You like being a police officer, don't you? Actually, I like it too. Isn't that a coincidence? Is this fate? Wait for you for five years? No, I can't wait even a second. That's why I became a drug control police officer just like you. In the future, let's protect this lovely motherland together, okay? After five years? Are you really willing to marry me? Don't worry, with me around, you will definitely live past five years, and then marry me. You think I became a drug control police officer with selfish intentions? Yes, I have selfish intentions. You want to protect the whole world, and I want to protect you. So, in turn, I have protected the entire world. He 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 what? You won't even give me a kiss. It's so tiring to protect the world. Can't you give me some encouragement? My mom called last time and said I can't bully you, otherwise she won't want me as her son. Sob, sob, sob. We haven't even started, and you're teaming up to bully me. Sob, sob, sob. I'm so unlucky. Her beloved had done it. She had lived past five years, but she couldn't wait for the him who was supposed to marry her. Even now, she remained alone, actively fighting against ruthless drug traffickers on the border. Some people advised her to find someone and get married while she was still young, but she said she was already married. In the past, she had married him, and now she was married to the motherland. Someone advised her to change her career, as being a narcotics officer was too dangerous. She said she dared not leave, fearing that he would be left alone in the cold border. Ah, Pying. Recalling these, Chen Fong let out a painful roar, fiercely punching the steering wheel. His gaze slowly became sharp and determined, my wretched life. Clearly living unsatisfactorily, yet unable to bear the suffering of the world. The car disappeared into the street, finally entering another inconspicuous courtyard. Hearing the roar of the car, a person sitting in a wheelchair in the courtyard lifted his head and saw Chen Fong getting out of the car. He smiled, back? Yes, I'm back. Did you see your sister-in-law and the others? I did. Are they doing well? They're doing fine. That's good. When I'm in better shape, I'll go see them with you. I really want to know what kind of fairy she is to have enchanted you like this. Lu Yuhang smiled, but his prosthetic I couldn't keep up with his smile, looking somewhat terrifying. You have to take good care of yourself. The doctor said your right leg has a good chance of recovery, and once your left leg is healed, it won't affect your walking. Chen Feng also smiled, I will, after all, our brother's revenge is still waiting for us. Lu Yuhang nodded heavily, by the way, this time you came back. Lu Yuhang looked at Chen Feng, who didn't speak, but handed him the phone. Lu Yuhang took the phone with a puzzled look, and as time passed, his expression became increasingly ugly. Beast! Beast! In the end, Lu Yuhang couldn't help but roar, his face turning red, just like Chen Feng, who had just learned of this news. They were both desperately protecting this country in the darkness, but there were people desperately destroying it in the sunlight. How could they not be angry? But after the anger, Lu Yuhang turned to Chen Feng, Fan Ge, do you want to personally? Yes, I can't tolerate such scum. Chen Feng nodded heavily. Lu Yuhang's eyes flashed with concern, Fan Ji, with our current identities, we are neither human nor ghost. Moreover, there are traitors within. If we take action, we could easily be exposed. How about we secretly gather evidence and then send it to the relevant authorities for investigation? No. Chen Feng shook his head slowly, the entire county of M is probably already rotten inside. If we complain across regions, the procedures are complicated. We can wait, but those who are being persecuted and the children cannot wait. 
Since no one can give me the justice I seek, then I will take it back myself. And you said it yourself, we are already neither human nor ghost, how much worse can it get? In the end, Chen Feng gave Liu Yuhang a wistful smile. Liu Yuhang was stunned for a moment, then nodded with a bitter smile. Yes, they were already neither human nor ghost, how much worse could it get? They had always prided themselves on standing in the darkness to protect the light behind them, but if they couldn't even eliminate the injustices in front of them, what was the point of talking about protecting justice? Glancing at Liu Yuhang, Chen Feng changed cars in the courtyard and left. Once again, he returned to his hideout. As soon as the car stopped, Xin Gui had already come up to him, Master Liu. Yes. Have all the men been assembled? Yes. Xin Gui nodded, let the brothers rest well. At midnight, on this dark and windy night. It's the night of retribution. Yes. The green ghost nodded respectfully, and Chen Feng walked in. In the first floor hall, there were several familiar henchmen, each of them unruly. However, the moment they saw Chen Feng, their unruliness immediately subsided, and they became docile. Everyone stood up in unison, Boss Lu. Hmm. Chen Feng remained calm, then went straight upstairs. The green ghost followed, carefully closing the door behind them. In the room, there was a pearwood desk, and Chen Feng sat down in the chair behind it. The green ghost stood respectfully in front of the desk. Sit. Thank you, Boss Lu. The green ghost thanked respectfully and sat halfway on the chair. Have you found out? Yes, we have. The main mastermind behind this human trafficking is Tian Lin, the director of the orphanage in M County. This force is a family force, with 15 members in the Tian family. Except for Tian Chang, the eldest son who was studying abroad, the remaining 14 members are involved in a series of criminal activities such as human trafficking. Tian Lin, in particular, uses the identity of the orphanage director as a cover, taking numerous orphans away under the guise of adoption and handing them over to her husband for brutal disabling surgeries. After the surgery, if the child survives, they are abandoned on the streets to beg. If they don't survive, they are sold to black hospitals to have their hearts, kidneys, and corneas harvested. As the green ghost provided more detailed information, Chen Feng could no longer contain his anger. He slammed his fist on the table, and the green ghost fell silent. Chen Feng took a deep breath, closed his eyes, and waved his hand weakly. The green ghost quickly left the room. As soon as the green ghost left, Chen Feng's eyes opened wide, filled with an overwhelming killing intent. Human trafficking, disabling children, and even selling children who haven't taken their last breath to black hospitals for organ harvesting, it was utterly despicable and inhumane. For the first time in his life, Chen Feng felt that these people were even more despicable than drug traffickers. Chen Feng lay on the chair, and time passed by. Apart from the green ghost delivering a meal around 6 or 7 in the evening, no one dared to disturb Chen Feng. Tick tock. The sound of the clock on the wall was piercing in the quiet room. Finally, the second, minute, and hour hands pointed to 12 at the same time. Dong dong dong. At the same moment, the clock made a reminder sound. Suddenly, a pair of eyes opened wide, emitting a sharp light in the darkness. Opening the door and looking down from the second floor staircase, there were over a dozen people standing silently in the first floor hall. At the front were the green ghost and the ghastly ghost, followed by the fat pig and the black bear, and finally, the core members under Chin Fong. Each one of them was a loyal follower who could die for Chin Fong at any time, and they were the most elite members under Chin Feng's command. When Chin Fong came out, everyone looked up at him, as if waiting for his inspection like an army. Chen Feng didn't speak, just glanced around, exuding a domineering and aggressive aura. He waved his hand fiercely, let's go. In the dark of night, several ordinary Santanas headed out of the city. At this time, in a nondescript factory outside the city, shrouded in the darkness of night, a seemingly ordinary agricultural processing plant was emitting faint, chilling screams. Inside the factory, the entire place was eerily quiet, but in a large underground chamber beneath the storage warehouse, several figures stood. Before them, a roaring furnace held a pot of boiling lard. Next to the furnace was a specially crafted wooden table, with a human-shaped depression in the middle, filled with a dark red substance emitting a faint smell of blood. The surface of the table was covered with knife marks at each corner, resembling a cutting board. For leather belts were fastened to the table's corners, also stained with the same dark red marks. In the center of the underground chamber, a massive steel door divided the space in half. Clang! The huge iron door suddenly swung open, and a slyman emerged, carrying a seven- or eight-year-old boy. Wah! The boy suppressed his cries, his eyes filled with fear and despair. The slyman carried the child to the furnace. Sister! The slyman looked towards the woman sitting next to the furnace. Hmm, not bad. He has a good appearance. Seeing his crying face really makes one's heart ache. Blinding him, such a good-looking boy will surely evoke people's sympathy. 
Tian Lin's face bore a faint smile. Ignoring the scene before her, she seemed somewhat amiable. However, compared to the current scene, it made one's hair stand on end, feeling a chilling sensation. Wah, Auntie Tian, Auntie Tian, please, I want to go back to the orphanage. Please don't hurt me. The six or seven year old child looked at Tian Lin and immediately began to cry out. Tian Lin reached out, gently stroking the boy's hair. Ah, calling me mom like that really tugs at my heartstrings. Seeing you suffer, it also makes a mother feel uncomfortable. But, mom isn't hurting you. Before, mom took care of you, fed you, and even helped take care of your sister. Now that you've grown up, it's time for you to repay mom. People should always be grateful, don't you think? Otherwise, what's the difference between us and animals? At the end, a smile appeared on Tian Lin's lips. Auntie Tian, I. The boy wanted to say something, but Tian Lin's expression changed abruptly. Just a moment ago, she seemed amiable, but now she looked ferocious, like a terrifying old witch. What about me? You don't listen to mom's words anymore? After scolding the boy, she turned and gestured. In the next moment, the sly man tied the boy to the table. His body fit perfectly into the depression in the table, and the four leather belts tightly bound his limbs. The boy couldn't move, and his mouth was covered with tape. The sly man gently caressed the boy's eyes. TSK TSK TSK, such good eyes. After today, another great piece of art will appear on my hands. A twisted smile appeared on the sly man's face. After speaking, he walked to the furnace and picked up a ladle, scooping up a spoonful of boiling lard. Wah, wah, wah. Seeing this scene, the boy struggled desperately, his eyes filled with fear and tears streaming down his face. However, a specially made clamp reached out, holding his head in place on the table, rendering him immobile. In the next moment, the sly man approached with the boiling lard, holding an eye surgery forceps in his left hand. He then opened the boy's eyelids and slowly brought the spoon closer. The boy's pupils suddenly contracted, and he began to struggle frantically. The sly man slowly approached with the ladle. Hiss, hiss. The boiling lard hit the spoon with some remaining water droplets, causing it to sizzle and splatter. The spoon moved closer to the boy's eyes, and the scorching heat reached his face. He screamed and struggled desperately. Suddenly, the force that erupted in the desperate situation was astonishing. The other man failed to tighten the pliers holding the boy's head, and the boy's head violently broke free, hitting the man's arm. The lard in the spoon splashed towards the man's face, causing him to scream like a ghost. Useless. Seeing this, Tian Lin's face showed a hint of displeasure. She stood up, kicked the screaming man, and then personally scooped a spoonful of hot oil from the boiling pot. Hold his head firmly for me. If you loosen it again, you'll be lying on top. Tian Lin glared at the man holding the boy's head, and the man immediately shrank back in fear. It's worth noting that Tian Lin not only controlled these children but also many women who were trafficked to remote mountains and forests. The mentally disabled adults, the homeless scavengers on the streets, were all sold to black factories to work and endure inhumane abuse, and finally sold to black hospitals for organ harvesting when they were dying. Tian Lin's cruelty was feared even by these people. She refixed the boy's head, and the boy continued to struggle desperately. Seeing the boy's struggle, a hint of cruelty flashed in Tian Lin's eyes. If you move again, I'll bring your sister instead. As Tian Lin's words fell, the struggling boy suddenly froze, his eyes filled with fear, as if he was more afraid than the harm he was about to suffer. Please, Tian Mama, don't hurt my sister, she's still young. The boy's eyes were full of pleading. Don't worry, as long as you behave, I won't touch her. She has a good skin, perfect for raising a thin horse when she grows up. She'll be useful, and she can enjoy a good life. But if you move again, I'll make her a blind horse. As Tian Lin spoke, her tone became cold and sinister, causing the boy to shiver involuntarily. Tian Mama, can you really make my mother enjoy a good life as a thin horse? The boy didn't know what a thin horse was, he only cared about whether his sister would suffer again. He 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 he. Tian Lin was stunned for a moment, then couldn't help but cover her mouth and laugh lightly. The men beside her also couldn't help but show evil smiles, as if they had thought of something. Someone even licked their lips. Xiaonan, don't worry, as long as you behave, I promise, no, I swear, I will make your sister a thin horse. Tian Lin's smile reappeared on her face. The child lying on the table blinked, unable to turn his head. His eyes desperately turned towards the iron door behind him, the light in his eyes slowly losing its color, as if he had made a decision. Tian Mama, come on, I won't hide. That's my good boy, it'll only hurt for a moment, and then you can make a lot of money. Tian Lin said with a smile, then slowly approached Xiaonan with the spoon. This time, Xiaonan really didn't dodge, even though he was very afraid. He still remembered that when he was young, one day, his sister was scolded by their mother for not listening, and she quickly ran to her brother for comfort. 
When she saw her brother, she threw herself into his arms, looking aggrieved, with her little mouth pouting high, looking both pitiful and funny. When his sister ran away, their mother followed. Unexpectedly, his brother hugged his sister and warned their mother that she was still young and not to scold her. The younger sister's mouth was still pouting, but her eyes were looking at her older brother, as if filled with admiration, as if she regarded her brother as a great hero. She felt that her brother had become an invincible superhero at that moment, daring to argue with the world's most fierce and terrifying mother. The mother did not give up and tried to coax the younger sister outside to reason with her, but the younger sister was scared and teary. Seeing this, the older brother gently wiped away her tears and comforted her, saying, Don't be afraid, I'm here to protect you. Another time, the younger sister spilled all the potato chips on the floor and even stepped on them. The mother was very angry and was about to scold her when the younger sister ran into her brother's room. The mother told the brother that the younger sister needed to be punished for her mistake, but the brother firmly protected her, looking up at the mother and saying, Don't hit my sister, hit me, hit me. The mother, although pretending to be angry, was actually deeply relieved, and asked, Why do you protect your sister like this, Shanann? The mother asked, Because she is my sister, and I am her brother, so I have a responsibility to protect her. Shanann's eyes were full of determination. At that time, he didn't understand what mattered, didn't understand what family love was, didn't understand what was right or wrong. He only knew that as long as he was there, no one could bully his sister. Xiao Yu, don't be afraid, I'm here. Shaonan murmured, a grim smile appearing on his pale, young face. In his mind, a sweet smile emerged, calling out to him in a childish voice, Brother. Tian Lin also had a smile on her face, but as she lifted the spoon, Shaonan's body suddenly tensed, and he let out a piercing scream, Ah! His screams continued, and he struggled frantically. Hold him down! Tian Lin shouted sternly, and several men rushed forward to restrain Shaonan. After screaming for several seconds, the intense pain caused Shaonan to pass out. Instantly, the entire basement fell silent. Tian Lin and the lecherous man approached, looking at Xiaonan's battered body with satisfaction. He reached out to peel open Xiaonan's eyelids, but as he did, a piece of skin stuck to his finger. He froze, staring at them, looking extremely terrifying. If an ordinary person saw this scene, they would probably feel a chill down their spine, but the lecherous man let out a laugh, and his sinister face relaxed. Big sister, your hands are skilled. Look at these eyes, so beautiful. I can't help but feel pity. So, big sister, why not blind his other eye too? Blinding him will make you money? Tian Lin glared fiercely at the lecherous man, making him shrink back. Take him back. If he can survive, hand him over to your brother-in-law. If he can't, send him to Lu Jian while he's still alive. Remember, it's worth more if he's alive. Yes, big sister. The lecherous man nodded respectfully. Bring another one over. Tian Lin ordered, and the man turned to carry Shanan inside. Soon, he returned with another dirty child, and Tian Lin frowned, taking a step back and covering her nose. Yes. The lecherous man threw the dirty child onto the table, and someone immediately came to tie him up. Soon, the lecherous man returned with a bottle of disinfectant and a sharp saw, the blade gleaming with bloodstains. Woo woo. The dirty boy was not as brave as Xiao Nan. Bound to the table like a lamb waiting to be slaughtered, he let out a cry. The sleazy man took a sip of water, then sprayed it on the saw and poured disinfectant on the steel saw. The coagulated blood on it began to flow, turning crimson. He gestured to a spot, and the dirty boy instantly let out a piercing scream. This amputation without any anesthesia was excruciating, surpassing level 70 of pain. The sleazy man paused, spat on his own hands, and continued with force. As time passed, the dirty boy had already passed out, and soon, a leg had been sawed off with a thud. At that moment, the warehouse door was kicked open, and a dozen figures rushed in. When they saw the boy on the table and the saw on his leg, Chen Feng's face turned bright red, his body trembling. Uncontrollable anger surged within them, and a murderous intent filled the air. Beast! Chen Feng and the others who rushed in saw this scene and couldn't help but be filled with an overwhelming murderous intent. This scene of hell on earth was truly shocking. Outside the screen at this moment, when they saw this bloody scene from Chen Feng's perspective, everyone was stunned, especially when they saw two big men still sawing a child's leg. Flesh and bone fragments flew everywhere and the crimson blood flowed all over the floor. They were truly shocked. Some even started to retch. Through the screen, they could almost smell the bloody scent. Many people live in a so-called prosperous era, usually not daring to face even the slaughter of chickens. Suddenly seeing such a bloody scene resembling hell on earth, they couldn't help but vomit. My god, this. This is actually real. They are actually sawing a child's leg while he's alive. It's too cruel. They are not human, they are not human, they are all demons. I can see clearly, 
Isn't the person in the front the director of the Sunshine Kindergarten in M County? I never expected that as the director of a kindergarten, or even an orphanage, she should have been kind to people, but she is the most detestable demon. Traffickers must be sentenced to death, even if they only traffic one child. For traffickers, even the death penalty is too lenient. They should be subjected to various ancient tortures such as dismemberment and quartering. This group of traffickers should not exist. They have brought great harm to the country and society, and the state should crack down on traffickers severely. Traffickers are like rats that everyone shouts to kill. For the sake of money, they engage in insane and cruel activities. If these traffickers are not sentenced, where is justice? Where is righteousness? They should be tortured, have their tongues cut off, their legs sawed off, and experience all the suffering these poor children have endured. Animals like Tian Lin should be executed directly. How many families have they destroyed? How many parents have cried their eyes out? Kill her, kill her. The entire courtroom instantly boiled over. Countless people raised their fists and shouted fiercely to kill her. At this moment, regardless of whether they had previously supported Chen Feng, anyone with a shred of humanity, upon seeing this scene, had only one thought in their hearts, to kill Tian Lin, this cruel trafficker. This inhumane thing should be executed directly. Tian Lin's son saw this scene from Chen Feng's memory, his eyes were full of astonishment, looking at the angry crowd, he shrank his head, but there was no remorse in his eyes, instead there was a touch of resentment. In Dashia, human traffickers have existed since ancient times. This is a kind of inherent evil of your Dashia. Some of your ancestors started doing this kind of thing. My mother embarked on this path, also influenced by your ancestors. Why do you blame her? Moreover, if my mother didn't do this, there would still be more cruel people to do it. You can't blame my mother at all. Even if she is a human trafficker, she didn't take lives. She still retained a trace of kindness, right? You people, you critics, only focus on her faults, but you forget that she sheltered so many orphans, gave so many homeless children a home, and raised so many children who were supposed to die. My mother has great kindness towards them. Now that they have grown up, what's wrong with them repaying my mother? It's just that the way they repay is a bit cruel. Tian Lin's son spoke louder and louder, and finally shouted. Hearing Tian Lin's son's words, everyone looked at him in amazement, and then a strong anger rose in their hearts. No one had expected that there would be such a ruthless person in the world. But thinking about it, it's not surprising. Like mother, like son. What kind of person would the son raised by a demon like Tian Lin be? You beast, what did you say? Blaming our Dasha ancestors for your mother's inhumane actions? Damn it, even if your mother didn't do it, someone else would. People die every day in this world, why don't you die? You say she retained a trace of kindness? Which eye of yours saw her kindness? You say she saved so many children as the director of this orphanage, but do you know how many orphans were created because of her? Brothers, kill this son of a bitch. Suddenly, a man couldn't help it anymore and rushed towards Tian Lin's son, kicking him in the stomach. The people behind him hesitated for a moment, and then rushed up, punching and kicking Tian Lin's son fiercely. Help! Help! Murder! Tian Lin's son rolled in pain, and as soon as he opened his mouth, someone kicked him in the mouth, knocking out a few teeth. You damn beast, I'll kill you. Everyone cursed through gritted teeth as they kicked and beat him. What are you doing? What are you doing? Quiet. On the high platform, hearing Tian Lin's son's plea for help, the judge could only weakly tap the gavel, and a few bailiffs rushed up. Hey, uncles and aunties, stop hitting. Sir, sir, don't touch anything, using tools changes the nature of the act. Little sister, kicking the stomach hurts and doesn't show. Stop it, hey hey hey, stop it. Several bailiffs approached, pretending to shout not to hit, while quietly kicking a few big kicks into the crowd. Although the people of Dashia have inherent evil, when facing external enemies, they always become very united. Ah, ah, ah. Tian Lin's son rolled in pain. After the crowd vented their anger, the bailiffs quickly stepped forward to separate Tian Lin's son from the crowd. Sir, are you okay? The bailiffs hurried over and helped Tian Lin's son up. Ouch, oh, it hurts so much, do I look like I'm okay? Tian Lin's son took a deep breath, his face bruised and swollen. Really? The teacher also thinks it's okay? Then it's okay. The bailiff smiled and stood up, report to the judge, this gentleman says he's okay and has voluntarily given up pursuing. Is that so? Then it's settled. The judge nodded, what? Tian Lin's son was stunned for a moment, then roared angrily, who said I gave up pursuing? I want to sue them for violating my personal safety. Tian Lin's son shouted, in the previous chapter, quiet, this is the courtroom. If you keep shouting, I will charge you with contempt of court, contempt of law, and contempt of this judge. Faced with Tian Lin's son shouting, the judge suddenly roared like an angry lion, startling Tian Lin's son, and the courtroom returned to calm. 
Everyone turned their attention back to the big screen. A flash of anger and resentment passed through Tian Lin's son's eyes. These people were clearly ganging up on him, but he was helpless. He knew he had aroused public anger. If he spoke again, he might get beaten up. A touch of resentment flashed in his eyes. He was really grateful that his mother had sent him abroad early and obtained a green card, turning him into a high-quality person. Otherwise, if he had stayed in this barbaric and backward place, he really didn't know how to survive. He just wanted to watch and see Chen Feng, the murderer, finally sentenced and executed, so that his mother's revenge could be avenged. Then he could leave this disgusting place forever and never come back. Everyone turned their attention back to the big screen. When they saw Chen Feng and others rushing in, Tian Lin was not afraid. Instead, a touch of fierceness flashed in her eyes. She pointed at Chen Feng and others and scolded, Who are you? Do you know where this is? Now you leave, and I can pretend that nothing happened. Otherwise, I'll get angry, and you'll all be in trouble. As he spoke, the sly man and a few others quietly stood behind Tian Lin, holding various blades in their hands. A dozen strong men also rushed out from behind the iron gate, forming a semi-encirclement and pressing towards Chen Feng and others. They all held shiny cold weapons in their hands. Seeing the increasing number of people around him, Tian Lin's face became even more triumphant, especially when she saw that Chen Feng and others had no weapons in their hands. A touch of ferocity appeared on her face. Now you want to leave, but I'm afraid it's too late. You are really good to me. You know that my son is studying abroad and needs money, so you are giving me money? Break their legs and feet, and then sell them to Lao Huang. TSK TSK, we can make a big profit. Tian Lin's gaze swept over Chen Feng and others, with a look as if she was sizing up her prey. He he he. As Tian Lin spoke, the sly man and a dozen or so others took the lead, holding blades and slowly surrounding them, with a bloodthirsty look on their faces. But in the next moment, all the big men's bodies suddenly stiffened, as if they had seen a ghost, and dared not move at all, because at this moment, Chen Feng and others had guns in their hands, and the black muzzles were aimed at them, instantly enveloping them in a sense of impending death. All their hair stood on end, and in an instant, they dared not move. What are you standing there for? Don't you cut off their legs and feet? Their line of sight was blocked by the sudden rush of a dozen or so men, and Tian Lin did not notice anything for a moment. Her face was fierce, and she directly picked up a nearby machete and pushed aside the people in front of her to charge forward. But after she passed the front men, her body also suddenly stiffened. Clang! The machete in her hand fell to the ground, and cold sweat instantly broke out. Everyone dared not move a muscle. Sister, we've really stirred up trouble this time. The sleazy man spoke in a low voice, trembling all over. They were all ruthless human traffickers, monopolizing the surrounding provinces of County M. Within this circle, they were the most formidable presence. Outside, both the black and white paths would give them some respect. They seemed to be high and mighty like gods, holding the lives of countless people in their hands. Many of them were ruthless individuals with blood on their hands. However, facing a dozen dark gun barrels, even the most foolish among them knew they had hit a hard wall. In fact, Tian Lin and the others also had a few homemade guns bought from the black market, with two of them stored in the room behind the iron door. But now, no one had the thought of running back to get the guns, because that would be seeking death. Shut up! Tian Lin snapped at the sleazy man in a low voice. She didn't need the sleazy man to remind her. When she saw a dozen guns, she knew they had hit a tough spot. In the strictest gun-prohibited country of Disya, aside from the relevant departments, anyone who could produce a dozen guns from the Grey Forces was not to be underestimated. She was now trying to guess the identities of Chen Feng and the others, and speculate on their purpose for coming. She carefully observed Chen Feng and the others, and the hostility and ruffianism displayed by them indicated that they were unlikely to be police officers. This made her breathe a sigh of relief. As long as they were not police officers, everything would be fine. In this world, no matter what one did, it all boiled down to one thing, interests. As long as these people cared about their interests, she was confident she could handle them. As long as she could keep Chen Feng under control, she was willing to pay any price. However, once she escaped from this predicament, she would definitely use Su Tao's connections to take down this group of people. No matter who they were, if they dared to lay a hand on her, Tian Lin, they would not have a good ending. This was what Tian Lin said, and even if Jesus came, it wouldn't change. Thinking of this, a smile of control appeared on Tian Lin's face, with a hint of authority. Where is this big brother from? I am Tian Lin. Friends give me face and call me Aunt Tian. I have been wandering around the south for more than 10 years. I am familiar with everywhere. Why don't you tell me about your elders? Maybe we know each other. I. Smack. Xin Gui stepped forward and slapped Tian Lin directly in the face. Because of the force, Tian Lin was knocked to the ground, and two teeth flew out. 
Half of her face swelled up, feeling numb. Old woman, what are you blabbering about? Who do you know as an elder? Xin Gui cursed, and Tian Lin, holding her face, sat on the ground in disbelief. She looked up at Xin Gui. How dare you hit me? Try hitting me again. Smack! Xin Gui took a big step forward, swung his arm in a circle, and slapped Tian Lin's face hard again, causing the other side of her face to swell instantly, making it symmetrical. Damn it, I have never seen such a despicable request. Well, since Grandpa Qin Gui is happy to help, I'll satisfy you. Qin Gui wiped his hand on Tian Lin's clothes, showing disgust on his face. The old woman's face was too oily and disgusting, full of wrinkles. Woo woo, you are too much. Tian Lin covered her face, crying in pain, tears streaming down. Who was Tian Lin? She started to make a name for herself in the martial arts world at the age of 20. Over the past decade, she has used her ruthless determination to carve out a powerful position for herself. Some people on the street have gradually started calling her Aunt Tian, and her ruthless nature has made many in the industry fear her. Despite temporarily toning down her activities during a crackdown on crime, she has faced no real setbacks. In order to reduce risk, she has turned her attention to charity, funding the most prestigious nursery in M County and establishing an orphanage. Despite using the orphanage for child trafficking, she is publicly praised as a compassionate figure and a model entrepreneur. However, she is now facing unexpected violence, and she is determined to retaliate no matter who is responsible. As resentment fills her heart, a sly man nearby reacts with fear upon hearing the words of the green ghost. He recognizes the legendary figure and exclaims in shock, leading others to tremble in fear. As they realize the potential danger they are in, they turn their attention to Chen Feng, causing even An Tian to stop crying and look at him with a sudden realization. The atmosphere becomes tense as they confront the possibility of facing a terrifying presence. She knew that after today, everyone here had to die. If the creepy man hadn't revealed Chen Feng's identity, maybe there would still be some room for negotiation. But now, the creepy man had been too clever, directly exposing Chen Feng's identity. Chen Feng would definitely not let anyone here leave this basement alive. After learning about Chen Feng's identity, all her resentment had disappeared. Compared to the Kunsa group, she was nothing. But she was unwilling. Sixth Master, why are you here today? What do you want? Just name it. I'll give you everything. If you want money, I have over 10 million in savings, I'll give it all to you. If you want the thread in my hand, I'll give it to you. I'll give you all the beggars and children in my hands, just please give me a way out. Tian Lin knelt on the ground, kowtowing to Chen Feng, tears in her eyes, looking pitiful. Just now, she was in control of others' lives, high and mighty like a god. She was ruthless, pouring hot oil into a child's eyes, making the child blind, and ordering the amputation of a child's leg. But now, she had become a pitiful creature begging for mercy on her knees. Bang! Chen Feng kicked Tian Lin to the ground. Control them all. Anyone who dares to resist or escape. Chen Feng didn't finish his sentence, but the murderous intent in his eyes made everyone understand. He kicked Tian Lin away and walked to the table. Looking at the horrifying scene before him, his heart couldn't help but ache. There was blood everywhere on the ground, and the boy's leg was still bleeding. Obviously, the hemostatic medicine applied by the creepy man was of poor quality, and the hemostatic effect was not very good. Even though the boy had passed out, his body was still convulsing in extreme pain. On the other leg, there was already a bloody saw mark. If Chen Feng and the others had arrived a moment later, the boy's other leg would probably have been sawed off. Take him back and give him full treatment. Chen Feng ordered, and a henchman quickly carried the boy out of the basement. Watching the henchman leave with the boy, Chen Feng's eyes were filled with deep self-blame and pain. If he had come earlier, if he had discovered it earlier, this little boy probably wouldn't have suffered such torture and pain. Suppressing the grief in his heart, Chen Feng turned and walked towards the iron door. The green ghost, the ghoul, and the black bear and fat pig followed closely behind. The green ghost even took a step forward, his eyes fixed on the iron door ahead. If there was any danger, he would not hesitate to stand in front of Chen Feng. Clang! The iron door was opened by the green ghost, and a chaotic smell wafted out, causing Chen Feng and the others to frown. They walked into the iron door, entering a long corridor with bright incandescent lights every few meters, illuminating the entire corridor. On both sides of the corridor were iron doors. As Chen Feng and the others approached, they saw that the rooms inside the iron doors were extremely simple, with nothing but a bed. Well, there was also a small steel basin at the entrance of each iron door, containing some food residue. On each bed lay disheveled women. As Chen Feng and the others approached, the women on the bed seemed to be strongly stimulated, shrinking into the corner, holding their heads tightly with their hands, trembling in fear, constantly murmuring, Don't come, don't come, don't come. Clang! 
And at this moment, in the next room, a woman suddenly rushed to the iron gate, disheveled and wild, like a madwoman. Her hands reached out from the iron gate, fingers curved, wildly waving as if trying to grab something. In the white light, she appeared very conspicuous and prominent. Are you here to buy women? I beg you, buy me. Buy me and I'll do anything to get out of here. I'm actually very beautiful. I'm so beautiful. Just buy me and let me leave. I'll do anything. I'll listen to you. Just 5,000 yuan, and you can buy me. Please, please, take me away from here. The woman seemed to have lost her mind, screaming frantically as she spoke, vigorously wiping the dirt off her face with her hands, tears in her eyes, bruises on her outstretched hands. Chen Feng saw this scene, his eyes filled with a strong sense of killing intent, his fists clenched tightly, the murderous aura almost uncontrollable. 5,000 yuan, just 5,000 yuan to treat a person like an animal, imprisoned, bought and sold, even worse than animals, because their suffering was worse than that of animals. They were no longer human, no, they were human, but they had lost everything that a human should have, their dignity, their personality, everything they had was ruthlessly stripped away by Tianlin and others. Human traffickers, unforgivable. In the years since becoming the sixth lord of the Kunsar group, Chin Feng had actually seen many similar scenes. The things those drug lords did at the Kunsar celebration were increasingly cruel, but he felt little emotion. However, when he saw his own country, his compatriots, his sisters suffering such pain, Chin Feng's heart ached. He was selfless, but also selfish. Love knows no borders, but people do. As the woman screamed, as if setting off a chain reaction, clanging sounds echoed through the corridor. On both sides of the nearly 200 meters long corridor, pairs of arms reached out from the iron gates, their faces pressed tightly against the gates, looking in Chen Feng's direction, their eyes filled with hope. Boss, buy me. I'm even prettier. Boss, buy me. I'm not only good looking, but I also have a good figure. I know how to please men. Will you buy me? Boss, I may be a bit more expensive, but I'm still young. Please, buy me. I really don't want to stay here anymore. Please. One by one, the women reached out from the windows, each one vigorously promoting herself. At this moment, their dignity and sense of shame as human beings had completely disappeared. They only wanted to escape from this cage. Chen Feng looked at all the women with pleading and longing in their eyes, and he wanted to rush over and tear open the iron gates, to tell them loudly, don't be afraid, I'm a police officer, I'm here to save you. But a thousand words were stuck in his heart. He was not a person, not a ghost. He only had one identity now, the sixth lord of Kunsar. He clenched his fists tightly, then loosened them, looking at these poor women with endless self-reproach. Strictly speaking, he was a gray man. His responsibility was to fight against the heinous drug lords, and rescuing these poor people was not within his scope of duty. However, when he saw these people for the first time, he felt a strong sense of grief, self-reproach, and guilt. Because, ultimately, he was a police officer, a people's police officer. Regardless of the type of police officer, protecting the people was their sacred duty. No matter the reason, if the people suffered, it was their dereliction of duty, their shame. He was not a saint, but his heart was filled with the entire motherland. Go, bring someone in. Got it. The green ghost quickly turned around and soon brought in the sleazy man. The women who had been shouting just moments ago, upon seeing the sleazy man, were like mice encountering a cat. Their cries abruptly stopped, and they shrank back against the wall, fear evident in their eyes as they looked at the man. Chen Feng turned to look at the sleazy man, his urge to kill almost uncontrollable. The sleazy man was directly frightened by the killing intent in Chen Feng's eyes and knelt on the ground. I said, answer or die. Yes, 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 Lord Six, I will answer, I will tell everything. The sleazy man nodded repeatedly. What about these women? Chen Feng tried to keep his voice calm. Lord Six, these women were all abducted by us. How were they abducted? Some were lured by the promise of a wealthy life. These people are the easiest to deceive. Some had lost their children and came to look for them. We lied about having clues about their children, so they obediently followed us. And a small portion were bought from others. Some of these women are waiting to be sold to buyers, while the beautiful ones are kept to serve the brothers. Relax, relax. Here, the sleazy man shrank his head, and after noticing no change in Chen Feng's expression, he breathed a sigh of relief and continued, These women are not using contraception. If they get pregnant, they give birth and then abandon the babies at orphanages, relying on welfare funds to support them. When the children grow up, they either maim them for money or sell them to black hospitals for organ harvesting. If there are particularly attractive ones, my sister personally trains and grooms them, then uses them to bribe some high-ranking officials. The women continue to get pregnant until they can't anymore, and then they are sold to black hospitals or sent to black factories to do hard labor. Lord Six. There are also a few young girls among them, all very attractive. 
if you like. He he he. The sleazy man couldn't help but make a lewd sound. Chen Feng, with his back to him, had his nails embedded in his flesh. Seeing Chen Feng's silence, the sleazy man continued, Lord Six, if you don't like these women, there are still some more valuable ones inside. Bang! The sleazy man was interrupted as Chen Feng finally couldn't bear it and turned around, delivering a fierce punch to his face. The man fell to the ground, clutching his face and wailing. He tried to crawl backward, but was immediately grabbed by the green ghost and the henchman. At this moment, Chen Feng's eyes were full of hostility. He looked around and suddenly saw a hook, covered in blood. These hooks were used on those who didn't obey or try to escape. When they were caught and brought back, the hook would be inserted under their chin, like hooking a pig, and they would be left hanging in the air. Chen Feng took the hook and walked straight toward the sleazy man. Lord Six, please, don't, I did something wrong, tell me, tell. Ah. Before the sleazy man could finish, Chen Feng hooked the man's chin, causing blood to gush out. Ah. The sleazy man immediately let out a piercing scream. Chen Feng handed the hook to the green ghost, who skillfully took it and pulled upward with force. The sleazy man's upper body was lifted up, and Chen Feng raised his foot and kicked. Ah! The sleazy man let out an even louder wail, and Chen Feng raised his leg again, thumping repeatedly. Chen Feng kicked several times in a row, using all his strength each time. His eyes were bloodshot with pain, his body curled up in agony. His eyes seemed to bulge out, filled with blood vessels. The veins on his neck bulged, his face turned bright red. Intense pain repeatedly assaulted his mind. He opened his mouth, wanting to scream, but he was already powerless. Only a hee hee sound came from his throat, like a dying animal. He was in so much pain, so much pain. He had never imagined that a person could feel such agony. His only thought now was to die. After he died, he wouldn't have to endure this pain anymore. He would be free. They were the ones who could inflict pain on others, but they never felt a shred of pity or hesitation. Take him out, Chen Feng's voice was calm, but to the sleazy man, it sounded like a demon. His eyes bulged out again, filled with fear, helplessness, and pain. He wanted to speak, but he had no strength. The green ghost glanced at the black bear, and the black bear immediately went forward with another henchman to help the sleazy man out. Soon, a heart-wrenching scream came from outside. Everyone's faces turned pale, especially Tian Lin. She thought she had seen plenty of bloody scenes, even personally wielding the knife when she was in the mood, but compared to Chen Feng and the others in front of her, she felt she was too kind. At that time, they only felt the perverse excitement and thrill. They only felt joy when they heard the cries of those children in pain. They enjoyed the feeling of having countless lives in their hands, playing God. They felt that in this underground world, they were invincible gods. They could decide who lived and who died. But when the things that excited them were about to be inflicted on them, they were afraid. It was only then that they realized they were not gods, but pitiful creatures trembling under the butcher's knife. Bang! Tian Lin sat on the ground, which made the men nearby furrow their brows in disbelief as they looked at her. What did they see? They actually saw the ruthless dark queen of the underground world being scared to the point of peeing herself? Tian Lin didn't care about their gaze. She was only filled with fear in her eyes. Her nature was that of a weak woman. She was also a miserable person. When she was young, she was sold by her parents to human traffickers, then sold to a remote and poor village, forced to marry a fool. She hated, she resented, she loathed this world, this dirty world that devours people without leaving a trace. She hated her parents, the human traffickers, the foolish man she was forced to marry, and the cruel old woman. As time passed, one day, her old woman slowly aged, her eldest son was already seven years old, and her youngest son had just been born. Everyone thought she no longer had the intention to escape, so she was let out. She had gone from a teenage girl to a woman in her twenties, and she behaved extremely obediently, pleasing her old woman. Her mother-in-law invited all the relatives over, made a table full of food, and celebrated her finally integrating into the family. That day, everyone laughed and the whole world seemed to become very beautiful from then on. However, when everyone was drunk, she took a kitchen knife and chopped off the head of the man who had defiled her, then went to the old woman's room. When she came out, she was holding an old head in her hand, her eyes full of madness, like a demon in the dark night. She killed the man who had defiled her and the old woman who had abused her, but her hatred had not disappeared. She turned and, in the dark night, looked into the room where her child was sleeping. She went in and came out covered in blood, screaming and laughing at the sky. She left in the dark night with the knife. The next day, a horrifying murder occurred in Dahang village, where a family of six, from an elderly person in their 80s to a baby in swaddling clothes, were all beheaded, wiping out the entire family. Three months later, in the H province, more than 300 kilometers away from Dahang village, in the Tianjia village of S County, the family of Tian Degu, consisting of five people, 
was also beheaded and wiped out. Tian Ling killed all those who had plotted against her, but her hatred remained. She hated the injustice of the world and all the misfortunes that had befallen her. In the end, she made a decision to repay everything she had suffered to the world. From that day on, she became the human trafficker she hated the most. She began to abduct and deceive children and women. Later, she met her current husband, who was also a human trafficker. After they got married, their power grew rapidly. She felt that simply trafficking children and women could no longer satisfy her desire for revenge. She began to maim and blind the abducted children, then threw them onto the streets and at train stations to make money. She imprisoned the abducted women, treating them like pigs and dogs, selling them or letting other men enjoy them. She wanted all the children and women to suffer the same pain she had endured, so that her heart could find some balance, and this was where she found pleasure in living. Later, with the help of her husband, she established the Sunshine Kindergarten and the M County Orphanage. Her actions received praise from many people. Ironically, she even became a representative of outstanding entrepreneurs in the local area, standing in the sunlight and under the red flag to deliver speeches, becoming a great person in the hearts of many. Until today, she met Chin Fong, who seemed even more wicked than her, a true demon. She had always thought she had seen through life and death, but at this moment, she found herself afraid of death. She even wet herself in fear. Tears flowed from her eyes, filled with grief and resentment. She felt that the heavens were so unfair. She was a pitiful person, suffering such tragic experiences in the first half of her life. Now she just wanted to take back a little interest. So why did the heavens send such a demon to deal with her? Wasn't she pitiful enough? Damn the heavens, may they die a horrible death. Tian Lin's eyes were full of resentment, but no one knew any of this. Behind the iron door at this moment, when the women inside heard the wretched man's screams, they couldn't help but be stunned, then they couldn't help but approach the iron door. When they saw the wretched man's miserable state, a glimmer of light appeared in their colorless eyes for the first time. They didn't speak, and dared not speak, but their hands were tightly gripping the iron bars of the door, their bodies trembling wildly. It was clear that they were very excited. However, when the wretched man was taken away, fear once again filled their eyes. If even such a brutal man as the wretched man could be tortured by Chin Fong, then their situation was even more difficult now, wasn't it? Their eyes were full of sorrow and indignation, they sat weakly on the ground, looking up at the sky through layers of barriers, wanting to scream loudly, wanting to angrily question the heavens, why did they have to be treated like this? After the sleazy man was taken away, Chin Fong walked slowly forward. This time, no woman approached the iron gate to beg Chin Fong to buy them, because in their eyes, Chin Fong was a more terrifying demon. As Chen Fong walked and looked, the eyes of each woman showed retreat, avoidance, and fear. Xin Gui and the others followed behind Chin Fong, looking at the disheveled women behind the iron gates on both sides. For some reason, they also felt a little uncomfortable and oppressed. However, soon they couldn't help but laugh self-mockingly. They were even more ruthless drug traffickers. They had destroyed countless small drug gangs over the years, and they had killed countless people. Every person present had blood on their hands, but now they unexpectedly felt pity for these poor women? They actually thought that people like Tian Lin were despicable? They actually felt a feeling that had not appeared for a long time. They asked themselves, were the people they had killed over the years following Chen Fong all deserving of their fate? Those drug trafficking small gangs, scattered throughout this great summer, caused even more widespread harm to the great summer. By eliminating these gangs, although later the Kunsar group regained control of this area, at least during that period of vacuum, the Great Summer had a brief period of true peace. Countless drug users had no way to buy drugs, and many people were forced to quit their drug addiction. Could this be considered indirectly doing some good? Chen Fong led them to kill countless so-called good people, great people, but in secret they were actually tormenting the people, sucking the lifeblood of the people. By killing them, were they indirectly saving countless ordinary people? They were demons, but they were more like those evil demons, not the common people. At least now, Chen Feng's hands had not been stained with the blood of any innocent civilians, and they were the same under Chen Feng's leadership. Xin Gui and the others didn't know that under Chen Feng's command, they had really changed a lot. Chen Feng and the others passed through one iron gate after another, and at the end, there was another iron gate. Just as they approached the iron gate, Chen Feng heard a tender and heart-wrenching cry. Xin Gui quickened his pace and went forward in two steps, pushing open the heavy iron gate. As soon as the iron gate was opened, everything behind the iron gate was revealed to Chen Feng and the others, including everyone, and they all froze. The next moment, a terrifying killing intent filled Chen Feng's eyes. Behind the iron gate, there was a large room with rows of dog cages, exactly the kind of dog cages made of welded steel bars that everyone had in mind. However, inside the dog cages were not dogs, but curled up children. One end of a dog chain was locked around the child's neck, 
and the other end was tied to the dog cage. As soon as they entered the room, an extremely unpleasant smell of urine and feces rushed into their noses, making them feel suffocated. The children in the dog cages, from 11 or 12 years old to 3 or 4 years old, were all curled up in the iron cages, like dogs, lying or lying down, disheveled and dirty, emitting a foul smell. They had one thing in common, none of them were normal. Some were missing an arm, some were missing two legs, and many children only had their upper bodies, with empty space below their thighs. There were many children with crooked ears facing Chen Feng and others, their eyes filled with colorless gray. When Chen Feng and the others walked in, the children quickly got up, but when they saw that Chen Feng and the others had nothing in their hands, they sat back disappointedly. In the deepest part of the room, there was a faint and oppressive wail, as well as a clear crying sound. Chen Feng couldn't help but quicken his pace and walk inside. The scene before him was even more heart-wrenching. In the innermost part, there were not cages, but a large empty space. Weak children were constantly wailing, with pools of crimson blood beneath them. Some were holding their severed arms, some were hugging their broken legs, and others lay on the ground with swollen, pus-filled eyes and disfigured faces. These children had been sent from the orphanage in recent days, or were begging for money in other places but didn't meet the standards set by the traffickers. In order to better profit, Tianlin and others cruelly maimed these children to evoke kindness and sympathy from people. Now these children only had two fates, either survive and be sent out to beg, or not survive and be sent to the black hospital to sell their organs before dying. When they heard footsteps approaching, all the children who were wailing tried hard to suppress their voices, but the pain they endured, such as having a leg or a hand forcibly severed, or hot oil poured into their eyes, had almost exceeded human limits. Even some resolute adults couldn't bear it, let alone these children, most of whom were only six or seven years old. Chen Feng felt his heart trembling at the scene before him, especially when he saw the children in the innermost part, who had lost even the ability to wail and could only lie weakly on the ground. The children who couldn't wail stared at Chen Feng and the others, trying hard to open their mouths and make a sound, but their lips moved without producing any sound. They had lost all hope, knowing that if they couldn't survive, they would be sent to the black hospital to sell their organs. That would be their final fate. Take all the children back and do everything to save them, Chen Feng's eyes were red as he hoarsely shouted. Yes. Qin Gui and the others quickly stepped forward and lifted the children. None of the children dared to resist, allowing themselves to be carried out. Open the cages and unchain them, Chen Feng spoke again, and the remaining people quickly opened all the cages and unchained the children. However, as if they hadn't seen anything, all the children remained curled up inside the cages. Looking at the unfamiliar Chen Feng and the others, their eyes were filled with vigilance and confusion. Brother, whoa whoa, brother. At that moment, a four or five year old girl crawled out of a cage, trembling, and ran towards the children lying on the ground, crying. She knelt in front of one of the children, desperately shaking the motionless body. But the figure in front of her remained still. Brother, brother, wake up. The small figure was in tears, constantly shaking her brother's body. Seeing a child almost the same size as his own daughter, Chen Feng felt as if his heart had been blocked by something. At that moment, Qin Gui returned and walked to the little girl's side, wanting to lift her brother. But the little girl, with courage from somewhere, stood up unsteadily, opened her arms in front of her brother, her eyes filled with fear and dread, yet she showed no sign of wavering. The tender yet firm and trembling voice rang out, You are not allowed to touch my brother. I won't allow you to hurt my brother. Little sister, we won't hurt your brother. We just want to save him. Chingui squatted down and patiently coaxed, I won't, you are the bad guys. The little girl shook her head repeatedly. Chingui smiled awkwardly, and a scar on his face looked somewhat cute. The little girl's words left him speechless. Yes, he was a bad person, a ruthless drug lord with blood on his hands. Xingui looked at the delicate little girl in front of him, feeling helpless. He scratched his head and then turned to Chen Feng for help. If Chen Feng asked him to kill someone, he wouldn't even blink, but he really didn't know how to coax someone. Chen Feng walked over and waved his hand. Xingui breathed a sigh of relief, wiped the cold sweat from his face, and gave his place to Chen Feng. Chen Feng squatted in front of the little girl, a warm smile appearing on his face, Little sister, do you think I'm a bad person? Hearing Chen Feng's words, Xin Gui couldn't help but laugh in his heart. You? Aren't you a bad person? The sixth master of the Kunsijituan, a notorious figure in the dark forces of Dasha, with probably more than a hundred lives on his hands. How dare you ask if you are a bad person? Disgraceful. At that moment, the little girl instinctively nodded, then shook her head. No. Why do you think I'm not a bad person? Chen Feng's smile became even brighter, and Qin Gui quietly leaned in, his ears perked up. He also wanted to hear why the little girl thought Chen Feng wasn't a bad person. 
Under Chen Feng's gaze and Qing Gui's anticipation, the little girl glanced at Chen Feng, then at Qing Gui, and solemnly said, Because you are handsome. Hearing the little girl's words, Qing Gui almost choked on his drink. So, the little girl thought she was a bad person because she was ugly? It felt like a stab in Qing Gui's heart. He could remain unfazed even when being cut, he was tough, he didn't fear pain. But at that moment, he couldn't help but clutch his chest, feeling a sharp pain in his heart. However, he had no reason to refute it. Indeed, Chen Feng was better looking than him. Not to mention the little girl, even he felt that among the entire Kunsejituan, the sixth master was the most handsome and had a masculine aura. What the little girl said was true, but why did it make him feel uncomfortable? Chen Feng couldn't help but smile. This was the first time he had smiled since coming to this underground storage. Since you believe that uncle is not a bad person, can you tell uncle your name? I'm Xiaoyu, uncle. He is my brother Shanan. My brother was bullied by bad people. They poured hot oil into my brother's eyes, and he's about to die. Please, uncle, save my brother. Xiaoyu looked at Chen Feng, tears streaming down her eyes. She was young and didn't understand much, but she could feel that Chen Feng was not a bad person. She felt that Chen Feng was here to save them. She was afraid of the fierce-looking man beside Chen Feng, who seemed like a bad person. She was afraid that speaking up would anger this big bad person, but she wanted to save her brother. She was betting her life on Chen Feng's kindness. Okay, uncle promises you. Chen Feng nodded heavily, squatted down and picked up Xiao Nan himself. Looking at the barely breathing figure in his arms, with lifeless gray eyes, he felt a soft spot in his heart being deeply touched. These were the most delicate flowers of Dixia, they were the hope and future of Dixia. They should have been living under the bright sunshine, with smiles on their faces. However, they were treated like dogs, locked in this dark and gloomy basement, enduring inhumane abuse. Chen Feng held Xiao Nan, and Xiao Yu followed closely behind him. Seeing this scene, some children inside the cages began to stir, trying to stretch out a leg, then two legs, then half of their bodies, until they finally crawled out of the dog cages. Some of the children who had just crawled out of the cages immediately ran towards the corner where there were iron buckets containing leftovers and slop. Despite the sour smell, they frantically grabbed the contents and stuffed them into their mouths. Chen Feng, upon seeing this, did not intervene. He stood in place, speechless for a long time. When all the children had eaten their fill, he waved his hand, and Cheng Gui and the others immediately led the children outside. However, to everyone's surprise, some children, after eating, voluntarily crawled back into the cages, even closing the open dog cages and chaining themselves up, as if they were dogs lying in the cages. These children had been locked up here since they were very young. Apart from begging for food outside, the dog cages were where they spent most of their time. They had grown up in such an environment, and they felt that staying in the cages was normal. Chen Feng's nose tingled as he watched this scene. He waved his hand, and Cheng Gui and the others forcibly took all the children away. He did not try to persuade these children. Some things needed to change, and it would not happen overnight. Only through gradual influence could their mistaken beliefs be corrected. As Chen Feng and the others carried the children back and forth, the fear on the faces of all the women behind the iron gates on both sides was even more intense. Especially when they saw the children with severed limbs, covered in blood, barely clinging to life, they became even more frightened. After all the children were rescued, Chen Feng turned his gaze to the iron gates where the women were being held, and waved his hand. Qing Long and the others immediately opened the iron gates, and all the women were stunned. Come out, you were saved, Qing Gui tried to make his voice as gentle as possible, not so harsh, with a slight smile on his lips, showing his four front teeth, and a self-proclaimed handsome smile on his face. But seeing this smile, all the women seemed like startled birds, quickly shrinking back. Xing Gui? Xing Gui swore that he just wanted to do a good deed. And he had already restrained himself a lot, and with a brilliant smile. Didn't Xing Gui just say that his smile was very cute? But in the eyes of these people, he seemed like a demon. The blue demon turned and left, after opening all the iron gates, Chen Feng and others walked out. Except for a few children, all the women were adults. Chen Feng had already rescued them, and the rest was up to them. At this time, Tian Lin and others were sitting on the ground outside, watching Chen Feng and others carry away the children, feeling extremely unwilling in her heart. The underground kingdom she had worked hard to create and develop had been destroyed in an instant, and the person who did it was ruthless. Without a word, he turned the sneaky man into a human stick, and even after cutting off his limbs, the sneaky man did not find release. He was now hanging on a rope, swinging back and forth. Tian Lin and others were already terrified, and without needing Chen Feng to ask, Tian Lin and her family told Chen Feng all the information. Apart from controlling the underground warehouse and training the emaciated horses, and contacting the higher-ups in M County, 
There was also her husband who was actually controlling the beggar team and constantly looking for buyers outside. If these children who were harmed today did not die, they would fall into his hands and become one of the countless beggars. If they did not survive for long, they would be sold to the old Huang of the Black Hospital before they died. After Chen Feng received all the information, he directly had Tian Lin and others' legs broken, then left without looking back. Chen Feng did not bother with these people anymore, because with their legs broken and their phones confiscated, they could not escape from this underground room. However, the women inside would eventually come out. When they saw Tian Lin and others, Chen Feng did not dare to think about their fate. Not long after Chen Feng and the others left, when those women had not heard any movement, they finally tried to walk out of the iron gates. The fluorescent lights on the entire corridor were somewhat frighteningly bright. They cautiously pushed open the iron gates and stepped out. Ah, help! Just as they walked out of the iron gates, all the women were stunned, because the queen who had always been high in their hearts, controlling their lives and deaths, was now sitting on the ground, crying in pain, as if enduring immense suffering. Looking down, all her legs were in a twisted state. When these women appeared, Tian Lin and others subconsciously held their breath. When they saw that the newcomers were the women from inside the iron gates, Tian Lin's heart suddenly twisted in madness. What are you dead women still standing there for? Why don't you hurry up and help us up? Tian Lin scolded, thinking she was still the high and mighty dark queen, thinking she was still the god who could control others' lives and deaths at will. When Tian Lin's voice rang out, almost all the women subconsciously knelt down, but they quickly realized something was wrong, because... Tian Lin's current situation seemed very bad. What are you doing? What do you want to do? Have you forgotten my identity? Tian Lin angrily said, but they slowly stood up again, their eyes scrutinizing Tian Lin. At that moment, a woman suddenly screamed and rushed towards Tian Lin, and the others immediately followed suit. She frantically clawed at Tian Lin's face, and someone even stuck their fingers into her eyes. When they pulled their hands out, there were only two bloody eyeballs left. Ah! Surrounded by the crowd, Tian Lin couldn't help but make a miserable sound. When the crowd dispersed, Tian Lin had fallen into a pool of blood and gradually stopped breathing. As they looked at Tian Lin lying in a pool of blood, some of the women's lips were moving continuously. Upon closer inspection, Tian Lin's ears were missing. They turned their gaze back to the others, their eyes emitting a green light. What do you want to do? What are you going to do? Don't move, don't come over. Ah! When others saw these terrifying eyes, their hearts trembled fiercely, and fear and panic filled their minds. They knew that the women in front of them had gone mad, actually killing Tian Lin alive, and some even bit off Tian Lin's ears, then tortured her to death. More importantly, these women seemed to be going crazy, not behaving like human beings at all. Everyone struggled to escape, but in the next moment, countless women rushed forward, surrounding everyone in the middle. When they dispersed again, it was already over half an hour later, the whole ground was a mess, almost everyone's ears were bitten off, their eyeballs gouged out, and blood was everywhere. This was a living hell on earth. Outside at this moment, Chen Feng watched as the children were taken away in cars, finally feeling relieved. Just then, he suddenly heard the intense screams coming from the underground warehouse. Upon hearing this, Chen Feng was momentarily stunned, then shook his head. Regardless of Tian Lin and the other's fate, in Chen Feng's eyes, they deserved it. After taking a deep look at the warehouse hiding the basement, he got into the car and left. Not long after Chen Feng and the others left, women crawled out from the basement. When they saw the outside scenery, their bodies stiffened, tears streaming down their faces uncontrollably. After settling all the children, Chen Feng looked up slightly, the sky still pitch black. He waved his hand, and the convoy quickly headed in a certain direction. The real controller of the Grey Force was not just Tian Lin, but also her husband, who was even more damned. Soon, in another factory in the suburbs of M County, Chen Feng found Tian Lin's husband, Zhu Jiewei. He was a well-dressed man with a hint of elegance. If Chen Feng hadn't known his identity in advance, he wouldn't have been able to associate the man in front of him with the despicable human trafficker. At first, Zhu Jiawei didn't want to reveal any information, but when Chen Feng directly sawed off one of his henchman's legs in front of him, Zhu Jiawei immediately became honest and then opened the key to the basement, leading Chen Feng and the others inside. Master, master, please, give us something to eat, we're really starving. Master, I want to eat something. Master, have mercy on us. When they saw Zhu Jiawei, many people in the warehouse immediately wailed, their eyes full of pleading. Nearby, there were two pillars with iron chains, and the chains still had bloodstains on them. At this moment, there were still barely alive children hanging from the pillars. When they saw Zhu Jiawei, they wanted to beg for mercy, but they hadn't eaten for many days and couldn't speak or had the strength to speak. Chen Feng and the others first rescued the children hanging from the pillars and then put them in the car outside. Who are you? 
Suddenly, at this moment, a group of people quickly approached from a distance. When they saw that there were people guarding the warehouse door, they were immediately shocked. The guards at the door stood still, but their fingers had quietly moved to the trigger. Seeing only a few figures at the door, the newcomers felt even more uneasy, quickly dispersing and approaching the guards. Seeing that there seemed to be only two people at the door, the newcomers felt slightly relieved, a flash of hostility in their eyes, kill. But at that moment, their bodies stiffened, as they saw the dark muzzles of guns aimed at them. Clang! Chen Feng and others had just rescued the children who were hanging on the pillars, when they saw two evil spirits escorting several people and opening the iron gate to walk in. However, Chen Feng still did not look back carefully picked up the children on the ground, and then walked outside. After more than half an hour, all the children were taken out. As for the warehouse behind, no one else came out, including Zhu Jiawei and everyone else, but he did not let go of anyone involved in the murder. In Zhu Jiawei's study, Qing Gui was carefully prying open a safe as instructed by Zhu Jiawei before his death. There were many pieces of evidence of Su Tao's crimes in the safe. Upon opening the safe, they found two bank books, a mobile phone, and a USB flash drive. The phone was specifically used by Zhu Jiawei to contact Su Tao, and he recorded every conversation, as well as the USB flash drive. They directly plugged it into Su Tao's computer in the study, and soon a disk popped up. Upon clicking in, there were various contents, including videos of Zhu Jiawei inviting Su Tao to dinner, to the bathhouse, sauna, and nightclubs. These images were very shaky, clearly indicating that they were secretly recorded by Zhu Jiawei. However, one of the video covers made Chen Feng raise his eyebrows uncontrollably because he saw his daughter Chen Cici in the footage. Although it was a bit blurry, he still recognized her at a glance. He used the mouse to open the video, and amidst the noisy voices, a child in the video kept provoking Chen Cici, using foul language. Chen Cici sat in her seat, not moving. The child went too far, reaching out to pull Chen Cici's hair and using a pen to draw on her clothes. Chen Cici still did not move, just pursing her lips, tears flashing in her eyes. Mom said, don't cause trouble, don't fight, don't make trouble for mom. But when the child uttered the words bastard, Chen Cici lifted her head and said, I'm not a bastard. The child was stunned, but even more excited, calling out to two other children, bastard, bastard, bastard. Chen Cici clenched her fists tightly, but the three children paid no attention. Suddenly, Chen Cici exploded. She rushed forward and punched the first child in the face, knocking him to the ground. The other two children immediately clenched their fists and rushed forward, howling. Chen Cici used all her strength to push one of the children to the ground but was immediately grabbed by the hair and pressed to the ground by the other child. Chen Cici's tears of pain flowed, but she did not cry. She directly bit the fat hand that was pulling her hair. The child pulling her hair immediately cried out in pain. They were all several years old, usually mischievous and bullying other children, but when they saw Chen Cici, who was fiercer than them, they were afraid. One by one, they began to wail loudly. Soon, a teacher-like figure arrived. When she saw the three crying children, she pointed directly at Chen Cici without any explanation, causing her to stagger. Seeing this, Chen Feng couldn't help but clench his fists, veins bulging on his forehead. The teacher made a phone call, and within half an hour, three gorgeously dressed women appeared. As soon as they appeared, the three little boys immediately ran to them and complained. The three women glared fiercely at Chen Cici, who stood alone, her eyes full of fear and stubbornness. It's you, you little bitch, who injured our son, one of the women scolded. They were the ones who insulted me. Shen Cici gathered her courage, but before she could finish speaking, one of the women rushed up and slapped her, knocking her to the ground. Another woman reached out and pinched several red marks on Shen Cici's hand with her long nails. Finally, a woman with sunglasses, a gorgeous gemstone necklace around her neck, and carrying an LV bag, walked up and without a word, kicked Shen Cici directly in the stomach. Shen Cici was knocked down to the ground, crying out in pain. Rolling on the ground in agony, the woman was still not satisfied. She walked up and viciously stomped on Chen Cici's stomach with her high-heeled shoe. Chen Cici cried out in pain, tears streaming down her face. She desperately clutched at the high-heeled shoe on her stomach, crying out in a childish voice, it hurts. When Chen Cici remained silent, the woman became even angrier. She forcefully ground her foot into Chen Cici's stomach, causing her to cry out in agony. Desperately turning to the nearby teacher for help, she looked on in helplessness and pain, pleading, teacher, it hurts, save me. However, the teacher nearby simply turned her head away as if she hadn't seen the scene. It wasn't until the woman kicked Chen Cici to the side, causing her head to hit the table and blood to flow, that the nearby teacher panicked and quickly stopped the assault. She picked up Chen Cici and hurried to the infirmary, then informed Bai Luo. The scene quickly shifted, and Chen Feng saw Chen Cici clinging to Bai Luo, crying out in pain, and Bai Luo seeking justice but being targeted by everyone. 
In the end, the scene only showed by Luo walking away with Chen Cici in his arms. The scene ended, but Chen Feng's gaze remained fixed on the screen, and the atmosphere was filled with an unusual tension. Chen Feng clenched his fists tightly, tears of regret and overwhelming murderous intent on his face. He had not expected that in his absence, his woman and daughter would suffer such humiliation. Chen Cici was just a child, just a child, and yet those women could be so cruel? His body trembled slightly, his eyes red as if blood would drip from them. He had given everything, abandoned his family, just to protect his country and the people behind him. But why? Why? While he desperately sacrificed everything to protect them, they were heartlessly harming his loved ones in the rear. He didn't seek respect or gratitude, nor did he expect anyone to remember him or consider him a hero. Why did they turn around and stab him in the back? Chen Feng felt as if his heart was breaking, and at the same time, a raging anger was almost uncontrollable within him. He wanted to kill. After a long time, Chen Feng slowly regained control of his emotions, closed the computer, removed the USB drive, and didn't want to continue watching. His only thought now was to kill, to seek revenge. Chen Feng set off again with his companions, targeting Su Tao's home this time. Tian Lin and Zhu Jiawei had already confessed everything, and their biggest backer was Su Tao. With Su Tao, the head of the JC Bureau, as their support, they could receive advance notice of many actions taken against them. So they had survived numerous national crackdowns. At the same time, Su Tao had used his authority to help Tian Lin and others eliminate nearly half of the southern human trafficking gangs, rapidly expanding their influence, and Su Tao had also gained credit. Su Tao, although only acting as a protector, did not personally kill anyone. However, in Chen Feng's eyes, his crime was even more serious than that of Tian Lin. As a public servant, instead of wholeheartedly protecting the people, he colluded with human traffickers to harm the people, engaged in corruption and injustice, distorted right and wrong, and used the power given by the people to persecute the people under his rule. Many people who reported to the relevant departments in County M ended up dying in accidents, and those who tried to go to the city or even the province to file complaints disappeared on the way, their whereabouts unknown. One of them was Luo Dashin. It is self-evident where these people went, they all died at his hands. Also, the grudge between his daughter and Bai Luo must be avenged. Chen Feng, accompanied by several henchmen, sneaked into Su Tao's house. In the dark of night, Su Tao was sleeping soundly with his wife in his arms. But the next moment, Su Tao abruptly opened his eyes, only to find his mouth covered. He turned to see that his wife's mouth was also tightly covered by someone. Shortly after, in the study, with a desk lamp faintly lit, Su Tao and his wife were tied to chairs, their mouths sealed with tape. They looked at the people in front of them with fear and panic. Woo, woo, woo. Su Tao struggled frantically, trying to speak, but Chen Feng waved his hand slightly, and the henchmen and others left, leaving the place to Chen Feng once again. Chen Feng looked at Su Tao and the woman still struggling, a cold light flashing in his eyes. He did not speak, but took out a phone, which belonged to Zhu Jiawei and was used specifically to contact Su Tao. It also contained many videos he had taken himself. Chen Feng opened the phone in front of Su Tao and his wife. As soon as the video started playing, a piercing wail could be heard, and the images were extremely bloody, causing Su Tao and the woman to turn pale as they watched, their bodies trembling more and more as the video went on. After watching the video, Chen Feng sat back and said, Su Tao, do you see clearly? These children are the ones protected by you, the principal of Yangwon Kindergarten, Tian Lin, the trafficker who harmed the children. Legs sawed off, hands chopped, hot oil poured in eyes. Can you imagine the pain they suffered? They were just children, they belonged to happy families. Su Tao, as the director of the JC Bureau, your power and position come from the people. You should have fulfilled your duty to serve the people, but instead, you used your position and power to shelter a heinous trafficker, causing so many happy families to be shattered and so many children to suffer persecution, corruption, and injustice. You aided and abetted evil. Do you think you deserve to live or die? At the end, Chen Feng couldn't help but roar softly, frightening Su Tao, who continued to tremble and whimper, but Chen Feng did not remove the tape, as he did not deserve to speak. Then Chen Feng turned his gaze to the woman and once again opened the phone, showing her a video of her kicking Chen Cici. The woman was slightly stunned when she saw the content of the video, and after a moment of thought, she remembered the source of the video. However, she also felt puzzled. She had only kicked an unruly little girl, and heard that the woman was a widow whose husband had died in a fire. Shouldn't she have any connection with this heinous person in front of her? But the next words from Chen Feng almost scared her to death. The little girl you kicked is called Chen Cici, and I am her father. You are very capable, three of you ganging up on my four-year-old daughter, slapping her, kicking her with high heels. Chen Feng's voice became colder and colder, causing the woman to shiver uncontrollably. 
She shook her head frantically and whimpered as if she wanted to say something, you are also a mother, you also have children, whose children are not the apple of their parents' eyes. How can you be so cruel? Chen Feng stood up, a sinister smile spreading across his lips. He reached out and lifted the woman, then clenched his fist the size of a sandbag and fiercely punched her in the face. Instantly, the woman's face swelled up. She cried out in pain, but Chen Feng did not stop. He grabbed the woman's collar and slapped her face repeatedly until he felt tired and stopped. The woman whimpered in pain, tears streaming down her face. Now you know what pain feels like? You know how to cry now? Did you think about her pain when you hit my daughter? With that, Chen Feng raised his knee and ruthlessly struck the woman's stomach. The woman collapsed in agony, curling up like a shrimp, her face turning red and trembling in pain. But Chen Feng did not stop. He lifted his foot and kicked the woman's stomach repeatedly, each kick echoing the image of the woman kicking Chen Cici's stomach. When the woman could no longer even whimper, Chen Feng finally stopped. She was in so much pain that she was on the verge of passing out, her body convulsing continuously. Looking at Chen Feng, her eyes were filled with fear and resentment. Even now, she felt no remorse. She even regretted not kicking Chen Cici to death and having Bai Luo killed, which led to the devil in front of her. She swore that if she survived today, she would make those two bitches in Chen Feng pay. Seeing the woman's expression, Chen Feng understood her intentions. He shook his head, thinking that some people would never change their ways. This woman was too foolish. Did she really think she could survive? The woman still did not realize her situation, but Su Tao, standing beside her, was all too familiar with the look in Chen Feng's eyes. He was filled with fear and dared not make a sound. He blamed his wife in his heart. If his wife hadn't spoiled their son so much and hadn't bullied the woman's daughter, how could they have ended up in this situation? Who are you people? What are you doing? Suddenly, a clear voice rang out from outside. It was Su Tao's son, Xiao Feng. He had gotten up to use the bathroom and happened to hear noises coming from his father's study. He walked over and saw the Qing Gui and others waiting outside the study. Despite their menacing appearance, he showed no fear. He had seen many big, foolish men like them. When facing his father, they all nodded and bowed, even addressing him as young master. Seeing the child in front of them not only unafraid but also curious, Xing Gui couldn't help but furrow his brow. He lightly knocked on the door, then entered and whispered in Chen Feng's ear. Before Chen Feng could respond, Xiao Feng had already leaned against the door. When he saw his bound parents inside the room, his eyes lit up. Mom, Dad, are you playing a kidnapping game? Su Tao and the woman stared wide-eyed, screaming frantically. Xiao Feng casually stepped into the room, and the Qing Gui and others tried to rush in to take him out, but Chen Feng waved them off. Qing Gui glared fiercely at the others, then left with them. Chen Feng looked at Xiao Feng with a terrifying coldness in his eyes. Even though Chen Cixi had been bullied by Xiao Feng, he still hadn't lost his mind to the point of wanting to kill him. After all, the mischievous behavior of Su Feng was mostly caused by his parents' indulgence and education. He was despicable, but not deserving of death. However, upon seeing him now, Chen Feng couldn't help but clench his fists. Chen Feng remained silent, but Su Feng was brazen. He turned to Chen Feng and said, Hey, are you playing a kidnapping and murder game with my dad? Can I join? I've played this game before, and I'm really good at it. Before Chen Feng could respond, Su Feng continued, Last time I played with the girl next door, she lost to me. But she was too petty. After losing, she pretended to fall asleep. It was so boring. Ha! Huh? Chen Feng suddenly sensed something unusual. He looked at Su Feng and asked, Have you really played this game? Su Feng became interested, Yes, I have. Last time I played with the girl next door, I tied her up with a rope and threw her into the bathtub. I held her head down and didn't let her come up. After that, she didn't speak. Dad said she died, but Mom said she was just asleep. She lost the kidnapping and murder game to me, and after losing, the girl was too embarrassed to admit it. The girl was so petty. After that, she didn't play with me anymore. After their family moved away, I tried to find out about the girl's whereabouts, but no one knew. Su Feng spoke with pride, while Chen Feng's eyes darkened once again. Do you know if she really died or just fell asleep? I don't know, I don't care about her. If she's dead, she's dead. She should die if she doesn't play with me. Xiao Feng's tone was nonchalant, as if the girl he had harmed was not a person, but a pet dog. The murderous intent in Chen Feng's heart grew stronger. How could such a young child treat human life so callously? If he grew up, how many more people would he harm? He turned a cold eye towards Su Tao and the woman. This family was simply unworthy of being human. From the eldest to the youngest, their hands were probably stained with the lives of innocent people. Age and gender were irrelevant. This family deserved to die. But for so many people to die because of them, letting them die like this felt too easy. Chen Feng slowly drew out a knife. 
Your name is Su Feng, right? Do you want to join us? Su Feng nodded eagerly, looking at the knife in Chen Feng's hand with excitement. Yes. Chen Feng handed the knife to Su Feng. Then let's begin. We'll start the game now. Your target is your parents. Let me see if you have any experience, if you're capable. Su Feng took the knife and, with pride in his eyes, walked excitedly towards Su Tao and the woman. Su Tao and the woman stared in disbelief, not daring to believe that their son was coming at them with a knife, as if to stab them, playing some kind of game. Seeing Su Tao and the woman struggling and whimpering, Su Feng became even more excited. Dad, Mom, you're acting so well. Now watch me. I will definitely win the game. Su Feng smiled, arrogantly making a promise to the two. Mom, you've always been good to me. Can I play with you first? The woman shook her head in fear, tears welling up in her eyes. She hadn't expected her son to come at her with a knife to play a game. She was angry. Her son was already so grown up, yet he had no awareness of the consequences of committing murder. Her eyes were filled with sadness. She hadn't expected that her kindness to her son would one day lead him to use a knife against her. She really wanted to tell herself that Su Feng should let Su Feng stab Su Tao first, because her mother was her real mother, and her father was not her real father. How could she let herself be stabbed for someone else's mistake? But she couldn't speak, and Su Feng didn't want to listen. His eyes were full of excitement as he stabbed the woman in the chest with the dagger in his hand. Woo woo woo! The woman suddenly screamed in agony as her son plunged deeper, crying out even more miserably. Wow, mom, you're so good at this. I want to play this game with you every day from now on. Seeing the woman cry and scream, Su Feng felt no doubt or pity, but rather clapped happily. As the woman continued to scream in pain, she spat out a mouthful of blood. Her beloved son had just stabbed the knife directly into her right chest, piercing her heart. She felt her breathing becoming difficult, her head throbbing with pain, and her chest in extreme agony. Su Feng pulled out the knife, and a stream of blood immediately sprayed onto his face. The bloody smell made him pause. Mom? Mom, you're really bleeding? Su Feng was really scared. Last time, when he drowned the little girl next door in the bathtub, it didn't seem scary at all, as if she was just sleeping. He didn't know if the girl was as thin-skinned as his mother said, feeling embarrassed for losing the game, or if she really died. But he didn't care, after all, his father was a high-ranking official who would protect him. If not, Uncle Wang next door also doted on him and would protect him. Every time he made his mother angry, he would rush in to protect himself, then drag his mother into the room to scold her for a long time before leaving. So from that time on, he felt that there was nothing to fear about dead people. But when he saw blood spurting from his mother's chest, he realized that this was not a game, it was real blood. At this moment, Su Feng's mother was in pain, feeling her strength slowly disappearing with the flow of blood. Mom! Su Feng panicked and instinctively pulled out the knife, causing the woman to scream, and blood gushed out like water, splashing all over Su Feng's face. Su Feng was really scared, looking at his mother's painful appearance. He instinctively stabbed the knife back in to stop the bleeding. The woman groaned, her face pale, and she collapsed onto the chair, losing the strength to scream. All that awaited her was death. Seeing his mother no longer in pain, Su Feng finally breathed a sigh of relief. Mom! Mom! Don't scare me! Su Feng rushed up and hugged the woman, tears in her eyes, feeling both hatred and heartache for her son. As time passed, her vision began to blur, and she knew she was dying. Although she hated her son for being as foolish as a pig and for killing her, she knew Su Feng didn't mean to, he was just being used by Chen Feng. Now she was thinking, if she died, what would happen to Su Feng if someone bullied him in the future? Woo woo woo. She struggled to make a sound, tears streaming down her face. Seeing his mother's struggling appearance, Su Feng finally had a moment of clarity and tore off the tape from her mouth. Who? The woman could finally breathe freely, but the bright red blood flowed from the corners of her mouth. Her gaze turned to Chen Feng, and before she died, all her resentment, hatred, and malice disappeared. Her eyes were filled with pleading, please, it's all our fault, all the wrongs were done by Su Tao. Your child was kicked by me. We all deserve to die, but Xiao Feng is still a child. I beg you, don't kill him, he is innocent. Chen Feng sat in silence, not uttering a word. If you don't speak, I'll take it as your agreement. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In the next life, I will repay your great kindness and virtue by being a cow or a horse for you. The woman nodded laboriously at Chen Feng. If she hadn't been tied up, she would have knelt down and kowtowed to Chen Feng. Chen Feng opened his mouth but said nothing. Forgive? I have no right to forgive you. The woman looked at Su Feng, who was already extremely weak. Son, you must live well in the future. You must study hard. When mom is no longer by your side, there will be no one to take care of you. Go to your uncle Wang next door. He will take care of you as his own son. 
Hearing the woman's words, Su Tao, who was standing by, looked at his wife and son with a terrified expression, suddenly feeling a heaviness in his head. His eyes were full of incredulity, not understanding what his wife's words meant, but the meaning was clear. Woo woo woo. Su Tao struggled frantically, shouting loudly at his wife and son. The woman turned around and glared at him fiercely, full of resentment, you're about to die, and you're still shouting? It's all your fault, you, the one who has done so many wicked things, have brought suffering to both of us. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't be dying, and my son wouldn't be suffering like this. I'll tell you the truth, the child is not yours, he's mine and old Wong's next door. You useless thing, you're about to die, and the Su family will be extinct. Cough cough. The woman had almost exhausted all her strength by this point, and she was only exhaling, not inhaling. Hearing the woman's words, Su Tao's eyes turned red, as if blood was about to drip from them. He struggled desperately, suddenly breaking free from the rope on his feet, then, with red eyes, charged at the woman and Su Feng. He viciously kicked Su Feng to the ground, then jumped up and stomped on Su Feng's chest. Crack! The sound of bones breaking rang out, and Su Feng's chest instantly caved in. Su Feng let out a miserable scream, desperately pushing away Su Tao's feet with his hands, his eyes filled with pain and confusion, not understanding why his beloved father would hurt him. Dad! Dad, it hurts! Su Feng weakly cried out, blood spilling from his mouth. He was only five or six years old, and his body was still very fragile. Su Tao angrily kicked him again, directly breaking his ribs in his chest and piercing into his chest. Woo woo woo! Su Feng angrily wailed, his mouth sealed, but everyone knew what he was shouting. I'm not your dad, you wild seed, wild seed. While wailing, he lifted his foot and stomped again. Su Feng convulsed, his head tilted, and then he fell silent. Seeing Su Feng motionless, Su Tao hesitated for a moment, then bent his legs and knelt in front of Su Feng, wailing with regretful tears in his eyes. Ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. At that moment, the woman behind him also reacted. When she saw Su Feng lying motionless on the ground, she went crazy. Her face flushed with a rosy hue, her head shaking wildly, her hair disheveled, like a madwoman. No no no. She couldn't believe that her son had become the motionless body on the ground. She struggled and suddenly lunged forward. Splurt. She collapsed to the ground, the knife in her chest, blood gushing out. Son, son. She struggled towards Su Feng's body, leaving a trail of red behind her. Son. Finally, she reached Su Feng's body, placing her head on it. Then she fell, lifeless. Su Tao stood up, howling in agony. He couldn't understand why this was happening. He had a happy family, a promising future, a beautiful and virtuous wife, and a lovely son. But now, everything had changed. His wife had betrayed him with their neighbor, Lao Wang. His son, it turned out, was also Lao Wang's. No wonder Lao Wang had always treated his son so well in front of him. He had never taken it seriously, but now he saw Su Feng and Lao Wang were like two peas in a pod. He roared in anger, feeling that heaven had been unfair to him. He ran towards the wall, wanting to end his life, but stopped in fear. He sat against the wall, crying. He was afraid to die, truly afraid. Chen Feng approached, looking at Su Tao's miserable face without any emotion. He removed the tape from Su Tao's mouth, and Su Tao knelt before him, begging for his life. He hadn't had a son yet, and if he died, the Su family line would end. His mother was over 80, and he hadn't visited her in nearly a year. Last time he went home for the new year, his wife and son had disdained the poor hygiene in his mother's cooking. The next day, they left and he sought his mother watching them until they disappeared. Now he regretted it. He cried for his mother. He knew he had done many wrong things, and the person in front of him wouldn't spare him. He begged Chen Feng to let him take care of his mother before facing punishment, but it was impossible. As the saying goes, what goes around comes around. Everything is predestined, and our actions will have corresponding consequences. Some people make mistakes when they are young, thinking a few words of apology will suffice. But the punishment will come one day. Similarly, when we do good deeds, heaven will remember our kindness. This is also what we call those fortunate people in our daily lives. It's not that their luck is so good now, it must be the result of the good deeds they did before. As you sow, so shall you reap. In life, never refrain from doing good, do not engage in evil, and do more good deeds and create more good causes, so as to receive more good results. When Su Tao chose to become one of those human traffickers like Tian Lin, choosing to persecute the people and take lives, his path was already determined. His sins cannot be erased by his sudden realization before death or by his remaining filial piety for his mother. Outside the screen at this moment, everyone's hearts are filled with complex emotions. Seeing Su Tao's repentance before death, I actually had a moment of wanting to forgive him, but as soon as this thought arose, I remembered the plight of those children. We can forgive Su Tao, but who will redeem those children who were harmed because of Su Tao? 
We have no right. Actually, Su Tao is also a pitiful person. After decades of marriage and children, he only discovered before his death that his wife had long been unfaithful and the child was not his own. How desperate this is. Pitiful? I would rather use pathetic to describe him. I may feel a slight ripple in my heart because of some of his words, but I will not forgive him, nor will I reduce my hatred for him in the slightest, because all of this is not a reason for him to harm those children and collude with human traffickers. That's true, but I think Chen Feng should give them a quick death. He insists on making a family kill each other. I really feel this is a bit cruel. Yes, even if they deserve punishment, why not just kill them directly? Why torture them? Letting a child kill his own mother, can you imagine the despair and fear in his heart? In the courtroom in front of the television, people couldn't help but start discussing, and in the end, some even spoke up for Su Tao and his family, feeling that Chen Feng was too cruel. However, as soon as they finished speaking, they were immediately met with more rebuttals from others. You're fucking talking nonsense, Chen Feng is cruel? Are your eyes blind? Aren't those children who were harmed by Tian Lin miserable? Isn't Su Tao miserable as the protector of human traffickers? Luo Dashin wanted to seek justice but had no way out and was killed by Su Tao. Isn't Su Tao cruel? Why are there always hypocrites everywhere? That vicious woman and that so-called Su Feng, letting them die so easily is already considered merciful by Chen Feng. Otherwise, according to my opinion, they should be made to suffer and not allowed to die. Hypocrites, do you think the children who were harmed are not yours, so you are especially generous? Broad-minded, but do you have the right to forgive them for those children? Everyone immediately turned their anger towards those few who felt pity for Su Tao and his family, and they could only lower their heads in fear and dare not speak again. Others glared at them fiercely, and Chen Sisi, hearing everyone's discussion, for the first time stood on Chen Feng's side. As a police officer for so many years, Chen Sisi had also been involved in cases of arresting human traffickers, and she had also seen those unfortunate children with her own eyes. Therefore, she felt that if she were Chen Feng, she would also choose to do what Chen Feng did and let Su Tao and his family die directly, which was simply too cheap for them. She and Chen Feng are the only ones who think that Chen Feng should not take matters into his own hands, but should hand them over to the country and let the country and the law judge the Su Tao family. Ah, I and Su Tao are from the same hometown. When Su Tao's family was wiped out, we didn't dare tell the old folks. We could only say that Su Tao was too busy with work to come back and see her. The old folks wiped away tears and said, yes, the child is busy, busy, but he didn't come back to see his old mother even during the new year. He's not being disrespectful, it's just that I'm old now, and every time he comes back less, I see him less. I'm afraid, afraid that when I close my eyes, I won't remember what my son looks like. Later, on New Year's Eve, every household gathered together, only the old lady sat on a big stone in front of the village with a bamboo stick as a cane, from sunrise to sunset. No matter who tried to persuade her, she wouldn't go back. Someone tried to force her, but she hit them back with the bamboo stick. Until the fourth year on the first day of the Lunar New Year, the children who got up early found the old lady still sitting on the big stone at the village entrance, covered in snow, already frozen to death. Before she died, her gaze was always towards the direction of the city, where her son was. In the end, the person couldn't help but choke up a bit. They didn't pity Su Tao, they just felt that Su Tao was not human. If he really cared, where was his filial piety in the past few decades? Now that he's dying, he finally thinks of his old mother, wanting to fulfill his filial duty? No, he's just afraid of death, just trying to find an excuse to touch Chen Feng's heart, to seek a way out. He was only betrayed by his own wife, and the children he raised for so long were not his own. He only thought of the one who truly treated him well, gave him life, and asked for nothing in return, just wanting her son to come back once a year. Except for a few saintly people, few would have any pity for Su Tao. If they hadn't seen the children's miserable situation before, they might have felt a little compassion for Su Tao, because it's human nature to feel compassion and sympathy for those who suffer and endure hardships. But now, almost everyone's heart is filled with resentment towards Su Tao, only wanting revenge for those children. Everyone's mood eased a bit, and then their attention turned back to the big screen. At this moment, on the big screen, Su Tao knelt in front of Chen Feng, begging and kowtowing. But Chen Feng remained unmoved. He never thought of letting the law and the country judge Su Tao, because the people and children who were harmed by Su Tao couldn't wait any longer. Today, Su Tao must die. Chen Feng stepped forward, pulled out the knife from Su Tao's wife's chest, and slowly walked towards Su Tao. No, no, no. Su Tao saw Chen Feng approaching with a bloody knife, and he crawled back in fear, his eyes full of terror. Who? Chen Feng exhaled, reached out and grabbed Su Tao's collar, and the dagger in his hand turned around Su Tao's neck. At this point, Chen Feng felt really tired, he would rather go to the front line and fight those despicable drug traffickers, rather than see these social scum. 
He no longer had the intention to torture Su Tao, he was tired, he just wanted to end it all quickly. The knife turned around Su Tao's neck, and blood gushed out from his throat. Ha! Ha! Su Tao's eyes widened, struggling desperately, but with his hands and feet bound, he writhed on the ground like a worm. Soon, there was only a pool of blood on the ground, and Su Tao had no more breath. His eyes, red as if they were about to pop out, before he died, he tried his best to turn his head in a certain direction, where his old mother, whom he hadn't seen for years, was. Mother. This was the last sentence he left before he died. Chen Feng stood still for a long time without moving. Alas. After a long time, he sighed heavily, reached out, lifted the cold Su Tao, and placed him next to the woman in Su Feng. Let's go together as a family of three. Whatever grievances there were in life, let them go. All grievances are gone after death. Let's have some dignity. Let's have a companion on the road to the underworld. Chen Feng stood up. In the September sky, he suddenly shivered and quickly tightened his clothes. It's so cold. He pushed open the door. Lu Yi, Xin Gui and the others quickly bowed. Hmm. Let's go. Chen Feng's expression was calm as he pushed open the main door and walked out. Before leaving, he suddenly turned and looked at the flashing cameras above the gate. His mouth suddenly twisted into a smile. Cameras? They can capture faces, but not hearts. Chen Feng and the others left. Some of the women who were rescued by Chen Feng ran directly out of M County and headed home. Some chose to report to the police directly. When Chen Feng went to Su Tao's house, several women went with the police towards the warehouse where Tian Lin was located. Of course, they only saw a floor full of bodies. Finally, after the police investigation yielded no results, they concluded that the human trafficking gangs had clashed, and one side had killed all the human traffickers in the warehouse. Based on the descriptions of the rescued women, Chen Feng's portrait was soon posted on the wanted list. When the police told the rescued women that Chen Feng and Tian Lin were just human traffickers who had clashed, they didn't believe it. But when the news of the massacre of the head of the M County Public Security Bureau's family came on the third day, and the cruel smile left in the camera, they finally believed it. This despicable scoundrel, I didn't expect that he would actually deceive us. Yes, he indicated that he was going to let us go. Maybe he had already secretly sent someone to follow us. If we hadn't chosen to report to the police, maybe we would have fallen into the tiger's mouth again. Saab, I feel sorry for those children. I thought he really wanted to take them away for treatment. Who knew that this was just his way of deceiving the children? He even dared to kill the head of the Public Security Bureau. He's simply a demon. I can't believe I felt a hint of gratitude towards him. Now I know that my gratitude was all in vain. If only we had reported to the police earlier and captured them all. The impression of Chen Feng changed from being the hero who rescued them to the despicable human trafficker they gnashed their teeth at. They felt that Chen Feng had saved them and let them go with a plan. Perhaps Chen Feng had already sent someone to follow them and was ready to capture them again at any time. On the fourth day, in M County, the conference room was filled with numerous officials, in addition to local officials, there were also several officials from above who were responsible for investigating the sensational massacre that had shaken the entire Dasha in the past two days. At this time, one of the three people sent down from above stood up to report, the victims this time were the principal of Sunshine Kindergarten, also serving as the director of the M County Orphanage, Tian Lin, the outstanding entrepreneur Zhu Jiawei and his family, and the head of the M County Public Security Bureau, Su Tao, and his family. However, after our investigation, in fact, Tian Lin and Zhu Jiawei were the heads of the largest human trafficking force in the South, which had been pursued by the province several times but without success. Tian Lin used the identities of the principal of Sunshine Kindergarten and the director of the M County Orphanage as a cover, secretly controlling the buying and selling of children and women. The children they controlled, once they reached a certain age, would be mutilated, have their limbs cut off, be blinded, and turned into disabled individuals, then thrown onto the streets and train stations to beg for profit. Some children couldn't survive this process, so they would be sold to black hospitals before they died, where their organs would be harvested and sold. And those women, besides being trafficked to remote and impoverished areas, are also sold to illegal nightclubs, KTVs, and even massage parlors for illicit transactions. Some beautiful women are imprisoned, either as outlets for these human traffickers' desires or as machines for pregnancy, allowing these women to become pregnant without restriction. After giving birth, the children are thrown into orphanages and raised using social welfare benefits. When they grow up, the beautiful girls are groomed to become so-called thin horses and used to corrupt our officials and high-ranking individuals. The other children are either maimed or blinded and used for begging and profiteering. Wow! When the official reported the investigation results, all the officials present couldn't help but be shocked, especially some officials whose expressions turned pale and started sweating profusely. 
Some of these officials actually knew Tian Lin and had also enjoyed the so-called thin horses that Tian Lin had groomed. They also knew that Tian Lin was definitely involved in some illicit business, but they never expected Tian Lin to be so depraved. The middle-aged man in the main seat remained silent, while the standing official exchanged another document and, after scanning the room, continued speaking, Su Tao is actually the biggest protector behind Tian Lin. During the previous anti-corruption campaigns, he repeatedly tipped off Tian Lin's criminal gang, causing the anti-corruption actions to overlook the likes of Tian Lin, a cancer. During his tenure, Su Tao embezzled and acted unlawfully, accepting huge bribes from Tian Lin's criminal group, persecuting the people. His crimes are simply too numerous to list. As the officials' words fell, the room fell silent, and most officials had almost no color in their faces. If they weren't sitting in their chairs, they would probably have collapsed to the ground by now. They knew that since the investigation team sent from above had already uncovered Su Tao's past so clearly, their own involvement in those matters must have been exposed as well. Sure enough, the officials' next words instantly drained them of their strength, in addition to Su Tao, Several officials in M County have complex and serious relationships with Tian Lin's criminal group, involving severe corruption, dereliction of duty, and collusion with Su Tao, jointly providing protection for Tian Lin's criminal group. These officials are. Bang! Before the official could finish, a bald official in his 50s suddenly collapsed under the table, causing a panic. However, the person sitting in the main seat remained calm, casting a faint glance at the fallen official and calmly saying, Don't mind him, continue. The reporting official nodded and continued, including the county court president Li Changjen. Bang! Another official fainted, it was indeed the county court president Li Changjen, the director of the county reform commission, Wang Wuin. Bang! Another person collapsed to the ground, and many others began to tremble. The reporting official listed nearly 15 names in one breath, accounting for nearly half of the high-level officials in M County. The officials whose names were mentioned all collapsed, some even fainting, while those not mentioned let out a sigh of relief. The air was unusually quiet. Woo woo woo. Suddenly, a choking sound came from the main seat, and the officials who were not mentioned immediately turned to look. They saw the official in the main seat, dressed in a Zhongshan suit, with his hands covering his face, his shoulders trembling, tears flowing through his fingers. After a long time, he slowly regained control of his emotions, moved his hands away, dried his tears, and his eyes were so red they seemed about to bleed. Beasts, scum. Countless ancestors sacrificed their lives to protect our homeland, and it's actually being desecrated by these beasts like this. I never thought that in such a small county, more than half of the officials would be corrupted and depraved. I never thought that so many people and children would suffer so much right under our noses. Limbs being severed, eyes being blinded, women being treated like livestock for breeding, it's inhumane. At the end of his speech, the official slammed his fist on the table so hard that it quickly became swollen. But he seemed unfazed. All implicated officials are to be handed over to the JC authorities and the supervisory institute. Other relevant officials should immediately arrange for the rescue of the children and women, provide psychological counseling, and launch a full search for the other criminal gang to rescue the abducted children. Yes. Everyone nodded heavily and then left. As for the implicated officials, they were all escorted to the JC authorities, awaiting legal sanctions. That night, in the empty office of the county leader, the official in a suit reported the day's investigation results over the phone. There was a long silence on the other end. Ah, after a long while, a sigh came from the other end. Zhang, how do you plan to handle this matter? Of course, we will handle it strictly, eradicate these tumors, and bring peace to the county. Zhang waved his hand fiercely. Zhang, your idea is not wrong, and it is in line with the normal procedure, but have you considered the consequences? Tian Lin and Zhu Jiawei have been repeatedly elected as outstanding entrepreneurs in M County, and they are also county representatives, portrayed as such positive figures by M County. And Su Tao, as the director of the JC Bureau, was also promoted by Irwin. If we handle it like this now, think about the impact it will have on the government's credibility. How many people will lose confidence in us, and how difficult it will be for us to govern in the future? Zhang was stunned, his face gradually turning dark. So what do you mean? Zhang, Tianlin, and Zhu Jiowei's families have already been wiped out, right? What's done is done. And Su Tao, the same, his whole family has been wiped out. Moreover, he represents the government. If the people know that the JC bureau chief, who should have protected their safety, is the biggest tumor, what will they think? If such a thing gets out, what kind of impact will it have on us? Zhang had clenched his fists, unable to contain his low growl. What do you mean by what's done is done? Wu Lao, are you saying that the crimes committed by Tianlin, Zhu Jiawei, and Su Tao should just be forgotten? What about the grievances of the people who were harmed? I didn't say to forget about it, 
Zheng. Of course, human traffickers and those officials who neglected their duty should be severely punished. But we can just pin the blame on those less well-known people. Tianlin and Zhu Jiawei have always been positive figures in M County, and besides, they are already dead. And Su Tao's family is also dead, and Su Tao represents our face. If you deal with Su Tao, isn't that like slapping yourself in the face? So, we are not letting those tumors off the hook. We are just using a more balanced approach to solve the problem and preserve our credibility. What's wrong with that? Wu Lao, this is not in line with the rules, the law, or the procedure. Zheng couldn't help but retort, his face turning red. How is it not in line with the rules? Zheng, don't you know that Su Tao was promoted by Erwin? You and Erwin are good brothers. Can you bear to see him implicated? The voice on the other end of the phone also carried a hint of anger. Wu Lao. All right, let's handle it this way. I believe you will handle everything well. And Zheng Chang was interrupted before he could finish speaking by the voice on the other end of the phone. Old Wu. And Zheng Chang raised his voice, almost roaring. His body was trembling, and his fingernails were almost digging into the palm of his hand. Old Wu, because I and Erwin are brothers, I will never do this. Other things can be negotiated, but this matter must be handled according to the procedure. I must give justice to the persecuted people and children. I cannot let the evildoers go unpunished. Even if I die, I will bring them to trial. I must uphold justice for the people. Death may end them, but it is not a reason to absolve their crimes. I cannot agree to this. And Jingqing's voice was trembling as he spoke, but it became more resolute as he continued. And Zhang Chang, a stern reprimand suddenly came from the other end of the phone. Are you really willing to disregard your friendship with Erwin? Don't forget, why do you have what you have today? I. And Jingqing's face turned pale, and his strength seemed to have been drained from his body. Zheng Chun, whether in life or in office, some things should not be taken too seriously, you know? The tone on the other end of the phone softened a bit. I know you have always been righteous since you were a child, that's why I promoted you in the first place. But taking things too seriously is not beneficial to anyone. I know you were just angry earlier, and I won't hold it against you. After all, I have watched you grow up since you were a child, like my own. You have to trust that I won't harm you. Besides, the mastermind behind it all is already dead. Now you just need to bring the remaining human traffickers and officials to justice. As for Tian Lin and Su Tao, they are dead, let it go. As for some of their crimes, isn't there still a criminal gang at large? Remember, these human traffickers are controlled by this gang. Tian Lin and Zhu Jiawei are still outstanding entrepreneurs in M County, and Su Tao is still the director of our M County JC Bureau. They were all killed by these ruthless human traffickers, wiped out. Understand? Understand? And Zhang Cheng heard the harsh words in his ears, his hand holding the phone turning white, his face flushing red. He had always wondered, how could just Su Tao have such great influence to provide such a large protective umbrella for Tian Lin's criminal group? It turned out that behind Su Tao was Wu Erwin, the second son of the Wu family in Kyoto. Now the top leader in H City. The Wu family is an old and influential family in the entire Dasha, and the person calling him is the second most important figure in the contemporary Wu family, a high-ranking official. The number one figure in the Wu family is also a prominent figure in Kyoto. Although he has worked hard to get to where he is today, he also has the support of the Wu family behind him. If he insists on bringing Tian Lin and Su Tao to justice, he will inevitably offend the Wu family. His career will surely come to an end. But how could he let the masterminds go free? He could not forget the terrified looks of the children, the trembling women, and the bloodstained instruments in the warehouses, the iron gates that imprisoned countless women, and the cages that held countless children. He had sworn to catch these despicable human traffickers and bring them to justice. When he later found out that Su Tao and a group of officials were the protectors of these human traffickers, he was furious and immediately began investigating the officialdom in M County. He did not expect to hear the news of Su Tao's family being wiped out the next day. The head of the human trafficking group, Tian Lin Zhu Jiao Wei, and his protector Su Tao's family were all wiped out, but he had no intention of letting them go. Death is not the end. Even if they are dead, he wants to carry their ashes to the judgment seat and make everyone know the true face of these animals. He wants to make them restless even in death. If there is really a hell in this world, he hopes the king of hell knows the crimes of these people and sends Su Tao and others to the 18th level of hell. He wants these scum and scum to be reviled and trampled by the people. However, now this matter is unexpectedly related to the Wu family. He could actually follow the meaning of the voice on the phone, after all, Su Tao's family and Tian Lin's family have all been wiped out. Even if there is a trial, what's the use? Everyone is dead, what's the use of a trial? It's useless. But he must do it. There is no reason, if you really want to ask for a reason, the reason is, the original intention, that is justice. 
Hu, and Zhang Cheng let out a heavy sigh, his tone extremely firm, I'm sorry, Mr. Wu, I don't understand, and I don't want to understand. As long as I'm in this position, I must adhere to my beliefs and decisions. Snap. After speaking, he hung up the phone. On the other end of the phone, in an office, a middle-aged man with gray hair was stunned for a moment, then slammed the table hard. Nonsense, how dare you contradict my decision. As long as you are in this position for a day, then I will make you come down from this position. I will make you understand that without my Wu family, you are nothing. After hanging up the phone, and Zheng Cheng left the office and personally led the team to speed up the investigation, collecting evidence of the crimes of Su Tao and Tian Lin and others. At the same time, he urged the inspectorate to speed up the trial of these people to the court. He worked until 3.30 in the morning before finally going to sleep. The next day, he stood in front of the mirror, straightening the collar of his Zhongshan suit, looking at the somewhat haggard figure in the mirror, lost in thought for a long time. Perhaps, today is the last time he stands in front of this mirror, wearing this Zhongshan suit and straightening his collar. Today is the day of judgment for Su Tao, Tian Lin, and all the human traffickers. After today, the crimes of Su Tao and others will be revealed to the world, and fairness and justice will be restored to the people. He will let all the people know that County M is not rotten, and there is still fairness and justice in County M. And Zheng Cheng walked out of the room, looked up, and saw the whole sky covered in a gloomy haze, not a ray of sunlight could penetrate, making it feel very oppressive. He couldn't help but tighten his clothes, suddenly feeling very cold. It's autumn, why is it so cold? And Zheng Cheng looked at the driver outside wearing short sleeves, a hint of puzzlement in his eyes. Commander! The driver opened the door, and in Zheng Cheng got in. Soon, his car arrived in front of the court, but at this time, there was only one person in front of the court, the acting director of the M County Public Security Bureau, Su Weigua, and the gate of the court was tightly closed. Seeing in Zheng Cheng, Su Weigua's face was full of complexity. Little Su, where are the others? Su Weigua remained silent for a few seconds, not answering in Zheng Cheng. Commander in, you are a good official. There may be someone above who wants to make a move against you. Use any means of self-preservation you have. Otherwise, you. Hearing Su Weigua's words, and Zheng Cheng showed no surprise, but instead a smile appeared on his face. Those people. Damn, they've all hidden their heads in their pants and under the covers. Su Weigua also showed a complex smile. Damn, it's so dark today. And Zheng Cheng looked up at the dark sky, then suddenly turned and headed towards the court, standing at the closed gate of the court. He remained silent for a long time. Suddenly, he lifted his foot. Bang! He kicked the courthouse door hard, cursing fiercely as he did so. Open up, damn it! Open up! He kept kicking the door, making a banging sound, but it was locked from the inside. His expression turned fierce, his face turned red, and two tears fell from his eyes. At this moment, many people on the road saw this scene and couldn't help but be shocked. Who is this person? How dare he kick the courthouse door so brazenly? Yeah, the courthouse is a sacred place, where criminals are judged. How can we let this person defile it like this? Quick, call the police and have them arrest him and put him in jail. No. Why do I feel like I've seen this man on TV recently, some high-ranking official? Suddenly, a bystander said in confusion, and others were stunned, then couldn't help but gasp, oh my god, it's true, he seems to be the official specially sent down from above to investigate the recent tragedy in County M. Why would a special envoy official come and kick the courthouse door? Could it be that this person has gone mad? Everyone's eyes were full of doubt. Boom! Just then, the sound of a car engine roared. A police car and a sedan drove up. Squeak! The two cars stopped at the courthouse, and a middle-aged man got out of the sedan, while a group of armed police and two people in inspection uniforms got out of the police car. As soon as the middle-aged man got out, he shouted at Zheng Cheng at the courthouse gate, and Zheng Cheng, you've been caught protecting human traffickers and taking bribes. Now, come with us. Take him away. He waved his hand, and two special police officers went up and handcuffed in Zheng Cheng. Ha ha ha. And Zheng Cheng didn't argue, he just laughed heartily, and as he laughed, two tears fell from the corners of his eyes. I did my best. And Zheng Cheng was taken away and the two cars drove off. The remaining crowd looked at each other, I was wondering why this official would kick the courthouse door, turns out he's the despicable human traffickers protector? It's true that you can't judge a book by its cover, this official seemed quite pleasing, who knew he was actually a human traffickers protector. Ha, the corrupt official finally got his comeuppance. I've recorded the video of him kicking the courthouse door and being taken away, I'll upload these two videos online immediately, so that everyone in County M can see this scum for who he really is. Soon, the videos of Zheng Cheng kicking the courthouse door and being taken away were uploaded to the internet, causing a huge uproar.